several decades ago, an interdimensional storm broke out on Earth. Many creatures from another dimension have been discovered, such as gods, immortals, ghosts, monsters, angels, demons, elves, which only existed in myths. These lives are divided into four classes, mortal, legendary, epic, and mythical. Their abilities and destructive power are far beyond human imagination. While humans belong to the lower class, mortals, they can strengthen their physical form and develop their life class by cultivating the life force technique. Besides cultivating the vital force technique, humans have another way to speed up their evolution, namely, to hunt and kill creatures from another dimension and take their crystals for yourself. But the places where creatures from another dimension live were very dangerous. If people enter them, their chances of survival will be very low. The teacher told his students about this whole story, who was also interested in what Zhou Wen, the main character, was doing. But suddenly, the teacher shouted even louder to the guy, which is why everyone turned to him. However, the main character did not hear anyone. Hiding behind his book, he slept in class. This saddened the teacher, because he did not understand the guy. Because in the past, the former director had attached such great importance to the hero. But he had not changed at all. After this, the events are transferred to a beautiful park, which was completely drowned in beautiful, sunny, warm rays where the teacher was just there with someone he knew. The bearded man in the cloak explained to the teacher, Chu Bai A, that there were two types of geniuses. The first is Zhou Wen, and the second is the rest of the geniuses. Suddenly, events returned to school, where the main character finally woke up from a scream. However, he was not going to answer anyone because he heard the bell, which is why he was the first to run away from the class. The main character's life has completely changed since he received this mysterious phone. He stopped listening in class and even stopped diligently cultivating, all because of playing on this phone. First, you need to turn on the phone by dropping a drop of blood, then launch the dungeon application. Before doing all this, Joe Wan turned around so that no one would notice him. Having made sure of his safety, he immediately began to anneal his finger with a small needle to get one more drop of blood to create a character. Taking the phone tightly in my hands, it was as if a strange energy immediately began to envelop him, which copied the model of his body to transfer to the game. As soon as the character was created, he immediately began to play. By increasing the game character's abilities, he became stronger in reality. It was safe, convenient, and fast. It was just amazing in the guy's opinion. Presented in front of one of the game creatures of the mobile game, he immediately began killing the mighty ants one after another. There were many geniuses in the Federation who could develop their vitality at the age of 16, but Zhou Wen was probably one of the few who tempered himself and developed vitality only through cultivating Zen suffering without any external help. All the teachers and students at their Gita Middle School thought that Zhou Wen would definitely achieve great success in the future. It won't be difficult for him to take first place in the real battle test that will take place soon with his abilities but no one could have expected what happened a month ago. The events moved to a month earlier, where many high school students were in the gym and were very surprised that someone decided to challenge Zhou Wen. It was the girl who stood opposite the hero. It was her first day at this school. Zhou Wen was surprised because he had not seen her before, but the girl was not interested in having a dialogue with him, so she asked him to attack her. The guy didn't want to hold back, so he immediately began to attack her. However, the girl was ready for this. As soon as the main character closed the distance with the girl, she immediately sent him flying with one blow. Zhou Wen immediately began to bounce off the floor, while the girl silently looked at her defeated opponent. All the guys were shocked by her strength, because no one could even imagine that this could happen. This girl's name was An Jing. It must have been because of her. Zhou Wen has collapsed since An Jing knocked him out, and now he is either sleeping or playing. The teacher was sad because of this, because he thought that if it went on like this, then the hero would never see a good future. However, the main character, playing on the phone, thought of everything differently, because he was sure that if he continued in the same spirit, then everything would be great. When suddenly he saw a crystal in the game, which he immediately wanted to pick up. As soon as he picked it up, a strange blue energy appeared around him in reality. It was absorption. After the bloody avatar absorbs the crystals dropped in the game, this will affect the player, increasing his own abilities. Not only that, the player can also clearly see his characteristics through the game, which cannot be seen in reality. If he had simply cultivated Zen suffering, 
he probably would not have been able to progress so quickly even after a few years. His only regret was that the crystals dropped in the game could not be made into reality. Otherwise, he could have led a relatively prosperous life by simply selling low-grade crystals that he would not have used. Suddenly, a red demonic ant appeared in front of him in the game, rushing towards the hero with great speed. Upon noticing, the guy immediately dodged the monster's attack. The ant did not expect that they would be able to evade his super attack, so he became more careful in front of the guy. The red mutated mighty ant's speed was clearly higher than that of ordinary mighty ants, as was its strength. He could be defeated if given enough time. However, there were more and more monsters around the hero. When suddenly Zhou Wen notices someone next to him, it was a girl named Fang Ruoxi. Looking at her, he hoped that she was not looking for him. It was not the right time for him because he could not let her find out the secret in this phone. Otherwise, it would be very troublesome for him. But he also could not give up the battle, so he could not understand what to do. Suddenly, the girl turned to him. However, the guy was not worried because everyone considered him an internet addict. While the guy continued to play his mobile game, Fang Ruashi continued to talk to him. She invited him to join her team for the final combat test of the graduation exam. The hero was a little surprised by this, because he could not even imagine that they would turn to him with such a request. Continuing to ask questions to the girl, the hero became more and more distracted because of which he could die in the game. Fang Ruashi, in turn, said that she really needed Zhou Wen because he had to give it his all to get a high score in the real battle test so she needed strong teammates. This alarmed the hero a little, because he understood her words a little differently. However, the girl began to explain to him that in her opinion, Zhou Wan was Zhou Wan. He was still the only one she considered as her rival at Gida High School. After listening to the girl, Zhou Wan inquired about An Jin, who had already transferred to another school. Fang Ruoxi didn't know exactly what her background was, but she was sure that An Jin had surpassed the mortal class. Her arrival and departure were so sudden, as if she had come specifically to beat the hero. Therefore, Ruoxi thought that the main character and An Jin had known each other for a long time, and that there was enmity between them. These words made Zhou Wen think, after which he answered the girl that he had never met her before, and there could be no enmity between them. The girl, after listening to the guy, decided to return to the invitation to her team. Therefore, the hero did not delay his answer for long, agreeing with her. The girl, having heard the answer she needed, did not stand in front of the guy for a long time. So she began to leave, saying that they would all need to train soon. After that, she left the hero, who finally killed his new powerful enemy. As soon as he killed the red ant, he immediately decided to pick up the crystal for himself, because he understood that he could no longer escape from the next horde, so he decided to grab the crystal for last. Having picked up the crystal in his hands, he was immediately attacked by a horde of red ants, which immediately interrupted the main character's game. After stopping playing, Zhou Wen decided to check his statistics when he returned home. But suddenly he notices something. His hand was completely covered in red energy. When suddenly his entire body was covered in the same energy, the guy could not understand what kind of crystal it was. He assumed that this crystal contained a legendary life force skill. But still, he did not understand what kind of skill could fall from the mighty ant. So he started dripping his blood onto the phone screen again. Barely holding the phone in his hands, he looked attentively into it, where his statistics as a player were displayed. The hero was instantly surprised that his life force skill was a divine mighty fist of as much as the seventh level. After this, events move on to the acquaintance of the girl's full team. The other guys were surprised that their partner would be Joe One. They were wary of this because he had not trained for over a month, so they thought it would be difficult for him to return to his previous level. The main character, listening to the guys, understood that the combat test for admission to college was an important event that influenced the rest of his life. Moreover, the strength of teammates also affected personal safety, which is why it was normal for them to think this way. Fang Ruoxi, listening to her boys, also believed that Zheng was talented but she still thought that Zhou Wen was more suitable for them. After listening to his commander, the blonde decided to conduct a small test, if they don't mind. And depending on the result, they will know whether Zhou Wen is suitable for their team or not. The guys were surprised what test he was talking about. So the guy started telling me that everything was very simple. He was the weakest of the three, so Zhou Wen had to fight him. If he wins, he will earn the right to enter their team. This suited the girl and the main character 
But Zhou Wen was still worried because in a real fight, there was a risk that they would get hurt. The blonde guy said that the fight would be with fists. The girl, listening to the proposal, understood that Tian Xiang Dong cultivated the Thunderer Vital Force technique. She specialized in bursts of power, and it included the Thunder Fist skill. Even though Zhou Wen cultivates Zen suffering, he has never purchased any crystals to aid in cultivation. His family was probably struggling financially, and he might not even have the life force skill. That's what the girl thought. Therefore, she was very interested in what Zhou Wen would answer. The hero immediately suggested that it would be better to use a force meter. The guys heard this and thought that the hero was simply afraid. However, Zhou was simply afraid that he would kill by accident. After discussing the test, they immediately went to school to measure your strength, who was better than them. Tian Xiangdong asked the hero which of them would be the first to test, but Zhou did not care about this. Therefore, Xiangdong decided to be the first to test his strength. As soon as he warmed up, he immediately swung his fist, which he immediately hit the force meter. The guy stood motionless, waiting and looking at the result, which showed the seventh level of strength. The main character, looking at the result, understood that there was a slight difference between this meter and the strength statistics in the game, but it should not have been much different. His strength was only seventh before he received the mysterious phone. At the same moment, Xiangrong invited the hero to test his strength. Therefore, the main character immediately began to test it. While the guys were testing their strength, the teacher heard their sounds. So he was wondering who was using the force meter. Approaching the door, he opened it slightly to see who was there. He didn't want to go in now because he was wondering who struck that blow. When suddenly he saw Zhou Wen standing motionless, waiting for his result. Meanwhile, the guys were shocked by the result. After all, the hero's strength was level 10. The teacher, being outside the door, could not believe it. Because the main character slept all the time in class and played on the phone. Remembering the words of the former director, he now realized that he had a professional eye that instantly discerned the hero's talent. Fang Ruakshi was impressed by the protagonist's punch at this moment, because it was a one-inch punch. He actually used the most complex technique to measure strength. He was able to score 10 points without using any vitality skills, so this terrified the girl. Tian Xiangdong was tense about this result. But still, he recognized the strength of the main character and therefore accepted him into the team. Immediately, he pushed the hero aside, because he wanted to repeat his thunder fist because he was desperately trying to save his face. Gathering all my strength into a fist, he immediately hit the force meter with it. Because of this, I was able to achieve the result of the 11th level of my strength. Completely exhausted, Xiang Dong asked Zhou Wen what he would say to this. The hero just looked at the result. Meanwhile, Xiang Dong was confident in his victory. So he tried to play a joke on the guy. However, this did not upset the main character. So he seriously decided to test his superpower. All the guys carefully watched as the main character prepared to test his strength. However, Xiang Dong was sure that the main character was not capable of defeating him. In his opinion, this device is intended to measure force. Although it was a fairly old model with a limit of only 20 units, but there are only a few high school students who can hit the maximum value, and there were even fewer who could break it. Zhou Wan gathered all his strength into a fist, immediately struck a crushing blow to the force meter. Because of this, the device immediately broke down. This greatly shocked all observers, because they could not even imagine that the main character was capable of such a thing. The teacher, observing this, understood that the limit of this meter was 20 units. But this did not mean that he could only withstand this value. You will need at least a level 8 or 9 spiritual power skill to break the device. Remembering the words of the former director, he was again amazed at his talent. Meanwhile, while the teacher stood aside, the guys were talking among themselves. This crushing blow seemed to unite the entire team even closer. Fan Ruoxi was also very happy for the main character, because she didn't expect that this guy was even more interesting than she thought. After this, events are rescheduled later in the evening, where our main character walked along a deserted street under the evening rays of the sun. Fan Ruoxi reminded him that ordinary people who have received the legendary class consider it beneath their dignity to even stand next to a mortal. An Jing, on her own initiative, abandoned the hero, the mortal student. Zhou Wen thought about it and realized that he had never traveled outside of Guide County in his life, so he wondered what he could do to annoy her, when suddenly he hears something. It was in his pocket that his father called, inviting his son to the wedding. 
The hero took the phone closer and asked his father who he married. Hearing this question, the father did not keep his son waiting for long, so he immediately sent him a photo of his new mother. Her name was Uyanlan. Standing under the last sunset, the son found out all the details about the ceremony, which would take place in a week. Zhou Wen, upon hearing the appointed date, realized that he would not be able to attend the ceremony because he had a skill test in just a week. He could not go even if he wanted to. However, the hero was not only worried about this, the guy asked his father if he had seen the metal box of cookies. It was a square iron box, each side about 30 centimeters. The father, listening to the descriptions of the box, realized that this box was already very old, so he was wondering why his son needed it. Joe One, in turn, holding his phone in his hand, told his father that this particular phone was in that box, so the guy assumed that it was he who put it there. The father, listening to the guy's descriptions and story, did not understand what his son was telling him, so he assumed that this phone was his grandfather's. The main character, having heard this, immediately began to ask him about his grandfather. Therefore, the father began a story about the fact that his grandfather was a carpenter. During the restoration of the old city of Guid, he had to repair many ancient wooden buildings, so he worked there for more than a year. One day, a dry well was dug at a construction site. It was late at night, and only a few people were left working overtime. A subtle light emanated from the well. The workers thought that they had found some kind of treasure and were about to get rich, but it turned out to be an old wooden box. There were many cracks on the lid, and light came through them. There was a phone inside the box. It was initially on, but immediately turned off as if it had run out of power as soon as they took it out. There were no buttons and the workers did not find a charging connector. The workers were very disappointed and thought that someone just wanted to play a joke by planting a broken phone. Everyone quickly lost interest and Grandpa threw it into his tool bag. Continuing to drive home, my father continued to tell me that it was impossible to turn on the phone. He even took it for repairs in his youth and wanted to exchange it for a couple of packs of cigarettes. But the master said that it was worth nothing at all, so he threw the phone into a cookie box. Joe Wen, listening to his father, was very glad that he could not exchange this phone for packs of cigarettes. Otherwise, they would now bite their elbows. The guy, having learned everything he wanted, immediately ended the conversation. Pondering the words he had previously heard from his father, the guy realized that this phone was dug out of a well in the old city of Guide, and the test of combat skills would take place there. So he believed that he should try to look for this well if he had the opportunity. After this evening, when the main character returned home, events began to develop quite quickly. Days passed and he still slept in class. While the guys were training hard, he was playing on his phone. Just like that, a few days passed unnoticed. As soon as the students heard the bell for recess, they immediately started running to have fun. But suddenly one of the guys trips over a stranger and falls right in front of him. His friend immediately ran up to help his friend. However, the stranger was not going to do anything at that moment. A strange, creepy energy emanated from him, which made other people afraid. The stranger did not say anything to the students, so he immediately turned around and began to leave. The guys watching him leave understood that this man was not simple. At this moment, events moved to Xiang Dong, who apologized to the main character because he could not unite with him due to the fact that his friend invited him to his team. After asking for forgiveness, he did not even listen to Zhou Wen, so he immediately began to leave him. The hero, looking at Tian Xiang Dong, couldn't even imagine whether Fang Ruoshi had a backup plan. He was afraid that at such a time it would be difficult to find a new team member, when suddenly he notices his second teammate who was standing next to him. Li Ji, with a serious face, came closer to the hero and also asked for his forgiveness. Because he also could not take part in the test with him, he had reasons for this. After this, the events are transferred to the school, where the sad Fang Ruoxi stood. She also asked for forgiveness from the main character, but he interrupted her because he knew what she wanted to say. He understood the whole situation, so he believed that he should have apologized to them. Because someone wanted to deal with him and that's why all the guys got involved. Coming closer to the girl, he put his hand to her head and asked that before it was too late, she would find someone else. He wanted the girl to get a good grade, otherwise he would be upset. The girl, in turn, asked the guy to be more careful, because that man had enormous influence. However, Joe One did not say anything in response, but simply turned around and left. 
Continuing to walk into the distance of the corridor, the main character understood that this check was very important and time was running out. So he needed to find a companion somewhere that he could trust. When suddenly a teacher turns to him and asks him to come closer to him. Entering the office, they immediately sat down together at the table. The teacher began to tell the guy that Commander An occupied a very high position. His real name was An Tianzuo. Therefore, the teacher wanted to make sure whether the hero was confident or not. After making sure that the guy was sure, the teacher could not understand something. After all, it was very strange if the hero did not know Commander An. Why, when he arrived to conduct an inspection in Guide County, he criticized the guy, a simple high school student. However, Zhou Wen was more interested in who An Tianzuo even was. The teacher began to talk about him. The Earth Commonwealth was divided into four districts, north, south, west, and east. Although Commander An Tianzuo was still very young, he came from a noble family. In his early 20s, he already held a high position and was an important military official in the eastern zone. He had enormous power, an outstanding man. But neither the teacher nor the hero himself knew exactly whether An Tianzuo was opposed to him or not. This made the guy very wary, because the surnames An Jing and An Tianzuo were the same. The teacher did not rule out the guy's assumption. However, he still believed that Zhou Wen needed to find a team and register for verification. The deadline for submitting applications expired the day after tomorrow, so the main character could not put it off for a second. Otherwise, he would definitely not make it in time. The teacher continued to tell the hero that there was a student named Li Xuan in their school. If he wants to unite with the main character, then most likely no one else will interfere with Zhou Wen. But in return, the hero had to help him get the highest score using all his strength, and he was the one who should have been the best on the team. The main character, after listening to the teacher, realized that he had to act exclusively in the interests of Li Xuan in order to at least somehow participate in the test. These conditions did not upset the hero, so he asked for help to contact Li Xuan. After discussing all the issues, Zhou Wen left school to call his father and find out about An Tianzuo. When suddenly he hears from his father that An Tianzuo was the older brother of the main character. However, he did not interrupt his father, but continued to listen to what he was told. Tianzuo was Yanlan's son, and if his father married her, he would become Zhou Wen's elder brother. He will also have a younger half-sister, An Jing, listening about his new brother and sister. The main character realized that they were doing very well before his father. But still, he could not understand why they addressed him like that. Zhou Wen probably knew that An Jing could easily defeat him. And because of one phrase from An Tianzuo, he almost lost the opportunity to take the entrance exam. Therefore, he considered himself still weak, returning home where there was a pile of garbage. The main character had no intention of getting out. After all, in the last few days, all he had done was destroy powerful mutant ants. But apart from the crystal with the spiritual power skill that fell from the first ant, he received nothing else, although he had already killed more than ten. When suddenly he kills another ant, from which the pet drops an egg, which the guy immediately began to take. But, as far as he knew, mortals rarely had a companion pet. Mostly those who had already reached the legendary class had one. Suddenly this egg breaks apart and a certain energy is released from it, which instantly envelops the hero. When suddenly his whole body begins to ache terribly. And because of this, he immediately wakes up. Sitting on the bed, he held his head because it hurt him greatly. But suddenly he notices a certain red mark on his hand. The thought immediately came to him that the companion pet had successfully hatched, so he started looking at his phone. It was a powerful mutant ant, an average level that reached ninth. Zhou Wen, with joy on his face, wanted to quickly call and look at him. Therefore, he curtained all the windows so that no one could see him. Concentrating, he began to think about the skills of the summoner and the mutant ant. As soon as he collected his thoughts, a summoning glove immediately appeared on his hand. The hero, looking at the glove, realized that this was the form of the pet. It improved the characteristics of the user himself. Zhou Wen, summoning his pet, knew that his home was not suitable for testing his strength here, so he just wanted to take a good look at it. Continuing to summon the pet, the outline of a mighty ant could already be seen. As soon as he completed the entire procedure, his new pet appeared in front of the guy. The main character, looking at him, considered him quite scary, because in the game he was much nicer. 
This ant was taller than the guy himself. Therefore, Zhou Wen wanted to quickly ride it. Suddenly, events are interrupted the next day, where the main character and teacher Yu were driving in the car. The teacher, worried, told the hero about Li Xuan, who likes to show off everything. But he still wasn't a bad guy. Their path was directed precisely to the Imperial Health Club. Having arrived at the appointed place, they immediately began to go into the building to see Mr. Li. Entering inside, they instantly saw him. Li Xuan was about to stand up to the guys because he was in the warm embrace of women. Being surrounded by women, he asked Teacher Yu to sit down and have a glass. However, the teacher was not going to do this because he still had classes in the evening. Yu, realizing that it was impossible to drag out time for too long, immediately began to introduce the master to the main character he had told him about. The teacher, pointing his hand at Zhou Wen, spoke well of him because he sincerely considered him capable and very useful in the exam. However, Li Xuan asked the teacher to calm down because he trusted him and would allow the main character to join him. The teacher, convinced of this, decided to return to school. Finally, he asked that they discuss all issues related to testing combat skills. Mr. Yu also ordered the hero to stay here in order to get to know Li Xuan well in the last days, because this will allow him to better understand each other during the test. After this, the teacher did not stay here any longer and immediately left the children. Li Xuan didn't want to sit silently, so he was the first to start a conversation with the guy because he had heard about him, the number one genius of the guide school. However, Zhou Wen said that these were just rumors. Having heard the answer from the hero, Li Xuan assumed so because he did not believe that a genius could appear in guide, a small town. And besides, the hero was defeated with one blow by An Jing. While the guy was playing on the phone, Zhuan advised him that there was no need for any coordination training. You just had to obey and not get in the way in front of him when the time came, and so he assured that everything would be fine. Suddenly, the major offers the hero to drink a bottle of alcohol, and then he can choose any girl. However, Zhou Wan did not take his eyes off his phone. He was indifferent to Xuan's proposal. Li Xuan, looking at him, could not understand why, for the sake of such a worthless person, the teacher had to humiliate himself and beg. Suddenly, an idea came to him. He asked the girl sitting next to him to do something. It made her happy. Therefore, she instantly became sweet and attractive in front of the main character. She immediately moved closer to the guy to flirt with him. Getting closer and closer to him, she suddenly put her hand on his head. However, Zhou Wen did not care about her now because he saw a flying ant with silver wings. But at that moment, the girl continued to insist on her insistence that he pay attention to her, when suddenly she forcibly distracted him from the phone. The guy realizing that he's about to lose, he immediately threw the girl away from him. She fell from the sofa straight to the floor. Because of this, Li Xuan was shocked. From such an unexpected situation, he began to laugh out loud. However, the main character still lost the game. From the guy's actions, Xuan realized that this guy was funny. After this, night falls, where Li Xuan and the red-haired girl are sleeping in a bed. Suddenly, Xuan opens his eyes. Meanwhile, Zhou Wen, despite the dead of night, still continued to play his mobile game. But the flying ant continued to defeat him over and over again. The hero thought that it was no good. He played all night, but never achieved anything. Although the flying ants were very strong, they had not yet reached the legendary class. Therefore, it was quite possible to kill them. But first, he needed to at least get the opportunity to strike. The guy, sitting with a mysterious expression on his face, continued to think about the fact that the fist of a ninth-rank titan could cause great damage to a flying ant with silver wings. But it takes too much time. He didn't know if he could combine the crushing fist with the inch punch he was good at. Since he was the character in the game, improving the crushing fist with the help of a house strike in reality, the game character will also be able to synchronize with this improvement. He began to swing his fists forward, while in a fighting stance, he continued to train his strikes. Meanwhile, Li Xuan was watching him from the window. Being outside the door, he did not understand why the main character was training at such a time. However, this did not impress him, so he decided not to waste time and go to sleep better. The next day, entrance exams begin. Zhou Wen and the other participants are diligently writing the exam test. A few days later, the main character, sitting on the bus, looked out the window and remembered the old city of Guz. After an extra-dimensional storm that broke out years ago, a rift appeared here, and everything around turned into an interspatial zone. Due to the influence of other dimensions, 
Local animals and plants also underwent various changes. Troops are stationed on the territory of the ancient city. Entry is prohibited without a pass. The next stage of the entrance exams, testing combat skills, is about to begin. Meanwhile, the bus with students arrived in the protected area, where it was full of soldiers with military equipment. The main character, wandering around the area, noticed that Li Xuan and the others had not arrived yet, so he wanted to wait for them. Coming closer to the gate, he began to look at them carefully. Looking carefully at the gate, he notices something on it. But suddenly something interrupts his attention. It was a phone that someone was calling again. Pulling out two phones, he noticed that these sounds were coming from a mysterious phone that controlled human blood. It didn't have a bell function, and it had never vibrated before, so the guy wondered what was happening to it. But suddenly he notices a camera app. Looking around, he did not understand how it was supposed to be used. Stretching your hand forward, Joe Wen decided to photograph the local landscape. But he couldn't press the shutter, so he figured that the camera function on this phone wasn't working. Suddenly, he pointed the camera at the thing he had previously noticed on the wall. Because of this, it began to light up, and the phone began to make strange sounds again. After waiting a few seconds, some kind of download began. The guy looked attentively at the phone with expectations. Suddenly, a new location opens on your phone, the ancient city of Guide. The guy saw this and decided to immediately try a new location. Without hesitation, he dripped his blood onto the phone screen to create a playable character immediately. As soon as his game appearance was completely immersed, the main character was sure that he had actually entered the game. Walking around the location, the guy understood that this was the inside of an ancient city, when suddenly a monster appears in front of him. It was a creature from another dimension, a skeletal soldier. Suddenly the skeleton starts attacking the guy. However, he manages to dodge his attack. Although it was his first time here, his speed and strength were not very great. It was much easier for him than to fight those ants. So he immediately crushed the skeleton soldier, and he knocked the crystal out of him. Joe Wen couldn't believe that he was able to knock out the crystal with skill the first time. Having started to activate it in his hand, it was as if a strange energy began to envelop him. However, the hero noticed that he did not have the same terrible pain as the time he received a crushing fist. Suddenly, he has a new skill in studying the skeleton, which surprised the guy. He remembered that this was the skeleton soldier's spiritual power skill. This was mainly a low-level skill, but however, little energy was consumed. Joe Wan wanted to know more information, so he felt it necessary to go deeper to test his strength. When suddenly, his mighty mutant ant appears below him, which he immediately mounts. The hero, without hesitation, immediately set off on new adventures. Having started to run, other skeletons immediately heard him, which were immediately destroyed by the main character rushing on his ant. After some time, the guy was unhappy that he had already gone through so much, but received nothing except that crystal. But suddenly he notices something. It was another horde of skeletons gathered around their leader. As soon as the leader noticed the guy, he instantly moved in front of the guy. Taking advantage of the opportunity, the skeleton immediately pierced the main character with his dark sword. And after that, the game ended immediately. Joe Wen accepted this and began to look at the wall, on which a certain mark could be seen on top, which very attracted the hero. The guy understood what a strong opponent was against him. Therefore, this time in the exam, he believed that it was necessary not to encounter him. When suddenly someone appeared behind him, the guy immediately turned to see who was there. Seeing the girl, he was surprised that this girl was on Jing. Zhou Wen could not understand why the girl was here, when suddenly her fist appears in front of his face. However, she was not going to hit the guy, because there was something in her fist. She just wanted to convey to the hero what his father had conveyed to him. This thing was a flash drive. After handing it over to the guy, Anjing believed that it was useless because she believed that it was pointless to waste energy on people who themselves want to degrade. Getting ready to leave, the girl finally wanted to warn the guy so that he wouldn't even think about telling anyone that he was related to the Ann family. After all, the girl was completely sure that they had no place for mediocrity and weaklings. Zhou Wen, listening to the girl, could not understand when he managed to become part of this family because he believed that they were all in too much of a hurry. Suddenly, someone addresses him from behind. It was Li Xuan and his other comrades. The major asked the main character not to worry about anything because old man Yu stood up for him. Therefore, he allowed the hero to simply follow him and leave the scoring to them. The new teammates were completely confident in themselves because they did not consider anyone equal to them in strength. The second friend also asked the major not to worry because they were ready to make every effort 
so they assured that there would be no mistakes. The main character, listening to the guys, realized that apparently they were not going to get to know him personally. Suddenly, the military began to announce on the radio to all respected participants that the exam would begin soon. Therefore, they asked everyone to approach the inspector examiner of their group. Feng Ruoshi heard this and immediately, together with his partner, began to rush to the appointed place. When suddenly she notices Zhou Wan, who smiled confidently at her, wishing him success as well, the girl smiled at him in return. At this very moment, a light suddenly appears emanating from behind the gate. It was a rift into another dimension where the exam was to take place. The instructor examiner came out and immediately began to talk about the essence of the exam, which took place in collecting crystals from killed skeleton soldiers. The final score will be determined by their number. Pointing to the portal, he wanted to tell them lastly, namely, I wish good luck to all respected participants. The main character, entering inside the portal, I began to look at it in more detail from the inside. Looking around, he realized that this dimension was created by that catastrophe. Suddenly, he saw something. These were skeleton soldiers who tried to attack the students, but their plans could not come true because the students immediately began to confront the monsters, who continued to walk forward towards the guys. However, they were easily destroyed by other exam participants. One of the main character's teammates, he happily crushed the skeletons that attacked him. Joe One looked at this situation and believed that there was nothing to worry about. Therefore, he could easily check his guess. While the main character was returning to his game, Li Xuan was watching him from the side, who was surprised that the guy was playing on the phone again. Therefore, he also recognized that the hero had something special. Suddenly, Zhou Wen notices something. He immediately took his eyes off the phone to take a closer look at the city. Analyzing the architecture of the buildings, the guy realized that not only the city gates, but also the location of all the buildings exactly coincided with the dungeon from the telephone. Therefore, the guy immediately assumed that all the dungeons had a real prototype. Recalling the virtual world, Zhou Wan shuddered as he realized that the existence of the skeleton horsemen was also true. However, judging by the area already explored, they were still far from him. The hero understood that if they did not go beyond the territory designated for the exam, then they would not run into this thing. Having destroyed all the skeletons, the guys gathered together to discuss the next plan. The guys understood that the speed of appearance had also decreased. If they want to get the highest score, then they need to move on. However, the main character tried to keep the guys safe because he understood that going outside the territory was very risky. There could be danger there. However, the teammate did not want to listen to the hero because he was worried that the skeletons were appearing here slowly and chaotically. To secure first place, they had to get out of here and kill as many skeletons as possible. The second teammate also agreed because he was sure that nothing would happen to them, because he had a complete plan of the territory, as well as a map of division into sections. Therefore, he convinced the other guys that nothing would happen if they entered the buffer zone. Li Xuan, observing the main character from the side, was also convinced that Zhou Wan had nothing to fear. Even if something happens, these two will deal with the danger. The main character, having listened to everyone's readiness, understood that he could not say in plain text that danger lay ahead, ready to kill them all at once. Therefore, taking the phone out of his pocket, he decided that he should try again to defeat him using the phone, but he didn't really believe it. Having run after Li Xuan, he was ready, in the worst case, to simply grab him and run away. Meanwhile, I had already met the guys and there was a horde of skeletons ahead, which they immediately began to crush with their kicks and magical fist blows. While those two teammates were dealing with the danger ahead, the main character, being behind them, continued to play on the phone, holding the phone tightly with your hands. He continued and continued to try to defeat the main skeleton of this location, but nothing worked for him over and over again, and his game still ended quickly. Joe One was perplexed by this, because he couldn't do it, even though he dodged and jumped, but the rider still instantly killed him. He was stronger than even the flying ant with silver wings. However, it was quite obvious that the skeleton rider did not maintain high agility all the time. He only increased his speed for a moment when he delivered his piercing blow. Therefore, the guy assumed that this was his spiritual power skill. The main character understood that this skeleton could easily destroy his entire team, when suddenly the skull of a defeated skeleton falls next to him. Taking a closer look, he notices a spatial crystal. However, his teammate manages to grab him, 
The guy, taking the crystal in his hands, immediately begins to call Brother Schwan to him, who saw the guy's crystal immediately approached him. At this moment, Zhou Wen approaches him. Understanding what will happen next, he convinced the guys that they had already scored enough points, so, according to him, they could already go back. But the teammates did not want to listen to the main character, because they believed that it was too early to return. Li Xuan, after listening to both sides, decided to look at the phone to protect himself in the future. After analyzing everything, he told the guys that no spatial creatures of legendary level or higher were registered nearby, so he thought it was worth going even further, when suddenly someone grabs his hand. It was Zhou Wen who was seriously asking the guy about his sixth sense. Xuan, not understanding what the main character was talking about, just looked at him. While the main character said that since childhood, he always had an unpleasant feeling if he was in danger, and it has never failed him yet. Putting his hand to his heart, the guy convinced the guys that right now, this feeling was very strong for him. One of the teammates listening to the main character thought that it was all stupidity. Therefore, with nervous emotions, the guy accused him of commanding them without being helpful. However, Joe One had no intention of retreating back, and therefore seriously tried to convince the guys that the guide area was very small, so it was not unusual for few students to venture beyond the boundaries. In addition, they have scored so many points that they can easily maintain an advantage by simply killing within the area designated for the exam. The hero continued to convince the guys that there was no need to take risks and enter unknown territory. Li Xuan, after listening and thinking about the hero's words, also believed that Zhou Wen's words also made sense. But suddenly, from behind, someone swings a knife in his direction and pierces him right through with it. This was his second teammate, smiling with an insidiously evil face. He did not regret his action. The third teammate, not understanding what his comrade was doing, began to shout at him. However, he is immediately wounded with a swing of a knife, from which he immediately loses strength and falls to the ground right in front of his insane comrade. At the same moment, Li Xuan could barely stand on his feet and covered his wound with his hand in order to hold out longer. He did not expect that his comrade would betray him with such a vile act. Looking at the traitor, he assumed that this guy was from his second brother. The traitor, in turn, did not hide the reserve. He was surprised that the victim had natural invulnerability because he also did not expect that Junior Xuan, who loved pleasure so much, would practice this particular skill of spiritual strength. Unlike the vitality skills and spatial crystals obtained from spatial beings, the cultivation method represents the basic principles of cultivation developed by the people themselves. This is why different cultivation methods determine different cultivation limits. And natural invulnerability is one of the rare techniques that allows you to immediately reach the epic class, skipping mortal and legendary. However, the main character heard that only virgins can follow this path. If you lose your virginity, all your efforts will go to waste. No matter how you looked at it, Li Xuan did not at all look like the type of person who would put great effort into perfecting such a skill. At this moment, the second comrade continued to shout at Zhang Hao because he could not believe that he was helping Li Mobai get rid of Brother Xuan. However, the traitor did not regret anything because he had already made his choice long ago. Li Xuan standing in front of the villain told him that he had no desire to fight for power with the second brother, but he could not calm down. The traitor didn't care about Xuan's words because he considered him to blame for everything. So he began to concentrate his energy around his blade to attack Li Xuan and finish the job he started. However, the victim was not going to retreat. Although the villain's attack was very fast, Zhuan was still able to dodge it. Zhou Wen and his second teammate were shocked by their comrade's abilities, because the traitor had a hidden ability that enveloped him from everywhere. It was an explosive snake. The victim guy was surprised by the traitor's abilities, because he considered it impossible. Being a mortal, no one could get a legendary level pet. However, Li Xuan was not surprised by this. After all, he understood that it was only necessary for someone who had reached the legendary class to voluntarily pass it on, although this caused excruciating pain. The traitor, listening to Zhuan, was now finally convinced that the victim was smart. Therefore, by jumping in his direction, the traitor wanted to quickly kill him for the benefit of his older brother. But suddenly someone stops his magical deadly blade with his bare hand. The villain was shocked by this turn of events. After all, he could not even imagine that this hand holding his blade would instantly be covered with dark armor. It was the hand of Li Xuan, 
who, being enraged, began to show his true abilities that exceeded his normal cultivation level. Suddenly, there was a terrible loud explosion in the place where the guys were fighting. The traitor immediately began to fly back from the strong, explosive blow. He couldn't even imagine that Xuan also had a legendary level pet companion. Therefore, he was finally convinced that the respected young master Xuan also had dirty secrets. Li Xuan being completely covered in the legendary armor and appearing right in front of the villain told him that he was not like him. They would never use such a terrible method. He was going to execute the villain for his treacherous and bad deeds. Sitting directly in front of Zhuan, the traitor understood that if he remained inactive, he would die. Therefore, without thinking twice, he begins to run away from him with the hope that he will still save his life from a powerful warrior. However, the major, looking at the guy, I didn't want to let him go so easily, so he immediately ran after him. At the same moment, the main character, being behind the guys, realized that they ran exactly in the direction where the terrible skeleton monster was located. Zhou Wan didn't know how to stop them because they didn't care about his words. Suddenly behind him, a second wounded comrade turns to him, who was unhappy that the hero stood still and did not help Zhuan. However, Zhou Wan was not going to make excuses for him, so he directly told the injured one to go first. These words angered the guy even more because he considered the main character to be a simple coward hiding behind strangers. Therefore, he was the first to decide to rush to Brother Xuan's aid. Zhou Wen, being in a motionless position, understood that now he could not help him in any way, even if he followed them. He also understood very well that Li Xuan and Zhang Hao had legendary level companions unlike him. Therefore, he was completely convinced that they would definitely die if they came face to face with this monster. However, his conscience still bothered him because he could not help Xuan. Suddenly, he has a new idea which he immediately begins to implement. The main character was sure that he could only do it if he found a way to defeat the skeleton general. Transferred into the game, his game appearance immediately appeared before the main monster of this location, when suddenly the skeleton general notices him, who, without wasting a moment, begins to close the distance between the hero and him in order to quickly kill the guy. Zhou Wen, being confused, realized that he would not be able to escape. Therefore, he believed that running away was pointless, as soon as he starts to strike, he will immediately become a corpse. Suddenly, the skeleton general, approaching the guy as close as possible, begins to attack him. However, the main character manages to evade the first and second attacks of the monster. The skeleton general was not going to let the guy go, so he continued his attacks, trying to hit him with his magical, deadly blade. He tried to take advantage of the opportunity by attacking quickly with his sword, but the hero was still able to dodge this attack. Without thinking twice, the hero continued to dodge and move around the monster in order to explore as much as possible about the weak points of the skeleton. Zhou Wan continued to evade, looked at the phone screen and was convinced of his ideas that had happened earlier. Suddenly a very eerie energy appears above him. Zhou Wan immediately realized that they had already encountered this terrible monster. Meanwhile, he was already killed in the game. The main character, putting the phone in his pocket, understood that he no longer had a choice, so he would have to act. Judging by this battle, the general was very strong. But it seemed to him that there was a blind spot next to his horse where he could strike. Therefore, the main character immediately ran to the rescue, with hopes that he would still have a chance to win if he took advantage of this opportunity. Wandering in the middle of a ruined area, Zhou Wan realized that he was already approaching the battle site. When suddenly he notices the guys in front of him, the hero immediately ran up to the guys, who were surprised that the guy had been running towards them for so long. However, Li Xuan was not doing well. After all, in front of them was the skeleton general himself on his horse. Zhou Wan saw his virtual enemy in reality and was shocked. After all, the skeleton was too different from the image in the game. Behind the main enemy of the hero was their fellow traitor, who obediently watched everything that was happening from the side. The main character was at a loss why the traitor could stand so freely behind the skeleton general, because he believed that the monster did not spare anyone from the human race. But still carefully looking at the traitor's shoulder, he assumed that it was because of his armor. Zhou analyzed the enemy's equipment and realized that Li Xuan's elder brother really wanted his younger brother to die here. Suddenly the skeleton general begins to say something quietly and then suddenly starts running towards the guys. To protect his comrades, Li Xuan stands in front of the main character to take the blow of a terrible monster with your shield. Suddenly the skeleton's spear and the guy's shield collide with each other. This causes a terrible explosion and a surge of black energy. 
Through a strong gust of dark energy, one of the guys is blown away by a strong wind, but the main character remains in place. Zhou Wen, standing still, was very surprised that his comrade was so easily blown away so far by one stream of wind. The guy, being in serious condition, asked the hero not to think about him, but rather to help Li Xuan, who continued to stand in place, holding back the damned terrible spear of the skeleton. Li Xuan had no intention of retreating. He was ready to stand to the last against the monster in order to at least somehow protect his comrades. But suddenly a magical snake of a traitor appears behind him, which he manages to hold back with his second hand. Li Xuan was completely blocked by this and waited for the traitor to try to kill him. The traitor, at this moment, concentrating his energy, I wanted to see how long Zhuan could hold out alone against the two of them. Having completed full preparation for the battle, the villain immediately begins to attack the armored guy, to whom he immediately hits his helmet with his fist. At the same moment, Zhou Wen, watching all this from the side, understood that if this attack continued, Li Xuan would definitely die. Therefore, he was ready to detain the monster so that the major could easily deal with Zhang Hao. Li Xuan, fighting off two enemies at once, answered the main character that he needed two minutes. After all, he was sure that two minutes would be enough. The traitor did not panic at all from the guy's words, because he did not believe that a mortal could defeat the skeleton general. So he was sure that they would both die at his hands. However, Zhou Wen, realizing that he had very little time, immediately took a fighting stance to quickly accelerate towards the main monster of this location. Once he was behind the monster's dead horse, he immediately began teasing the skeleton so that it would react to him and let Li Xuan go. The monster saw the hero. He immediately turned to face him in order to unleash all his demonic power on the mortal man. He didn't want to drag out time, so he immediately started attacking the guy, which safely dodged the monster's attacks. Zhou Wen, dodging the deadly attacks of the monster, smiled, because for him it was all almost no different from a game. Rejoicing at his successes in battle, the main character completely forgot about fighting. Therefore, he did not notice how a horse's hoof appeared right in front of him, piercing even a stone with its blow. Zhou Wen, looking at the hoof strike, realized that he needed to beware of it even more than the skeleton spear. When suddenly the monster's spear almost hits the main character, the guy took advantage of the situation and began to run away from the monster. While dodging the attacks, he noticed that in the game of the skeleton general, the attacks were formulaic and predictable, but the real general was more dexterous. Noticing the next attack, he rests on his hand, and then he miraculously dodges and slips through the monster's terrible blade. At the same moment, he concentrated his blow to apply directly under the rib of a demonic skeleton horse. However, the protagonist's miraculously executed attack did not even cause a scratch on the monster's body. While the hero was fighting with the skeleton general, his comrade stood aside who was quite surprised that Zhou was able to detain the general even without a pet companion. But not only the hero's comrade was surprised, but also the traitor who fought against the armored Zhuan. As soon as Xuan noticed that his opponent was distracted, he immediately dealt a crushing blow directly to the scoundrel's head. However, the guy miraculously was able to withstand this blow. His spirit seemed unshakable, so he was ready to continue fighting with the armored enemy in order to delay him until the monster dealt with the main character. Li Xuan did not want to talk to the traitor for a long time, so he immediately began to attack him. Let's not allow him to fight against two people at the same time again. Continuing to attack the scoundrel, Li Xuan realized that he had to destroy this strange armor that protects the traitor from all his powerful attacks. Having hit the weak point of the armor, the traitor immediately began coughing up blood. Realizing that he would soon end, he grabbed his blade with his hand to push back and summon an explosive scaled snake. However, Li Xuan was not afraid of this. He was completely sure that his opponent would soon end, so the traitor just wanted to detain him. But suddenly, the villain finds himself right behind Zhou Wen, who at that moment did not even suspect that a new danger had appeared behind him, threatening to kill him. But not only the traitor attacked the guy at that second, but also the skeleton general. Li Xuan, being on the sidelines, was completely sure that the hero was already finished. But suddenly, Zhou Wen dodges two deadly attacks at once, sliding right into the balance of the guy's life. While the main character was dodging, he did not waste time, because his main goal was to find a weak point and attack it. Which is exactly what the guy did, hitting his fist right at the traitor. His fist was completely covered by the companion pet. Therefore, the skeleton general immediately noticed this, and he immediately attacked the guy with his deadly spear, 
piercing him right through, pulling the weapon back. The rattling, explosive snake began to scream all over in pain. After all, this attack was carried out not against the main character, but directly against the bastard, whose armor was completely destroyed. Due to the complete destruction of the armor, a rattlesnake was released, which is immediately crushed by someone's huge foot. This leg belonged to Li Xuan, who was standing right in front of the traitor. At the same moment, a very strong flow of energy appeared away from the guys, emanating directly from the skeleton general. After all, the monster was very angry that he had lost his comrade who was so easily trampled into the dirt. The guys, watching the behavior of the monster, understood that now the monster was simply furious. The demon, accumulating its cold, deadly energy, did not want to leave anyone alive. Therefore, he immediately began to attack the guys. When attacking the guys, he wanted to first unleash his cold, deadly energy directly on the main character standing right in front of him. Zhou Wen, measuring the speed of the demon's attack, did not want to run away, so he simply covered himself with his hands. But suddenly, Li Xuan appears in front of him, who repels a deadly attack from the main character. His hand was almost destroyed. The hero, looking at her, realized that the knight in black armor had almost reached his limit. At the same moment, the skeleton general was not going to stop attacking because he also understood the situation the guys were in. However, the guys were not going to give up, so Zhuan decided to distract the monster and Zhou Wen to find a way to deliver a fatal blow. The armored knight immediately stopped the monster's attack in order to hinder its movement. Convinced of safety, Zhuan asked the main character to move quickly. After all, he understood that they would all die here. Therefore, Zhou Wen immediately jumped high, concentrating a fatal blow in his fist. Immediately, he was ready to strike his fiery blow. Therefore, without wasting any time, he immediately unleashed all his power on the monster. Because of this, a terrible, loud explosion occurred around the guys. The dust rising from a strong explosion enveloped the entire circle in an instant. But suddenly, a skeleton general emerged from her, who was completely intact and unharmed. There wasn't even a scratch on him from the hero's strongest blow. Zhou Wen wiped the sweat on his face with his hand and thought it would work. Suddenly, the monster attacks the main character, who has already successfully dodged the deadly attack. But Li Xuan had no intention of running away, so he restrained the monster's movements again. Let's try again. Try to suddenly attack the monster together with Zhou. Multiple blows immediately overtook the skeleton. Because of this, the reaction with dark energy provoked a terrible explosion around the monster. The guys attacked the monster together so many times, but there was not a single crack on it. Suddenly, Zhou Wen realized how they could win. There was a crack on the skeleton's skull, which made it clear to the guys what to do next. They no longer had any choice but to take one last risk. Li Xuan, having thrown the main character, threw himself right under the horse's feet to distract the skeleton general. And at that moment, the hero himself was flying from the sky straight towards the monster. The skeleton immediately saw through the guy's plan, so he decided to first destroy Li Xuan by swinging his sword. However, everything went exactly according to the guy's plan. Zhuan, in a polo-armored state, again fetters the monster's sword to give Zhou Wen one last chance to deal a fatal blow to the main monster of this event. The main character, gathering all his strength into one fist, cut through the skull of the skeleton with it, because of which the monster's body immediately began to crumble. And then it completely exploded and was covered in terrible flames. Zhou Wen, watching the destruction of his main enemy, exhaled with relief in his soul. After all, the monster's body disappeared as it moved, which meant that this was the end of a difficult and bloody battle. Having completely crumbled, a golden egg appeared on the dead ashes of the skeleton. The main character immediately crouched down to take it and take a closer look. It was an egg with a pet companion. While Zhou Wen was looking at his new trophy, Li Xuan quietly approached him, who was surprised by the egg because it was real luck. However, Zhuan looked for a few seconds and immediately turned around. He didn't care about him, so he asked the hero to keep this egg for himself. After all, he understood that if it were not for Zhou Wen, he was afraid that he and Miantu would already be dead. Therefore, he asked the hero to simply accept this as gratitude for the fact that everything was resolved so successfully. Zhou Wen, after listening to his comrade, was ready to happily take him for himself. However, before the hero wanted to use it, Li Xuan had to warn him that now Zhou Wen was a mortal, so it would not be possible to hatch a legendary level egg. But suddenly, Zhuan notices a companion on the hero's hand. This provoked him to ask another question. He was very interested in how the main character got his companion. But the guy didn't try to hide anything. 
so he immediately answered that his companion was of the mortal class. Typically, legendary level creatures are stronger than mortal level creatures, but the weaker the creature, the more difficult it is for it to form an egg. According to Li Xuan, this meant that eggs with mortal level companions were much less common than legendary ones. Therefore, he was jealous of Zhou Wan because he considered him lucky. Suddenly, the hero wonders what they will do with Zhang Hao because his body was just lying here. Li Xuan, picking his finger in his ear, asked the guy not to worry because he believed that it was not their fault. He took the surprised protagonist by the shoulder and he said that when they get out of here, he can safely apply to any university. Xuan was ready to ensure that he was accepted. After this, the three of the guys returned back from the portal to the real world, where Li Xuan explained to the teacher what happened to him in that world. After this, the rich man began to say goodbye to the main character, because their ordeal had come to an end. Returning home, Zhou Wen was completely lost in thought. He was cold, so he thought that he had developed anemia due to heavy blood loss. When suddenly he trips over something with his foot, it was a recumbent man who was lying motionless right in the middle of the street. Zhou Wen was shocked by this because he thought it was a corpse. But fortunately, he noticed that the man was still showing signs of life. The man immediately sat down in front of the guy. He assured the hero that everything was fine with him. It's just that the old illness came back to haunt me. As soon as the main character was convinced of the man's condition, he immediately decided to leave unless the stranger wanted to say something else. However, the man asked the guy to stay because he believed that their meeting was the will of fate, so he asked to talk to him. The hero, in turn, replied that he was not very good at conversations. This even made the stranger a little happy because he just wanted to ask the guy a few questions. Due to a strong, incessant cough, he could not say a word. Therefore, the hero did not want to wait for him for a long time, which is why he asked the man to ask questions faster when suddenly a stranger immediately asks him about the size of a woman's breasts. This question surprised Zhou Wan a little, so he began to imagine girls with different breast sizes. Imagining his imagination, he still decides on his choice and says that he liked the little one better. This answer immediately pleased the stranger because their choices coincided. Excited by the guy's answer, there was no stopping him, the man continued and continued talking about girls and boys. However, Zhou Wan did not make his decision according to the same criteria as the stranger. The main thing for him was that if the chest is too large, it is much more difficult to maintain balance during the fight. While Zhou Wen was pondering his decision, the man immediately asked him a second question regarding which girl he liked more, gentle or daring. This question made Zhou Wan think, after all, he could not fully understand what these questions were all about. He could not understand that if he continued to say what the stranger wanted to hear, so he believed that this chatter would never end. How he wanted to quickly return home to wash, change clothes, eat and play. But after that, he still decided to answer this question, turning away from the man a little. This answer made the stranger a little nervous, but suddenly his eyes sparkled because he believed that the two of them were simply soulmates. After all, he believed that it was precisely such women who interested and fascinated. He could not at all expect that at such a young age, the hero already understood women so well. Zhou Wen was already covering his face from this chatter. After all, he didn't understand who would even choose such a girl. At this moment, he was just thinking about An Jing, who was his younger sister, who beat him up as soon as she saw him. Meanwhile, the man happily continued to tell the guy that he was a rare exhibit that had such a rare selection. However, the main character began to get tired of this stupid chatter, so he invited the man to accompany him home. These words alarmed the stranger a little. Therefore, he extended his hand under his clothes, pretended that he had not heard the guy's words, and continued to say that the body was the main thing that was needed to conquer the girl. He believed that the hero had so little chi and vitality that even his good taste could not help him. Having finished speaking, he held out a certain note. The man felt how Zhou Wen was angry with him, Therefore, he suggested that he improve his method of cultivating spiritual power. The guy took the note in his hands and began to unfold it because he was very interested in the method of cultivating spiritual power. The man, in turn, enthusiastically assured the guy that he just needed to figure it out. He guaranteed that with his help, he could make any problematic woman absolutely submissive. Continuing to hold the note in his hand, the guy implied that it was written about the method of cultivating spiritual power by conquering women. Therefore, his assumptions forced him to refuse such a valuable gift 
because he assured the stranger that he had used a different method. This answer from the hero upset the man. However, he still gathered his emotions and continued to say that even though the heavenly demon treatise was not a first-class technique, but it was significantly superior to meditation through suffering. These words shocked Zhou Wen, because he could not understand how the unfamiliar man knew that he was cultivating using this method. The stranger, in turn, told the guy that he looked like he had very little vitality, but his body was strong and healthy. Therefore, he assumed that this was what was achieved by meditation through suffering. He was pleased that the main character had just begun. According to the stranger, if he doesn't stop doing this nonsense, she will simply destroy the guy. Therefore, with a smile on his face, he asked him to take it because this method was a hundred times better. However, the hero answered no again. This guy's decision did not stop the man, so he began to insist even more. Zhou Wen, despite the man's various persuasion, did not want to take it. After all, they had just met by chance, so he could not understand how he could accept such a valuable gift. Moreover, he had never heard of the Heavenly Demon Treatise. The guy believed that if it was a lie, then the stranger was just a scammer. But if it was true, then the man was going to give such a valuable thing to the man he had just met. Therefore, it was then difficult for the hero to say what was really on the man's mind. As soon as Zhou Wen turned around completely and was about to go home, the man immediately became serious. With complete seriousness, he ordered the guy to stop. Because of this, the main character was shocked because he could not move his body at all. When suddenly his body flew back up on its own and it landed again right in front of the sitting man. The mood and eye color of the stranger changed dramatically. He told the main character with a rough voice that none of those who refused him, Jing Daoxian, survived. Zhou Wen began to think about what the name Jing Daoxian meant because this name was very familiar to him when suddenly his look began to look frightened because he remembered that this name was written down in the history books. During the greatest chaos due to an interdimensional storm, the most cold-blooded and bloodthirsty man in history was born. It was a demon that washed the commonwealth in blood. He killed 27 heroes who had reached the epic class, one after another. As soon as Jing Daoxian stood up, the main character immediately fell to the ground. This legendary name made the guy instantly want to take his note again. However, the demon did not believe the guy, because even though he said that he agreed, his heart screamed, I don't want to learn this demon's skill. Zhou Wen didn't understand what kind of nonsense the demon was talking about. The hero understood that if he mastered this skill, the commonwealth would want to arrest him for his connection with the demon king. At that very moment, the demon agreed with the guy's words, but he decided to tell him that even if he gave it up, Zhou Wen would still not be able to train, but suddenly he remembers something. This something was that he had another method, a very interesting one. He held an incomprehensible object in his hand, which he immediately reached out to the main character to invite him to take it. However, the demon insisted on making a decision, and therefore he himself forcibly put this object into the guy's hands. With eerie energy and a look, he ordered the guy to take her, otherwise he would not have another chance. So as soon as he let go of his gift, the Demon King immediately turned around and began to walk away from the main character. He did not stop and did not look back, because of which his appearance began to disappear more and more in the evening lights of the city. As soon as the demon moved to a safe distance, Zhou Wen's body immediately returned to his full control. The guy looked into the distance, hoping that the Demon King would not watch him from afar. Looking at the gift of a stranger, the main character understood that he had no other choice but to accept this gift. Squeezing an unfamiliar object a little tighter, he suddenly sneezed. Which is why he started running. Because he completely forgot that he had to return home first. Suddenly, strange people passed by him. They immediately interested the guy. After all, he understood that these strangers were people from the Commonwealth. Zhou Wen, watching motionless, realized that they were looking for Jing Dioxian. But he felt that this did not concern him so he immediately continued on his way home. Returning home to the warmth, he immediately took a shower. Drying himself with a towel, Zhou Wen recalled that first he survived the assassination attempt on Li Xuan, and now he met the legendary villain. But he just wanted to play games in peace. The guy didn't know exactly what this method was, a blessing or a curse. But still, he decided not to burden himself before bed, because he had so many burdens that day, so he just lay down on the bed. When suddenly his heart began to beat strangely, and his body began to sink towards the reaching demonic hands that wanted to grab him, 
Having dropped quite deeply, these hands began to completely envelop the guy, which causes him to immediately wake up screaming and completely sweating. The guy immediately got out of bed and started running to the toilet. Sitting down next to him, he did not understand what was happening to him. He was covered in sweat and his face looked completely exhausted. Suddenly he notices something next to him. This was precisely the gift from the demon king with whom something began to happen. The guy immediately took this box and started shaking it. However, nothing happened to it. So he believed that there was nothing unusual in this box. Therefore, for a second, Zhou Wan thought that it was indeed due to anemia. Events are postponed to the morning. As soon as the first morning rays of the sun appeared in the guy's room, he immediately stood up. While washing his face, he looked at himself in the mirror and realized that clarity of consciousness had returned and the discomfort had almost disappeared. He believed that since he woke up anyway, it was fashionable to play. Sitting down on the bed, he bit his finger. To smear your blood on the screen. Because of this action, an ancient imperial city immediately appeared in the game. But suddenly, Joe Wan saw something on the phone and was surprised. After all, the skeleton general appeared before him in the game again. So the guy was surprised that he was still here. He thought that, apparently, the monsters were from the game. And in reality, they did not influence each other in any way. This wonderful news made the main character happy. After all, he will just be able to try once again to defeat this monster alone. The skeleton general did not stand still. So in response, he began to attack the hero, because of which the guy died immediately and ended the game. This game defeat really upset the guy, because he understood that this boss was much weaker than the real one. But without the resilience of a knight in black armor, he can only defeat the general if he calculates every move. But in any case, there were still a few days before the results were announced, so he wanted to use this time to try to kill the general. But he didn't know how much blood he would have to spend on this. Having searched on the internet how to quickly restore blood, he realized that it was too difficult. So he decided he would just drink water with brown sugar. Joe Wen also realized that it was better to die less often in the game. However, he understood that he had to shop first before playing. The main character immediately got dressed and he went to the store to buy groceries that would restore his strength. Returning home, he immediately lay down on the bed and began to play, trying to defeat the monster. Meanwhile, the mountain of garbage only grew. Meanwhile, the hero fought and dodged the attacks of the skeleton general. Taking advantage of the moment, Zhou Wen finally reached the monster's skull with his blade. Once he finally defeated the long-awaited monster, a spatial crystal appeared in front of him. The main character happily began to absorb his reward. Having completed the procedure, it seemed strange to him that it should have increased to 13. The guy assumed that 9 was the limit for a mortal who used meditation through suffering, and he thought that he could reach the legendary class with her help. Remembering the words he had previously heard from Jing Daoxian, the guy was convinced that meditation through suffering cannot be compared with natural invulnerability, but still he could not understand where he could find a higher class method. When suddenly he remembers something, Zhou Wan immediately turned on the computer because his father asked An Jing to give it to him. Plugging the flash drive into the computer, the hero hoped that this was just what he needed. However, the guy joked about himself because he didn't believe that his father had this. Suddenly, a folder called Shooting at the Sun appears on the monitor screen. This surprised the main character very much. The main character understood perfectly well that the bow called Shooting at the Sun was no different from other items, and thanks to it, a person was able to easily get an epic class or even higher. This bow had a main specialization for attacks with arrows, but the requirements for use were distinguished by their less cruelty in contrast to the skill of natural invulnerability. Joe Wan, sitting at the computer, could not understand where his father got the item passed on as the family heritage of a powerful commonwealth. Thoughts like how successful it was to contact the Ann family never left the protagonist's head. In Joe Wan's mind, his father put a lot of effort into getting something very interesting, but the guy instantly dispelled such thoughts, considering his father to be not that kind of person at all, and simply exhaled with ease. Several minutes passed, and the main character was unable to contain his curiosity and not call his father. He could not understand why his son needed to call at such a late hour. The old man, smoking a cigarette, picked up the pipe and asked what was the matter. In response, I heard a simply shocking question from the main character regarding the integrity of his limbs. Such a question made me get terribly scared and let out a cigarette from my mouth. On the other side, Joe Wan listened to the screams of his father, 
who did not understand why his own son was trying to curse him, and this behavior of the old man made it clear that everything was absolutely fine with him. Having finished talking about his father's health, the main character turned to the old man, wanting to talk about a very serious matter. Father simply ordered to talk about what happened quickly, because he knew well that Joe One would not simply call. First of all, the main character asked the old man about a subject called shooting at the sun. This question made his father think a little, and Joe One expected a precise answer. Only on the phone there was a counter question regarding the misunderstanding of what this subject even is. The words he heard made the main character worry, because according to An Jing, it was the father who handed over this item. The old man himself was never interested in cultivation and did not keep such things, so he told his son about it directly. Zhou Wen was slightly upset, realizing that his father didn't even worry about him and didn't try to help him with cultivation at all. And Jing's words drove the main character into a complete lack of understanding of the whole situation, and over time everything only became more confusing. These cases seemed to the old man to be An Jing's usual attempt to give the guy a gift from himself. When suddenly the old man saw that his son, without listening to him, hung up and didn't even say goodbye properly. Immediately after this, the man relaxed, wanting to help his son a little by finding the required information. During this period of time, the main character was lying in his room, thinking about his father's good relationship with the An family, not even paying attention to the problems his son had with these people. Closing his eyes a little, the guy tried to understand why An Jing gave him a gift, although she had previously treated him badly. Considering it stupid to use such a method of perfection, Zhou Wen closed his eyes and simply fell asleep peacefully. A little time passed from the moment the guy fell asleep, and during his sleep he felt an inexplicable origin of power near his heart. The energy enveloping the heart flew around the face of the protagonist feeling pain. This was not the first time that the main character had dreams like this, and each time he felt as if he was drowning in water. The hands of an unknown creature were constantly around, trying to drown the guy with all his might. Most hands went to Zhou Wen's throat, and this caused him to show fear of the unprecedented. Over time, there were a lot of hands, and they easily closed the eyes of the main character. Waking up from a terrible dream, the guy first vomited and, in order to come to his senses, washed himself with cold water. The main character held onto his clothes with all his might, realizing that everything was happening due to the fault of the demon Jing Daoxian. Frozen in one position in the middle of the bathroom, the guy tried to find a way to get rid of such dreams. After thinking for a long time, the words of the old man came to the head of the main character for his interesting way. Without wasting any time, Zhou Wen took out the little thing he received from the old man. Having looked at this little thing, the main character expected that all health problems would instantly disappear when using the item, and at the same time he could not completely trust the old man's words. The young man had no choice but to simply open the book inside, which contained manuscripts with strange lighting. What he saw inside this book shocked the main character too much. All the magic put into writing the book spread around itself and began to glow stronger. Zhou Wan read without distraction and tried to find exactly the required information. The little book easily covered the guy's room with spiritual energy. The main character himself managed to understand how the connection between qi energy and the human body appears. These notes seemed really useful to the hero as an introduction to the cultivation method. After a few seconds of thinking, everything was interrupted by the rumbling of the protagonist's stomach. Having laid down on the bed, the guy himself was surprised at how much time had passed since the beginning of reading the manuscripts. But Joe was not going to just lie in one place and first decided to eat to maintain the right lifestyle. As expected, he ate well and felt better than after a terrible dream. Having completed ordinary things, the main character wanted to quickly return to reading the book, and suddenly he forgot something very important. As it turned out, the important detail was the place where the guy stopped while reading, and he tried to remember for a long time. A lot of time had passed since trying to find the exact stopping place, and the main character wanted to just start reading everything from the very beginning. Returning to the room, Joe Wan sat down on the bed and at the same time held a book with inscriptions in his hands. His face changed significantly for the worse. The hero looked carefully at the manuscript, not understanding only one thing. All the words written inside seemed new to the main character, and it was as if he had never seen them. The guy felt a strange sensation. It's impossible to easily forget what you read if you have an excellent memory. At this rate, the young man began to read everything from the first line, 
pronouncing the words out loud in order to better remember. Suddenly, he became worried about the light that could not be turned off in the kitchen and was completely distracted from his main goal. Similar questions continued to come to him for a long time, and he tried for a long time to remember. In the end, he managed to remember that the light had not been turned on at all, and he without any electronic lighting. Looking back at the book, Joe Wan again forgot what he had recently read. The young man decided to gather his strength by breathing a lot of air into his lungs. The guy's eyes instantly lit up with determination and purposefulness in learning. Almost all attention fell on the first pages where a lot of information about cultivation was written. But for some reason, all the images instantly blurred and the main character could hardly see anything. The young man could only hold his head in complete incomprehension why every time he had to be distracted by every little thing. Before the guy's eyes, uncertainty gradually appeared regarding the possibility of remembering what he had read and not forgetting at the same second. But Joe Wen was very persistent and was not going to stop after a couple of failures. And the guy concentrated better than before. In order not to forget the text of the book, the guy just wanted to rewrite everything on a piece of paper and then learn it. This idea failed immediately after the main character picked up the pen and prepared to write. After the first failure, the young man decided to photograph the book, thinking that it would be much easier. Only the phone camera did not recognize the text of the manuscripts at all. The lost Sutra of Immortality seemed very strange to the main character because of any reasons to forget everything. Joe Wan calculated all the dangers of leaving the book somewhere far from himself because he could simply remain forever with nightmares tormenting him every night. While he was thinking, someone started calling on the phone and the main character reached out with his hand to take it. Looking at the phone first, the main character noticed that the caller's number was not displayed as in the recorded ones. The caller turned out to be Li Xuan, who was interested in the future of the protagonist and his choice of the next university. Zhou Wan himself easily forgot about announcing the results and just played games all day long. Li Xuan inquired about the desire of the protagonist to join the same university as himself. According to the results, Zhou Wan was ranked second right behind Li Xuan, and so he invited his friend to join him in enrolling. Li Xuan spoke for a long time about Xiang University and how well they teach beginners there. And while the acquaintance was talking endlessly, the main character was simply in the room, recalling several previously received information about this university. According to the stories of many people, it was known that an interspatial area contained a sufficient number of interesting resources or monsters. Some of the memories made the main character worry and freeze in one position. What was shocking for the guy was not the learning difficulties at all but the fact that Siang was under the sphere of influence of the An family. Hours and days passed from the moment of the conversation. The main character continued to play without leaving home and without thinking about any nonsense. Simply, right in the game, the battle was in full swing when the enemy was chasing the character in order to end the battle with one blow. The flying creature moved quickly despite its size, which was several times different from a human. In a couple of seconds, the main character collected fire energy preparing to launch it at the attacking enemy. The attempt to wound was unsuccessful when the creature dodged to the side of the beam of magic. After fighting for a long time, Joe Wan simply lost, and his character was cut into two parts. In the real world, the main character did not understand at all why he could not eliminate such creatures, even having advanced further than before. The guy was literally getting sleep deprivation thinking about a plan of revenge against an enemy with such a large arsenal of skills. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door and attracted Zhou Wen's attention. The guy, tired of playing, opened the door, first of all, inquiring who was behind it. This person was a joyful Li Xuan waving to his friend. It was just early morning on the street, and the appearance of a friend became strange for the main character. Without having time to say anything, Zhou Wen saw his friend enter the apartment without asking and begin to inspect everything. The main character followed Li Xuan around the dirty apartment asking him why he came because he asked for a little time to think about the proposal to enter the university. In order to stop Zhou Wen from asking questions, Li Xuan gave a piece of paper, asking him to carefully look at what was written inside. These notes seemed completely incomprehensible to the guy, and he continued to ask what he was reading. It was then that he managed to find out that he now holds secret data from the university where he offered to enroll. Next, Li Xuan pointed his finger at a place where he should look more closely. The picture Li Xuan showed showed the shape of the spatial beings of the internal organs. 
Li Xuan was directly burning with interest to see such creatures with his own eyes and investigate the intergovernmental areas of Xiang. Only then he heard a question from Zhou Wen, which felt like a blow to the head with a stone. Li Xuan became angry at such words and began to shout at the top of his voice, explaining how difficult it is to encounter such a phenomenon that people cannot even dream of. Based on everything he saw, the main character just had to agree with his friend and appreciate useful creatures as best as possible. Zhou Wan closed his eyes, understanding everything perfectly, but he could not react in any other way to the data received due to extreme fatigue. Li Xuan revealed the secret of why he wants to enter Xiang University, namely because the area where the monsters are located was accessible to university students and no one else. He sat down on the bed, mentioning the limitation in the number of applicants in comparison with those wishing to do so. The main character silently pondered what to do and whether it was necessary to act according to his friend's wishes. Zhou Wen, upon completion of his thoughts, decided to go for admission with the hope of avoiding the An family. All hope that they would not have to meet was destroyed by Li Xuan by mentioning that this year there were admissions from the An family. A good friend looked at the main character, asking him about his manifestations of fear at the moment when he had to hear the names of unpleasant people. Zhou closed his eyes and averted suspicion from himself as if he were not at all afraid of meeting old acquaintances. To fully prove his intention, the main character asked to wait until he wrote an application to the university. They looked at each other and Li Xuan did not understand at all why he needed to wait for an answer. Therefore, Li Xuan initially arrived in a personal car to the main character and was going to go with him to the right place. At this moment, right at the special base, several observers found records from Xiang Jun Street. They carefully looked at every detail and looked for data about all the people seen on the recording. The girl with red hair caught the attention of the main character who was there, and believing that he could somehow have contact with the person they were looking for, the girl ordered to immediately find Joe. A couple of hours passed when the main character and his friend crossed an area where all sorts of dangerous things happen. They drove at full speed without stopping for trifles happening around. Joe Wan himself looked out the window because of the boring trip that takes a lot of time because you need to go around every interdimensional hole. The guy was incredibly bored because each playthrough in the game took a lot of blood, and in addition, he could not advance further. Joe Wan looked at his silent friend and thought about what else he could do during the trip. In order to shorten the time, the main character decided to get some sleep, but suddenly he opened his eyes and started sweating. The young man was well aware of the danger of sleeping and getting sleep paralysis while he was inside the car. The main character felt inexplicable fatigue and pain in his head. All this seemed to him as if he had a fever or worse. For some reason, he remembered the words of Jing Daoxian for the story about the body, which is the main key in conquering every girl. The hero realized that the old man was right and prepared to take care of his health by playing less games until he got better. Some of Jing Daoxian's words offended the guy, and he began to curse him. Only the memories of the image of a smiling old man remained in his head. The main character was going to beat the old man at the first meeting, and for this he was going to become stronger. Suddenly, all thoughts were interrupted by a strange feeling distracting from other problems. Feeling an eerily familiar sensation, the guy began checking his pockets in search of the root of the manifestation of the feeling. In the pocket where the hero put his hand, lay the old man's manuscript, and the guy, without stopping, tried to get it out. When the book was opened a little, it began to glow with a bright light. The Lost Sutra of Immortality was written in the largest letters right on the book, and this is precisely what became incomprehensible to the main character. To make sure his actions were safe, Zhou Wen looked at the comrades who were traveling with him. The main character wondered if this was something bad because he had absolutely nothing to do. Thanks to the book, the hero was going to shorten the trip time and wanted to read a little. It took a lot of time to read all the pages in the book. Each page contained information different from the previous ones. Suddenly, in a spiritual state, all the energy that had escaped from the book gathered inside the main character's body and began to saturate him. A little later, the entire book was incinerated in Zhou Wen's hands and disappeared into thin air. The main character sat all sad and could not say anything or simply react to the disappearance of the book. He looked at the hand, trying to understand why the lost sutra of immortality disappeared before it had time to fully open. Everything that happened seemed like some kind of dream to Zhou Wan. And he thought about it for a long time, trying to find the real truth. But unexpectedly for the guy, 
he found himself in the spiritual world where he was surrounded by a magic circle from all the words he had read earlier. The main character came across a picture that made him completely shocked and forget about problems less important than what happened. A magical essence formed right in front of the guy's face, which gathered at one point and thus became many times stronger. The magic that emerged from the darkness took the form of a blossoming, fiery flower. Some time passed for the young man to quickly check the cultivation characteristics. With a serious look, the main character gathered the surrounding force into his palm. Still, Joe was depressed by the fact that the characteristics panel had changed, and the technique of meditation through all suffering was no longer available to him. The main character looked carefully at the phone, not knowing what the technique from the Immortality Sutra was. But it was because of this book that he managed to advance in his strength level and some other skills. Joe was glad with all his heart that he had overcome the limit set for mortals and felt a little sorry for Jing Daoxian, who would have to fight him. After a certain period of time, the guys managed to get to the final point of the trip. When the main character got out of the car, he first heard his friend's desire to stay in this place until the start of his first classes. Standing right at the foot of the huge building, Zhou Wen was once again convinced of how rich Li Xuan is and how much money he has on hand. When the guys entered the house, the very first thing the main character noticed was the lack of workers who should clean such a large building. Li Xuan stuck out his hand with a drink, confirming the words of the protagonist. While drinking the drink, Joe did not at all believe in the veracity of his friend's words, because from birth he was a spoiled child, incapable of cleaning even his own room. Suddenly, Li Xuan received a call from a person with whom he had been communicating for a long time about the opening of a new hotel and many other topics to discuss. A little later, Li put the phone in his pocket and simply stood with his back to the main character. Zhou's calm drinking of drinks interrupted his words, as if the person Li was talking to was still pretending even though he had already been exposed. Li Xuan prepared to go to his elder brother soon and was ready to play by his rules. After the owner of the house left, the building was completely empty, and there was only one main character left inside who wanted to rest a little. Zhou Wen went to the room given to him by Li and prepared to do a little personal business. The guy let go of his clothes and threw them straight to the floor. Instantly, he began to work out the force of the blow in order to bring his body back to normal and prepare for the upcoming fights. Spiritual energy surged around the fist at that moment. The main character examined his hand, assessing how large the amplitude of movement was in the previous blow and this blow was significantly different from the inch blow technique. The use of such attacks too limited the chance of defeating flying ants that dodged a faster attack. The guy was completely immersed in thinking about how to win and what techniques to use for this. Despite all his thoughts, Joe Wen had the idea to hit the skeleton with his palm skill. The main character's hand gave off steam just by using skills that had not previously been used in training. The guy stood at the entrance, not realizing there really was a chance that the equipment would turn out to be working and could harm the ant. Without wasting time, the main character hit with a skill that carried a splash of air and other natural components. The skill lasted quite a long time and progressed practically throughout the entire area of the room. Joe thought for a long time about what to do because he was able to combine two good skills and did not waste a long time in using them. The guy endlessly continued to strike the air in order to increase their strength. A lot of time passed. Due to multiple repetitions of training, the main character, exhausted, sat on the floor wondering why technology so depletes a person's spiritual strength. Forgetting the promise he made to himself, Joe Wen decided to test the power of the skill inside the game and again used a piece of blood. In a couple of seconds, he was transported inside the game where he found himself on some surface. As it turned out, it was a mutant wild ant that got angry when a person appeared on its back. The ant first of all attacked the guy who had lost almost all spiritual strength, training to deliver precise blows. The main character barely managed to dodge the beam of energy flying at him and move back a little. By a little spiritual strength began to be restored and all thanks to the lost Sutra of Immortality, which is based on the acceleration of the arrival of vital forces. Right after the appearance of powers, the main character concentrated compatible equipment on the enemy's body and attacked faster than before. This blow was followed by a large explosion of magic and the destruction of the main enemy of the game, which the guy simply could not defeat for a long time. After victory, the main character's skill cell was displayed on the screen where he acquired the 10th level skill. 
Zhou Wen himself slightly did not understand how he managed to advance so much and obtain a skill comparable in strength to a titanium fist. He wanted to test himself, and so he activated the call of the skeleton general, who has more health, unlike other monsters. Zhou was instantly sent into the world of battle, where the guy remembered one very important detail, where the killed monster is reborn again, and everything has to be replayed again. It was then that small and infuriating skeletons appeared in front of him and directly demanded that he use all his strength in order to then lose to the boss. The main character quickly clicked on the phone screen in order to kill all the little skeletons, and he succeeded well. The guy concentrated his entire attention on what was happening inside the game and was preparing to quickly get used to the movements of the skeleton general. Everything went right according to Joe's plan when he managed to evade the attack of the skeleton horseman. Finding himself behind the boss, the guy hit him in the back of the head with a new technique. For some time, the skeleton did not react at all and simply trembled slightly, wrapped in its flame. But it didn't last long, and it simply exploded without leaving a single particle of the body. Suddenly, an unknown person entered the main character's room and did not warn anyone about it. As it turned out, it was a girl who was standing right above Zhou Wen's head. She turned to the guy to find out something. The main character himself just woke up after a long sleep, because almost all the time he was playing games or training. The girl somehow stopped talking without considering it necessary and looked attentively at Joe, waiting to hear the desired answer. The guy squealed with fear, not understanding who was standing in front of him and asked directly about it. The interlocutor asked where Li Xuan went and why he left the main character all alone. From the expression on the girl's face, it became clear how frivolously Li Xuan treats her when she requires any help. When the girl went out, Zhou had no idea who was just standing in front of him. While Zhou Wen was thinking about what to do next, the girl stopped in one place without saying anything. The stranger suddenly grabbed the guy's hand and began to pull him along. The main character shouted and tried to stop the girl who wanted to use him for her own purposes. When they got almost to the exit of the house, Zhou Wen broke free from the grip because he couldn't find out the girl's usual name. It was then that the stranger said that she was Li Xuan's older sister and wanted the main character to help her in solving some problems instead of her brother. Zhou Wen remembered how many times Li had helped him and therefore, wanting to somehow repay for his kindness, he could not refuse. The main character was not particularly happy without the opportunity to spend normal time playing games, and he whispered these words so that no one would hear. The elder sister quickly heard these words and asked what the guy was talking about. Joe agreed with the girl's request and asked only to wait a little while he changed into proper clothes. The elder sister Lee immediately noticed that she had dragged the guy outside in only his underwear. The girl, not paying attention to her previous severity, became embarrassed and ordered the main character to quickly get dressed. A few hours later, the guys went to Xi'an University, straight to the companion pet arena. The girl and the main character quickly reached their final destination on a motorcycle. A couple of girls immediately approached them, glad that their friend had finally come to the rescue. Senior sister Li Xuan asked Zhou to just stand aside and do nothing. The main character didn't mind spending time playing games and this shocked the girl. For a long time, the guys stood in the crowd talking about personal problems, and so time passed much faster. A couple of hours later, a couple came to them, who only spoke for Li Xuan, as if he was afraid to come with his sister and be defeated. A sister named Li Wei Yang became curious why the interlocutor challenged them, and why he was eager to get an egg with a mutant belonging to Li Xuan. Behind the talking guy, there was a frightened girl who, like him, wanted to get everything, believing that they were the ones who dealt the fatal blow. The challenger was in a hurry about his business, and therefore asked to quickly start a battle to decide who would own the mutant egg. Li Wei Yang quickly became infuriated by his opponent's overconfidence, who considered everyone weak. Then he began to leave the arena, recalling how different they were in the ratio of training courses and considered his victory simply dishonest. He deliberately pressed with such words and mocked. While he was speaking, someone from outside entered the arena. The girl instantly focused all her attention on the man. A classmate of the girl entered the arena who, according to the challenger's plan, will fight against Li Xuan's sister. The guy with a scar on his face inspired fear in those watching, and in his gaze one could see composure to everything that was happening around him. The man who appeared carried the name Gu Dian behind him and greatly frightened the girl who would have to fight him. Even the main character didn't quite understand why the guy looked so angry and why exactly this happened as soon as he saw Li Weiyang. 
The combatants stood in the arena, looking at each other and not talking to each other. Gudian was not going to attack stupidly and handed over this role to his interlocutor. In order to ensure victory for herself, she released enough spiritual energy, which quickly spread around. With such, with strength, she was no longer so afraid to fight against a strong classmate. The girl's friends shouted, calling to stop the battles, not wanting to lose her just for the sake of one mutant egg. The main character at that moment asked his friend who was fighting who Gudion was. She, in turn, was afraid to even talk about the man who was nicknamed the Demon and tried to better convey everything that happened earlier. According to rumors, on his very first day of admission, Gu Dian was harmed by a fourth-year student, Wu, who wanted to make fun of him for fun. Zhou Wen was surprised that there were such strong people who really didn't just talk. Looking at Vane, the main character lost the idea of her chance of winning. The challenger mocked Li Xuan's sister, considering her a timid girl who chickened out at the sight of a strong opponent. But these words did not at all inspire the girl with the idea of U-200 be U-200 running away and she rushed into battle. The girl was very fast, and in a couple of seconds, she was above the enemy's head, preparing to strike with her feet. Oh, the blow hit the guy right in the neck, who had no intention of defending himself and did everything with his eyes closed. The attack did not harm Gudian's body at all, and spiritual energy began to emanate from the place where the force was directed. Vane realized why the guy wasn't dodging, namely because of this, that his body is in itself an excellent defense. She had to quickly move back, preparing to use a new technique, and the first thing that came to the girl's mind was super acceleration and simultaneously striking the previous point. All blows from Wei Yang simply flew past the enemy or completely disappeared upon contact with him. There was one more high-speed kick left, which flew straight to the desired target. Only now, Gu Dian, having started to act, stopped the attack thanks to one hand. Li Wei felt a strange feeling of her body flying. These sensations were caused by the fact that Gu Dian, lifting her into the air, hit the ground. Vane lay on the ground, having lost a lot of strength after one blow. Kesele's showed that the girl was not at all his opponent, who was equal in strength. Covered in her own blood and speaking, Li Weiyang wanted to continue fighting. That's when Gu Dian kicked her and threw her even further, damaging her entire body. Gu Dian asked his opponent whether she wanted to continue or had changed her mind about simply dying could no longer tolerate her beating and abandoned the mutant egg. The girl, hiding behind her boyfriend, told Li Wei Yang to listen to her friends in order to protect her own health. Li Xuan's elder sister rose to her feet despite her serious injuries. She cried out the desire to continue. That's when Gu Dian quickly slapped her in the face and made her fall to the ground. After the guy's attack, a ball of spiritual energy formed around him and a couple more cracks in the arena. Gudian left directly saying that the girl lost and there was no point in fighting further. But he was quickly shocked that Wei Yang was still able to stand on his feet and speak. Having become even more angry, the guy was preparing to kill the enemy with one blow. At this moment, the main character rushed to help his friend, whose intentions were unclear to him. Zhou made it right in time and connected with Gudian's blows, thus stopping the incredible force. Diane had no idea who the main character was and why he was protecting the girl. Zhou Wan introduced himself to his interlocutor, mentioning his admission to Xiang University. Those at fault at the beginning of the battle watched this scene, considering Zhou to be an ordinary guy who wants to show off in front of a girl. Li Wayne herself told the main character to quickly escape from the arena. Zhou silently looked at the wounded girl with a strange expression on her face. He hugged the girl and she couldn't understand what was going on right now. Zhou Wan lifted Li Wei Yang onto his shoulders, wanting her to rest a little. The girl blushed with embarrassment and did not want to be dragged around like a pig. After some time, the main character managed to take the girl to his friends, and she talked to him about health, or just well-being, fighting for common interests. Li Wei Yang looked at the savior with strange eyes and hoped that the guy would be fine while fighting against a stronger opponent. Zhou Wan, at that moment, tried to convey to Gu Dian how there is no point in fighting at full strength when they are capable of destroying the surrounding things and he became interested in what the guy wanted to do to avoid such victims. The main character, having collected spiritual energy, asked to be given the first blow, and if Guduan moved three steps away, he would instantly lose. The enemy also did not intend to simply waste time, and therefore was preparing to take the blow upon himself. Joe warned the enemy about all the dangers that could occur and ordered them to better concentrate. 
Those watching did not understand at all why Gu Dian suddenly agreed to accept the rules of the newcomer. Challenger's girlfriend was worried that the protagonist actually had a chance to defeat Gu Dian. That's when the guy reassured his girlfriend by mentioning how good their man was. Gao Yang smiled because his comrade received good protection from the special crystal of the needle porcupine. All the people who managed to fight against Gu Dian realized the strength of his body and how easy it was for him to repel enemy attacks. All the skills acquired from the porcupine improved under Gu Dian's control and reached the ninth level. Gao Yang was not afraid at all, because several of those who wanted to hit Gu Dian simply lost their hand over time. The main character had little distance left to come into contact with the enemy. Getting closer, the fabric on Zhou's fist simply tore and completely evaporated into thin air. Such good energy from the protagonist's body allowed him to hit Gu Dian directly in the stomach and create a bright light around him. Having taken the entire blow into himself, the enemy invested more strength so as not to remain in one place. There was no tissue left on the hands of the protagonist, and even so, he could continue to use the technique. The small beam of magic was followed by a huge energy explosion, consuming two enemies. The wave that followed the energy threw Gu Dian some distance from everything that was happening. Despite all his efforts, he could not stop sliding along the ground and stand in one position. As it turned out, in the end, the guys were at a sufficient distance from each other. Li Wayne silently watched the battles and was very shocked to see the result. Gu Dian himself looked around, trying to assess how far he was thrown. Having clenched his fists, the main character pretended as if his elder allowed him to win this battle. It was then that Gu Dian exhaled, tired of fighting. This distance between them allowed Gu Dian to admit his own defeat. Immediately after this, Gao Yang said, the time when the winner will get the egg, which he will soon send. Only his girlfriend was not at all happy about the defeat and did not want to give up the reward. It was unpleasant for the girl to admit defeat, and she went so far as to simply refuse to give her consent to the transfer of the egg. Not wanting to listen to the girl's stupid words, Gao Yang slapped her in the face and thus ended his conversation with her. The guy's expression spoke for itself, and his promise was different from the others, as if Gao Yang lived only by honor. When he left, he again asked the name of the main character, because he was very interested in the newcomer to the university. Gao Yang and his friend went about their business, forever remembering who Zhou Wan was. A little later, there was complete silence in the arena, and only a few people from Li Wei Yang's side remained. The remaining girls immediately began to wonder where the main character was so strong, and asked what technique he used in the battle. But also standing aside was Li Xuan's saddened elder sister who wanted to say something very important to her. The girl's attention came to the wounded hand of the main character. For the guy himself, such a wound was just a scratch during a fight, and it healed quickly. Li Wei Yang blushed when Zhou began to worry about her health more than his own. To quickly take the girl to the nearest medical center, Zhou Wan lifted the girl and put her on his shoulder. The girl no longer resisted at all, and breathing out a sigh of relief, was glad that her brother had such good friends. Exactly one day passed after all the incidents that happened, and the main character returned back to his friend's house. He walked throughout the house, holding the phone in his hands and couldn't even believe that it would take so much time to solve the girl's problems. The main character held tightly to his phone, wanting to play games as soon as possible. But everything was interrupted by the appearance of Li Shuayan, who touched the doors and broke them open. Joe tried to explain well the whole situation regarding the fact that he picked up the phone and immediately blamed Li Wei Yang for the broken doors. Li Xuan simply placed his hand on the protagonist's shoulder and made Joe tremble a little while waiting for an answer. Thoughts that the main character would end due to the destruction of the house instantly dissipated, and Li Xuan recalled the intergovernmental area. The guy told all the details, which several times mentioned the discovered creatures in the form of internal organs also asked if Zhou Wan would go with him. First of all, the main character recalled the warning not to go into that area until the very beginning of training. Hearing these words, Li Xuan simply smiled, starting something very interesting. Ward, pleased with himself, straightened his tie, because he could easily agree to lift the ban on just the two of them. Li Xuan glowed with his own coolness and waited for Zhou to praise him or begin to admire him. Only now, the main character himself was looking at the phone, and did not answer anything to his friend's joyful story. Li Xuan wanted to hear praise and therefore asked to react in some way. Zhou Wen, without emotion, called his friend cool while looking at the phone. Li Xuan fully felt the lack of sincerity in the words of the main character, and this infuriated him quite a lot. 
They didn't talk for long because they had to get up early and the guys began to go to their rooms. Joe One looked attentively at the phone and did not look away from it from the very appearance of his comrade. On the screen, he was shown a tab with pets awaiting instructions from a person. Then he called his friend and he slowly turned around. To listen to the words of the main character, for Joe, an exciting question arose regarding the method of obtaining a pet from the legendary egg. Having revealed the main character's idea, the comrade suggested not to act so rashly. According to him, it became known that to bear the same skeleton general requires a lot of spiritual strength. And those who did not have enough strength lost the integrity of the body and the supply of their own blood. Mostly, the consequences were fatal. The main character noticed that there is such a percentage of people who managed not to go down the path of getting injured. Li Xuan, all beaming, said, which is an exception, since it has natural invulnerability and vitality regeneration, thanks to which it can easily take possession of several creatures. But in addition, he could not cooperate with monsters of higher rank and told Zhou to forget about such things. It all ended with the main character going into the room and thinking about death inside the game which cannot be compared with reality. Zhou Wen, having won the arena, received the legendary egg and looked at it thinking about all possible ideas. One brilliant idea came to the guy's head, which is connected with his phone and a game that has many unexplored special effects. He photographed the legendary egg, remembering that games can scan objects from the real world. Strange and inexplicable things began to happen to the egg, which changed its very shape. A few seconds later, a cell appeared in the game, in which the characteristics of the skeleton general's shell were indicated. The main character was a little shocked by the automatic distribution of egg skills. Next, the guy was interested in a button called Merge, because the hero had never seen anything like this before, and he pressed it. After agreeing to do the merger, Joe was presented with a picture of an ant that could be combined with someone else. Without thinking about how everything could end, the main character pressed the button to accept the start of the work. The merger caused the surrounding energy to gather in one place and transform into a new form. It seemed impossible to the main character to breed the skeleton general, having little spiritual magic, and he just wanted to see the result of combining an ant with an egg. All the power accumulated inside the ant, making many unfamiliar sounds. It was then that Zhou Wen was surprised by the successful merger, and his eyes simply could not believe it. He received a new pet called a bone ant, which has increased characteristics. Joe sat on the bed, not understanding why the creature remained mortal level, even after taking the power of the legendary egg. To test the creation, the guy decided to simultaneously defeat a flying ant. The mutant moved incredibly fast and had the advantage of being in the air. The bone ant's first assignment was, just delay the enemy for a while. Due to the new skills, a pair of sharp blades emerged from the ant's limbs, which were preparing to harm the flying monster at any moment. The bone ant destroyed the surface of the earth with its appearance and even more so released a dark aura. It took a little time to strike the flying enemy, who still managed to dodge. Such a battle lasted a long time, and each blow was not able to hit the target directly. The flying mutant reacted to the movement of another creature simply by reading its further actions in battle. Ultimately, everything came to the point that the flying ant approached the main character. To cover its owner, the bone ant attacked from the back and pushed the enemy back a little. All this was a trap by Zhou Wen, who had a well-planned plan and all he had to do was strike. But due to unknown circumstances, the main character missed and the monster disappeared right in front of his face. Due to one small mistake in underestimating the enemy, the main character lost the battle and was eliminated within the game. He had to turn off the phone and quickly got out of bed to think about what had happened. The disappearance of the flying mutant seemed to the main character to be similar to the skill of spiritual energy. Exactly one day has passed since the main character wanted to experiment with mutants. Since the morning, Joe looked somehow depressed and felt the usual feeling of hopelessness. As it turned out, all due to the fact that Li Xuan released a creature on which they will soon go straight to the habitat of other organisms. Li Xuan was very happy to have such a beautiful pet with him and hugged him endlessly. The guy's white tiger was a very legendary monster in itself, and his jade eyes were his distinguishing feature. The tiger liked being stroked by the main character, who at the same time considered the creature too attracting unnecessary glances from people. Li Xuan did not intend to tolerate every antics of ill-wishers and therefore quickly climbed onto the pet. Li Xuan smiled every time he remembered that he achieved everything through hard work. 
The main character has no more choices left, except to exhale and agree to go for a ride. The white tiger, as soon as everyone sat on his back, quickly rushed off and picked up good speed. Just a couple of seconds later, they ran through most of the city and only got faster. The main character felt bad because of the speed and did not want to continue the journey. He also did not understand why it was impossible to use transport. The long journey was completed when the guys advanced to a huge building in the middle of the city. First of all, they had to show permission to visit the area with monsters. Everything was normal, and therefore they were let through without any questions asked. The building where the guys entered was located right in the center of the other houses, and the zone of contact between people and monsters. The main character and Li Xuan passed only the first test, which stood in the way of long advances to the right place. The guys descended to the lower floors of the building thanks to a special mechanism created as a result of several cities falling under the influence of a spatial storm. The city of Luoyang, which remained destroyed, was previously called the city of Buddha. Inside the settlement, there was an exchange of fossils and other valuable things that were found. For the people there, the priority was to sell the goods as quickly as possible and go get a new one. There were many guys who wanted to find the required squad and go deep into the zone. The main character, following his friend, wondered how kiosks could appear in the interdimensional zone, in which there was nothing particularly valuable for him. Since all the entrances to the city had been cleared, Li Xuan took out a map that the military used during incursions. Zhou then decided that Li Xuan was a person who could find anything. Following the map, the guys came to a crack in the mountain and were going to find the growing lotuses of the Buddha's heart in an underground pond, not having had time to walk far. The main character noticed something interesting under his feet. He stepped on a strange image, different from everything else around. To check what it was, Joe Wan scanned the image through his phone. As it turned out, the guy did everything just to get a new item in the game, since the game was directly similar to the real world. Li Xuan Li Xuan felt like Joe was filming every little detail, so he told him to stop in order to meet the appointed time. Two friends walked through the cave, guided by the light from outside. As a result, they came to an underground pond in which an incredible number of lotuses bloomed. These Buddha heart lotuses were shaped like a flower creature and were simply different in appearance from other monsters. Li Xuan had a little problem with how to get these flowers, and the main character just wanted to swim across the river. Then Joe heard a prohibition from a friend and did not understand why exactly. The reason was, water dissolving human flesh upon contact with any animal, only bones remained. Li Xuan assessed the possible risks and chances by which one can easily reach the lotuses. Before he had time to react, something very fast and unnoticeable flew right next to him. It turned out to be a man with snow-white wings, and he hovered in the sky looking out for those who came. The only and effective method to get to the lotuses was precisely by flying. But the person who used this looked at the main character and Li Xuan with contempt. Due to the appearance of danger, the flowers lit up with a bright light and went into self-defense mode from all types of harm. The lotus shot out its petals as if they were a projectile of a strong mechanism. Each of these petals had the power to easily eliminate a squad of experienced travelers or those simply wishing to get to this area of the underground pond. The flying man had not only wings and began to prepare techniques for fighting with a sword made of unknown matter. The guy came into contact with the lotus of the Buddha's heart and formed a wave of spiritual energy around him, trying to break through the creature's defense. The flower suffered many injuries, smaller than the blade of energy. The main character, watching such fast blows, was surprised. And then the evil Li Xuan considered this not a particularly strange phenomenon, since he knows the family from which the guy comes, and each of this environment is famous for the art of the sword. While the guys were talking about their own things, a guy under the name Luo Xuan destroyed every creature that was at all close to him and did not forget to eliminate those hiding. The wings behind Luo Xuan glowed very beautifully and formed a lot of shine around, thereby attracting the attention of ordinary people. These wings were so beautiful that even Li Xuan wanted to get similar ones or instead breed a flying pet companion. Not wanting to look at the guy who stole all the lotuses anymore, Li Xuan wanted to go to another place to look for completely different spatial creatures, and the main character could only agree with him. Only Li Xuan constantly doubted whether it was worth leaving the place, where the especially anomalous environment and the military had put an unknown danger in this area. The main character was not entirely clear what his friend was trying to convey to him when he spoke for the anomalous zone, 
Then Li Xuan showed a place on the map where many soldiers and ordinary people had recently died. The strangest thing about the death of these people was the absence of injuries, and everyone died from failure of internal organs. For the sake of his own safety, Li Xuan advised not to rush and not rush ahead, wanting to get more. Not far from the guys, water began to boil and the environment was shaking from an unknown danger. Zhou Wen and his friend were unable to simply stand calmly in one place and shook in different directions. Straight from the dangerous water came a small part of a white lotus, which was significantly different from other flowers. The lotus looked quite strange and had the face of a Buddha with other non-human features. Li Xuan could not understand what was in front of him because he had never seen anything more terrible before. The lotus of the Buddha's heart began to act, shooting out its petals in all directions. Xiao Bai evaded them and at the same time used all possible skills just to ensure your safety. A white horse with wings appeared behind the back of this young man, and she could speak human language, wanting to help her master. While Xiao Bai was communicating with his pet, the Buddha heart flower opened one of its eyes and thus gained more power than at the beginning of the battle. Because of his gaze, the horse that the guy used died and he lost the ability to fly through the air. The horse instantly turned into a skeleton and fell to the ground, no longer having the strength to live in this state. Xiao Bai flew behind and he only had a couple of seconds left to turn into an ordinary skeleton. Li Xuan was well aware that if he came into contact with water, he would no longer be able to be cured and would have to die. Xiao Bai, falling into the arms of death, managed to avoid a terrible fate by landing on lotus petals. The guy did not wait for the enemy to attack and rushed straight to the target. Li Xuan realized that it would be dangerous for a person to move away from the shore and did not pay attention to the spiritual power skill which allows him to move around the area more easily. Suddenly, all his attention was attracted by what the main character was doing, and Li Xuan became incredibly curious. Zhou Wen stuck his gloved hand straight into the water and did not receive any harm, since the pond only harms living flesh. Continuing to look for important points, the guy filled a small part of the water with his spiritual energy. This particle of water mass lit up with a bright light, thanks to the special skill of the main character. Yeah, not quite understanding what his friend was doing and what goal he wanted to achieve. Without even looking at Li Xuan, Joe said that he wanted to save the guy who was not in the best position and could die if he made any mistake. At this moment, Xiao Bai tried not to stand in one place, which quickly goes underwater and is destroyed. He jumped on the plants on the surface of the water and was almost completely close to the enemy. Over time, there were no leaves left, and Xiao Bai began to fall helplessly into the water. On the other hand, the lotuses of the Buddha's heart were shooting with a bright laser and aiming specifically at the young man who fell into the trap. There were only a few seconds left before the laser hit him on the back. It was then that even more inexplicable things began to happen underwater, and the water rose above the level. From the place where Xiao Bai fell, a huge ant appeared flying straight at him, and its size was simply incredible for an ordinary person. Xiao Bai considered this moment to be the last in his life, and despair was visible in his eyes along with the fear of dying so early. When the guy covered himself with his hand, the monster went in a completely different direction from him. The young man did not quite understand what was happening and tried to follow every movement of the ant. The creature landed in the water and served as Xiao Bai as a place from which to jump or even stand while there was time. The dangerous water did not destroy the body of the giant ant and simply flowed down its body. Luo Xuan was able to land on the creature's back and catch his breath for a while. To ensure greater safety for him, the main character immediately ordered the bone ant to act on the plan. The pet transformed in an instant, becoming stronger than ever. He began to move towards the lotuses and destroyed everything in his path, also destroying small opponents. That get in the way. The speed of the bone ant was fast enough that it was difficult to stay on it just by standing. All the surrounding creatures, without wasting time, opened fire with lasers to stop the monster rushing at full speed. None of these attacks were able to damage the armored part of the bone ant, much less stop it. The main idea was to move away from the stronger lotus of the Buddha's heart, which is superior in size and strength. In a couple of minutes, the ant reached the main character and slowed down right in front of him, so as not to accidentally create a wave behind him. Zhou Wen, with a serious expression on his face, did not say anything and waited for the guy to be completely fine. Luo Xuan, descending from the monster, finally found out what the protagonist's pet was and was a little surprised. Having completely entered a safe territory where there was no threat of attack from an enemy monster, 
Luo Xuan asked what the names of his saviors were. The main character hesitated for a long time, but decided to introduce himself to his interlocutor. The guy began to show his gratitude for the rescue, and such words made Zhou Wan drive himself into an uncomfortable position a little. The guy who received the help vowed to one day repay the protagonist's kindness and do everything in the best possible way. Zhou Wan, listening to his new acquaintance, simultaneously looked at Li Xuanya, who was surprisingly completely silent and did not come closer. He was silent because he could not fully comprehend everything that was happening and was even a little shocked. The protagonist's pet, which was too misunderstood in its build, seemed more difficult to understand for what it is. To clarify his comrade's thoughts, Zhou Wen said the name of this creature. He, in response, simply thought about his own thoughts on this matter and considered the bone ant to be a very cool pet indeed. Li Xuan could only judge the pet's strength by looking at the ant's legs, which were completely immersed in dangerous water without being harmed. The water flowing down the monster's head and the complete lack of damage from the Buddha lotus seed made it more interesting. Li Xuan frowned and suggested that the main character use his pet to destroy the Buddha's heart lotus. Li Xuan, looking at the lotus, thought that there was a huge amount of treasure hidden inside it, which they could easily appropriate for themselves. While Li Xuan was thinking so stupidly, Zhou thought that there might be some dangerous legendary monster inside. The guy was well aware of how dangerous it was now to use his only pet in stupid attempts to win. Therefore, he called the bone ant back and immediately forgot about the idea of battle with the flower. Li Xuan did not understand the main character, and even more so called his pet an ordinary monster, which he would not mind spending for more important matters. Angry at the words of his close friend, Zhou Wen mentioned that he had never been a gambler willing to bet the lives of his pet companions. Li Xuan followed the main character trying to apologize for the words he said and hoped that he would not be offended by him. Passed from the moment the guys left the danger zone and when they returned home, they first decided to rest. Li Xuan, sitting on the bed, complained about the wasted allowances. The main character, in turn, having taken the map of the underground pond, was going to go to his room and have a good rest there. When Zhou left, strangely rejoicing, Li Xuan tried to understand what had happened and why his comrade was not at all upset by the failure. The main character instantly used blood to start the game. The resulting map of the Buddha's dungeon quickly became familiar within the game system and copied the required data to begin the passage. In the game, the pond was much more different from real life in its appearance and how close the lotus flowers were to the shore. Looking around, the main character could not find that same mutated lotus and considered it somewhere hidden from human sight. Having forgotten everything, he and the bone ant went further in search of more lotuses of the Buddha's soul. During this very period of time, a strange mutated lotus lay without touching anyone. Suddenly sensing the presence of people, it opened its eyes and concentrated on searching for their location. A squad of a couple of guys, along with a pet fire phoenix, approached the pond and wanted to destroy a lotus that was different from the rest in order to receive an important reward. The guys behind the golden eagle were surprised at the prudence of the leader among them, since he, without fear, called on his strongest pet. The guy with glasses didn't say anything and just laughed when someone praised him. The golden eagle obeyed the new order from the owner and rushed to attack the dangerous monster. While groups of travelers were fighting against a new monster, the main character cut one of the lotuses inside the game. Also, the guy with lightning speed repelled the grains flying at him, and at the same time sent waves of magic back to the lotuses. Zhou Wen was assisted by his pet, attacking the flower-shaped creatures from different directions and tried to act more covertly than to attack directly. Just one blow with bone claws was enough for the insect to cut the lotus into two parts. Nothing fell from each defeated enemy, and only at the end a blue stone fell out very similar to diamonds from the caves of the Forbidden Territory. The main character was surprised by his luck to receive at least some reward after a long time of clearing the battle area. For a long time, the character Joe held the crystal in his hands inside the game, having learned what effects it has and his ability to later gain some skill. It seemed strange to the hero not to receive a hidden weapon compared to the way the lotuses attacked him and tried to hide something important. Since no one told the guy about such crystals, he activated the effect of the stone and instantly became covered with new spiritual energy. The ability to transfer all skills to the real world allowed the main character to be covered in magic and not at all different from the game. The young man, concentrating on important details, felt the warmth passing through the entire human body 
and Joe liked such feelings more than the titanium strike. The silence around the main character gave his heart complete peace of mind, and it worked much better than before the technology. Joe was pleased that he had managed to find the skill of calming the heart, and he thought about how he could improve his abilities. First of all, the guy had the idea to try the magic again, and only after that draw accurate conclusions. Warm energy appeared from all points of the body of its carrier and rose into the sky like fire. A lot of time passed with such training, and the main character could confidently claim that the acquired skill only allows him to feel sensations of warmth and nothing more. The ability training did not last long and was completely completed when the main character had to be distracted by a message that came from the game. As it turned out, Joe One remained in a dangerous territory where they began to attack him with a force superior to the abilities of lotuses. And he was lucky because there was a pet nearby. Due to the blows, Kang Hansu could not properly examine the attacker and tried to cover himself with his hands. Not even a second had passed when a living lotus flower, different from the others, emerged from the water. As it turned out, the organism differed from its species only because it is actually the boss lotus of the Buddha's heart and has a different red color. The appearance of the boss did not entirely surprise the protagonist, who initially expected something similar, activating the scanning of the map of the dangerous territory. The guy did not expect to be torn apart and therefore summoned a bone ant, ordering him to attack the creature. Joe One's eyes were full of determination as he realized that it was impossible for him to suffer any special harm while inside the game. Every order that the guy gave to his pet was quickly copied inside the head of this monster, the bone ant exceeded its own speed of movement and could easily. It's like an explosion to jump out of your seat. The lotus of the Buddha's heart organism launched several charges of dark magic, which took the moving ant as their target. Only for some reason, shells and shells suddenly appeared in the sky, destroyed the battle area, and just as suddenly disappeared. The bone ant tried to follow its opponent until the very end, as it did not want to lag behind him in terms of speed or strength. The Buddha's heart lotus slowly sank into the water, leaving behind no trace of its existence. The main character smiled because he had planned a plan specifically for such cases and was preparing to apply it in reality. Joe sent his pet to attack the enemy, hoping to finish him off while he could. He knew that the bone ant could resist dangerous water, so he did just that. When everything was going so well, the lotus opened its insides where there was simply an endless number of teeth, ready to eat any victim that got inside. Luck turned away from the main character, who lost his pet while fighting such a powerful opponent. Joe One was depressed in real time by the deception that had happened, and he himself was quite aware of it. With the loss of a pet, the hero lost the full opportunity to enter the pond, which is dangerous to the human body. Joe One thought about how best to proceed in this case, and it occurred to him to go to the forbidden zone that Li Xuan had said. Sometime later, the main character could decide exactly what to do next and therefore ran towards danger. In this area, there were several waterfalls formed over the ruins of old buildings. Each wall of the buildings bore old images of Buddha. The main character, in turn, reached the steps along which he could go further, and everything seemed very strange to him. Until that moment, the guy did not have to fight the monsters of the cave. Suddenly, he noticed something in front of him and could not just pass by or pretend as if it had not happened. This phenomenon was the formation of smoke, which appeared immediately after the person reached the dangerous territory. Not far from the bridge passing through the ruined lives of those who came, there was an ancient house, which was shrouded in thick fog, and there had been no human activity inside for a long time. The first thing that caught Jowen's attention was the inscription on the arch, called the Small Buddha Temple. The smoke only became thicker and gradually approached the feet of the main character, who is trying to understand the meaning of the inscription. Without having time to guess the truth, the game ended on its own and turned off on the guy's phone. He did not understand the reasons for completing the passage, and he believed that he was eliminated from some monster. Joe One tried to get back into the game, and to do this, he used more blood than before. The main character decided to walk along the path to the Buddha temple again and check the reason for what happened. As the guy went to recheck the area of the cave, his stomach began to twist and things completely incomprehensible to him happened. Joe One finally reached the last point and placing his foot directly on it felt a terribly familiar feeling. The game ended instantly and made the main character so angry even after the end of the passage. The feeling of twisting his insides did not leave Joe 
and this was for him the only clue why the character suddenly dies. Then, he remembered Li Xuan's recent story, which was constantly mentioned for the incidents on the lower floors of the Buddha's cave. The young man continued to be in one position, thinking about how dangerous the anomalous zone was, which even many military detachments were unable to resist. Having abandoned such thoughts for later, the guy threw the phone out of his hands. He just wanted to sleep well, because tomorrow was quite an important day for him. Joe fell asleep quickly enough since before that he was busy playing games and woke up the next day when the sun came out outside. Inside Li Xuan's house, endless laughter could be heard from the owner of the house himself. Li Xuan was pleased to see some sensational news regarding the Buddha's heart lotus early in the morning. The endless laughter of my friend interested the main character, who was doing things in the morning, and he quickly wanted to know the reason for the laughter. Li Xuan began to tell the news about one senior student who, late at night, together with his friends, decided to attack the Buddha's heart lotus flower with a rare color of petals that had appeared. An old friend couldn't contain his laughter when he read about the golden eagle, which burned all its feathers while trying to attack the monster. Only this news worried the main character a little, who could have been defeated last night by listening to Li Xuan. Li Xuan rejoiced at every opportunity because such news can make more people inside the university want to get their prize. Looking at his phone, he saw many people who wanted to quickly test their strength, and they were gathering groups of people who dared to venture into dangerous territory. Zhou Wen wondered whether the military would decide to take matters into their own hands and quickly take at least some measures to eliminate the threat. The main character assessed what had happened quite thoughtfully and knew that in any case, there would be people who would be strong enough to fight the lotus of the Buddha's heart. Li Xuan relaxed, understanding why the military does not interfere in matters concerning the university and is not going to do this until the time comes. An old friend explained all the details to the main character, while mentioning for determining the levels of danger that monsters pose to humanity. While the guys were talking about their business, a man with long gray hair appeared at the entrance to the house. This man knocked on the door, trying to attract the attention of the owner of the house. Li Xuan reacted quickly and ordered the stranger to go inside the house, and suddenly they started calling the main character on his phone. The caller turned out to be a father, who had an important conversation with his son. Zhou Wen answered the phone reluctantly, so that your father expects an answer. The protagonist's father was interested in where his son was at the moment, and, asking about this, wanted to hear an exact answer. Zhou immediately told him that he had gone to Luoyang and tried to understand the actual reason for the unexpected call. The old man dragged on his speeches for a long time and could not quickly explain himself. But still, he said that he called at the request of his young woman, who wants to have lunch with her non-native son somewhere in the city. The main character did not quite like such friendliness, and he did not want his father to spoil his good days without any problems. The guy had to talk with his father and approach Li Xuan, who met a man trying to find Zhou. The main character was scared by his father's mention of the name An Jing, who agreed with the old man to be Zhou's driver during the trip to the university. The guy's father told about many new events that happened in just one day, and listening to this, Zhou Wen had a bad feeling. Before he had time to say anything in response to his father, he saw hair flying in the air in front of him, his eyes instantly filled with fear and despair. As it turned out, all his feelings were caused by An Jing, who was actually the person looking for Zhou all this time. After a long time while talking with the guys, Li Xuan learned information regarding Zhou, whose father married a woman from the Ye Sen family. The main character did not at all want to be connected in any way with this family, and therefore asked his friend to compare him less with him. Hearing such words, An Jing frowned and did not say anything in response. The girl told the main character to follow her to the car standing nearby. Only Zhou Wan held his head, because initially he did not intend to get involved with the An family, who even found him at the university. And Jing was very assertive, like her family, and could easily break into someone else's house without an invitation. Feeling the tension between the guys, Li Xuan simply said goodbye to his friend without saying anything. Zhou and the girl went outside without expecting anything from each other. Suddenly An Jing became interested in the cultivation of fire in the sun in which, in her opinion, the guy had to practice his skills. Then the guy had no choice but to tell the truth that his father never wanted to send him something like this. And she lied and transferred her abilities on behalf of her parent. An Jing turned to the main character with embarrassment on her face, and at the same time, angry, 
She tried to understand whether the guy really thinks shooting at the sun is some kind of craft. She did not receive her answer and therefore had to continue on her way, pretending as if she specifically wanted to harm Joe. The main character did not quite understand the behavior of the girl who got angry over an ordinary trifle. Looking at the flash drive inside, which stores the cultivation of shooting at the sun, the main character could no longer use other magic besides the Lost Sutra, so he was not going to find out whether the gifted skill was real. And Jing interrupted her attempts to think and ordered her to quickly get inside the car for further departure. When the guys got inside the car, someone filmed them. This man was sent to observe every movement of the main character, people who sent the observer. They received information about who Joe was and knew how the guy entered the university. There was a red-haired girl who was specially set up to follow the movements of the main character while looking for one person, man, to whom the girl conveyed the information could not fully trust all the data received and only considered Joe not related to Jing Daoxian. The red-haired woman reassured the main man by telling him about an interesting discovery. In her story, Joe Lingfeng was mentioned, who is the father of Zhou Wen, and at the same time became the husband of a widow from the An family. The chief investigator was shocked to hear something like that and simply froze, trying to understand the reasons why Zhou Lingfeng became her husband. The man was worried about many questions about the wedding of Zhou Wen's father, who, in his opinion, was not at all attractive to Ouyang Lan. To the observer, it seemed that the reason for everything that happened was only Zhou Lingfeng's connection with an organization that operates from abroad. To the assistant, such a conclusion did not seem true at all. Even if we do not take into account the fact that the man managed to reach the legendary level, Zhou Lingfeng was at that age, that people from the mentioned organization could mock him at any moment. The girl could only assume the stupidest option, that Ouyang Lan liked the pretty face of Zhou Wen's father. The operation manager, listening to his comrade, was skeptical about such options. After all, the woman in question did not correspond to his idea of her. The man began to talk about the death of the head of the Ann family, after which battles began between his family, in which everyone tried to gain influence. Among everyone was the boy, An Tian Zhou, who, at the age of 13, managed to hold back the onslaught thanks to Ouyang Lan. Therefore, a woman like her couldn't just fall in love with a man so unsuccessful in life. The commander-in-chief of the operation ordered to immediately find a way to bring Zhou Wen straight to him. The man asked to do everything so secretly so that no one from the An family would guess who is the root of all cases. In real time, the main character and his acquaintance reached the desired point, and Zhou Wen could look around normally. As it turned out, the last point on the route was the house of the An family, which seemed quite rich, and it was not surprising for the guy to see something so expected. First of all, Zhou Lingfeng came out to them along with his new wife and called the guys to them. The main character's new mother was very happy to see her son after so many attempts to meet him somewhere and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. When everyone entered the house, only cooked food was waiting on the table. It was Ouyang Lan who prepared such an incredible dinner, who tried hard for the guests and asked her son to try it quickly. Every detail of the dinner seemed very expensive for an ordinary person, since the products were of the highest quality and could not be obtained just like that. And Jing, not far from her new father, echoed her mother, who mentioned how much her daughter loved cooked seafood. But the good attitude did not last long when Ouyang Lan gave her favorite dish to the main character, and An Jing changed her look. Zhou Wen, having received a large portion, could not understand how he could eat everything alone. While dining with the new family, Zhou Wen felt An Jing's gaze on him, furious at what had happened. The new mother quietly reassured the protagonist, claiming that her behavior was solely for the sake of punishing her daughter for the way she treated Zhou Wen. The guy could only try the prepared food, which he really liked and at the same time feel uncomfortable. Looking at Ouyang Lan smiling at him, the protagonist could not believe that the woman was actually An Jing's mother. Over time, it got dark outside and the new mother invited the guy to stay at their house. The main character did not want to die at the hands of his stepsister and therefore wanted to return home to his friend. After listening to all of Zhou Wen's words, Ouyang Lan asked to take the dark card with her, which she pulled out to him. Only at one glance did the main character feel danger and being careful asked what this object was. Ouyang Lan did not look dangerous and talked about the access card to a private room in the dormitory. She gave a similar gift, explaining that she had heard from Ling Feng about the guy's love to live on his own. The main character realized how useful this gift is if a person intends to calmly play games. 
The guy was only worried about the question of how his father knows about the things he needs. He still took the card for himself, thanking his new mother and at the same time calling her auntie. The woman straightened her shiny hair flying through the air, wanting to say something. Ouyang Lan wondered why Zhou Wen suddenly calls her auntie, because in her own opinion, she is not that old. The main character looking at her didn't really understand why women's own age was so important. A few hours later, Zhou Wen arrived at his friend's house and saw no one inside. The guy stood right at the entrance and thought that Li Xuan had simply gone about his business. He was happy because now he could endlessly play the games he liked. Inside the game, endless battles awaited him in the ant cave. Having defeated quite a lot of opponents, the main character managed to knock out the legendary pet egg again. He got a pet ant, which had good strength and physical characteristics. Zhou Wen examined the full characteristics, realizing how much worse they had become after the first time. Suddenly, a winged ant began to fly towards him with the goal of eliminating the man. The monster failed to carry out the first attack, and the main character dodged just by crouching lower. The guy was very angry because the creature attacked while he was doing other things. The monster did not understand human words and therefore simply continued to move endlessly from place to place. Each attack was a failure. The ant used tricks to corner its prey, and because of this, Zhou Wen did all kinds of evasion or escape. A few minutes of battle led to the fact that the ant itself began to approach the person. The monster hit with quick and accurate blows to protect the main character. The guy received a small scratch on his cheek, and while the enemy was flying around, he wanted to find a way to win. The flying ant kept at a safe distance, from which it is easiest to strike. Suddenly the monster disappeared from its place. Zhou Wen reacted quickly and activated a shield capable of saving him from the trick he had fallen for in the past. The main character lost the ability to follow the movements of the enemy, and therefore completely closed his eyes, which are of no use. In a few seconds, the image of a flying ant appeared behind the guy's back. Zhou Wen prepared to strike, relying only on guessing the enemy's location. Thus, he still managed to harm the enemy by striking at the right time. Receiving a wound forced the monster to quickly retreat from the battle. The main character was not going to leave a chance of victory and ran after him. The guy hit the enemy again and strange magic formed around him. Blue energy came straight from the body of the ant trying to escape. Just a couple of seconds passed. How there was an explosion of magic and the area was covered in fog. The fog quickly developed and an armored part of the ant's body appeared on the battlefield. The monster did not die in the explosion and having received many injuries, remained able to continue moving. At this time, Zhou Wen covered his hand with the bone ant glove, preparing to strike soon. Upon contact, the enemy collided with the ground and destroyed everything in its path. To constantly strike were completed with the victory of the main character. After defeating the flying monster, the guy managed to get a new egg. Zhou Wen was surprised by how quickly he was lucky to receive the award. Because of the new prize for the hero, two cells appeared with questions about what is the best way to deal with the egg. The main character felt as if there was an error in the system, according to which the compatibility of two ants is no more than 20%. The two pets were practically the same species and at the same time had less compatibility than with the skeleton general. Looking at the pet withdrawal button, the guy wondered whether it was worth doing this. The main character felt the weight of choice in which his body could suffer an immeasurable amount of harm. He sat in one place thinking about the whole next plan. It all came to the point that Zhou Wen pressed the consent button and the activation of breeding the monster began. Just a few seconds passed and the guy was sent into a space where there was nothing living and there was only a huge hole. Spiritual energy was gradually sucked out of the protagonist's body and Zhou Wen was left without a chance to stop the removal work. All human energy, along with the main character, were absorbed by a black hole inside space. The monster egg reacted to absorbing human energy. The main character, who had lost a lot of magic, had no strength left to stay inside the game and fell to the ground. While in the real world, energy waves formed from the guy's back, causing him pain. Zhou Wen felt incredible pain running down his back and could compare it to being torn by sharp fangs. The hero tried with all his might to endure the torment and, grinding his teeth, remained conscious. Not listening to Li Xuan's words, the main character experienced firsthand what it was like to give blood for the benefit of breeding a monster and began to vomit it. There was simply too much blood. Looking at the amount of blood lost, the guy could not help closing his eyes. Ultimately, Zhou Wen simply passed out on the ground. As soon as the main character lost consciousness, his phone began to work on its own. 
Being beside himself, the guy saw many words in front of him and did not understand what was written. What he saw made Joe One open his eyes and return to the real world. He got up from the floor feeling weak in his body. Blood continued to pour out of his mouth, and the hero was lucky due to the fact that the attempt to remove the pet was carried out inside the game, and if he tried to repeat it in the real world, he could simply die. Having returned almost to normal, the main character wanted to see the result and therefore used blood to enter the game. The main character wiped off the dirt, believing that he had lost the legendary egg, and it, along with his pets, simply disappeared. Suddenly, Joe One saw something very shocking. In the game, he noticed a point at which he managed to bring out some creature and was very happy about it. The guy immediately went to the Lotus Cave because he got the chance to fly thanks to the Silver Ant. In preparation for the battle, the main character first tried to summon a new creature. The summoning ball became larger in size and formed a strong energy around itself. As a result, a small image of a flying ant appeared to Joe Wen. The detailed spectacle incredibly shocked the main character, who was practically speechless when he saw it. His surprise was simply uncontrollable, and he screamed throughout the house trying to understand what he had to see. Joe One tried to control the screams and still checked the characteristics of his new pet. The guy had to read many incomprehensible sections in the characteristics of the ant without even understanding. What is the initial stage of a pet? In the real world, the main character just didn't understand why the monster appeared so weak compared to when he had to fight against it. Joe One quickly adapted to the flying ant and even began to think it was cute. After playing with the monster, the main character received a notification and was surprised by it. The notice near the ant was a warning that the pet would like to eat something quickly or something bad might happen. The guy couldn't even guess what you could feed an ant and how it's even done. Joe One clicked on the function of showing what the monster eats, and he was given a choice of who to sacrifice. The first was a bone ant or the second option. The new pet, obtained through a difficult process and the loss of a large amount of blood, looked simply incredibly cute, and it was very difficult to be angry with him. Therefore, the main character decided to sacrifice someone for the sake of the flying ant and feed him well. The choice fell on the mutant egg and the guy activated the feeding function. Magic instantly enveloped the flying ant, but could not help him with his growth problem. Since the mutant was not sufficiently trained for fights, Joe One began to turn him into the form of wings. Each of these wings became stronger only when taking a certain form. The wings appeared right on the back of the main character, who was surprised at how small they were up close. Joe One had never been in flight before, and since the ant cave was spacious enough, he wanted to test the wings. The guy took off from his spot in a few seconds and flew quickly, despite his small wings. In the real world, Joe One was filled with surprise and pleasure at the opportunity he received in the air. Following the usual flights, the hero tested the power of maneuverability, and he had a little time to appreciate it. All movement tests showed that the main character cannot fly higher than a few meters above the ground, since his wings are too small. The skills and abilities of the strafing king made Joe One think more, and he could properly assess at what altitude it is possible to activate these techniques. Not far from the scene of what was happening, there were a bunch of ordinary ants, which the main character decided to simply skip because they no longer make sense. At first, the guy decided to continue exploring a large part of the cave and flew almost to its very bottom. In the cave where the main character went, a cluster of ants were crawling along the walls. Watching how the monsters moved, the guy could only assume a further narrowing of the cave. At this moment, the ants continued to arrive from the open part of the cave. Joe Wen was worried and a little frightened by the countless number of opponents who kept appearing. Suddenly, he saw just an innumerable number of ants and each of them wanted to eliminate the person. The main character relaxed having the opportunity to fly and considered the ants not capable of harming him. But Joe Wen was wrong in his assumptions. When the ants gathered into a single organism in the shape of a hand and were about to attack, the ant's paw grabbed the guy in its arms and began to squeeze him. The young man felt the weight on himself and, without hesitation, used the ashen palm skill. A stream of magical energy burst out from under the rubble, illuminating the darkness. After this, an energy pulse was formed, eliminating most of the opponents. The magic continued to spread through the caves, destroying enemies. Joe One resumed the ability to move while inside his technique. This skill power was enough to destroy one of the walls of the cave and fall straight inside. When the main character got there, a strange phenomenon of light began on one of the stones. 
Joe One realized that he was currently near an anthill, which had begun to release ants. Sensing danger nearby, the flying ants rushed towards it. The ants surrounded the main character and began to whip him with their sharp wings like whips. In addition to the fact that the guy could not move, his strength to resist the flying ants disappeared. He simply died while surrounded. Sitting in the real world, Joe One was not worried about losing and was only interested in the unexplored areas of the cave. The guy was thinking about how to use the baby ant in action in order to get inside the anthill and not having found the necessary plan. I decided to immediately return the pet to its previous appearance. Without having time to do what was required, he felt a feeling of hunger and everything flew out of his head. Joe One went to Li Xuan's refrigerator and when he opened it, he saw absolutely nothing inside. This situation made the main character think about going to the nearest grocery store. Joe One went outside and began to walk towards the right place. A car with observers parked not far from him, who passed on information to others about where the guy was going. The commander-in-chief of surveillance painted her lips, ordering her comrades to under no circumstances catch Joe One while he was in public, and therefore took this job upon herself. As it turned out, she was not far away, and the main character was already approaching her. To make it more attractive, Lilisa lifted her dress higher for the purpose of so that the guy could not resist her. The girl was absolutely confident in her success, and especially for this occasion she dressed in such an attractive dress for the attention of the guys. Joe One walked to the supermarket, not paying attention to what was happening around him. Lilisa was waiting for the guy at that moment, hiding behind a wall that was not far from her goal. When the main character got close enough, she came around the corner and blocked his path. The observer, trying to attract Zhou Wen's attention, deliberately fell to the ground. The girl's acting skills were simply unrealistically good, and with tears in her eyes, she asked the main character to help her. Only Lilisa's plan didn't work, and the guy silently walked past, not paying attention to passers-by. The observer was angry at the failure of the protagonist's charm, ignoring the very presence of the girl. She ran after Zhou Wen, planning a more suitable plan, which was her trump card. The main character walked by, immersed in thoughts about the acquired flying skill, with which he could overcome the lotus heart of the Buddha. While Zhou Wen was busy shopping, Lilisa grabbed his hand and asked him to wait a little. When the girl asked where the guy was in such a hurry, he responded by asking who she was. Lilisa again began to play the role of a wounded passerby who needs to be accompanied by a person who can protect her at any moment. But in her head, the girl was infuriated by the fact that Zhou Wen did not know her even when she fell in front of him. Suddenly, Li Lisa saw the main character calling the police to help her. The observer took the phone and asked not to call anyone. The girl directly stated her desire for Zhou Wen to take her home. Attempts to deceive the main character failed, and his words about the desire to eat hurt Li Lisa's pride. The girl was filled with hatred when they showed that she was not as attractive as ordinary food. The observer, using spiritual energy, could not stand the humiliation and began to act more harshly. The girl collected a clot of magic in her hand, with which they were going to beat Zhou Wen and take him to his comrades without his permission. Li Foxes began to attack while the main character does not see anything and does not even pay attention. A blast wave formed between them, caused by the contact of magic with the body. Only now, the main character managed to avoid injury, and he landed in a different place. Li Lisi stood at the site of the impact, looking at where the guy had gone. Zhou Wen at that moment was right on a high point, thanks to his wings. The main character was surprised to see a girl who wanted to harm him, and this seemed familiar to the guy. He quickly remembered the face of the girl who was trying to find Jing Daoxian, and now she was standing in front of him. Li Lisi realized that she had made a mistake by underestimating the abilities of the main character. Having become more determined, the girl enveloped the battle area with her blazing magic. And while she was doing this, Zhou Wen quickly called the police, warning him for the attack. Everything was not going well for Li Lisa who could reveal her real identity to the police at any second. The girl stopped her ability and turned away from the main character. The observer began to leave the crime scene and decided to let the target go for now. Joe One remained on top for a while and assessed, is the enemy really gone? When the situation got better, the guy let go of the phone. The main character came down from a high point, wondering how he could provoke the Commonwealth. The guy stood in one place, trying to remember at least one case when he harmed someone. Suddenly it became clear to him why everything was so bad, and the main character realized that he was simply being valued as an ally of Jing Dioxian. From the moment the main character was attacked and Zhou Wen called his friend, who was currently walking, 
Li Xuan quickly picked up the phone and was even glad when his friend called him so unexpectedly. His smile quickly disappeared from his face when the main character asked to find a quiet place where no one would hear the conversation. The most normal reason for such carefulness was that Wen wanted to talk about an important matter. Li Xuan listened to his comrade and therefore, being in a quiet place, heard the story of the meeting with Jing Daoxian. Li Xuan only spoke about how much he wanted to meet such a legend in person. The main character, listening to how interested his friend was in this, was glad that he did not tell Li Xuan about the Sutra of Immortality. Zhou Wen talked with a friend while inside the room assigned to him and listened to mentions of hyenas. Li Xuan, while flirting with the girls, spoke about a secret organization that acts more harshly than the Commonwealth. This organization was called Hyenas, solely based on their methods of solving problems, and they never thought about the consequences. Such a description of the organization made the main character think how difficult it would be to fight them. Li Xuan at this time was simply trying to think of a way to avoid persecution. He immediately began to smile when Zhou Wen himself came up with an idea in which he simply needed to quickly enter a university where the activities of organizations would be prohibited. Li Xuan, knowing how difficult it was to enroll in university, joked with the main character by suggesting that he be closer to the An family, and Wen did not really like this. As a result, Li Xuan was ready to talk with his father about giving the two of them early enrollment. Zhou Wen was very happy to hear this, and thanking his comrade hoped for good luck. The guy hung up the phone after receiving the required information. In fact, the main character was angry that he was unable to resist the community and wanted to become stronger as soon as possible. While the main character was thinking about the plan according to which they would act, in the Commonwealth Department, the commander of the investigation hit the table with his hand due to failure. The man was scolding Li Lisa, who failed to grab an ordinary guy, and now they will have to report to their superiors. The girl explained that the data received for the main character was incorrect and threw all the blame on her subordinates. She wasn't going to leave Zhou Wan alone so easily, so she asked for a chance to make things right. The boss could not do this, since the protection of the main character and his caution became much greater. The man took out a document and asked Li Lisa to take a closer look at it. The girl looked at the book without completely understanding what was inside. It was then that the boss told how he managed to get secret information about the university and the Lan family. Li Lisi spent a long time reading every detail inside the document. An important detail caught her eye, which shocked the girl and made her better assess the current situation around one person. When Li Li Lisi understood the essence of the document, she immediately began to show her dissatisfaction by mentioning An Jing, who had lost her special place. The boss agreed with the employee because he did not consider it wise to give a place in the Ann family to a stranger like Zhou Wen. Only the man realized what happened was not a family mistake. He knew the rule of choosing to change once, and in this way the main character got the place of his half-sister. The chief of the commonwealth thought about it, because for some reason all the factors and stylish families were connected with Zhou Wen. All the data and information of the main character that was indicated in the received documents interested this man. Zhou Wen was in a completely different place and for some reason sneezed many times. The guy felt as if someone was constantly remembering him and that's why the following symptoms appeared. He was on the street and, standing at the end point of his path, raised his head. As it turned out, Zhou Wen reached Qiang University and waited until he could go inside. Having entered the university area, the main character looked for a place following the map he received. A little time passed when he managed to get to the required point, and he saw a small house in front of him. Zhou Wen immediately entered the building and began to climb to the second floor. As it turned out, this house was the very place for which the new mother of the main character mentioned, and the guy used his card. Entering the resulting room, the main character was surprised how kind his new mother was. Zhou Wen liked the interior of the room, because everything was done in the best possible way. The guy smiled, believing that from that moment his new life in a luxurious house began. First of all, Zhou Wen checked his briefcase and noticed a lack of things. The main character, looking at his phone, was going to find a store with clothes and was guided by the navigator. He left the room following the navigation. While Zhou Wen was looking at the phone, a girl began to descend from the upper floors towards him. The main character calmly raised his head, deciding to look at the man. This girl turned out to be An Jing, who also lived in the house and settled on the floor above. An Jing saw Zhou Wan in front of her and became a little worried. 
but even so, she didn't say anything unnecessary. Puffing out her cheeks, the girl began to avoid conversations with the main character and quickly went to the exit. Watching Unjing go down the stairs, the main character did not quite understand why she was constantly angry with him. Zhou Wan had no choice but to ignore this behavior and, exhaling, begin to mind his own affairs. The main character, having gone for the navigator, could not find the exact path where to go. Looking around, Zhou Wen doubted whether he was choosing the right path. There wasn't a single person passing around the guy who could be asked for directions to the shops. Suddenly, Zhou Wen heard a kitten purring nearby and tried to understand where it was coming from. The guy thought it was strange to hear the sounds of a cat in such and such a place. But in addition to the purring of the cat, the main character heard a human voice right around the corner. The human voice was eerily familiar to the main character who decided to check who was there. Before reaching the source, Zhou Wan asked how he could quickly get to the shops. That's when he saw Gu Dian there, playing cutely with the cats. Such a sight simply shocked the main character, who did not expect to see exactly this. As a last resort, the guy asked if it was really Gu Dian in front of him. The same one immediately released the cat from his hands without saying anything. Suddenly, running up with all speed and placing his hands on the shoulders of the main character, Gu Dian ordered to remain silent about what he saw, or Zhou Wen would come to an end. The main character understood everything perfectly and simply explained the search for stores. The sophomore removed his hand from the newcomer's shoulder, considering everything an accident. He began to leave, pointing with his finger the route that would take him to several guards escorting people to supermarkets. Gudian stopped wanting to say one more important thing. A guy with an angry face told me not to touch the cats under any circumstances. After expressing his opinion, Gudian calmly began to leave for business. When everything became quiet, the main character still touched the cat. For some reason, what happened reminded the main character of an incident associated with a spatial storm, after which every person got a pet and stopped being interested in ordinary animals. Therefore, Zhou Wen was surprised to see Gu Dian who loves cute cats. While petting the cats, the main character previously could not imagine that even a formidable person could show tenderness. Sometime later, Zhou Wen returned home and tried to play and again failed to advance. Such non-promotions made the hero angry. His anger was so strong that the main character began to bite his fingers. Returning to the game to the place where it all began, Zhou Wen could know for sure that the Buddha flower protects something mysterious and it will eliminate all those who come. The number of lives wasted on the way to the temple greatly interested the main character, who does not even receive a warning for any attack. Zhou Wen even tried to fly through the air without touching the ground. Only the guy could not advance beyond a certain point and constantly fell into the tricks of an unknown creature. The main character, sitting on the sofa, could consider everything over because the matter had reached a dead end. He appreciated all the abilities of his pets, who even lost together by attacking previously encountered opponents. But Zhou Wen tried not to think too much about comparing such different cases. All this seemed to the main character like a door to which he needed to find a suitable key. Finding the so-called key became Zhou Wen's main goal because he wanted to get to the Buddha temple as quickly as possible. The main character stopped on the steps in a dangerous area because he did not know where he could go other than the pond in the city of Buddha. For some reason, an idea came into his head for a skill to calm the heart that could work. Zhou Wen began to concentrate and form spiritual energy around his body. Looking at his hands, the guy realized how much energy he had to spend on the calming skill. This technique, apart from calming, did not give additional effects such as protection. Zhou Wen walked down the steps trying to find another use for his abilities. The main character jumped from the steps straight to the place where he managed to get to, and all the time he kept his concentration. In the real world, Zhou Wen was very happy having managed not to die and move on. Considering what had happened to be complete luck, the guy continued to move. Suddenly, he was stopped by a sharp absorption of spiritual energy. The phone turned off after losing the required amount of energy from its player. Having returned to the game again, the main character noticed how quickly spiritual magic began to be spent and was simply shocked by such a sight. Zhou Wen had only the option of using blood that would quickly return what was lost. The protagonist's character returned to the last save of the area and accumulated enough strength in his legs. All this was planned in order to have enough stamina to run to the temple. Only a couple of minutes passed and the main character, having lost energy, fell to the ground and almost released his own soul. Zhou Wen was too assertive and used a large amount of blood to achieve his goal. 
The guy waited for some time to heal the wound on his finger, and at the same time considered using his pets to quickly move through the area to the temple. He did as he planned, and the choice fell on a flying ant that flew fast enough to cover a long distance. A few seconds passed and the main character failed again and almost killed his pet. Joe One understood perfectly well how much more energy was required for himself, and in addition for his pet, this began to terrify and upset him. The main character began to concentrate outside the game, planning to clear the floor with the Buddha's heart lotuses again. While he was thinking about this for a long time, someone started calling his phone. Unhappy with being constantly distracted from his games, Joe One still accepted the call. The one who called was Li Xuan, who ordered the main character to immediately come to him and see an interesting sight. Li Xuan intrigued Zhou Wen and, smiling, couldn't even explain why he suddenly called. He couldn't tear himself away from the picture in front of him in which An Jing got involved with another disciple. The man who had personal affairs with the girl smiled strangely without letting her pass. She didn't say anything in response, much less show any anger. There were a lot of rumors around the guys about a man named Yang Lei who received the legendary level in the third year and was supposedly going to give the Buddha flower to An Jing as a sign of enrollment. The girl looked at this lotus and realized how dangerous it was. An Jing was just going to leave, telling her not to waste time eliminating the monster. Before she could completely leave, she claimed that Yang Lei was not capable of defeating the creature with the bloody pattern. Such a statement created a feeling of ridicule among people towards a student of legendary level. Li Xuan, who was nearby, was simply surprised how much the An family knew about the Buddha's heart flower. While Xuan was thinking about what had happened, a guy named Mian Tu appeared behind him, who knew how much Yang Lei wanted to suck up to the girl's family. Li Xuan was drawn into a discussion of the guy's family and An, who compete with each other quite a lot, and Yan Lei is not at all close to An Jin. For some reason, Li Xuan covered his friend's mouth, not wanting to talk about these families, not even paying attention to the fact that he was the only one speaking. Li Xuan did not want to discuss the sister of his close friend and warned Mian Tu while the image of the main character appeared near them. Appearing on the scene, Zhou Wen looked completely exhausted from playing games. At this moment, An Jing was about to leave and not look further. Li Xuan began to mock the main character, trying to find in him a feeling of experience because his younger sister had a fan. When Zhou Wen asked why his friend began to worry, he simply fell silent, and an awkward silence formed between them. After An Jing ignored the attempt to give her a gift, Yang Lei was very angry due to the bad opinion of others towards him. The guy screamed at the top of his voice in his desire to eliminate the monster and was not going to accept the girl's refusal. Suddenly he was touched by the words of An Jing, whose promise is empty words, Yang Lei could no longer listen to the words of disbelief towards his promises and therefore began to use summoning magic. From the technique of summoning a pet, a monster with silver wings was born. Only there was more than one creature, and it had a similar pet called a silver hawk. The appearance of such legendary creatures greatly surprised Mian Tu, who had never seen anything like this before. When the preparations for the battle were completed, Yang Lei ordered the creatures to quickly eradicate the Buddha's heart lotus. The monster with red petals activated its protective function and was preparing to shoot seeds. The flying hawks came into contact with the shot, forming a small explosion. Yang Lei was not at all worried about the pets, considering such an attack to be just a bad trick. The guy thought so solely because the pets dodged every attack and simultaneously moved forward. After a short time, in an attempt to advance further, the silver hawk struck the lotus of the Buddha's heart. Mian Tu, watching the battle, was very surprised how the silver hawks were not harmed by the bloody water. When the guy thought so and considered Yang Lei's victory possible, the main character appeared behind him and asked him not to think so frivolously. Zhou Wen was aware of the entire situation in which the battle was just beginning. The silver hawks tried to break through the monster's defenses and could only scratch its armor. Long-term wounding of the lotus body caused the flower to open. After opening the main part of the body, the lotus fired many projectiles in an attempt to get rid of the pests. This caused the silver hawks to retreat further. At this moment, the lotus of the Buddha's heart opened its eye, which looked for enemies much more. Yang Lei realized that until this moment the enemy was simply fighting back, and when he tried to harm, the monster got angry and began to act. Yang Lei acted on data that confirmed the weakness of spatial beings in the form of a plant and saw exactly the opposite. The guy decided to try something more interesting and began to conjure a fiery effect. 
It was thanks to his skill that the Silver Hawks were covered in fire and received a new shell. They immediately began to attack the monster, acting together. The Buddha Heart Lotus began to release a bloody aura from its mouth. Completely covered with such magic, the Lotus of Buddha's Heart managed to repel the attack of the Hawks. Yang Lei, seeing how the enemy was fighting, was very surprised that the Buddha's Heart Lotus was able to use the skills of Dew's power. The guy calculated how many sides of the enemy were protected and considered it possible to strike where this armor simply did not exist. In order to defeat the monster, Yang Lei ordered one pet to distract the Heart Lotus. The second Silver Hawk flew higher to strike from there. The main character watched the planning of the further battle and did not quite understand where this was leading. A few seconds passed before he remembered an important detail in the enemy. Zhou Wen shouted to the fighting student to beware of this trap. Yang Lei turned his attention to the screams behind him, not quite understanding what was going on. At this time, the Firehawk approached straight into the open part of the monster's body. It was then that the Lotus of the Buddha's heart opened and showed its real insides. In just a few seconds, the pet was eliminated and completely consumed, especially to humiliate the person. The Lotus finally pretended to be full. All observers were simply shocked by the speed of this monster. Yang Lei himself could not realize that his idea had failed miserably. Therefore, in order not to lose another pet, the guy told the hawk to come back quickly. While the fire hawk completely returned to its owner, he could not control his anger and clenched his teeth with all his might. Yang Lei wanted to know something and went straight to the main character. Standing in front of Zhou Wen, he simply looked at him for a while and did not say anything. Still, things came to a worse end. Yang Lei accused the main character of his initial belief that he could not cope with the monster, and Yang Lei became interested in how Zhou Wen knew about this. All the questions seemed very difficult to the main character, and he could not say the exact reason why he was able to obtain data for the Lotus. Suddenly, Mian Tu helped him, claiming as if everything was obvious from the very beginning. The guy to convince Yang Lei told how Zhou Wen took second place in the battle skill test. The place where the main character took second place was quite familiar to Yang Lei, and he smiled with a strange face. Mian Tu noticed how much the guy doesn't mind losing his pet, which is quite rare. Every word of Mian Tu began to enrage Yang Lei, who wanted to see the protagonist's plan in action. While Zhou Wen was silent and did not prove anything, Mian Tu only aggravated the situation by claiming that the hero would win without difficulty. Zhou Wen didn't answer anything because he understood where everything was going. While the guys were resolving their misunderstanding among themselves, An Jing began to run towards them. The girl ran up close enough to the main character, wanting to say something. The guy's younger sister wondered if Zhou Wen was capable of defeating such a monster. And Jing's behavior made the main character think about what was happening. It was quite difficult for him to take on the battle against the Buddha's Heart Lotus, which he could not defeat even in the game. Despite everything, Zhou Wen has never seen a skill that a monster uses in the real world. The younger sister's expression became more expectant. Zhou Wen never liked to see someone looking at him with contempt. And in order to control his anger, the guy simply clenched his fists. Yang Lei exhaled with mockery, as such a sight made him understand the whole problem. The guy suggested that the main character is an ordinary coward who can only speak without thinking. Suddenly, Yang Lei heard a voice offering the main character his help in the battle against a monster. This man turned out to be Li Xuan and he intended to help his close friend who had virtually no chance of winning a one-on-one -on -one battle. Yang Lei was very surprised to see for the first time how Li Xuan, who had never done such a thing before, was born to help. The guy quickly exhaled, putting the guys lower than the level of the Silver Hawk who was defeated. Yang Lei accepted the offer to just watch from the side as the guys lost to one opponent. After some time, the three guys were separated from the observers and were waiting for the battle to begin. Li Xuan complained loudly about Mian Tu because of his uncontrollable tongue. But the main character asked the guys to calm down in order to plan how to fight. Zhou Wen thought about how difficult it was for him to fight alone, and also did not know how beneficial it would be to fight in a group. First of all, Zhou Wen remembered Li Xuan for the two legendary pets he had, and he had more confidence in victory. The idea for the battle itself was ready, and the guys just had to find a way to stay on the surface of the water. Zhou Wen warned his comrades about the bone ant, which simply does not have the strength to hold three people. Then Li Xuan, all beaming, spoke about the discovery of a flying companion in the form of a mollusk. This did not inspire much confidence in the main character. They were lucky because there was one more person on the team who wanted to take on the mobility problem. 
Miantu put a mask on his face that began to emit spiritual energy. A huge turtle appeared straight in the sky. The monster fell straight into dangerous waters. The pond did not cause injuries and did not show any effects on the turtle's body. So the monster could serve as a surface on which it could move. Li Xuan approached the pet, surprised at how good a specimen it is, because it bears dragon scales. The turtle was on the water for a long time and nothing happened to it. Thanks to this, the guys managed to get closer to the lotus of the Buddha's heart. Miantu asked his comrades not to worry about where to stand, and asked them to fight with their full strength against the enemy. Li Xuan listened to his friend and instantly covered his body with the armor of his pet companion. Zhou Wen, in turn, concentrated on forming spiritual energy around himself. When the time came to start attacking the Buddha's heart lotus, the main character jumped from his friend's pet straight into the water. The guy activated the call of a bone ant that appeared straight from the dangerous water. He managed to avoid touching danger while on the back of his armored pet. At this moment, Li Xuan used magic, covering not only himself, but also all the equipment from his pet. The previous technique was followed by summoning a legendary level personal pet that emitted a dark aura. There was no end to the surprises of those watching, since none of them had previously seen such power. A moment passed. Li Xuan was completely shrouded in pet equipment and was on another monster. Yang Lei, observing the number of pets Li Xuan had, began to envy his rich family. And Jing stood next to this evil guy wanting to see an interesting sight. While everyone was getting ready, Zhou Wen noticed his friend staggering on his pet in the form of a flying clam. To make it safer for Li Xuan to fight, the main character asked Mian Tu to provide backup in case someone starts to fall. The guys began a joint attack and moved on their pets as fast as they could. The Buddha's heart lotus immediately began to defend itself by shooting out its grains. All attacks were aimed at the main character, who reacted and ordered the bone ant to stand on its hind legs. Thus he managed to fight off every flying grain. Zhou Wen's battle on the surface of the water allowed Li Xuan to get closer. The guy made one precise cut through the air, which was followed by a retarded ability. In response to the man's magic, the Buddha's heart lotus fired a precise shot with greater force than before. The monster's magic beam was unable to withstand Li Xuan's technique, and it simply cut the grains. This ability easily reached the main body of the flower. A successful penetration gave the bone ant a chance to prepare its own magic. The main meaning of this ability was that upon contact with water, several sharp bones appeared from it. Each such sharp thing caused wounds from every unprotected place. At that moment, the crystal on the lotus lit up and the blows were unable to reach it. The monster used the previous technique of covering two sides of the plant, and so the bones were broken into pieces. The abilities that the monster resorted to seemed to the main character the same as at the beginning of the activation of the trick where a person attacks the open part of the lotus of the Buddha's heart and is later defeated. At this moment, Li Xuan only became tighter on his pet and asked his comrades not to disturb him. The guy intended to attack the plants head on, and for this he was preparing a pet skill. Within a few seconds, his entire blade was consumed by blue fire at the same time as the spiritual power of the equipment user. Not far from the monster, a certain image of a sword was formed, which was formed thanks to magic. Buddha's heart lotus instantly sensed the danger coming from Li Xuan. The monster dispelled its own powers and revealed a part of its body where there are many teeth. When the lotus opened, a force comparable to the image of a tornado struck his insides. A wave formed around the battle area that put pressure on the main character. Li Xuan's magic was simply powerful, and it was difficult for him to stand on the flying pet. As a result, the guy was unable to stay on his feet, and he slipped off the back of the mollusk. While in flight, the sword acquired a frightening aura. The very creature of the silver tiger inside the blade looked at the enemy, thus trying to strengthen itself. Li Xuan had a moment left to fall into the water, and therefore he was preparing to strike while flying. When the attack was made straight into the belly of a creature from the plant family, spiritual energy passed around, resolving weaker enemies. The skill allowed the guys to destroy the outer shell of the lotus, and the exhausted Li Xuan simply began to fall. The whole body of the lotus was incinerated in the air. As it turned out, inside the plant, there was another monster in the form of a sting covered with terrifying magic. The toad suddenly began to shoot rays of dark light, wanting to eliminate the person. The shot was definitely aimed at the immobilized Li Xuan, who poses a danger to the monster. The toad's magic was several times larger than the man himself and came too close. Li Xuan felt tired and powerless, 
but suddenly he heard the voice of one of his comrades who was preparing to use the technique to save his friend. A light energy appeared near Li Xuan, quickly dispelling the toad's technique, and it saved the guy from imminent death. The one who applied it was the main character who was just nearby and was able to direct a clot of magic into the sky. Li Xuan escaped with only the loss of his flying pet. Zhou Wan intended to eliminate the toad on his own and therefore asked Mian Tu to help Li Xuan. Mian Tu began to move to the place where his comrade fell, obeying the request. The main character also did not stand still and began to accelerate straight on the back of the bone ant. Zhou Wan jumped to the toad located very close and at the same time accumulated strength. The toad tried to attack the guy in the air and used a magic shot to do this. Only the attack was unsuccessful and the main character managed to easily evade. The toad tried to repeat the shot again with greater force and specifically for this purpose collected enough energy. But even so, she failed to make a blow and the toad exploded from the inside. The main character stood in the place where the monster was destroyed and all thanks to his light ability. Suddenly, Zhou Wan caught a sight that made him afraid. The same sight was how Li Xuan fell into dangerous water without receiving any help from his comrade. Li Xuan was angry, not understanding why everything turned out so bad and looked at Mian too. The same one pretended that he would not be at all to blame for the death of Li Xuan and that the guy supposedly deserved a similar fate. An Jing, observing all the chaos, was preparing to use her ability to avoid stupid deaths. Only now she didn't have time to do anything and saw a more important picture right in front of her. All spectators, without exception, noticed how Li Xuan was saved by grabbing his hand. Those who helped turned out to be the main character who activated the wings of a flying ant in time. When everything returned to normal, Li Xuan felt tired and could not really express feelings of gratitude for yet another rescue from the protagonist. Zhou Wen and his friend returned to the turtle Mian Tu, who was surprised at Li Xuan's rescue. The guy screamed out of misunderstanding why the main character didn't tell him about the flying pet he received earlier and did not want to believe with all his might that his plan to eliminate Xuan was unsuccessful. Zhou Wen exhaled heavily because he didn't understand why Mian Tu was deliberately rude to the senior student and at the same time did not refuse to help in the battle against the Lotus. Li Xuan, very angry, hit the traitor in the face, wanting him to better learn to lie to his friends. The force of the blow was strong enough to throw Mian Tu back a little. Li Xuan, in addition to anger, felt sadness and wanted to find out from his friend the purpose of his murder. Dripping with blood, Mian Tu began to speak for his elder brother Li Xuan, and he, according to the story, ransomed the entire entourage of his younger brother. During communication, a strange steam began to emanate from under the guy's arm. As it turned out, Mian Tu deliberately lured the guys onto the turtle in order to take them with him to the next world. The whole body of the turtle broke under the feet of the guys who no longer had anywhere to escape. The main character looked at his feet, realizing that he could fail at any moment. Li Xuan completely lost a lot of strength in order to use skills or summon creatures, but none of them died, and they ended up inside a magic ball that appeared out of nowhere. The creator of such magic was An Jing, who used the power of her pet. After everything that happened, the guys went straight to the investigation room, which was located right at the university. One of the workers of this place told those who came to go about their business, since having received the necessary information, nothing more was required from them. With dissatisfaction about this, the guys had to obey the employee's order and go outside. Li Xuan was completely devastated after what happened and could no longer understand why people close to him were trying to eliminate him at an opportune moment. Zhou Wan himself was interested in this matter, not quite understanding what the second brother from the Li family was trying to achieve. Li Xuan recalled the death of his elder brother, after which similar cases began to destroy the youngest in the family. He constantly enjoyed the life of a rich gentleman, unlike his second brother, who only resolved important issues with his father. The guys continued their journey, communicating that the attempts at liquidation were not at all connected with the desire to take all the power of the family for themselves, and the matter was completely different. The main character stopped in place because he wanted to find out what the actual reason for all the attempts was. Li Xuan didn't answer and looked very sad. After a little thinking, the guy exhaled, feeling tired from everything that was happening. Li Xuan, fearing people who might eavesdrop on him, asked the main character to follow him to another place. When they got to Zhou Wen's room, who didn't understand why in this particular place, Li Xuan was preparing to drink several cans of strong drink. 
Xuan quickly inquired whether the main character knew the difference between levels. The guy recalled all four levels, starting from mortal and ending with the list of mythical ones, which is several times greater than the power of legendary creatures. Due to the increase in levels, a spatial gap has formed in the world, which only grows in size and becomes the final path where a person is not able to get through. Given such data, Li Xuan tried to find out whether Zhou Wan knew about the first elimination of a mythical level creature. The questions that came from Zhuan seemed strange to the main character because everything had long been written in books. Zhou Wan tried to tell the story of the first six epic heroes who achieved victory over the monster over the course of several days. Li Xuan stopped him by hitting the floor with a can and called the story a complete lie. The guy argued that it was impossible to defeat a mythical creature even with as many as 100 heroes of epic level. When the main character heard the truth, he could not believe it. From the story of his comrade, he managed to find out that the people of those times had several pets of a mythical level with them, and therefore managed to win. Zhou Wen didn't understand at all how this was possible, since a person is not able to get a pet of a certain level without first defeating it. It all came down to the fact that the guy who had drunk a lot of drinks mentioned it as a divine blessing. Li Xuan remembered the story of a stranger who, having appeared on Earth, gave six heroes the so-called key to defeat the mythical levels. Also, these heroes were given newborn pets of mythical creatures. After listening to the full story, the main character did not believe in blessings and things like that at all. The guy began to directly assert that the story was an ordinary legend. Liu Xuan tried to tell everything better, by delving into the facts where the creation of a special department by the Commonwealth was involved the search for which was based on obtaining information about the six heroes. The guy believed that this group had long found something interesting and were able to give others a chance to receive the gift. The story made the main character think better about the existence of a blessing that the guys from the Commonwealth can use. Zhou Wen, looking at his friend, had no idea why he told him all this. Suddenly, a very important detail dawned on him. The main character tried to directly find out from his comrade about everything he heard. Li Xuan smiled strangely, as if he was specifically waiting for Zhou Wen to find an answer. It was then that Li Xuan revealed that he had actually been chosen as a candidate to receive the blessing. Then he finished his speech in which he mentioned the second brother who wanted to eliminate him in order to become the next candidate to receive the gift. Several hours passed in conversations, and Li Xuan fell asleep in the main character's room. Zhou Wen himself left the room so as not to wake up his comrade and went about his business playing on the phone. Suddenly, the memory of Li Xuan's words warning him to be careful about his second brother, who had failed many times because of him, came to his mind. All thoughts made the guy want to become stronger in a small amount of time, and he grabbed the phone more tightly. Immediately upon entering the game, the main character received a notification for the indefatigable hunger of a flying ant. Zhou Wen thought how difficult it is to feed a pet with mutant eggs, which have increased in price and difficulty in obtaining them. But he had no other choice because the hero wanted to raise his pet as quickly as possible, and therefore was ready to give something. It was then that Zhou Wen went to the dungeon to clear it of ants in order to obtain a new egg. While the main character was getting stronger, several people inside the university campus gathered in a crowd and watched an interesting video that spread across the internet. The same video was the battle of Li Xuan who launched a solo attack on the body of the Buddha's heart lotus. The caretakers were surprised by the teamwork of Li Xuan, who is an ordinary mortal with several pets, and also Zhou Wen, who reacts quite quickly. The spectators were very upset by the betrayal of their comrade, because of which the others failed to destroy the Lotus Corps. In addition to the men, the video was watched by a lot of girls who instantly fell in love with Li Xuan and wanted to see him as soon as possible. Not far from them was Wei Yang, whom the girls asked to show their younger brother. Li Wei Yang rewatched the moment with the main character who dealt the final blow several times. The girl was all glowing with joy after seeing Zhou Wen's battles. The video spread too quickly and went straight to the Commonwealth investigation team. The people who were watching were surprised at how quickly Zhou Wen was able to react to the toad's attack by relying only on the strength of his body without spiritual energy. Li Si considered the guy to be a person who uses a special cultivation method, and he had not been able to see him before. People from the Commonwealth were a little late in receiving new information and only found evidence that Zhou Wen used the skill of meditation through suffering. The boss remembered the evening when he managed to see the main character with only one eye, 
The man could confidently prove that he saw a jade glow on the protagonist's skin that night. And it was this fact that made him aware of the use of the technique. Only the boss didn't understand where the glow had disappeared and he couldn't see anymore. Due to many inexplicable things, Lisi thought that the protagonist had somehow given up the cultivation he had practiced for several years and learned to a higher level. The head of the Commonwealth might know a couple of people who could teach Zhou Wen cultivation. In his opinion, it was the An family, or Jing Daoxian. During this period of time, Jing Daoxian was in the city and was hiding from persecution. The old man felt the weakening of the Lost Immortality Sutra and knew that Zhou Wen would be able to master this cultivation over time. The head of the research department sensibly assessed the meeting of the protagonist with his new mother and knew that in such a short time the guy was not able to master the technique. Everything came to the conclusion that Daoxian who met with Zhou Wen was connected in everything. The Commonwealth commander tried to find a way to accuse the main character of colluding with the escapee and got the job to Li Si. The man left the office, leaving the girl alone and went to do the required work. Li Si activated the personal data inspection system and took on the task. The girl looked at the main character's details, wanting to meet him as soon as possible and take good care of him personally. Li Si had received quite a lot of information about Zhou Wen's location and did not understand how they could catch him when he was inside the university. The girl's boss told her not to worry because once a warrant is received, no one is able to influence the decision of the Commonwealth. The man also counted on the Anne family, who had previously interfered with the main character as much as possible and most likely simply would not help him. During this period of time, in the house that was specially allocated for the An family and the main character, Anjing stood at the door to Zhou Wen's room and for some reason did not go inside. The girl was silent, thinking about everything that had previously happened inside the lotus cave of the Buddha's heart. Also, Anjing could not forget the memories of a conversation with her own mother, where she herself tried to find out from her why exactly the main character took the place of divine blessing, being several times weaker than An Jing. Jing tried to prove her strength only by reminding her mother how Zhou Wen, after one failure, became immersed in games and did not want to continue to become stronger. Uyan Lan did not intend to listen to her daughter's dissatisfaction, much less argue with her over a decision that had been made long ago. Immersed in old events, An Jing puffed out her cheeks, wanting to further prove to her mother her superiority over the main character. Having finished thinking about everything, the girl tried to knock on the door of Zhou Wen's room and immediately discuss an important detail with him. Before An Jing had time to knock, the main character came out from behind the door, not looking forward and just playing on the phone. Zhou Wen quickly saw the girl standing in front of him and could not understand why she came to his room. An Jing immediately began to speak for the cultivation of shooting at the sun, which she presented in its present form. And the girl ordered the main character to start training in this technique. The guy didn't quite understand why his younger sister needed to be reminded of this. And he was well aware that the gift was useless because he could no longer use other methods of cultivation. During the long silence of the main character, An Jing had the thought that the guy was ignoring her, continuing to consider shooting at the sun a fake. The girl wanted to prove the truth in her words and therefore asked to go to specialists who would tell the truth. After long conversations and manifestations of anger on the part of An Jing towards the main character, he exhaled, tired of listening to everything addressed to him. Zhou Wen asked his younger sister why she needed to give someone like him the cultivation of such power. An Jing, without thinking long about the reason, stated that she wanted to prove to everyone how much higher she was than the guy in every sense of the word, and at the same time pointed her finger at him. As it turned out, for a long time she believed and thought that the main character, from the moment of her defeat at school, began to be angry with her and completely hate her. Only now, Zhou Wen pretended to start admiring An Jing on the contrary, and in order to convince her of this, he clapped when he said good words to the girl. An Jing could not believe a single word of the main character, who was defeated in front of the entire school and only the thought that he did not want to take revenge on her angered the girl the most. The younger sister continued to speak for the strength of Zhou Wen, who supposedly used sun shooting to fight against the Buddha's heart lotus, and was confident that the guy could reach the legendary level in just three months. The girl went to the exit, asking the people's brother to get down to business more seriously, because they will soon have to fight against each other, 
and this fight will decide who is worthy of taking over the work of the strongest. Zhou Wen did not particularly agree to fight against her and asked if he could simply admit defeat in advance. The protagonist's face was as calm as possible, and it became clear from it that he did not want to do things other than games. A quick refusal forced on Jing to attack the main character, pointing out that he had absolutely no right to choose whether to fight or not, because this would happen in any case. Zhou Wen's behavior could not fit into the head of An Jing, who did not understand why her own mother chose him as an heir and what she saw in him in general. The younger sister let the guy go, having finished showing her displeasure and not wanting to repeat herself again. She practically went to her room, telling the main character to contact her whenever he needed to get some items or something else more important to increase his level. And Jing walked up the steps, warning that the upcoming battle would not be as easy as at school, and Zhou Wen would have to endure all her strength. So they parted ways without saying goodbye and without looking each other in the face. When he finally managed to stop talking to his younger sister, the main character could not understand why she needed to fight against him. Because An Jing, already at the age of 13, managed to reach the legendary level, and unlike Zhou Wen of the mortal level, she was known throughout the entire community. Not understanding what An Jing was trying to achieve by challenging his older brother, he was going to take out the trash from the apartment that Li Xuan had left with him after his party. When all the work was done, the main character returned home and did not leave the game for a second. The guy fought against the Buddha's heart lotus, defeated it several times in a row just by investing more strength. Zhou Wen learned to fly better in the air and could control the entire situation around him. When the enemy was defeated, strange things began to happen to the pet who made the last attack and it became covered in a bright light. As it turned out, the reason was to obtain a lotus egg with the heart of a Buddha, which the bone ant took out from the opponents and kept in its mouth. Having completed the battle, the main character landed on the ground, wanting to quickly inspect the received reward in the lotus cave with the heart of a Buddha. Having examined the characteristics of the resulting egg, Zhou Wen remembered the words of his friend, who had said many times how useful such a pet companion was in battle against strong creatures. Only now, the main character could not use a new pet until he fed the endlessly hungry flying ant. Zhou Wen no longer had any choice but to use feeding to the pet. This whole situation forced the main character to resolve issues with difficulty. The flying ant was covered with spiritual energy of different colors. Zhou Wen watched from the side where it was safe to do this and expected to see something interesting. What he saw made the main character believe for a minute in the chance that it would be possible to raise a pet and make a monster out of it a little more. But nothing worked. And after finishing feeding, the monster remained just as small. Zhou Wen did not quite understand why the monster does not change even after eating several mortal level eggs. Looking at the flying pet, the main character thought about the fact that the level of the items he sacrifices may not have a very good effect on improving the legendary pet. Zhou Wen knew how difficult it was to obtain materials of the required level, even with the help of a skeleton general, who could easily clear dungeons full of monsters. The main character was tired of solving problems that concern not only the real world for a long time, and so the guy lay down on the bed to relax. Zhou Wen was mainly concerned about the issue of An Jing wanting to fight on an equal footing, although the guy was not at all opposed to getting the opportunity to reach the legendary level in a short time. But quick improvement was closed to him until he learned to use the lost sutra of immortality, and this cultivation does not allow him to switch to another. Such thoughts made Zhou Wen's head hurt a little, and in order to relax, he wanted to sleep. Before he could fall asleep, he heard someone start knocking on the room with all their might. The main character opened the doors and saw a man whom he did not expect to see at all. Gao Yang appeared outside the door to Zhou Wen's room, asking the main character if the guy remembers him. Zhou Wen did not quite understand the purpose for which they came to him and why this person turned out to be a senior student. Gao Yang asked for forgiveness for the events that happened inside the university arena and did this on behalf of all those responsible in this matter. The main character felt some kind of suspicion from Gao Yang because he would not just come to the younger ones and ask for forgiveness. Gao Yang talked a lot about how it is easier to find a true friend when fighting in battles and he wanted the main character to forget about what happened. Zhou Wen looked with disbelief at the hand that his interlocutor extended to him in order to make peace. 
The main character did not shake his hand and began to quickly close the doors to just play games quietly. But Gao Yang could not resist the force and had to ask him to wait a few seconds. Zhou Wen actually stopped closing the doors when he heard that asking for forgiveness was not the only reason why the guy came. At the request of Gao Yang, the main character followed him to the place where the rest of the guys were waiting, and Yang warned everyone about completing the assignment. A guy named Hui Haifeng smiled and thanked his comrade for the work done. Instantly, he began to attack the main character with the help of his skills full of dark energy, and the shots quickly reached the target. A monster appeared in the pit above Zhou Wen, ready to devour a person at any second, obeying the orders of his master. The main character, standing in the face of death, was calm as never before and ordered the attackers to warn about the desire to fight in advance. The man who directed magic at the hero was amazed by the composure of Zhou Wen, who was not in the best position, and Hui recalled his pet. The vanishing ability was close enough to harm the protagonist's body and everything quickly returned to normal. Hui Haifeng apologized for such a spectacle and said that he had originally intended to check whether Zhou Wen was suitable for the role of a teammate formed to destroy the Lotus with the heart of a Buddha. Hui Haifeng was very obsessed with the idea of accepting the main character into his team and did not give up wanting to hear the answer. Zhou Wen didn't understand at all why he was chosen for such a role, and not a person who has a large number of legendary pets. Hui Haifeng began to come closer to the main character telling him how much he had watched the battles inside the cave and even noticed interesting qualities in Li Xuan. Hui Haifeng, approaching Zhou Wen, pointed his finger at him and told him how he liked the command of the protagonist to quickly assess the battle and give smart orders to his comrades. Hui Haifeng told the main character about a large number of people at the university, and each of them was much stronger than Li Xuan. The guy was very surprised by Zhou Wen's observation ability, who could easily see the full picture of what was happening, which was actually a rarity for Hui Haifeng in the modern world. The interlocutor did not stop praising the abilities of the protagonist, pointing out how he knew in advance the place of Li Xuan's fall, even with his back turned to him. And at the same time, Zhou managed to find the perfect time to eliminate the poisonous toad. Hui Haifeng guaranteed the main character victory over the Lotus with the heart of a Buddha which remained intact only with the help of one traitor in the team. This guy suggested that Zhou Wen simply control his team and at the same time order the best strategy for controlling his monsters. Such work was not difficult at all, since the hero did not even need to enter the water. The main character, not wanting to get involved with several senior students, refused a lucrative offer and just wanted to defeat the bosses in the game because he had long studied the battle tactics of this monster. Gao Yang tried to better explain the benefits of the offer from Haifeng himself, who is one of the more intelligent and combat-ready students of the university. Yang did not stop talking about the safety within the squad formed from the majority of the legendary guys. When Yang received a refusal from the main character, he immediately got angry because he would never have paid his attention to the likes of Zhou Wen, until the smart student said this. Hui Haifeng tried to stop the main character by telling him something important. In exchange for agreeing to become one of the team, the guy offered to name any condition. This Haifeng wanted with all his might to get a reasonable commander on the team. The man's words nevertheless attracted the attention of the main character, and he stopped to look at his interlocutor. When Zhou Wen named his condition in the amount of one legendary egg with a pet, Yang was simply shocked. But the person who allowed him to name the price said nothing at all, pondering how best to proceed. Gao Yang was furious considering this too arrogant a request for a person whose level is not higher than a mortal. And he again asked what the hero wants, in order for the interlocutor to better hear his words. Zhou Wen smiled and repeated that he simply wanted to get a legendary level pet egg, and thus would take payment for his help. Angry, Gao Yang grabbed the main character by the t-shirt, believing that he wanted too much for managing the pets of other group members. With a calm view of Gao Yang's behavior, Zhou Wen was not going to work for free and therefore entrusted the choice to the one who wanted him to join the squad. Suddenly, Hui Haifeng, who was standing behind him, put his hand on Gao Yang's shoulder and began to press, trying to say something very important. Hui Haifeng was interested in whether the main character had any special requirements besides the egg itself. The guy was interested solely in order to understand what kind of monster Zhou Wen wanted to get. The main character had nothing like this 
since he was looking for suitable food for his pets. After a few minutes of discussion, Joe One got what he wanted immediately upon request, and not after he had to carry out several instructions from the squad leader. Hui Haifeng checked the availability of the remaining legendary eggs and did not mind fulfilling the conditions set by the main character the guy was preparing for when one would agree to join the team. Joe One couldn't take his eyes off the mutant egg he obtained so easily, and he didn't even have to go through the monster caves again. Hui Haifeng put his hand in front of him, thus wanting to obtain the consent of the main character. Joe One extended his hand to his new acquaintance and agreed to become a comrade for a while, because the commander fulfilled his part of the condition. From the moment everything was agreed, Hui Haifeng's squad went about their business, talking about how Haifeng too quickly trusted a stranger to them. He couldn't exactly justify his action, because he felt a strange sensation while watching Zhou Wen's battle against the Lotus with the heart of a Buddha. After all, this guy laughingly began to leave the others, telling him not to worry simply, and to consider the main character an ordinary person for additional safety net. Zhou Wen himself, having returned to his room, immediately began to summon a flying ant. The pet appeared too hungry and waiting for its food. Joe One took out an egg of a legendary level in order to feed it to the same pet with an accuracy of one level. The flying ant quickly took the monster's egg into his mouth and showed love to the owner who gave him food. Not a second passed before the body of the flying ant was absorbed by a large wave of spiritual energy that practically spread throughout the room, and the main character realized that this phenomenon was actually the process of evolution of the pet. Over time, while inside the magic ball, the pet began to disappear, and instead of the ball, spiritual energy appeared in the room, taking the form of a portal of evolution. Directly from inside this portal, the main character managed to see a piece of the head of a flying ant, on which an unknown seal was applied. In addition to changes in the head, the lower part also became completely different, and the ant's sting acquired larger sizes and strong armor. Ultimately, the flying ant's pet finally managed to grow from a small monster into a more powerful creature. The successful evolution of the pet greatly surprised Zhou Wen, who became interested in the process of merging two mutants, after which one of them acquired the characteristics of the other. Thus, the flying ant received particles of a poisonous bee. Having seen how the pet in the process of evolution failed to do this and simply mutated, the main character decided to check some data that could give him the answer, and he picked up the phone. Joe One examined the new characteristics of the flying ant for a long time, which received quite high speed and spiritual energy indicators. These statistics almost exceeded the normal indicators of creatures of the legendary level. In addition to the characteristics, the guy noticed a very important ability he had received called a magic light needle and did not quite understand what it was trying to find at least some information about the skill. The main character entered the description of a magic needle that works mainly on a plant far from opponents and can release an energy needle. The new abilities pleased Zhou Wen as he watched his pet, who would later fight against the Lotus with the heart of a Buddha and would definitely win. On the same day, the main character prepared to enter the game and therefore dripped his own blood onto the phone screen. The guy and his pet appeared right inside the game and were not far from the Buddha's cave. Zhou Wen went there in order to prepare for a further battle, only by participating in another squad. The main character immediately ordered the pet to begin acting exclusively according to the plan invented in a short amount of time. The flying ant managed to overcome the large plant of the poisonous pond in a few seconds, and it moved much faster than before the mutation. Due to the appearance of a malicious pet in the territory of other monsters, the lotus with the heart of a Buddha crawled out of the pit from under the water and was ready to release a flurry of spiritual energy shots at any moment. The battle began immediately after the flying ant managed to evade several blows from the enemy and continued to approach him. There was only a small distance left for the ant to strike directly at the lotus plants. That's when the enemy monster plunged under the water and the flying ant flew past it. After the Buddha's heart lotus disappeared, the pet completely lost sight of the opponent. He examined every place where it was possible to hide and noticed that the environment was too dark for him and the ant was not able to see anything. While the flying ant was trying to find the target, it appeared right below it and was preparing to strike with a stealth blow at any favorable second. When this time came, he crawled out from under the water, trying to swallow another monster at once, who resisted with all his might. 
Yet the flying ant managed to avoid death thanks to its incredibly fast speed and reaction to the actions of others. Having flown a little further, the pet activated its silver wings, and this meant that it would continue its attack. Pretending to retreat from the battle, the ant, on the contrary, began to fly straight to the lotus of the Buddha's heart. Over time, the battle and attack of the flying ant, the lotus managed to find a method of defense, simply using the old skills of the spiritual energy surrounding the entire shell. The unsuccessful attack caused the flying ant to return to a safe distance and prepare to strike many times again. The lotus with the heart of a Buddha began to react to the actions of the pet and made two strange sounds. It was then that the flying ant flew past the monster's defense, making one precise blow to all parts of this armor. The earlier attack simply split the shell under which the lotus was hiding, and it simply began to disintegrate. In addition to the armor, the blow touched the lotus with the heart of the Buddha and damaged the crystal in the middle of his body, instantly. After destroying the ordinary shell of the plant, a dangerous dark toad appeared from within and instantly fired a magic ray at the attacking monster. The first attack was unsuccessful, and the flying ant managed to evade thanks to its dexterity in moving through the air. After this, the toad tried to repeat the blow and still missed while the protagonist's pet was preparing to respond to the enemy by attacking with its sting. Over time, the flying ant released its sting as if it were a projectile that carries with it the destruction of living things. The attack easily eliminated the toad, which didn't even have time to dodge and took the ant's high-speed sting. The matter was not completely completed, and so as not to have to come to the lotus cave with the heart of the Buddha again, the protagonist's pet released another sting. This incomprehensible force was directed straight to the place where there was a creature dangerous to humans. Due to the contact of different spiritual forces, the surface of the place where the lotus core was hidden began to form rays of energy. Zhou Wen, watching what was happening from the eyes of his pet, saw something very surprising for himself and could not tear himself away from this sight. It turned out to be the creation of unknown matter after the elimination of the monster's core this purple mist spreading across the surface of the poisonous water. The magical fog that appeared when the toad exploded inside the lotus with the heart of a Buddha began to approach the flying ant and blocked almost the entire territory of this cave. The purple fog was completely unknown to humanity and for some reason destroyed the rest of the lotus plants in its path. The main character was at a safe distance for him, and could not understand how such a big explosion happened, since the ability of the magic holy needle is physically incapable of this. Resisting the hot wave after the explosion, the guy could only assume several reasons why this happened. The most reasonable thing seemed to him was that the Buddha flower itself was destroyed after being defeated and did not allow people to get valuable items. When Zhou Wen considered everything lost and lost in the very depths of the pond, an ant with silver wings flew up to him and held something interesting in his mouth. This thing turned out to be a crystal right on the lotus, which, after disintegrating, somehow ended up in the pet's possession. The main character thought for a long time about what this crystal was needed for, and later supposedly thought that this item could be the key to the inside of the small Buddha temple. Wanting to test his own hypothesis, the main character activated the process of absorbing the red crystal. Behind Zhou Wen, a wall of spiritual magic appeared, which was previously owned by the lotus plant itself with the heart of a Buddha. And the guy simply remained silent, not understanding anything. Suddenly, in the real world, he was consumed by this magic, and he felt incredible heat throughout his body. Resisting the received power, the main character saw that sweat was simply flowing out of him, which formed immediately after using the crystal. Joe One tried to wipe all the sweat on himself in order to find his phone in his pocket. Quite a lot of time passed when the main character managed to get the phone where the system was immersed and throw it to the ground. When fully ready, a system notification came to the phone regarding the absorbed crystal, which allowed Zhou Wen to gain the skill of bloody zen, very similar to the repose of the heart. Over time, the flame from the crystal went out and hot steam formed from the body of the main character. Zhou Wen took off his t-shirt, wanting to better prepare for the next stage of using the technique that almost fried him. At this moment, his body was again covered with magic from the lotus crystal with the heart of a Buddha, only the energy of the skill was significantly different from the first time. The main character thought a lot about the received bloody Zen magic that stops too much use of spiritual energy, and therefore the guy could believe that thanks to the skill he could last longer in a dangerous area. 
Zhou Wen was glad to have even the slightest chance to reach the small Buddha temple and even investigate what was inside. He didn't think long about what to do and whether it was worth taking something with him for the hike. So he simply went to the lower floor of the Buddha's cave. The main character walked through the area without feeling any danger or the possibility of dying at any second. Zhou Wen's assumptions turned out to be correct, and with the help of Bloody Zen, along with calming his heart, he managed to overcome the line at which he constantly died. Since the beginning of the study, the main character has only reached the entrance to the temple premises. Zhou Wen did not waste a second of time thinking about the plan, and thanks to this, he quickly found himself under the arch of this Buddha temple. The guy himself had no idea what awaited him inside the building. Most of all, the main character did not want to meet any strong spatial creatures that could interrupt all research. But since there was very little time, he had to simply cover his hand with the pet's armor and go further inside. Only when he entered further, Joe One did not meet a single monster capable of causing harm, and he also did not see any weaker opponents. The main character continued to move, and on the way he saw an interesting stone not far from him. This stone was mentioned for a short Prajnaparamita and many other texts that were not at all understandable to Zhou Wen. The main character thought about this name because he had previously heard it somewhere or studied it at school. Suddenly, he remembered that there was a man named Prajnaparamita, who, during the spatial storm that happened, managed to create the very first method of cultivating spiritual power. Thanks to his wisdom, this man owned a book called The Great Prajnaparamita, and it stood on par with another called Agam, each of which became the most famous cultivation methods in real time. The main character continued to examine the stone, not understanding what the short Prajnaparamita is and how it differs from the one he knows. Suddenly, the stone began to distort before his eyes. The effect became more and more and forming unknown magic around made Zhou one hurt. The guy could not feel anything other than a severe headache and therefore simply held his head. After a headache, the main character had a strange feeling of environmental pressure directly on his body. An unpleasant sensation forced a small beam of light to be drawn out of the main character, which instantly illuminated the guy. Thanks to this, Zhou Wen was able to get rid of headaches and other too annoying feelings. First of all, the main character felt a sharp slowdown in the circulation of the lost sutra of immortality and all the pressure on him evaporated. When touched again and even looking at the tablet, Zhou Wan no longer felt anything. The main character spent too much time near the sign with inscriptions and only then noticed how much spiritual energy he spent without even having time to get to the main goal. He began to quickly move away from the point where he had stopped earlier because he wanted to quickly see the most interesting thing in the temple. Zhou Wan quickly reached the entrance to the buildings and was preparing to go inside. Carefully opening the doors of the temple, the main character tried to control the situation and not allow spatial creatures to enter. At the entrance to the temple, Zhou Wen was greeted by a huge statue that should not be located right next to the door. This statue was in the shape of a human head. The main character knew perfectly well the name of the god depicted on this statue, which is called the Three-Faced Buddha. The guy decided to go further without understanding why this god was drawn into the temple without being part of Buddhism. Without having time to do anything, half of Zhou Wen's body was destroyed by an unknown force that had previously prevented him from entering the temple. Because of this incident, the game was over instantly after being injured and completely dead. The defeat did not surprise the main character at all, who believes that in order to get inside the temple, you need to know certain rules according to which you are allowed to enter. What happened made Zhou Wen admire the heroes of the past who continued to pave the way for themselves and at the same time risked losing absolutely everything they had. The main character wondered how he died without feeling the presence of spatial beings, and even more so, using bloody Zen, he was unable to get further than the entrance of the temple. The only remaining clue to Zhou Wen was a stone tablet with inscriptions. Out of nerves, the guy began to bite his fingers because he perfectly understood that inside the tablet was a cultivation method that he was no longer able to use. Zhou Wan again went to the dangerous territory in order to better inspect everything there. The main character, having returned back, first of all decided to remember the text on the stone, considering it quite useful for the future. After a long time of reading, Zhou Wan managed to memorize only a small passage of the text, lying on the bed, the main character realized how long the scripture was, and only because the text seemed easy to remember, unlike the lost sutra of immortality, 
the guy was going to continue studying. Zhou Wen quickly flew out of the temple area, having lost a lot of spiritual energy and planned to recover each time in order to return to the tablet. From the moment the guy decided to do such hard work, it began to get light on the street. The main character was very exhausted from playing all night long and therefore yawned a little. But Zhou Wen's labors were not in vain. And thanks to long attempts, he was able to fully study the text on the stone tablet. When the main character read the entire text at once, his body began to release magic completely unknown to him. Afterwards, the guy saw in front of him some threads of spiritual energy that formed right before his eyes. This case was the circulation of spiritual energy that accumulates inside a person. Looking at the tablet with the inscriptions, the main character's first thought was that the energy received could be a short prana paramita. Zhou Wen, who received little information about the temple, could only lie in his room looking at his own hand. He didn't quite understand why the skill activated on its own, and he didn't have to learn it somewhere. But such thoughts did not force Zhou Wen to check the validity of the assumption again and spend the whole day on it. The guy simply put things off until later and went to bed. The main character slept for a very long time and did not worry about other problems at all. He did not even worry that he needed to get up early and come up with a plan to eliminate the lotus with the heart of a Buddha. On the guy's back, inexplicable things began to happen, and all the learned words from the stone tablet appeared all over Zhou Wen's body. The next morning, after training and trying to find important information, the main character went to wash and wash off all the dirt. It was then that Zhou Wen saw strange things happening to him. The guy's whole body began to shed for no exact reason. The main character tried to quickly go outside and little by little find the reason. In order to slightly restore the previous appearance of the body, Zhou Wen used the skill of calming the soul and believed that the cause of skin shedding is manifestations of short prajna paramita. The guy wasn't going to stay inside the bathroom for long, and so he came out looking at his phone. On the phone, the main character revealed the characteristics of his character in the game in order to check whether changes had occurred. Due to the fact that the cultivation method within the statistics did not change to a new one, Zhou Wen did not fully understand the reason for what happened, after which only his strength increased. The main character concentrated, realizing that there simply could not be a mistake in his assumption, because he felt a strong circulation of a new skill throughout his body. Suddenly he got scared, realizing something very important and wanted to make sure of it for sure. Strong spiritual energy continuously emanated from Zhou Wen and practically occupied the entire room. In addition, behind the usual magic of cultivating the Lost Sutra of Immortality, the main character released a completely different spiritual energy, which over time combined with the main magic. What was happening to the body made Zhou Wen realize that he had somehow managed to master two cultivation methods and could switch between them at any convenient time. The main character did not fully understand how something like this could happen to him, since according to the information received, a person cannot master two methods by any means, because most cultivations differ in nature. The most basic rule that Zhou Wen was taught in school was that a cultivation method, depending on its level, has less chance of being compatible with another cultivation method. While the guy was thinking about what had happened for so long, they started calling him on his phone endlessly. The main character accepted the call even without having any idea who it could be. From the time the conversation began, the main character communicated with Wei Haifeng, who, together with his team, gathered inside the Lotus Cave with the heart of a Buddha. And the guy told Zhou Wegyu to come to them quickly, because they had been waiting for him for a long time. Zhou Wen was at home at that moment, forgetting that he had to help the guys who fulfilled his condition. A lot of time passed, and when the main character was on the spot, the battle began with the fact that the person who owned the pet of the water-entangling vine immobilized the core of the dark toad. Each part of this vine pressed hard enough to easily break strong things. Such pressure did not quite please the toad's core, which tried with all its might to escape. The main character perfectly understood the monster's intention to hatch from the core, and in order to prevent her from doing this, he ordered one of his comrades to quickly use the bloody raven. Zhou Wen obeyed and quickly released two flying pets ready to pierce the core. The shell of the unborn toad itself was slow enough to escape on its own, but even so it tried to move away from the place where the strong attack was directed. The dark toad's core failed to avoid destruction, and the attack hit the core directly. When it came to the end, 
the main character shouted to his comrades to quickly retreat a few meters from the place where the monster was. The water vines immediately released the enemy and began to run under the water. Other monsters also did not stand in one place and flew a little further. Only there was a man who didn't like the offer of escape, and he began to shout at the main character. Considering it just a loss to deliver the decisive blow, this guy pushed Joe one, wanting to eliminate the weak opponent himself without his main force. Things got to the point where the guy, disobeying orders, sent his bloody raven straight to the toad's core. The raven made several accurate shots with his feathers and hit them in the place where the toad was. Suddenly, the bloody raven was illuminated with a bright purple light that gradually became brighter. It was then that an explosion of magic occurred, consuming the pet and eliminating it. The owner of this pet stood not understanding what was happening and simply watched as the eagle disappeared. The main character instantly told the man that he did not intend to compensate for the bloody raven, but no one said anything to him, and the guy on the contrary admitted his own stupidity in the disobedience of his comrades. While they were talking, the entire part of the area where the toad was located drowned underwater. Behind the guys who were rejoicing at the victory, two teachers appeared, discussing how the main character fights against enemies. They believed that Joe One prepared for the battle in advance by studying the data or having previously fought against this monster, and they were completely right in their assumptions. The girl was talking about how strong Joe One was fighting against the Lotus of the Heart of the Buddha, who had escaped from the army headquarters to the person standing next to him. And he wanted the interlocutor named Wang Fei to become the future teacher of the main character. These people went to the exit of the cave, talking about problems that could happen because the main character is connected with the An family. The girl calmed the interlocutor by reminding him that there were unsolved conflicts between Zhou Wen and some of the guys from this family. After the observers almost got out of the cave of the lotus with the heart of the Buddha, the girl who closely watched the main character asked her friend to find enough information about Zhou Wan in order to help An Jin's mother. Enough time has passed since that day, and the main character, having returned home, instantly began to fight against the dark toad in the underground pond. The enemy became much stronger than before the defeat and launched a lot of magic projectiles. By controlling the flying ant, Zhou Wan was able to quickly dodge every attempt to cause the slightest harm using energy beams or other strong skills. In just a few seconds, the main character managed to eliminate the toad and open a further point where he could strike. The guy's pet was ready to shoot with a poison sting and was simply gathering enough power of its magic. After cooking, the flying ant quickly released its sting, and a gap of spiritual energy formed in the area where the power of the Buddha's heart lotus operates. The main character was pleased with his victory, because for easy battles, he spent a long time studying the abilities of the enemy and his pet, and it was thanks to the efforts he put in that he quickly completed the boss levels. After the time had passed, Zhou Wan received a system notification that he had received an important item. This item turned out to be a lotus egg with the heart of Buddha, which was a little late after the destruction of the monster itself. The guy examined the egg for a long time, trying to understand something important for himself, and therefore, without looking away, looked at the phone. Joe One was not particularly surprised by anything in the characteristics of the pet, because even the physical characteristics and other skills were quite good for the legendary level. The main character thought a little because the monster he received did not have the same abilities as the boss whose boss had to be eliminated. Unlike the pet, the real one had many interesting abilities. The main character pondered for a long time whether he should try to bring out the monster if it ended up at the initial stage, and the guy himself would lose a lot of vitality. Still, he decided to do something different and just use the fusion of two monsters. He could only do this using his phone, and so he entered the game. When the guy tried to do what he wanted, a system with too little chance of a successful merger was displayed in front of him, and the main character was a little upset. While Joe One was contemplating the best course of action, another notice board appeared near him. In the message itself, he was questioned regarding the user's desire to use the Buddha's heart lotus egg as food for a flying ant. The main character was a little surprised because he had never seen anything like this before. Basically, the guy learned for the first time that pets can be fed even when they are not hungry. Joe One decided to feed the flying ant in the hope that it has a chance to grow a little more. The body of the flying ant began to instantly redraw its data to newer ones. Only in the end, the pet did not change at all, both externally and in terms of characteristics. 
it remained the same. And this puzzled the main character, who did not understand what he could now feed the ant so that it would grow. After an unsuccessful attempt to feed the flying ant, Zhou Wen went straight to the territory of the small Buddha temple. The main character, for his own safety, covered himself with two cultivation methods and was preparing to flee with all his strength. The guy quickly got to the desired point and, so as not to hesitate, opened the door with his foot, putting enough force into it. He stopped at the place where the last time he was eliminated by an unknown force and expected a similar effect, but nothing happened. And the main character was glad to see the full implementation of his own idea, where you just need to go inside the hall thanks to a short cultivation method. A few minutes later, Zhou Wen managed to get a better look at the frightening statue, which was completely unfamiliar to the main character. Suddenly, the statue began to move its hand, and this created a loud sound. Without having time to react to this, a magic circle independently appeared under Zhou Wen's feet, on which there were inscriptions very similar to the text on the stone tablet. When this circle began to emit a bright light, the main character believed that he would die again from an unknown force, and he would have to get to this place again. But his assumptions turned out to be completely wrong, and instead of death, the guy managed to see in front of him several magic balls that appeared out of nowhere. The balls shrouded in light seemed to Joe one very similar to an egg inside of which there was a pet he had not studied. Afterwards, the main character saw a notice from the Emperor of Knowledge, who had conquered three worlds, and this statue spoke of a gift that the main character could take for himself. Zhou Wen did not believe in this at all, because an egg with a pet cannot be obtained for nothing, and especially if it is offered by the Emperor of Knowledge inside the game. To make sure why the statue was offering such a generous gift, the main character went to check the characteristics of the egg, and they were closed to him until he agreed. The guy continued to look at the egg, wondering what to do best, and only one thought came into his head. Before Zhou Wen could do anything, he received a real-time notification that the lion-like pet had managed to get bread. The main character angrily threw the phone to the side because he didn't even have time to give permission. It was then that an image of a hatched creature appeared in front of him, which had simply incredible spiritual power. And this created concern in Zhou Wen for one reason. The reason for this was that the creature immediately began to be drawn to its owner who almost died while breeding the legendary pet, and the lion was of a completely mythical level. Within a few seconds of starting to use the withdrawal function, the main character was instantly absorbed by the pet's power, and over time he lost enough vitality stamina or blood. Zhou Wen tried to get out of the bonds of this pet, believing that he would be the very first person who died just playing video games. Quite a lot of time passed, and yet the main character managed to stay alive. Lying on the floor, he tried to catch his breath from what had happened. The guy was completely tired, having lost half of his spiritual energy along with his blood, and he couldn't know for sure whether he was able to recover. While Zhou Wen was not getting up from the ground, a new pet of small size suddenly appeared above him. This creature did not seem to match the description at all to the main character and seemed much nicer than his nickname Titanium. Zhou Wen stood up holding a lion in his hands, not understanding whether this is a mythical creature that brings only destruction with it. A little later, the guy decided to check the received data and picked up the previously abandoned phone to do this. Joe One first revealed the characteristics of a titan whose most abilities reached the 11th level and had four spiritual power skills. Having examined the titan's information, the main character was a little confused because the pet, having several spiritual skills, remained at the mortal level the guy looked at the lion without realizing how something like that could happen. Zhou Wen did not believe what had happened, because he perfectly remembered the information he had received earlier where the mythical level of the monster was written. In addition, there was an inscription that was interesting for the guy. That titanium is at the initial stage, and the main character hoped to grow a lion in the same way that he used for a flying ant. There were quite a lot of stories about this creature among people, Mostly, they said that the pet was able to hear almost everything in the world, and he was compared to the titan from the novel who was able to recognize the lies of the creature called the so-called king of the monkeys. Zhou Wen, having compared the resulting monster with all the rumors, could not imagine a completely different picture. In order to make it easier for himself to transfer the creature, the main character used the titanium transformation function, and it began to change its shape. The lion ended up being a piercing on the guy's ear. 
Due to the use of a new pet in action, the spiritual energy of this monster passed around the main character. Thanks to the skills passed down from Titanium, Joe One gained the ability to hear the sounds of nature at some distance from him. The guy even managed to hear what people were talking about somewhere in the city. Over time, it came to the point that the main character accidentally heard An Jing crying and could not understand exactly what was happening. Eavesdropping on a girl like this seemed very wrong to Joe Wan, and he felt like some kind of pervert. But he couldn't stop listening to the crying of his younger sister, who was screaming out how much it hurt her. And the main character decided not to use this skill many times because he could go crazy. Unable to stay away, Joe Wan went to An Jing's room and began knocking on the doors with all his might. The main character stood for a long time near his younger sister's room, trying to get at least some answer from her about her normal state of health. But the girl did not make a single sound from the room. Zhou Wan had a strange feeling that something bad was happening to An Jing, and she couldn't just say it. The main character stepped back a little, wanting to take out the locked doors. Taking a sufficiently large acceleration and gathering strength, he hit the locked door with his shoulder. While Zhou Wan was endlessly striking at the specially burglar-resistant doors, An Jing finally paid attention to this. Sitting on the ground, the tear-stained girl did not quite understand how the main character managed to hear her being much lower on the floor. And Jing did not stop crying, and at the same time did not want Zhou Wan to see her in this form or even consider her pitiful. When the girl thought about this, the knocks on the door stopped, and a small dent from the blows remained on them. And Jing exhaled considering that the main character simply ignored her and went about his own business. Suddenly, a window in the room broke, and Zhou Wan appeared from it, trying to climb inside. The unexpected appearance of the main character from the window greatly shocked An Jing, who did not expect such a thing from his side. Without thinking to himself, Zhou Wan inquired about the well-being of the girl who began to sob for no reason. And Jing blushed all over and tried to find out the reason for the appearance of the main character. But during the conversation, she spoke in words completely incomprehensible to the guy, because she stuttered a lot. Zhou Wen told his reason why he could not stay away, and believed that she needed at least some help. The guys talked for a long time about what happened, and when the main character suggested calling a doctor, An Jing screamed that nothing like that needed to be done, and it was better to leave everything as it was. The girl puffed out her cheeks, claiming that she needed some time to come to her senses, and the reason for this was the manifestation of an old illness. Several factors and words for an old illness made Zhou Wan think about what it could be. Over time, he still figured out why An Jing was behaving so strangely. When he tried to directly suggest that the disease could be symptoms that appear in girls almost every month, and then An Jing, angry, threw a heavy mug at him. As a result, Zhou Wan, who tried to help, was kicked out of the door. When Zhou Wan found himself kicked out of the room, he did not fully understand what he had done wrong and did not even think about the girl's feelings. On the other side of the door stood An Jing, clinging to it and just waiting for the main character to go to his room. She slowly descended and sat down on the ground, and Jing only became more embarrassed and, covering her face, called the main character stupid. When matters related to his younger sister were resolved, the main character responded to the kitchen in order to prepare himself a drink from various fruits, along with berries that he put in a saucepan. Zhou Wen put on an apron, preparing to do something in the future. The purpose of starting the preparation of the drink was the desire to quickly restore some of his blood, and the guy hoped for success. While he was doing this, the phone nearby began to vibrate from a call. Zhou Wen picked up the phone and heard the voice of Li Xuan wanting to go with him to the opening of the beginner's clubs in honor of the first day of classes. The main character refused to join any group or club on a different topic. He told all this to a friend while he was preparing a drink that didn't look particularly attractive. Understanding the stubbornness of the protagonist, Li Xuan invited him to join his club, which would be created in order to achieve a good result. Zhou Wen refused the offer, meaning how beneficial it would be for him to train in the game. Hearing the cold refusal, Li Xuan explained how important it was to be in the club. And the reason for this was taking on tasks that were only allowed for groups of people. Zhou Wen listened carefully to his friend who reminded him of what happened at school during the exams. The main character silently pondered for a long time how to respond to such words. Li Xuan, putting the phone to his ear, still heard agreement from Zhou Wen, who did not understand how it was possible to create a club with just two people. This is why Li Xuan suggested taking a short walk around the university grounds. After the conversation, 
the main character went straight to the central square of Xiang University. In this place, an incredibly large number of ordinary people and students gathered in groups. Zhou Wen was among the crowd going about their business, and he was quite surprised how many people could be in this area. Then the main character heard Li Xuan calling him, standing next to his older sister. First of all, Li Xuan registered for the bag that Zhou Wen took with him. The main character took out tea from there that restores blood and invited his friend to try it. But he refused, not wanting to get side effects, such as lethal concentration. After the guys finished talking to each other, Wei Yang joined them and greeted Zhou Wen. The girl immediately invited the hero to join her club, and at the time of the offer approached him quite close. Li Wei Yang pointed at her comrades, trying to lure Zhou Wen with beautiful senior students. Suddenly, Li Xuan intervened in the conversation and covered the main character with his hand and said that he had been part of his team for a long time. Li Xuan, after saying many important words, began to drool, considering it vile to take advantage of the beauty of girls. Zhou Wen apologized to Li Wei Yang and refused her offer, since he had long promised Xuan to be with him at the club. She simply smiled in response and, straightening her hair in front of the guy's eyes, did not ask anything else about this. Li Wei Yang and her friends began to go out on business, and Wei Yang told the main character that she really hoped to work with him someday and help each other. Li Xuan agreed with his elder sister by answering instead of Zhou Wen, who did not speak at all. Over time, Li Xuan's elder sister's group moved far enough away from the guys watching where they were going. Li Xuan immediately began to tease the main character, who in his opinion, missed a good chance to be surrounded by such beautiful girls all the time, ready to help him at any moment. Zhou Wen was tired of such jokes and therefore he asked not to repeat this again. The guy also became interested in why they were sitting in one place instead of starting to look for suitable comrades for the planned group. The main character wanted to hurry up with the search plans, because right in front of them, all the newcomers were being sorted out by older guys who wanted to expand their clubs. It came to the point that Li Xuan appreciated the ability of freshmen like them to gather the desired number of participants and therefore emphasized the rule that students have the right to create a club only after studying at the university for one month. It was because of this that their squad could not register. Zhou Wen listened to his friend, not understanding why they were in this place without the right to create a club. Li Xuan just wanted to sit with him and look at beautiful girls. Having heard this from a friend, the main character grabbed his clothes and began to shake him with anger. Suddenly a girl appeared nearby who knew Zhou Wen's name very well and called him. The main character, hearing a woman's voice, turned around to find out who she was. As it turned out, it was Fan Ruoshi along with the silent Tian Xiang Dong. And the guys greeted each other, recalling how long it had been since they had seen each other since all the stories that happened at school. Finding himself right in front of the main character, Tian Xiangdong spoke first of all, asking whether Zhou Wen expected to meet them when he entered the university. The main character guessed that there would be people who managed to go further, and for some reason considered this an inexplicable coincidence. Suddenly, Li Xuan put his hand on his shoulder, wanting to know who the beautiful girl in front of him was. Zhou Wen quickly told about the school days spent with Fang Ruoshi. It seemed strange to Li Xuan that he did not know the girl, although this was connected with the school where he himself studied. Such stupidity on the part of Zhuan, who came to school only for some subjects, made the main character very angry. A few minutes later, Li Xuan invited Fang Ruoshi to join the club they created, and the girl quickly agreed to the proposal without thinking anything through. Then Li Xuan said that the guys would be able to join only after they had studied at the university for exactly one month in order to obtain permission and therefore Li Xuan asked if those interested were ready. Fang Ruoshi did not consider this a problem and therefore was ready to wait as long as it took. Having finished speaking, the girl began to approach the main character. Bowing before Zhou Wen, she loudly asked the guy for forgiveness for not accepting him into her team to test his fighting skills during school days. Fang Ruoxi did not raise her head while telling how much she did not want the main character to fail the exam because of her. Li Xuan watched what was happening from the side and could not fully understand whether Fang Ruxi entered that very university only with the goal of apologizing to the main character. Zhou Wen himself considered the guys not to blame for everything that happened, and he was not going to blame them. Then Tian Xiangdong joined the conversation, who agreed with his own innocence, believing that they were simply forced to act as it happened, and he promised not to do that again. 
Li Xuan interrupted his longtime acquaintances, simply wanting not to waste time finding out the past, because they still needed to complete their work. Zhuan hinted that it was gradually starting to get dark and ordered his new comrades to return home to have a good rest before the very first day of classes. Zhou Wen suddenly became interested in the test of combat skills that, in his opinion, would take place in the city of the Buddha. And this is exactly what the hero asked Li Xuan about. Only now a friend pointed out his mistake, since the territory of the city of Buddha was recently discovered by the military, and among this area they found many unknown threats that students are not able to pass on the first day. Fan Ruoxi suggested that the place chosen by the university itself would be safe because they are based solely on past years where quite a lot of people suffered. According to the girl's story, the test consisted of eliminating spatial creatures and the rating would be based on the number of destroyed monsters. It was generally unclear to the main character how the guys knew all this information and how they actually managed to find the data of the pending test for admission to the university. Fan Ruoxi was surprised that the main character does not read the forum at all, where the university posts information about further testing of his abilities. After everything that happened, Zhou Wen went home and walking along the way, he thought about all the information he had received. The guy was mainly interested in the spatial form that Fan Ruoxi mentioned. Zhou Wen owned some data related to this forum, which was created thanks to the Commonwealth with the goal of allowing people of different spatial zones to transmit important information to each other. Over time, the main character returned home, thinking about how he had previously been lucky not to encounter the danger zone. And that is why he did not pay attention to the fact that thanks to the spatial form, all people communicate with each other. Still, the guy wanted to learn how to use this forum. The main character was so fixated on the spatial forum that, looking at his phone, he did not hear people approaching him with a question regarding admission to the university for special reasons. Joe Wan did not expect to hear someone's voice, and because of this began to look around trying to find the source of all the questions. As it turned out, that same voice belonged to a girl slightly shorter than the main character, and she tried with all her might to attract the guy's attention. Joe Wan, adhering to his manners, introduced himself to the young girl and told how long he had been living in this house. It was then that a girl named Wang Lu and she didn't mind at all if Zhou Wen called her Xiao Lu. The girl spent a long time telling how she managed to come to this house and become the protagonist's new neighbor. Suddenly, Wang Lu noticed the disappearance of Zhou Wen. Although he had not been standing in front of her for a long time, she tried to understand where the new neighbor managed to disappear in just a few seconds while she introduced herself to him. After thinking for a very long time regarding the disappearance of the main character, Wang Lu heard a loud sound of a door banging on the upper floors of the house. Looking in the direction where that blow occurred, the girl considered the main character a rather strange neighbor who didn't really talk to her. At the same moment in time, Zhou Wen returned to his room, threw all his things on the bed and went to take care of unfinished business. First of all, the guy opened a forum about which I had to find out so much information and read some important information. Zhou Wen flipped through every article or news that he came across. He was going to find exactly the data that his new comrades were talking about. And even Li Xuan guessed for her. From all the unnecessary rubbish, the main character received knowledge about the forum site in which, in addition to the university itself, students can fix various things and they can receive valuable points for their further exchange for rewards. Scrolling through the posts, Joe One came across a notification where exact identification confirmation was not needed, and this surprised him quite a bit. According to the main character, detailed non-concern about the security of the forum was dangerous and useful for shady individuals who wanted to use the forum for their own purposes. Afterwards, the guy opened a forum item called System Rewards, in which each person is able to exchange the points received for more valuable resources, ranging from crystals to pet eggs. Zhou Wen sat down on the chair, realizing that there was only one method to get the required points, and that way was to publish various materials within the general forum. After a few searches for the description of the forum, the main character found out for posts that are poorly paid even with a large number of views from other users. But there were some functions for which the author of publications could get more points. And for this, he just needed to post paid content. Joe One thought about the price of paid materials, the content of which should correspond to the given points. 
In addition to everything, the forum was anonymous all over the world, and the main character, intending to gain the trust of other people, wanted to gain popularity on his account. The guy had a misunderstanding about what price to follow, because he was based on the Commonwealth together with the university who used the forum and upload data there for a fairly low price. All factors forced the main character to better think about the essence of the material that he would definitely decide to buy. From long thoughts, the guy's muscles became tired and he began to stretch them. A little later, Zhou Wen finally figured out what information could be posted and sent a statement to the Spatial Forum. At the very moment when the main character posted the publication, a woman from the university team was scrolling through the forum feed while at home. She saw in the messages only stupid conversations of students and those who had just entered the university. Each of these guys talked about how they were spending their time and did not explain important information at all. The woman continued to scroll through with the desire to beat every person who was sorting out any unnecessary trash as hard as possible, when suddenly she saw something very shocking to her attention. In the spatial forum, one of the university teachers noticed a posted strategy for passing the small Buddha temple for which a person wanted to get 20,000 points. This forced the girl to leave her comfortable position and begin to look at the publication, trying to understand how someone could find data on a secret place. The girl who had previously been watching the main character was simply beside herself, because an unknown person managed to find out the secret name of a dangerous area that was classified by the military. And most teachers simply do not know the name of this territory. An incredibly high price from a new forum user created little trust in the woman, but still she thought about it. Because she couldn't know for sure whether those who posted the publication were scammers, the woman wanted to have the opportunity to turn the large losses of the military. It came to the point that she bought all the data on the small Buddha temple. The publication itself described what method can be used to get to dangerous territory, thanks to the skill of calming the heart and the crystal from the Buddha's heart lotus monster. The author of the data warned the buyer about the danger inside the sought-after temple and ordered not to enter there. The mention of calming the heart at just a mortal level made the buyer not trust the data, and she considered everything to be a simple deception. Meanwhile, while things were going quite well with the purchase, the main character went to the dungeon of the ancient imperial city and immediately began to fight against the bone commander with the help of his flying ant. The enemy did not succeed at all in following the movements of the flying pet which is able to easily dodge at the moment of striking other monsters. Over time, the Bone General lost sight of the ant and, looking around, tried to find it and eliminate it as soon as possible. Suddenly, strong magic struck from the sky, causing the ground under the Bone Ant's feet to collapse and pull the monster inside. The reason for all the destruction was precisely the flying ant, which, having come into contact with the enemy, was preparing to strike him with its sharp sting. The ant's blow was aimed at one point, and the attack went straight to the head of the bone creature. When the sting reached the desired point, a surge of magic formed around it. A little later, the enemy was finally defeated, and scattering through the air, the monster left behind a pet egg. When Joe Wan took the resulting egg into his hands, he was not particularly happy, because to obtain it, he had to fight with one monster for a long time and do several such repeated battles. The main character, without thinking, threw the legendary egg into the mouth of a flying ant and told him to eat exactly this, most of all upsetting the guy who wants to quickly see how strong his pet can become. The ant immediately began to chew only the food he received, and absolutely nothing happened to him. This slightly upset the main character who asked the monster to quickly grow at least a few centimeters. Zhou Wan thought about the factor why the flying ant, due to its nature, is very poorly compatible with the skeleton general and the guy decided to go a little further than the map. A few minutes later, they were flying around the area in search of some opponents or other interesting places. Since the main character went in search of skeletons, a lot of time has passed, and he has not found absolutely not a single monster. Such a lack of enemies throughout the territory of the Bone General began to worry Joe Wan. Little by little, the main character reached the part of the city where the zones covered with squeaks and dirt begin which actually came as a surprise to the guy. In just a few seconds, a huge tower appeared in front of the main character, which is an ancient imperial city called Ebotai. What happened inside the game made Zhou Wan a little worried because he had no idea how such an incredibly large tower ended up where it had not been before. 
The main character took into account the name of the ancient city, which was named after Ibo the son of Ku, who was one of the five legendary emperors. This man over the course of his life became the incarnation of the god of fire, and he used the tower for the purpose of observing celestial bodies. Sitting in his room, Zhou Wen did not fully understand why this tower was located in a completely different place from its current location. The guy could only draw such conclusions after reading information from educational books. Suddenly, the main character saw something inside the game that really shocked him. This phenomenon was that something incomprehensible flew straight out of the ancient city, and it was enveloped in hot flames. After trying to find out what the monster really is, it began to attack the main character, and he barely managed to dodge. The enemy creature flew a little further, preparing to strike again, and this time aimed at the flying ant. The enemy moved incredibly fast, and in flight, it changed the target to the main character. It was then that the movements of the fiery pet became much faster than at the beginning. Joe One saw perfectly well how the monster was heading towards him, and was a little confused about what he should do best in order to stay alive, and also have time to get to the top of the ancient city and inspect every detail. Since there was no other choice but to accept a battle against an unknown creature more similar to ordinary magic, the main character began to collect spiritual energy that would help resist the hot fire of the enemy. When the creature approached fully, the guy released the collected force straight at the attacker, and he was mired in the magic formed by the contact of two completely different forces. But such an ability was unable to stop the attack of the flying creature, which appeared directly from within the skill of the protagonist. Joe Wen was immediately shocked by what happened because the blow into which he had put so much effort simply evaporated, as if the enemy were some kind of air and nothing more. After trying to defend himself, the main character was defeated and was burned by magic beyond his understanding or even assumption. Zhou Wen did not intend to simply leave this case closed because he did not have time to investigate anything, and therefore drank a drink that restores vital strength. When the cup was completely empty, the main character hit it on the table and was preparing to re-enter the game in order to return to the last stage of his passage. Returning to the enemy, Zhou Wen used the flight method, because the fastest way to move without paying attention is that a flying ant is not able to fly higher when dragging its owner. An unknown creature continuously followed the main character who, with the help of his pet, is trying to get almost to the very top of the ancient city of Ebotai. Suddenly, Zhou Wen noticed a very important detail in the movements of the enemy who, when he failed to eliminate the flying ant, redirected himself to one closer to the ancient city. All this seemed to the main character a good idea to become bait, until the pet launched a stealth strike from the back. After a pre-planned plan, the main character separated from his pet, preparing to take on the battle, and therefore ordered the flying ant to quickly hide somewhere from the gaze of an unexplored creature that is capable of covering a long distance without difficulty. The enemy did not notice the disappearance of the ant, and therefore took the main character as the target, who almost reached the steps leading straight into the ancient buildings of the city. It was then that the flying pet began to do the job according to its master's plan and eliminated the fiery creature before it could reach Joe One. The guy mocked the enemy's failure to stop him on the way to very important data hidden inside the tower. The victory was achieved thanks to the magic light needle of a flying ant, which fights quite well against the firebird. Zhou Wen, looking at the body of the falling monster, did not quite understand the essence of what was happening because he had not received a system notification regarding the elimination of the attacking creature. But since he didn't have much time, the main character decided to continue climbing the steps leading to the unexplored part on his map. A short time later, two more firebirds began to fly towards Zhou Wen and they looked much more powerful than the first monster. In order not to waste a lot of time and energy on movement, the main character asked the flying ant to distract the attackers a little. Then the pet went towards the enemies, obeying this order, and in order to provide itself with a speed greater than that of its opponents, the ant used the skill of silver wings. There were only a few seconds left before the two sides came into contact, and one of them had to lose the right to life. But at the last moment, the flying ant changed its flight direction and soared higher than the main character, thereby attracting the attention of his pursuers. The tower reacted very strongly to a person approaching closer and closer, and wanting to protect something important, 
it made the fire much stronger in order to keep all pests away. From the top of the tower, a large number of monsters poured out of the fire at once, and each of these creatures only wanted to eliminate the main character who had crossed the line unacceptable to an ordinary person. Joe One was greatly infuriated by the attempts of every existing monster to prevent him from reaching his goal, and the guy with a dissatisfied face continued to run because he wanted to take at least one look at what could be hiding at the top and why he was so protected by so many firebirds. The main character had no intention of running away from problems and therefore jumped higher than all the attacking birds, while he did not stop praying for success for a second. Finding himself directly behind a group of opponents, Joe One used his ashen palm and managed to temporarily disable the enemies from their normal state. Over time, the successful continuation of the path, the main character saw a blazing fire in front of him that reacted to the approach of a person. And among all the fire, the guy saw a certain image of an object. It was then that Zhou Wen saw a small inscription appear for a while while the fire was raging. Because of what he saw, the main character instantly exploded while in the sky and did not even have time to properly investigate the entire territory of the ancient city. The entire playthrough of the game ended in defeat, and Zhou Wen was deprived of the opportunity to check the place where the secret inscription was hidden. The main character was sitting in his room, remembering the inscription he had seen on a stone monument. The guy was trying to make out what the word emperor could mean, because something like this was never written in textbooks on searching for ancient relics, or in general, cities similar to the one he found. Zhou Wan could only assume that the dungeon found should be created on the basis of a real ancient town called Guide, which, in fact, absolutely every strong person can enter. The city in the real world seemed to the main character very similar to the game one and was completely a copy of it. Only the inscriptions on these cities were completely different and had nothing in common. The guy was trying to understand why, after eliminating the firebirds, he did not receive notifications. And just the thought of summoning these creatures, thanks to the skill of spiritual power, showed the main character fatigue. Joe One did not even want to imagine how strong the boss is who summoned smaller creatures. The main character, with the fatigue he had accumulated over the whole day, exhaled and tried to take a little break from the Tower of the Fire God, because at the moment he was absolutely powerless, and attempts to start exploring this place would simply be a failure, and there was a chance of losing a lot of time. Suddenly, Joe Wan received 40,000 points for purchasing two of his publications in a spatial forum accessible to everyone. The main character was happy for the quick purchase because not every user with low profile ratings and little celebrity among other people around the world can get such easy money. A little later, after receiving a generous profit, the main character saw on the screen of his monitor very important information received after purchasing his data. This information was a received private message sent by a person who wanted to talk to Zhou Wen about the small Buddha temple. The time on the clock continued to tick and the main character needed to quickly respond to a message from a stranger. As it turned out, the same person who wrote to the main character was a girl associated with military affairs and other things that happen on the territory of the university. Wang Fei could not get an answer from Zhou Wan and was a little worried about this. It was important for her to find out with all her might the truth regarding the information about the small Buddha temple, which is unknown to ordinary people. A short time later, the woman did not wait for an answer, and therefore called her fellow researchers, warning them that the method written in the forum publication had indeed managed to eliminate the danger inside the temple. Wang Fei communicated with a man of higher rank, and this man tried to obtain information about the person who posted such information in the general forum. This man told his friend, who had found a method of resisting the danger zone, about the problems that had arisen with the stone stele standing near the entrance to the inside of the temple. Wang Fei could only listen to his comrade about the stone steelies with the cultivation method, which in the girl's opinion could be shown in absolutely every other place, not necessarily if this is a dangerous territory. Wang Fei was worried about this because she had heard many rumors about people who had studied a similar cultivation method and they had gained incredible power, inexplicable to any person. It was then that the comrade added words that were much more dangerous than Van Fei seems. The man spoke about his research of this place and the features of the stone on which the method of brief Prajnaparamita is written. 
Behind this man, there were many killed people. The man explained to Wang Fei that everyone who wants to learn a detailed cultivation method will soon simply die, suffering until the very end. Wang Fei, having heard about what had happened, was speechless and could only look out the window, trying to understand why something terrifying could have happened. The comrade then added that he was not going to sacrifice people simply because at the moment they did not know the conditions that must be adhered to when studying this kind of cultivation methods, and the man wanted to do his best to get news from the person who posted the publication. A few hours later, Wang Feng managed to get a response from the main character, who was trying to find out why the buyer needed to contact him through an anonymous chat. Wang Feng was glad to see the answer, although this could not be said from her face, but the girl continued to type the text, thanks to which she would be able to find out everything related to the Buddha temple. Zhou Wen, having thought about what he saw on the screen, quickly answered the question regarding the brief Prajnaparamita, which the guy, in his opinion, had studied well. Wang Feng, after reading the message, even smiled slightly, because she initially assumed that a person unknown to her could own all the data relating to the Buddha temple. At this point in time, the main character was sitting in the room reading all the messages that came from the buyer, and he considered the conversation too boring. It was then that the girl sent a question about a method by which there was a chance to study the method of cultivating short prajnaparamita, and she was ready to pay quite a lot only after learning the truth. Joe Wan thought about it after reading such a question, because he didn't fully understand the peculiarity of this method. The guy didn't even consider it special enough to know the methods. When suddenly the main character remembered that he was able to study prajnaparamita, initially feeling a headache and losing consciousness, he instantly remembered how the lost sutra of immortality saved him from death and then managed to learn another cultivation method. Zhou Wen, having finished remembering how one can overcome the danger in teaching short prajnaparamita and sat down normally in his chair, the guy intended to write a letter to the person who wanted to receive more data so that he would simply stop thinking about acquiring a cultivation method. The main character understood how dangerous it was to disclose such information to completely unknown people who would undoubtedly try to harm him or even eliminate him if they tried to lie. Without writing a single notification to the buyer, who had been waiting for a long time, the main character simply turned off the anonymous chat between them. A whole day has passed since that moment and Zhou Wan went to the university building where there should soon be a meeting of only admitted students who want to meet each other as soon as possible. Many people have already gathered inside the building, waiting to be completely assigned to groups and to receive information in which building they will need to study for several years. Among the entire crowd, Li Xuan appeared and greeted the main character, who at first did not even pay much attention to him. Zhou Wan, Hearing the voice of a familiar person turned to look at him and looked simply terrifying. The guy was continuously drinking his prepared recuperation drink. Li Xuan, placing her hands on the shoulder of the main character with a depressing aura, asked him to better control his desires, because of which he is actually so tired. Zhou Wan listened to the dissatisfaction of his group comrade and continued to drink the drink, remembering the reason why he did not get enough sleep. The same reason turned out to be that the guy spent the whole night trying to explore the ant cave. Thanks to these trainings, the flying pet was much stronger in fighting, unlike the main character and the bone ant, whose opponents tore them to shreds. Suddenly, a beautiful girl came up to the students, bewitching every guy, and she asked everyone to be silent for a while because the greeting would begin soon. This girl was Wang Fei, who from that moment became the curator of the group in which Zhou Wan is a member. Wang Fei properly introduced herself to her students, telling a little information about herself. Every person saw her as just a beautiful woman, but in fact she was very tired after all night waiting for an answer from a mysterious person for her who simply ignored Wang Fei. In order to dispel the sad atmosphere in the class, it was Li Xuan who decided to joke about the beauty of their curator and asked her directly if Wang Fei would like to become his concubine as some kind of ruler. Such behavior simply destroyed the main character standing next to him. In response to such jokes from Li Xuan, the curator replied that she was not at all against such a proposal and ordered the guy to first complete his studies at the university. After all the conversation, Wang Fei picked up the documents in which the details of the pending exam were written. At the beginning of the story, 
it became not entirely clear to the main character about the number of days given for the formation of the detachment and the subsequent battle with these guys against the demonic general somewhere in the Hulao Passes. Wang Fei Race said the last part of the exam in which students who must eliminate the enemy within one and a half minutes, and those who cannot do this will simply be expelled from the university. Hearing something like that, all the guys started screaming at the top of their voices, not understanding why it would be so hard. Their screams quickly spread throughout the surroundings of the building in which they are located. The students tried to find out from their supervisor why the severity of passing the test is so difficult even for people who are only on the mortal level. Wang Fei was a little tired of listening to such a statement from the guys who had not even tried to start doing something, and she ordered to better prepare for the exam, which any prepared person can pass. When the curator's speech about the current circumstances in which the children will have to fight ended, Wang Fei added that the students receive the right from now on to freely enter the territory of the Hu Lao Pass for 10 days and can study it as long as they have the consent of the teachers. Smiling, the curator joked about her hope to meet the full team of students at the end of the exam. In this way, she tried to cause some fear and despair in the guys when it came to that very pass. While the teacher was talking about everything in order, being on the side, Li Xuan thought about the demonic general, trying to remember at least some information about this monster and the guy's thoughts seemed quite interesting to Zhou Wen. First of all, Li Xuan remembered the powerful spatial creatures that are often found in the pass, which has become a real ancient battlefield. And the very target that the students need to eliminate is the most powerful among the legendary creatures. Apart from all the danger that had developed inside the examination space, there were some generals who had reached almost the strongest stage of the legendary level. Li Xuan did not fully understand why mortal-level students would have to fight against monsters much stronger than them in all characteristics. Such tasks were not given even to some guys who had reached the legendary level, and this was the biggest oddity in Li Xuan's opinion. It was then that the main character asked his friend to simply come to terms with the detailed conditions of passing the exam, and instead, he wanted to investigate as best as possible the area about which there were so many stories. A few hours later, in the teacher's room, a person from the team doubted the plan of Wang Fei, who specifically chose a test to pass a level that only talented students can master. And for ordinary mortal level people, consider it a stupid attempt to achieve results. Wang Fei, on the other hand, was not at all worried about such trifles, because she had previously published several detailed publications on the forum regarding the demonic general, the girl considered such help to students to be quite a useful thing, and then they themselves should decide what to do. Afterwards, she added exceptions for those passing the exam in case of failure, which was actually a bluff on the part of Wang Fei, so that the guys would not relax, considering the battle as just a fun time. The whole deception took place in order to prepare people inexperienced in battles for further contact with stronger opponents who far exceed human abilities. At the same moment in time, the main character went to the place where the intergovernmental portal is located, which will quickly transfer the exam participants to the point they require. As it turned out, Zhou Wen went with Li Xuan, and in order to enter the portal they first needed to take a photo to get an identity check. Li Xuan, unlike the main character, behaved too relaxed and even posed at every opportunity. The guys managed to go further to a military-protected point and continue straight into the dangerous territory of passing the university entrance test. Entering the portal, they found themselves in a completely different place. The place that the teachers warned about was completely covered with sand, and people went there in order to find their corresponding pets. Almost all the surroundings of the Hulao Pass were swallowed up by sandstorms, which significantly disturbed the students. In this territory, there were quite a lot of demonic monsters awaiting fierce battles. These monsters were much more similar to humans than to any monster. Monsters with eyes filled with magic were close enough to the starting point from where students would soon have to begin training or searching for the required data regarding the Hulao Pass. Li Xuan was above the monsters, not understanding why there were so many demonic soldiers in these places. Over time, Li Xuan wanted to quickly get to the main monster given on the assignment. Only Zhou Wen asked him to risk his own life less, because he himself was not strong in case some danger happened and he needed to save Li Xuan. Such caution on the part of the main character seemed quite prudent to Li Xuan, 
and the guy just wanted to have a little fun. Having received a refusal, Li Xuan was upset and depressed. Then the main character followed further, wanting to better examine the surroundings, and in order not to disappear from sight, warned his comrade about this, who was not at all against letting him go alone. Zhou Wen went through the task without going down to dangerous monsters. The main character looked around, wanting to find something important for him, since the guy expected to see in this place of the dungeon, listed in the game as well as the ancient city of Buddha and other places. Suddenly, he saw in front of him a statue in the shape of a monster, and an important detail could be seen among its teeth. Over time, the main character managed to see what the figurine was among the stone tablet, and there was the same mark as in the cave of the Buddha's heart lotus. Zhou Wen was happy enough to see the familiar logo and was preparing to view it with his phone, so that at the right moment, he could experience it inside the game without risking his life. At this moment in time, on another part of the map, battles between students and demonic monsters were in full swing. Not far from them was Li Xuan, who considered the protagonist too cautious regarding enemies. Looking at the fighters, he could only assume that two mortal-level people were capable of eliminating one demon soldier. Suddenly, Zhou Wen appeared behind him and wanted to return back to the rest of the university students, and Li Xuan could only agree with his friend. At that moment, when Li Xuan quickly agreed to return to his business, he saw the protagonist's face incredibly sparkling with joy, which made Li Xuan a little scared. The guys began to enter the portal, talking behind the incredibly happy expression on Zhou Wen's face, who tried his best to hide it. But in fact, the main character felt great joy when receiving a new dungeon. A day has passed since his return, and the main character, sitting calmly in his room, looked at the information on the computer. As it turned out, the guy was looking at a publication posted by teacher Wang Fei. Everything he read made the main character believe in the possibility of defeating a strong opponent, and practically nothing was required for this. But in addition to the good news in the publication, Zhou Wen noticed an important notice at the end where students were asked to do their best to avoid demonic special generals with hieroglyphs on them. What he read earlier interested the main character, who had already heard from Li Xuan once about special creatures. But still, Zhou Wen was not going to waste time thinking, and therefore biting his own finger until it bled, he prepared to check the warning inside the game. The system quickly copied the new dungeon map and acquired the monster icon. In a few seconds, the protagonist's character appeared on the building in Hulao Pass and could normally inspect the entire environment. The guy quickly jumped off the wall and began to fall to the ground where squads of demonic soldiers had previously been located. Upon landing completely, the main character attracted some attention from the enemies. Zhou Wen raised his head and began to smile too strangely towards the demonic soldiers. The smile was only because he quickly eliminated a large detachment of enemies without having time to react to a regular magical attack. The main character stopped for a while, releasing spiritual energy from his body. The guy stood in this position, thinking about how weak the monsters turned out to be, which people called strong enough for beginning university students. Suddenly, behind his back, two unknown personalities flew into the sky, to which the guy simply could not help but react. After almost all the monster squads were destroyed, it turned out that the main character randomly fell into the trap of the remaining demonic soldiers, who decided to attack while the person was distracted by other matters. The demonic soldiers were eager to eliminate Zhou Wen, and their faces showed an absolute readiness to do so given the good situation. But the opponents failed when the main character eliminated two demonic soldiers with one blow and cut their bodies into several parts. Everything was possible thanks to a flying ant hiding nearby, which initially served to destroy ambushes like this one. Having resolved the problems with the attackers, the main character moved further along the path of searching for the most dangerous creatures that can only be found in this lifeless exam territory. Every time detachments of demonic soldiers appeared, Zhou Wen used new abilities that caused more damage with an unfinished attack. With this attack, the guy tried to quickly kill the interfering monsters on the way. Zhou Wen met with an enemy who possessed more advanced defensive resources and steel armor. The monster was waiting for the moment when the person would be distracted by something else, and it would be possible to deliver a fatal blow. Only his attempt to attack was completely unsuccessful, because the main character quickly reanimated the attacker's movement, and therefore managed to throw back the demonic warrior with the help of fire magic. 
When the monster with the face of a demon died near his head, the leg of a monster completely different from the previously eliminated creatures stepped in. The main character could not simply lose sight of the new monster that appeared right in front of him. Joe One looked carefully at the creature, which in addition to its red color, differed from the rest in its equipment. Each part of the demon's weapon was made from the highest quality fossils. It was while the man was looking at him that the monster began to smile, wanting to quickly eliminate the enemy, and a bright hieroglyph lit up right on his helmet. Seeing this, the main character was happy because after long battles, he managed to find that very special demonic general about whom Wang Fei had told so much in the spatial forum of the university. Without hesitating to decide what to do best, Zhou Wen sent a flying ant to the demonic general in order to eliminate him. The monster with the hieroglyph on its head quickly reacted to attempts to attack it and managed to push off the ground with its weapon and disappear from its location. After the demonic general landed back on the ground, an equally powerful monster appeared under his feet, serving him as a traveling buddy. This general moved from his place towards the flying ant, and while moving waved his spear in order to shoot down the protagonist's pet. Hitting the ground with a weapon, the demonic general destroyed the surface of the earth, which served him as several attacks from an invisible zone. Only the ant managed to overcome the dangers by dodging as best as possible. As the battle progressed, the flying pet ended up behind the general and was preparing to shoot with a sharp sting. The attack went straight to the monster and hit his shoulder, ending up in the back. The magic of the flying ant had a great effect. A few minutes later, a special demonic general used a magical ability that formed a great flaming flower around him. That wound from the flying ant was not able to resist the stronger magic of another monster and began to fade over time. It only took a few seconds for the monster to destroy the enemy's human force and managed to restore lost strength. The demonic general prepared to respond to the main character in the same way and to make the blow much stronger. The monster covered his trident with powerful spiritual energy. The demonic general was completely ready for battle and hit the air with the ground with his trident in order to cause a further effect of the manifestation of a fiery cut as well as a wave of dust that should prevent the enemy from better navigating. The main character, standing on the sidelines, considered such a plan to be completely stupid, because a flying ant is able to easily evade thanks to its wings. Zhou Wen praised his pet to the fullest, without even having time to win the battle. Only the demonic general was not at all as easy as expected. In order to reach the pet above him, the general used his monster and jumped into the sky. The distance between the flying ant and his opponent was far enough so that the unusual demonic general had little chance of landing a blow at all. It was at this moment that the enemy formed a magic ball near himself, unknown to the main character. Both externally and in terms of the matter with which the ball was formed was unknown to Joe One. The magic ball headed towards the flying ant and emitted a more ominous electrical force as it approached it. After the demonic general created the ball, it quickly came into contact with the flying ant and directly caused great harm to it. This technique was followed by a resolving blow that eliminated the flying ant with just one weak attack. Having been defeated by his pet, the main character could not understand what the very skill of spiritual power was that the enemy managed to defeat. The speed of movement of the demonic general simply shocked the guy, and he could not calmly continue to fight. Only now the game did not stop in one place, and the demonic general was preparing to strike a successive blow that would decide who would be the winner in this fight. He threw his trident straight towards where Zhou Wen, who was currently deep in thought, was located. This strong throw left a huge hole inside the protagonist's character from which it is impossible to simply heal and continue fighting. Due to the quick defeat, the main character's hands began to shake, and it was difficult for him to hold the phone. Zhou Wen felt fear from the powerful aura of the unusual demon general, and the guy wanted to quickly get something like that in his favor. Since the defeat, the main character could only evaluate and compare the characteristics of the flying ant with the demonic general. The guy did not fully understand the strength of the enemy who easily managed to surpass the pet with an incredible speed high even for the legendary level. Zhou Wen was alarmed by the possibility that the general had obtained the strongest stage of the legendary level a long time ago. In order to check some assumptions, the guy returned back to the new location. Zhou Wen tried to repeat his every move and, to begin with, 
jumped from the place where the university inspection would soon take place. Only now, instead of a meaningless battle with small opponents, the main character used his wings and flew towards where he had previously died. He flew straight over the heads of the demonic soldiers who were unable to notice the person's movement. A few hours later in the flight, the main character noticed a stone ledge in front of him among the sandy territory. Zhou Wen landed nearby and tried to find the general who for some reason disappeared in the last round and then did not appear again on the way to this place. Suddenly, an unknown force began to fly towards him, trying to cut his body into two parts. But such an attack failed to hit the main character, who deviated to the side, and the magic caught the very stone. Zhou Wen jumped back to a safe distance to inspect the attacking creatures. These monsters turned out to be a new type of demonic soldiers who fought using spears and magic. Looking at the phone, the main character was a little surprised to see a special creature that very rarely appears in front of people. As he stopped thinking about the monsters he saw, the main character called for help from a flying ant, which instantly camouflaged itself in the environment. Joe One spent quite a lot of time sitting on his phone and endlessly clicking on the screen so that he would not be defeated by the game monsters. Every move that the main character tried to make greatly decided whether he could win the battle against a large number of enemies. In the game itself, the flying ant quickly destroyed the bodies of demonic soldiers who tried to attack its owner from the back or simply in the forehead. During a long battle, the main character managed to obtain from the body of those eliminated a strange purple stone that emitted a bright glow. Joe One came closer to him, thinking how much stronger the demonic general was than his ordinary copies of the soldiers. Taking the fallen crystal in his hands, the main character was able to see some characteristics of the so-called spiritual power crystal at the 15th level. But he had no understanding at all of what this item was. Joe Wen did not want to use a crystal that could simply disappear without giving him any benefit, since almost all the characteristics of the main character had reached the limit of their capabilities. Having given up even thinking about such things, the guy ran further to explore a new location in which he was trying to find a demonic general with a tattoo. Joe Wen was trying to find this monster because he was getting in the way of fully obtaining important information. A little time later, the main character reached a huge building located somewhere behind the sandy mountains across the path on which many bloodthirsty opponents were moving. Zhou Wen ran closer and closer trying to understand whether it was Hulao Pass. He had many doubts due to the fact that he had been lucky enough to get into some kind of problems more than once. It was then that he saw an unknown glow on the top of the roof of the building, which only became brighter as he approached. As it turned out, this light was a magic arrow aimed straight at the heart of the main character. Upon contact with a person, the magic quickly spread throughout his body and thereby destroyed all life in Zhou Wen. A quick death like this angered the main character, who did not understand who could eliminate him with the help of an ordinary arrow. The guy screamed in the real world because he felt incredible resentment. Zhou Wen tried to go all the way again and connected to the game. The character was just starting to rewrite the data received in the last battle and was scanning the character's state. The main character wanted to return to the place of death due to the fact that he did not see where the magic arrow was sent from at all. The guy relied on his own hearing, with the help of which he was able to find out the place from where the arrow was fired. Over time, the plan switched to fast movement, thanks to which the enemy should not have time to react to the person. Joe Wan flew to the abandoned building with lightning speed, using all his skills. He flew through the air, connecting the wings of a flying monster with his body, and the pet, in turn, helped with his silver wing techniques. But even such skills were unable to preserve the integrity of the life of the protagonist, who died right in the air, for the same reason he died much earlier than the first time he passed to the abandoned Hulao Pass. In real time, Joe Wan was consumed by misunderstanding why he could not go further, even using the silver flash of a flying ant, which should do its best to divert the attention of other creatures from users. Receiving defeat after defeat, the main character decided not to continue the passage and to ensure his own safety, go to the Spatial Forum in order to obtain some data on demonic generals with a mark. Since the beginning of the search for information, the main character has scrolled through more than a thousand publications on the forum and still continued to do this. The guy was very upset because during his search, 
he did not find a single hint of an excellent publication that could help him in the battle against the demonic general. Of all the publications that Joe Wan found, in his opinion, only a few were good, and the rest were ordinary stupidity for inexperienced students. The main character accepted the danger of going alone straight into the territory outside the gate, through which, according to history, several people of epic level tried to break through, and they were all defeated. From that very moment, entry closer than two kilometers to the gate became prohibited to every new student and some teachers who did not have reached a sufficient level. At the same time, Zhou Wan could not find useful information about the demonic general with the hieroglyph, but references to dangerous creatures appearing in the territory of the further exam were still located on the forum. Zhou Wan relaxed, considering it useless to rely on someone else, since he was the only person able to go further without putting his life in danger. After such words, the piercing on the protagonist's ear suddenly lit up and made strange sounds. At the end of the sound that suddenly appeared, a tyrant appeared on the knees of the protagonist, who made the same sounds. Zhou Wan understood the reason for the problems that had arisen. It was that the pet had not received its supply of food for a long time and needed to be fed as soon as possible. In order to calm the tyrant for a while, the main character began to stroke his head. Zhou Wan touched the tyrant's nose, wondering what he should do better. It all came to the point that he decided to go to the imperial city in order to get some food for a new pet and a flying ant with silver wings. Suddenly, a harmless creature swallowed the protagonist's hand, and biting it caused a flow of blood, which was actually very painful for the guy. A short time later, after being bitten, the main character screamed in agony throughout the whole house, and this was heard by a new neighbor in the apartment who completely mistook him for a strange person. At this moment, it began to get dark in the Hulao Pass, and the danger of investigating the territory became much more dangerous, because at night, there is a great chance of meeting a dangerous creature who wants to eliminate a person. But even under such conditions, there were guys who wanted to quickly advance in strength and use their skills on monsters with whom they could still fight on an equal basis. Each of these guys fought in a squad following the rules of the university. They attacked one enemy who was capable of mastering a spear, and this monster took all the ice attacks on his body. But the magical power of people was not strong enough to harm the demonic soldier who with one cry destroyed every ice flying towards him. Not far from the fighting students was teacher Wang Fei, who observed the entire situation in order to assess the abilities of the applicants. The curator did not quite understand why the main character, after first coming to this place, did not appear again. Although quite a lot of time had passed, unlike him, they trained almost every day and tried to become stronger by learning from their mistakes. At the same time, Zhou Wen was in his room, and, lying on his bed, continued to play on the phone. He did not look away because he had not yet completely obtained food for his pets. The most optimal choice that came to the guy's mind was to go to the floor with the lotus of the Buddha's heart. The battle eventually led to the explosion of the monster and his special technique of releasing purple steam. Having defeated the monster, the main character received a crystal of spiritual power from it. Only it was slightly different in appearance when compared with the demonic soldiers. Having received the crystal, Zhou Wen was very surprised by the small chance of obtaining such stones. Until that very moment, he had only found eggs of companions with which he fed his insatiable pets. Nevertheless, it came to the point that the main character used the function of absorbing the spiritual crystal and its entire energy reserve. Instantly, red energy rejoiced around his body, which slightly helped Zhou Wen concentrate on gathering all his strength to a certain point. New spiritual energy flowed through each vessel of the protagonist and thus filled them with magic unimaginable for the guy. Upon completion of the absorption procedure, Zhou Wen did not understand why this process did not cause severe discomfort. The main character could only assume such luck due to the fact that his physical characteristics increased to 11 points. It was then that a notification came about receiving a new skill by absorbing a piece of Buddha lotus flesh and this skill managed to reach the ninth level. Judging by the name, the main character could only consider the ability to belong to defensive skills. He sat near the phone trying to understand well what had befallen him. Zhou Wan rose from the bed, wanting to quickly test the acquired skill with an interesting name. When trying to use a new ability, 
A certain magical lotus flower appeared around the main character, which lived up to its name. Being inside this flower, Zhou Wen felt an incredible consumption of spiritual power that did not stop, and the protection around the guy simply absorbed magic from him. The main character failed to maintain such incredible power, and, being destroyed in the air, it weakened the guy who eventually fell to his knees. Looking at the remnants of spiritual energy in his hands, the main character understood the danger of using the skill for a long time, and therefore planned to use it as little as possible until the required moment arrived. Zhou Wen had no idea how strong such a defense technique could be, and in order to use someone else's instead of his own powers, he entered the game where he was going to test the acquired skill of blocking opponents' attacks. When he appeared in the game, the main character immediately began to be attacked by many demonic soldiers who acted according to plan when two of the attackers began to strike, and the remaining one gave orders while being at a safe distance from the battle. None of the monsters managed to harm the guy who had prepared in advance to use the flesh of the Buddha Lotus against the demonic soldiers. When things went too badly for the monsters, and none of them were able to partially harm the defense of the protagonist, a demonic soldier located a little further than the others launched an attack across the area, which consistently caused a wave of magic mixed with a natural factor. The joint attack quickly reached Zhou Wen, who was protected for a while, and the mud covered the man along with his Buddha Lotus armor. The defense was unable to withstand such an attack and quickly collapsed, leaving the protagonist in danger from any enemy. The guy himself realized that the demonic general's blows were much stronger than these, and was still glad to see the strength of the opponent's blow weakened. Zhou Wen lay on his bed, wanting to soon test one idea that might save his life and be able to continue searching for interesting items or new strong pets. The plan was to try to grab the demonic general's magic arrow, but when it came to execution, the main character died without even having time to react to the flight of the weapon. Over time, the main one was saddened by the defeat. Not even having time to react to the attack of flying magic, he sat in the room trying to examine the acquired skill of the lotus with the heart of a Buddha. Zhou Wen did not understand why a legendary level skill like Buddha Lotus Flesh would quickly break upon contact with a flying arrow that carried magic beyond the comprehension of the protagonist. Imagining the image of the gate where the shooter is hidden, whose level, in Zhou Wen's opinion, exceeds the legendary one, the main character felt the danger of approaching that place, because with the current strength he could simply die and not find out anything. Zhou Wen returned to the game in order to simply train on weaker creatures and hoped to get a special reward or pet eggs from them. Before he had time to walk a few meters, the main character noticed a demonic general standing in front of him with his back to him. The monster did not show any factors by which one can understand whether the general is aggressive. The special demonic general stood in one place for a long time and yet turned back, sensing the presence of another living organism. When the monster completely turned to the main character and showed personal hostility towards him, he noticed that the demonic general was completely different from the one he had previously met, and the special mark on his head carried a completely different meaning. At the moment, while the main character came face to face with danger, the captain for special affairs of the Commonwealth was sitting in his office, having received an interregional warrant with which he could easily arrest Zhou Wen and was waiting for the start of the operation after preparing his comrades. This man behaved too relaxed when he ordered Lee Fox to arrest the main character. While there was not a single member of the Ann family around him, he was afraid of them because they have sufficient funds to easily put an end to the special department. At this moment, Lee Lisa, having listened to every speech of the boss, was completely ready to act according to the plan. She went into the office of the director of the university. The director himself sat still and kept his hands calm not even paying attention to the fact that for some reason, people from a secret organization of the Commonwealth entered the room. The director was interested to hear from those who came why Lee Lisa came to him because he did not fully understand what one of the students had done so terrible and why a special inspection was sent to him. Lee Lisi tried to calm down the rector of the university by telling her a plan according to which they were allowed to ask the culprit a few questions that would not harm his health. But all these words fell on deaf ears of the old man, who was not going to give Zhou Wen into the hands of the organization, after which the guy would definitely not be able to return unharmed and able to continue studying. 
Li Lisi, having listened to the old man's disagreement, understood where the further conversation was leading and decided to use a thing because of which the director would definitely not be able to refuse the offer of cooperation. She asked her ward to quickly submit the required document, and the assistant took it out to hand it to the interlocutor. Li Lisi placed the document directly on the rector's desk, waiting for him to read everything written there. The girl directly told the director to think better before refusing the Commonwealth's offer. Li Lisi put pressure on the old man, asking for every detail concerning the university, which, if the director disagrees, could easily be closed. Seeing just the inscription on the document, the director was shocked by the chaos that was happening. He was very upset because he could no longer cover Joe One for the search or detention of whom such a high-level document was used. The main character, not knowing the current situation in which he faces severe punishment, sat in his room, continuing to endlessly play on the phone. The game was in the midst of a battle against a demonic general who was using the terrain to pull opponents underground. Only such attacks turned out to be slow for the main character who flew into the sky. He could only hover over the explosions trying to find the right moment to attack. Soon, Joe One used the silver wings of a flying ant to move faster through the air. The guy moved quickly enough and almost flew to a special kind of demonic general. Noticing the human movement, the monster clenched his trident in his hands more tightly and waited for a full battle. When he dealt a magical blow that spread throughout all areas, the main character managed to quickly disappear, dissolving into thin air. Joe One quickly found himself above the demon general's head and prepared to use all possible techniques. The main character collected a lot of spiritual energy in his hand, which was directed at the enemy. In response to all attempts, the demonic general collected his own magic and released a dark aura from himself. It was thanks to this technique that the general released all the collected energy from his body and directed it to one point. This point turned out to be the main character, who was in flight and without having time to react. He was hit by magic, dividing him into two parts. After this, the main character's phone quickly turned off and the game was completely completed. Joe One was not upset by the defeat, and instead tried to understand why the demonic general who turned his own hand into a blade was so different from the special monster he had previously encountered. He remembered each general carrying different hieroglyphs on his head, which for some reason looked like a game of paper and knife. Such a sight made the main character expect to meet a monster carrying a stone hieroglyph. Zhou Wen had been planning for a long time how to defeat his enemies. The most optimal choice was to use evasions from the resolving attack in the future. The main character was very exhausted. Thinking about every detail and lying on the bed, he also wanted to try to separate from the pet in order to get priorities in the battle. The guy was well aware that he was a load for a flying ant, which, having connected with the carrier, could not use the magic light needle. Suddenly, while the guy was thinking about everything, someone knocked on the entrance door of the room. Hearing an unknown person knocking on the room, the main character quickly got out of bed, trying to figure out who needed to come to him at such a time. He thought, after all, no one had ever entered his room before. In order to examine the person standing directly behind the doors, Joe One decided to open the exit doors of the apartment a little. At the entrance, the main character saw a man dressed very strangely, and he constantly adjusted his headdress so as not to reveal his exact identity. The stranger first asked Joe One's name, and without waiting for a quick answer, ordered to follow him straight to the office of the director of the university. According to the man who appeared, the main character could only assume that the old man was going to announce very important information. But the unexpected visit to the rector did not please Zhou Wen at all, who did not fully understand why he was being called at such a late hour and why he couldn't wait until tomorrow. A little time later, the main character nevertheless followed the stranger, and they got out of the house where the guy lives. Zhou Wen's departure did not go unnoticed, and in the window of the house, one could see the image of an observing person who was very interested in spying on the main character. The observer turned out to be An Jin, for whom it seemed a strange phenomenon when Zhou Wan was taken away from home. A few hours later, the main character, following an unknown man, reached a city through which it is easy to get to the very top of the university. The current situation was very stressful for Zhou Wan, who, moving behind the stranger, saw how other people began to disappear from sight, and with every meter they walked, they found themselves in a deserted place. The case in which the main character accidentally got himself involved became much worse. And in order to take a little precaution, 
The guy stopped no longer following the path with a stranger. Joe One simply asked where this person was going, since the rector's office is located in a completely different place, and the exit from the university campus awaits ahead. When the main character started talking about this, a woman appeared in front of him and appreciated his insight. Every time the girl approached, Joe One felt apprehensive and felt as if he had met her before. This person turned out to be Lilisa, who instantly moved from her place and dealt a strong blow to the main character. The force was so powerful that the guy began to cough up blood. Joe One's strength faded over time, and he rested his hand on the ground so as not to completely lose consciousness. Li Lisi stood above him, telling him how long she had been waiting for this moment since the time the guy humiliated her. Li Lisa smiled as she was ready to beat up the main character at any moment to obtain information regarding Jing Daoxian. It was then that Zhou Wen realized that his assumptions about the old man were completely confirmed, and only somehow in the further conversation he was unable to deny this due to the beaten state of his body. When things went too badly, the main character got up from his knees, asking the attackers what punishment he would need to undergo in order to prove his innocence and lack of connections with Dioxian. The guy wanted to quickly get evidence of where he even had contact with the person who was under search operations. Lilisa, who looked very seriously angry that Joe Wan managed to get up from the ground when hit by a person at a much higher level, and the girl did not intend to wait for proof. Having received a legal arrest document, Lilisa directly told the main character that evidence would definitely appear when he was able to detain him. It was then that she sent her ward into battle, who simply had to immobilize Joe One for a while without killing him. When a person reached out to the main character with his hand, he was very frightened, and even in this state could show resistance without causing physical harm to another person. He was constantly trying to get a question regarding what punishment he would receive if he resisted. It was then that Li Lisa waved her weapon, telling how painful the death of the main character would be, who with any mistake, could lose his limbs and remain unable to do anything for the rest of his life. Over time, Li Lisa's assistant completely reached out to the main character's neck, intending to simply strangle him, and then simply take the unconscious guy to a special group of the Commonwealth who could find the required information in his head. Before he could grab Zhou Wen, a fiery image of a monster appeared in front of the man, which could at any moment eliminate the attacker on the carrier. And when Lilisa's assistant tried to strike the main character, he instantly disappeared from sight, and the magical pet disappeared into the air as if it had never been there. The attacker was left in the worst position for himself and confirmed to the commander-in-chief that the target had disappeared. Lilisi was very worried, realizing that the main character managed to escape thanks to the skill of spiritual power and ordered the assistant to find a guy who was not able to escape too far having been seriously injured. Suddenly the girl heard a sound not far from her and it attracted attention. She believed that the sounds could be made by Joe One, who could only escape from her punishment. Lilisa suggested where the fugitive from the wound might be hiding. First of all, this place was a forest very close to the place where the attack on the main character took place. For some reason, she sent her assistant there, knowing for sure that Zhou Wen was somewhere there. At this moment, the main character was actually inside the forest and moved thanks to the branches on the trees. Zhou Wen did not fully understand the reason why he was considered an accomplice of Jing Dioxian. And, keeping only this thought in his head, Li Lisa refused to listen to the innocent guy. But most of all, he was worried about the thought regarding the lost sutra of immortality received from the old man. Only for this reason, Zhou Wen could be accused of all the actions related to Jing Dioxian. Each such detail could bring the main character many dangers. When Zhou Wen was distracted by his own thoughts, magical power flew straight out of the leaves of the trees and was directed at the main character. This projectile hit Zhou Wen's body and the blow was so strong that it easily caused the guy to bleed. In addition to the shot, a huge magical hand appeared from the ground and tried to grab him. All these attacks made the main character, who was in the air, doubt the possibility of escaping. He gritted his teeth in anger towards his pursuers and was preparing to change something in order to at least have a chance to survive. Therefore, quickly turning around in the air, the main character attacked the attacking magical hand using ordinary physical abilities. Having landed on a strong surface, Zhou Wen tore his almost destroyed clothes and prepared to change the course of events. 
Lee Foxes, together with his assistant, continued to pursue a guy of only mortal level, and at the same time they themselves were legendary levels. All these factors simply took away the chance of escape, and the capture of the main character was only a matter of time. Running away from people from the Special Department of the Commonwealth, Joe One turned on the phone, trying to find there at least some clues or even a plan to avoid dangers. The phone included a map of the underground city of Buddha, with a question whether the player wanted to go inside. It was this place that seemed to the main character as the last chance to get rid of his pursuers. A little time later, after planning the plan, Joe Wen, running away from Lilisa and his assistant, ran inside the underground Buddha temple. But the plan was not the usual stay inside, and the guy continued to move through the tunnel. Lilisa, not having time to catch up with the main character, remembered how they were stopped by a military man who asked for documents confirming the person's identity. The girl was very angry because because of what happened, they were far behind Joe One. In addition, the assistant told her to quickly end the persecution, because soon the Ann family would notice problems and the disappearance of a person claiming divine blessing. Realizing every detail of what happened, Lilisa launched many of her magical daggers that were aimed at the back of the main character. Launching knives straight on the move, the girl tried to quickly hit the target and take it with her. All the magical daggers released by Lee Fox quickly reached the main character, who undoubtedly tried to evade the danger of his life. Each such magic could easily eliminate an experienced person, and only Joe Wen, having good enough dexterity for his level, could assess the trajectory of the daggers in order to avoid them in the future dodge. As he planned, most of the projectiles simply flew by while Joe Wen was doing various types of dodging. But since there were a lot of magic shots for one person, and the enemy remained several times stronger, the main character received wounds that bled heavily. At the end of his complete landing on the ground, the danger of getting hit straight in the back loomed over Joe One. The pursuer's magic quickly reached the target and almost hit the main character, who was not completely able to see in the blind spot. Suddenly, Joe One's instinct of self-preservation began to work, which made him feel pain in advance when he came into contact with the weapons of his opponents. His pupils became larger and more sensing the danger approaching him. Just a few seconds before the magic hit the body, the main character managed to fly into the sky, and Lee Fox's attacks aimed at eliminating the target lost control, thereby destroying the soil of the cave in which they are located. Out of breath from the endless battle, the main character hovered in the sky, thanks to the silver wings of a flying ant, and he tried to quickly catch his breath in order to begin the next stage of the invented plan, because everything was not going in his favor at all. After failing to hit the main character who flew into the sky, Lee Lisa became very angry. She roughly assessed the characteristics of Joe One, who in her opinion has a legendary level skill. All these assumptions appeared to her because of the pet's wings, which are almost impossible to obtain at the mortal level. It was then that the main character's ability dissipated and he fell to the ground. It was this incident that made Lilisa convinced that the guy was not able to maintain spiritual energy for a long time, having been seriously injured by another and stronger magic for the body. Over time, the main character's strength was lost, and it only became harder for him to breathe or control his mind. In addition to all the factors of fatigue, he was breathing heavily, and every wound he received made him feel hellish pain when trying to breathe air. Only now he could not stop halfway to the goal standing in front of him. The guy perfectly saw the beginning of a dangerous territory from where it would be extremely difficult for his pursuers to get to him. Therefore, Joe One accelerated and became several times faster than his former self. But the people from the Special Department of the Commonwealth did not expect to see something like this and still tried to succeed behind him. Having completely reached the place where there is a ban on entry, the main character jumped over the table with this warning and instantly activated the ability of the bloody Zung. All these skills were needed in order to avoid the danger of being eliminated by an unknown force. At this moment, Lee Fox, in order to prevent the guy from escaping, fired several magical blades into the back of the main character. She hoped to harm him even more, and this would allow him to slow down Joe One a little, who had already advanced quite a lot further than them. The magic quickly reached the back of the main character, who had little time to repel the attack and therefore, simply hoping for luck, 
continued to run to the set point. While running away, he simply could not control the pain in his body and anger at the fact that he had to give a lot of strength in order to avoid the pursuit of annoying people from the special detachment of the Commonwealth. At the moment when there was little time left for him to be hit, Joe Wan jumped out of the steps, covering his face with his hands so as not to receive serious injuries when falling to the ground and so that he could continue moving through the dangerous territory. Ultimately, he fell to the ground, flying several meters away from the place where he fell. The main character could not control the speed at which he initially ran and therefore received severe harm due to the fall on a strong surface. Over time, when the main character disappeared from sight of the pursuers, who tried not to waste a single second in trying to keep the situation under control, several minutes passed, and people from the Commonwealth organization stood near the table with the restricted zone. They stood in one place, planning how best to proceed in order to capture the required person. But still, Lee Fox was about to enter further than they stopped, because an ordinary mortal-level person managed to go so far and did not die. She was not at all afraid to enter dangerous territory, because the punishment they are given for failing a mission is much more severe than ordinary death. So they got almost to the very beginning of the zone where inexplicable things begin to happen, and people who entered there quickly die from internal damage to vital organs. It was then that they saw how the main character sat down at the beginning of the dangerous territory and was not going to continue his escape. Lilisa asked him why he did not take advantage of such an ideal chance. Joe Wan smiled carefreely, because he could have known what would happen upon contact with a dangerous area, and he warned his interlocutors about the possibility of dying, wanting to go a little further. The main character put moral pressure on his pursuers, trying to make them doubt that something terrible could happen to them. Still, Lilisa's assistant, having obeyed her order, began to approach the main character throwing away all fear and precautions regarding everything that Zhou Wen had said. When the enemy went beyond where the dangerous territory begins, the main character put his index finger in front of him as if holding some kind of pistol aimed straight at the pursuer. When Zhou Wen made the sound of a shot, the enemy immediately began to fall to the ground, receiving injuries that quickly caused a flow of unstoppable blood. A man of legendary level fell to the ground and complete silence reigned around. He did not emit any signs of life by which one could determine how serious the injury was. Lilisa was greatly shocked when she saw the detailed spectacle and began to move closer to her comrade. She touched the assistant's neck, trying to feel the pulse of the heart. When the girl did this, she did not feel any sounds and realized that the comrade died instantly after one word from the main character. Lilisi began to scream loudly, trying to find out from Joe One why the man died before he could take a few steps. The guy himself recalled his warning regarding the danger of the territory and added that it was better for the girl not to repeat the fate of her comrade. But in his thoughts, he did not understand why Lilisi was standing in the very place where the pursuer died and did not receive any serious injuries or did not die at all. After such words, Lilisa felt danger and, in order to ensure her safety, used a special skill that formed a magical cross on the girl's head. Ultimately, a certain image of an angel appeared behind Lilisa's back, protecting the girl from danger. Lilisa guessed why the main character needed to bring them to this dangerous place, and Zhou Wen's whole plan turned out to be known to the girl from the Commonwealth. The appearance of an unknown creature very similar to an angel suddenly caused the formation of a bright light that instantly illuminated almost the entire dangerous area around its carrier. This creature was half-transparent and incredibly warm spiritual energy emanated from it, along with a blinding light that gave the monster the ability to resist forces unfamiliar to Lee Fox, due to which quite a large number of ordinary people or military personnel had already died who tried to pass on. The main character rose from the ground in order to better examine the creature bearing the name of a headless angel. Joe One watched him trying to get more information than what he currently possesses. The data that he received while studying the types of monsters set a legend about a nun who lost her mind after having the opportunity to become a deity. But the main character, looking at her, did not understand why the angel was in this place, because she should be in the western sector of another dimension. Lee Fox, while the guy was looking at the angel, was going to use a very weak attack, which at one time has a special technique. The same technique turned out to be the invulnerability of the body, 
which gives its wearer immunity to all types of curses and, in addition, protects against the most dangerous spirits, it is for this reason that the angel was recognized as the most powerful guardian pet, and using the power of Lee Fox, she wanted to take the main character without any battles. Lee Foxes began to act relying on her strength superior to the capabilities of the protagonist, who is currently trying to understand how she managed to get a headless angel into the guardian beasts. Zhou Wen realized the danger he was in and had already lost the opportunity to escape without receiving more injuries or avoiding battle with Lee Fox. It was then that he used the call of his pet, which released several sharpened thorns that appeared straight from the ground. These thorns made Lee Fox a little distracted by trying to break them. The spikes quickly pulled the girl into themselves and began to put pressure on her with all their available strength. She fell into the main character's trick without even realizing it. Everything that happened was thanks to the bone ant that stood near Joe One, so that he would receive complete protection while the guy was thinking about his further actions, and he could only continue to move inside the Buddha temple. When things were going too well in favor of the protagonist, Lee Fox quickly cut through all the thorns that interfered with her path, and with lightning speed, found herself near Joe Wen, who did not have time to react. The blade from the girl's weapon ended up right in the face of the main character who didn't understand how he could avoid getting severe harm. Seeing the moment during which he could die, the guy simply stopped thinking because his whole life was passing before his eyes. They came into contact with each other, and a strong magical explosion occurred in the dangerous territory, which caused a lot of destruction. Of the guys, only Lilisa remained unharmed, who continued to follow the protagonist, calling him simply a weak mortal man incapable of giving normal resistance. After activating the skill, a bone ant appeared in front of the girl, which was ready to fight to the very end as long as Joe One was safe. Lee Fox approached the pet, preparing to deliver an undoubtedly powerful blow in order to eliminate the obstacle in the way. Lilisi quickly dealt with the monster and only became more inflamed with magic and inquired whether the main character was really going to fight against a person who had reached almost the strongest stage at the legendary level. A little time later, she got straight to the Buddha temple and hid his statue. The guy couldn't even move without putting in enough strength to do so. At the same time, the main character was lying on the ground, all wounded and having lost a lot of spiritual energy. Li Lisi quickly found the guy and was ready to harm him by driving him straight into a corner. Joe Wan was dripping blood listening to the girl's desire to cut his legs so that he would never be able to escape from the community again. Li Foxes, having finished speaking, took one step towards the main character. Suddenly, she heard a strange crackling sound under her feet and was simply very shocked. She did not fully understand the essence of what was happening and where this sound was coming from. At this moment, the Buddha statue began to act in an attempt to protect the temple from any threats that entered the territory. In just one instant, an incredibly powerful blow of magic was carried out across the area where the girl was located, which easily destroyed the area. A lot of time had passed since the impact of the Buddha statue, and Li Lisa, having received serious injuries, lay on the ground trying to somehow get up, even without paying attention to the amount of blood lost. Zhou Wen, sitting near the statue, smiled, considering the Buddha to be a cool guy for saving him. Although the statue acted on the principle of eliminating pests, and the main character remained unharmed only because he did not destroy anything, the guy barely managed to rise to his feet, considering the moment very successful in order to strike back at Lilisa, who was wounded no worse than him. He called upon a flying ant to help him in order to forever get rid of his pursuer, who was constantly getting in the way. The flying ant, following the owner's order, quickly released a magical sting towards Lee Fox. She responded by trying to wrap herself in protective powers, although she was very slow in her movements. With her magic fully ready, the girl managed to evade the attack of the main character. After blocking, Lilisa quickly went to the exit from the dangerous territory and used the fastest skills. Leaning against the walls of the temple, the main character remained able only to observe the enemy's escape and not try to somehow stop her. A few hours after the battle, Lilisa was so wounded that she could not move around the city without running into every wall in front of her, and she was constantly dripping in a pile of her own blood. She stopped in order to take out her anger on Zhou Wen who brought her to such a state. Lilisa was simply incredibly angry with the guy and wanted to take revenge on him soon. 
She didn't care even if the Anne family appeared, and the girl spoke all these words out loud without hiding a single moment. It was then that a gun was put to her forehead, and Lilisa was frightened by surprise. This stranger directly knew all the information that related to the girl, and what she was doing as a member of a special detachment for special cases created by the Commonwealth. Standing right in front of the girl were two people from the Ahn family who asked Lilisa about what would happen if they really suddenly showed up. Only Li Lisi did not answer the question while looking at Ahn Tianzuo, who, in her opinion, should not be on the university premises. It was his appearance that frightened the girl the most. Lilisa could not tear her fearful gaze away from the man who was nicknamed the Warden. She did not fully understand why she was so unlucky to meet a man so strong in his status and magical abilities. Antanzuo asked the girl why he wanted to chase after a student at Xiang Academy. The guy was trying to somehow correctly understand the essence of what was happening when a woman several times stronger than Zhou Wen wants to eliminate him and boldly believes in luck. Li Fox tried to explain herself, throwing all the blame on the Senate, which gave the order following a special document. The second person who follows the warden told the girl to talk less about unnecessary stories and instead answer the question asked. It was then that Li Lisi began to scream, claiming that the matter was completely related to Jing Daoxian, who, in her opinion, was definitely related to the main character. She endlessly continued to say the same words, but without having time to convey the not entirely accurate information, Lilisa was shot in the leg. The shooter turned out to be a fellow warden who was not at all interested in listening to lies and instead enjoyed Lilisa's cries of agony. After Li Lilisa received a gunshot wound, she was unable to stand calmly on her feet, because up to that moment, she had already received many blows from a Buddha statue inside a dangerous area. While on her knees, the girl could not believe that a person from the An family managed to shoot someone completely without thinking about how the wounded may suffer. Without having time to justify herself again, throwing the blame on another person, she received a new shot in the knees and constantly feeling the danger to her life. She argued that Li Lisi did not initially intend to pursue the main character or even inflict bodily injuries on him. The pain was simply indescribable for the girl in order to hold back her painful screams. Li Lisa could only fall at the feet of the one who could easily eliminate her and did not do this. Wanting to quickly receive all the information regarding the plan to capture Zhou Wen, this man's patience had reached the end and he was ready to use more brutal methods of obtaining hidden data. The guy was covered with simply incredible spiritual energy that can easily trigger painful sensations in other people, depending on how angry the user is. This man approached Li Lisa in order to begin his questioning, and for this he put a gun directly under her chin so that the girl would not move in vain or try to escape from justice, which would undoubtedly make the pursuer of the students pay for her sins. It was then that Li Lisa saw the cruel face of a man threatening her who was preparing to eliminate the girl at any attempt to tell a lie, or even think of starting to say things completely unrelated to his previously asked question. Suddenly, An Tianzuo ordered his comrade to quickly simply destroy the enemy, whose body would be taken away by a special department of the Commonwealth. He said all this only in order to simply not waste time on a person who was not ready to betray his comrades, even when she was facing imminent death. A few seconds after the threats began, Li Li Li, with tears in her eyes, could not restrain herself and told every detail regarding the department for the search for important data. The girl named the name of the person who ordered her to catch the main character, and this person turned out to be Chao Si Wan, who originally wanted to harm Zhou Wan while the family they don't look after him. Having heard the most important thing, An Tianzuo ordered a comrade named Ashen to stop planning the best option for eliminating the stupid Li Fox, who failed in the task and, in addition, revealed important information to her enemies. An Tianzuo was not going to kill the girl for a while, instead coming up with a more interesting approach. At this moment, near the building of a special department to search for important information regarding one very dangerous fugitive, as well as other data related to cultivation and new monsters that may be useful for the military force of the strange. In the office of the boss Cao Siwan, the telephone began to ring endlessly, the sound of which quickly spread throughout the offices, and it was extremely difficult not to hear it. The boss picked up the phone, wanting to receive important and very good news that could significantly change the course of the current situation, and also help him find Jing Daoxian. 
Only now, instead of good news, he heard the start of the countdown, at the end of which Li Fox will die. Ashen, who spoke about this, told Chao Siwan the reason for the girl's imminent death, for which he was initially to blame, and all the words he heard frightened the head of the special department. At a time when the head of the search department for Jing Daoxian could not fully understand what to do, Antanzuo got tired of waiting for his appearance, and looking at his watch, ordered his comrade to begin work on eliminating the extra eyes, and the person who, if rescued, could only cause more problems. Ashen obeyed the order of the warden and put the gun straight to the forehead of Lilisa, who was unable to restrain her emotions just before the moment of her own death, which was completely justified. Before they had time to eliminate the girl, Kao Siwan appeared, who during the flight asked to stop and not harm Lee Fox. This man was almost on the verge of seeing the death of one of his comrades, and at the same time the girl was an extremely rare person carrying with her the strongest pet protector. Landing on the ground, he was completely out of breath, trying to quickly get to the stupid Lee Fox, who always fails the task given to her and does not know how to keep some data secret from dangerous people like the An family. Kao Siwan began to ask the warden to wait a little and give him a chance to better reveal the reason for everything that happened. The man wanted to explain in detail about the reason why the special department of the Commonwealth wanted to get the main character as soon as possible. Some hours later, they stood right under a huge building and hiding from unnecessary witnesses, discussed Lee Fox, who belongs to the influential family of a senator who greatly values the girl. Kao Siyun was worried while talking to the warden and still asked for mercy on Li Lisa. So he tried to get a favor from a person much stronger than himself. And as a last resort, Kao Siyun swore that such a mess would not happen again without the knowledge of the An family. Only here in front of him stood not some ordinary person capable of forgiving every mistake made, An Tian Zuo became extremely interested in who the person who gave the order for the detention of Zhou Wen was, and also wondered why he was not informed in such an important matter. The interlocutor was unable to simply keep secret the fact that the feds were to blame for everything. Monitoring every move of Jing Daoxian, who, in their opinion, has the opportunity to contact the main character, the head of the department tried to convince the supervisor that the plan was only to ask Zhou Wen to help in the investigation. Over time, Chao Siyun remembered a moment from the past in which the warden criticized the main character and reminded An Tianzuo himself of this. With the help of a general hatred of Zhou Wen, the department head wanted to get permission to continue following or capturing the guy. Then he heard the cry of the warden, who did not want to listen to such a stupid person like Chao Siwan. The warden did not want unknown people to solve problems with Zhou Wen, concerning only the two of them and such words forced the head of the special group to admit his mistake. Having listened to Chao Siwan's complete plea for forgiveness and admission of guilt, the warden turned his back to him, wanting to quickly return to his own affairs and therefore ordered his interlocutor to take Lee Fox. Only Ashen himself was not going to let the girl go unpunished and, taking out a weapon, was preparing to deprive Lee Lisa of the cultivation method, obeying the orders of his comrade, the guy holding a sharp knife in his hands was cold-blooded before starting to completely deprive the girl of her powers. In just a few seconds, Ashen pierced the body of Lilisa, who violated the very rule of capture, in which the main character should not receive bodily harm and remnants of wounds on the body. Kao Siwan began shouting towards the warden, trying to convey to him that the girl was from the Cape clan, which was very famous among ordinary people for its magical abilities, and they could easily resist families more famous or powerful than themselves. Leaving the place where they were discussing the disorder that had happened, Antian Zuo asked his interlocutor if he knew why an overseer like him was called a heavenly left-hander. Chao Siwan was really interested in knowing why they called him that. It was then that the warden turned to the head of the search for one escapee, and at that moment, incredible anger at the weaker person appeared on Antian Zuo's face. He said that he was the left hand of God, and it was for this reason that he received the most cruel nicknames that an ordinary person is simply not capable of achieving it, no matter how hard you try. At the moment while Lee Fox is receiving punishment in the most cruel way, the main character was still near the small Buddha temple and sat not far from the bells. 
which in ancient times served to learn about the arrival of guests or enemies. The guy constantly looked at the time he had to sit in one place, protecting himself from an unexpected attack by opponents. Joe Wan sat on the steps, not understanding why Lilisa did not come back and believed that she simply ran away. But in fact, the guy did not move, fearing that the girl would lead an entire army with her in order to catch him. After sitting near the small temple for more than half an hour, the main character went to a special technique that lifts to the upper or lower floors of the dungeon. The guy was going to go upstairs to reconnoiter the situation. Joe Wan nevertheless sat down inside the elevator, planning what to do next when he managed to save his pet with difficulty. The very first thing that came to the guy's mind was to contact Li Xuan in order to get at least some support when the battle began. Then the elevator doors opened in front of the main character, and he saw something in front of him that caught his attention. Ashen stood right in front of his eyes, smeared with someone else's blood, and he called Zhou Wan a young master, telling how long he had to wait for his appearance. Zhou Wan did not completely understand whether an unknown person was addressing him, to which Ashen could only bow, mentioning that Wu Yanlan had sent a special guard for the main character who would not allow anyone to be harmed. Zhou Wan, hearing the mention of the warden, instantly thought of An Tanzuo, and therefore became a little worried, remembering everything that had happened in the past. After some time, the main character got into the car of a man who went after him in order to help with the current dangers, and headed straight to the house of the An family. In the car itself, the situation was not the best, because a guard sat next to Joe Wan, and this forced the main character to simply silently look out the window and not communicate with him. Suddenly, Antanzo asked if Joe Wan still hated him. He was just trying to get an answer, after which he could understand what the current conversation was leading to. The main character began to tell his interlocutor that everything was very good, and there was no point in even remembering this. But still, the guy continued to remember how he almost passed the entrance exams, and it was all the fault of Antan Zuo, who, according to Zhou Wan, expects gratitude for what happened. After listening to the main character's excuses, the warden quickly said that he didn't care if the interlocutor hated him or looked down on him for personal reasons, and added that he simply did not consider Zhou Wan suitable enough to replace An Jing. And such words made the guy get angry without understanding what they were talking about. Seeing that the main character did not have any data, the warden simply fell silent and looked straight at Zhou Wan. Following this, he turned away, finally showing his dissatisfaction. Zhou Wan could not help but be angered by such behavior, and he wished that his interlocutor would go straight to kindergarten in order to learn how to properly communicate with people there. After several hours of a long trip with an unfriendly company, the main character arrived straight at the An family mansion. First of all, Uyan Lan came out to them along with the protagonist's father, who, unlike his stepmother, was less worried about Zhou Wen's condition. Uyan Lan was eager to see her son again and spoke directly about it. When the main character introduced himself to the mistress of the house, they noticed incredibly large wounds that did not stop bleeding. Each such wound was extremely dangerous for a person who had been sitting in one place for a long time and was simply waiting for the end of the battle against a girl several times superior to his physical abilities. Zhou Lingfeng still couldn't help but ask where his son got such injuries. The excitement was clearly visible on his face, because Zhou Wan was not involved in the best story, and he could say so just by looking at his son's body. Wu Yanlan also became interested in why suddenly the main character came to her home all wounded. Although in the documents on the guy's detention, there were no clauses authorizing inflicting any physical harm. The warden quickly talked about the connections of the secret department of the Commonwealth, who were the very reason for the attack, and he figured out with them what, that time. Aoyan Lan understood where everything was going and asked the main character to quickly follow her straight inside the house. She planned to heal the wounded man a little so that he could properly listen to what was going on. A few hours later, the father of the protagonist began to treat Zhou Wen's wounds, so that in the future, they would not cause him more harm than they now bring discomfort along with other very unpleasant sensations for any person. The entire body of the main character was bandaged with special bandages that could quickly heal the guy. Zhou Lingfeng continued to wipe the remaining wounds, which were too large in size. And besides everything, they did not stop bleeding because the attacks with which Li Fox tried to eliminate the main character 
partially managed to achieve the expected result. Upon completion of the treatment of each wound, the father of the protagonist laughed a little, recalling incidents from the childhood of Joe One, who allegedly constantly came home having fought with someone and received many blows or fallen from a height, which brought with it no less injuries with bruises. Only now the main character reminded his father that everything that was counted happened to him when Zhou Lingfeng tried to flirt with a very beautiful neighbor and was beaten by her boyfriend. Such a story made Lingfeng think better about all his deeds that were easily forgotten over time. Suddenly, the main character became extremely interested in finding out from his father what exactly Antian Zhou was talking about, mentioning the lack of skills needed in order to take the place of An Jing, who was more suitable for this role. Zhou Wen did not lag behind with this question, considering this topic too important, not only for himself and in many lives, depended on whether he found out the truth. In response to Zhou Lingfeng's question, he simply smiled, considering it not particularly important if his son received information from him. He simply continued to remain silent, looking into the eyes of the main character. While they were communicating with each other, Uyan Lan approached them, instantly answering Zhou Wen's question. The answer was the statement that the guy was completely unable to receive a blessing with such a small number of skills and only a mortal level. During the negotiations, the main character was approached by a house help who gave him new clothes so that he could get dressed quickly. Zhou Wen was going to take the offered clothes and thank the helper in advance. He looked at the clothes as if it were some kind of treasure after Lee Fox tore the whole t-shirt together with your back. Zhou Wen sat down on the bed Instantly asking the mistress of the house why he was chosen as the person receiving blessings, the main character asked about this, trying to understand why a person, only after recognizing him, was ready to give up such an incredible opportunity to become much stronger. U Yanlan was interested in the not-so-surprised reaction of the protagonist, and she quickly guessed that Li Xuan had warned Zhou Wan in advance about the divine blessing for which an incredible battle was taking place between different families and the children in these families. Remembering An Jing's behavior, the main character finally understood what her constant hatred was. Because losing a valuable opportunity becomes more and more powerful would not please every person with a high status. Uyan Lan continued to say why she did not want to put her daughter in danger. And the reason for this was An Jing's illness due to the cold, Yan Lan understood very well that her daughter was strong enough to easily pass the test. And thinking about such things, U Yan Lan felt maternal excitement. Over the course of negotiations between U Yan Lan and the main character, more and more questions regarding the blessing appeared. Zhou Wen tried to understand why Yan Lan didn't put An Tian Zuo in place of her daughter. And then U Yan Lan told about her father, who advised the main one instead of the warden, who was too strong for such a role. Zhou Lingfeng gave his son the picture, claiming that the man who was Wu Yanlan's father was very familiar with the main character, and they had known each other for a long time, but they didn't communicate due to some incidents that happened in the guy's past. Zhou Wen picked up the picture, not understanding what his interlocutors were talking about. It was only important for the guy to quickly find out who the very father of Wu Yanlan, who has been helping him for several months, is. Looking at the images, the main character saw there the director of the school where he had previously studied. And something like this simply did not fit in his head. The guy tried to understand why he had not previously noticed any connections between the director and the An family. Several years ago, the main character was abandoned by his father when he just had to enter high school, and in order not to be a weak person, he trained diligently, not missing a day. Every day, Zhou Wen practiced blows in order to advance in physical strength and become the most powerful student among all other students at school. Since the guy spent almost all his time training inside the training place at the school, he often met with the director who constantly brought him something tasty to drink. The old man threw an iron can with a drink, planning to see how good Zhou Wen's reaction was. The main character mastered dexterity well and catching some objects did not bring him much difficulty. Every time Zhou Wen was interested in why the director came to the training room, and he began to talk about all sorts of his affairs that exhaust a person quite a lot. The director was very worried about the main character, wanting him to rest a little after training and not overexert himself so as not to overwork himself or even get seriously injured. 
Joe Wan thought about how early the director retired having many health problems. It was from that very moment that they were not able to meet anywhere, and the guy completely lost any information related to the director. Looking at Uyan Lan, the guy could not quite believe that she was the native daughter of the same director who constantly treated every student of his school kindly. At the same time, Uyan Lan looked strange, as if thinking about her father. A little time after the new mother of the main character returned to normal, she smilingly suggested that Joe Wan better think about the proposal to receive a place as an applicant for receiving divine blessings. And Uyan Lan argued that she was not going to give in on the guy at all, and in order to make it easier for him to choose the latter. The word remains with the main character. At the end of the conversation, Zhou Wan was taken straight to the point he needed, and, sitting in the car, they told him not to worry about the attackers, who would never bother him again because they had suffered the most terrible punishment. Zhou Wan got out of the car, obeying the An family, and went straight home, thinking about all the previously happened events that brought him a lot of problems. Each of these problems could not just remain like that, and the hero was going to solve everything soon. When suddenly, Joe Wan felt the phone vibrate in his hands, one of his friends was calling endlessly, wanting to get an answer from the main character as soon as possible. As it turned out, the call was from Li Xuan, who received a lot of information about the attacks that took place on the territory of the university. According to a friend's story, the problems quickly ended when the An family appeared, who found out about what had happened in advance. Zhou Wan continued to listen for a long time to the stories of Li Xuan, who counted the number of attacking people, among whom the main character did not hear a single person belonging to the secret organization created by the Commonwealth. Zhou Wan continued to walk home, listening to how his comrade was about to soon complete the solution to the entrance tests, which require that the main character quickly return to normal. Zhou Wan did not at all refuse to act according to a plan that was more deliberate than just breaking through. Suddenly, the main character heard a loud sound coming from Li Xuan, and therefore could not hold the phone very close to his ear. He did not quite understand what could cause such a loud sound, deafening just at any opportunity. Zhou Wan became very interested in where his comrade was, because the emanating sound was clearly not good, and it could happen that Li Xuan was in trouble and needed an ambulance. The same one, in response to Zhou Wan's worries, spoke about the location right in the territory where the verification test would take place. The sounds came from the monsters which he easily eliminated and received from them a lot of materials needed by the main character, whom Li Xuan advised to go to him. When Li Xuan suggested that his friend quickly go to him in order to learn new abilities and techniques in combat, the main character decided to agree with his friend and ordered him to wait a little until he arrived at the desired meeting point. Before starting to be sent to the area where the verification tests would take place, Zhou Wan warmed up in order to bring his wounded body to a normal state, and although this required more rest than training, a few hours later, the main character was at the battle site, and destroying hordes of monsters, tried to take out all the anger that had gathered inside because of the secret group of the Commonwealth. The guy easily scattered demonic soldiers who did not even have time to react. Destroying the very existence of the monsters, traces of the sand remained on Zhou Wan's hand, which he used for the benefit of destroying the surface on which the monsters were still able to fight or simply attack in the cold. Li Xuan, looking at the main character, could not believe his own eyes at all that Zhou Wan was capable of sometimes frightening him with behavior that no one had ever seen before, because at that moment, he was extremely angry about what had happened. The guys stood in one place for a long time, trying to understand the reason why the demonic generals did not appear on their way, and why, as they walked further and further, people seemed to disappear. Li Xuan remembered how on the way to the exam territory, he did not find a single person who had defeated the required monster. Li Xuan pondered for a long time why it was possible to completely get rid of the sound of battle, or even the ordinary voices of students who entered much deeper than the sandy terrain. Just as soon as he thought about it, suddenly, a lot of people started running towards them, screaming in fear. And on their way, they tried to warn everyone who dared to poke their head in the direction from where they were running away with all their strength. Still, one of those running away screamed in fear, 
trying to reveal the identity of the demonic creature who occupied the position of the most famous leader of the demons and is simply a powerful monster whose strength cannot be compared with the previously appeared monsters. The main character and Li Xuan were very surprised because they did not expect to hear such a thing, and the appearance of such a monster was simply rare for ordinary first-year university students. Looking at the guys running away, they were wondering whether they should go and look at the demonic commander, who makes a large number of people run away without even thinking about fighting him. While they were thinking about this, a girl who appeared nearby turned to Li Xuan. She was trying to tell him something very important and was in a hurry because there was too little time for this case. This girl turned out to be a friend of Li Xuan's older sister, and the girl tried to convey to him that Wei Yang was in danger by helping some guys escape from the trick of a demonic commander who was not allowing his victims to escape. And Li Wei Yang was not in the best position helping others. This situation greatly shocked Li Xuan, who was very worried about his elder sister, who was not able to fight alone with such a superior opponent in strength. The guy, in addition to worry, felt fear for his sister's life. Without thinking long about what to do, Li Xuan quickly went to help his older sister and did not even warn the main character about this, who did not have time to react. Zhou Wen remained behind, trying to understand where his friend had gone. Zhou Wen himself was quite worried because he received practically no information regarding this commander-in-chief of the demonic soldiers, and every thought somehow related to the monster frightened the guy. Suddenly, An Jin's voice came from behind, wondering what her stepbrother would do when his close friend was in danger, but the main character had already felt her presence for a long time and could simply presumably think that An Jin would not mind seeing him in action after everything that had happened. While the younger sister spoke for the battle, Zhou Wen remembered the help of An Tianzuo, who, in his opinion, acted relying on An Jin's request. The girl pretended she didn't know at all what she was talking about, and went to the scene of the battle against the demonic commander. The main character followed her, realizing that he was too right to think about the help that happened on her part. At that moment, Li Weiyang ran with all her might so as not to fall under the attacks of a strong enemy. But it was difficult because under her feet there was loose sand that was not entirely suitable for running. The place from which Li Weiyang ran away instantly turned into a point where many attacks from the enemy's sharpest spears landed. The girl herself was very worried, unable to escape from the demonic commander who never stopped following her for a second. Li Weiyang was starting to get tired and realized that she might soon simply lose her balance. Unexpectedly for her attention, the girl noticed how the enemy became several times faster and attacked with skills that require the environment, which is why the monster was in an advantageous position attacking with a sand wave. Seeing something like this, Li Weiyang could not simply react calmly and was afraid that she would soon die without having time to dodge to the side, or her body would be instantly incinerated. The blow went straight through the girl, causing considerable destruction and a huge explosion that quickly consumed the environment along with Li Weiyang herself. It was then that from the shadows of destruction that same demonic commander appeared, who was very different from the others and owned completely different, more advanced equipment. This monster instilled fear in those approaching even a few meters, and accordingly, they ran away before they had time to take the battle. After the monster appeared, the explosions against the surviving girl did not stop, and each time became much stronger. Li Weiyang covered her face from flying things that could cause no less harm than the explosion itself. She tried to see an important detail among all the fuss that was happening along with the attacks of the demonic commander. As it turned out, the girl survived only thanks to her younger brother, who appeared in front of her and who took the largest part of the blow on his own body. Li Xuan was more worried about his sister than about himself, and although he suffered serious injuries, Li Xuan was bleeding from the almost complete destruction of his internal organs, which the demonic commander was almost able to cause. But he managed to escape from death thanks to a special sword and the skills that he used just in time. Standing right in front of the monster, the guy understood how much weaker he was than him, and only because his older sister was injured behind him, Li Xuan wanted to stop the approaching creature with all his might. Then he found the best opportunity to strike and launched the resolving magic of his blade at the enemy. Such power could easily eliminate the enemy who had not reached the last stage of the legendary level. 
the attack launched earlier, made the demonic commander see in front of him the image of a white tiger ready to fight to the very end. Thanks to this, Li Xuan found the opportunity to quickly escape from the scene of the explosions. Taking his elder sister with him, they fled with all their might, taking advantage of the ideal opportunity to break away from the pursuit of the monster. Only the silver tiger was not able to resist the enemy for long, and he cut him into two parts. The demonic commander-in-chief did not find this too difficult, because he himself was much stronger in strength. The monster received victory with just one blow, and for this he used two fingers. This simply could not help but describe how strong the monster was and showed the difference in strength. Continuing to run away, Li Xuan shed tears of sadness at the loss of the white tiger, because to obtain it he had to go through difficult trials. At this moment, the main character, together with his younger sister, landed not far from the battle site in order to better examine what was happening and only after that plan on what principle they should fight. They were far enough away from the demonic commander and the first thing they noticed was his strong sword. Zhou Wen assessed his ability to resist such a strong monster and could assume that with the help of An Jin, he could somehow defeat the attacking enemy. So that An Jin knew in advance what he was going to do, the main character asked the girl to take drops of the monster with her, which would make it possible to resist the demonic commander-in-chief. And these words surprised An Jin, who listened carefully to the main character. While the main character planned the most optimal plan to destroy the enemy, the monster was ready to strike Li Xuan straight from the back, and he had enough strength for this because, in addition to physical skills, he mastered fast speed. Sensing the presence of the demonic commander, Li Xuan managed to quickly react and made the appropriate actions with his body in order to use his own powers in order to save his sister. The fastest option for him was to simply push Li Weiyang, wanting to save her. And he himself remained in place where all the power of the attacking monster was directed. The attack of the demonic commander created a strong explosion behind it, which briefly blocked the entire view of what was happening. Li Weiyang, once at a safe distance, began to worry that her younger brother had simply died trying to help her. And she began to scream at the top of her voice, wanting to hear in response the words of Li Xuan, who would have managed to escape from the demonic commander-in-chief. Suddenly, right among the entire smoke curtain, a bright glow of an unknown light appeared. It did not go out and only became stronger. As it turned out, Li Xuan received salvation from the main character, who used his flying ant during the battle and in time intercepted his comrade. The guy's pet was covered with a magical ability that allows him to cover himself with fire protection. Li Xuan was very happy about his salvation and only didn't know how to repay Zhou Wen, who had helped avoid death not for the first time. In response, he simply hoped that Li Xuan would not take the monster's drops for himself. A little time later, Li Xuan became extremely curious whether two people had a chance to eliminate the demonic commander-in-chief and then he heard from the smiling protagonist that they had no chance at all in such a small number of fighters. When they flew away from the monster at a sufficient distance, it was hit by a magic beam which, according to Zhou Wen, belongs to their comrade, with the help of which they will be able to fight until victory. And Jin, who used a fiery bow, repelled the attacks of the demonic commander-in-chief while her comrades were trying to get to safe territory, and the girl, without stopping, fired fiery arrows. Li Xuan, observing how strong An Jin was, could not understand how the main character managed to lure the girl to fight for him, because she initially practiced the perfection of her cultivation and never focused on helping others. And Jin did this solely to prove to her entire family that even if she was born with a disease, she remains capable of using all her power in the art of solar cultivation. After An Jin's attack hit the enemy directly, he quickly formed an image of a flaming flower around himself. Such magic resisted the girl's ability and tried to resonate with her as if trying to absorb someone else's power for his own prosperity. All the wounds of the demonic commander-in-chief received from the shot began to be healed thanks to the regeneration that the monster initially possessed. And at the place where such an effect occurs, hieroglyphs of the vital formation of spiritual energy appeared. Seeing how the demonic general eventually returns to normal and only gains more strength, the guys gathered in one group and decided to attack the monster in time. And for this, 
each of them prepared to use the most powerful skills available during the battle, having struck with different magics at just one target. They almost completely covered him with a wave of blows that did not provide particularly sufficient time for the commander-in-chief of the demonic soldiers to be able to use skills that could easily return lost strength. Following the plan of the main character, the battle passed in favor of people much weaker than the monster. The same one at that moment, exhausted, coughed up his own blood, trying to escape from the dangerous area where he was surrounded by worthy people. In order to avoid quick death, the demonic general summoned a creature from spiritual energy completely unknown to the guys. This creature rose high into the sky and, with the help of its power, quickly scattered the protagonist's squad in all directions. Following what happened, a magical hole appeared on the battlefield, thanks to which the demonic general disappeared from sight. The monster initially planned to do this and was waiting for people to gather in one place. Having retreated to a safe distance, Li Xuan did not understand what plan the enemy was acting on and believed that the demonic general simply decided to escape without touching any of them. At this time, the main character did not say anything, fearing one moment that the enemy could take advantage of while they were distracted by an unexpected disappearance. Thanks to the pet in the form of a piercing, Zhou Wen heard the movements of the demonic general, who was acting on a plan to knock out one person after another, and therefore the monster took only one target. This very target was An Jin, who was the furthest away from everyone, and it was she who inflicted almost all the heavy damage, after which it was much more difficult for the monster to recover. The demonic general could advance to the girl in a few seconds, and he had a couple of meters left to eliminate her. Zhou Wan suggested something like this in advance, and in order to save the life of his younger sister, rushed to her aid using silver wings. The guy's face showed concern regarding the situation in which An Jin had to find himself through his fault. Thanks to the desire to help another person, the main character became much faster and could easily catch up with the demonic commander-in-chief. And Jin, on the other hand, was in one position, not understanding what was happening at all. She looked in the direction where the monster was approaching, ready to eliminate her at any second. And Zhou Wen, who just wanted to help his sister get out of trouble, then the first who got to An Jin was the main character, who lifted the girl onto himself and began to run away from the endlessly attacking demonic commander-in-chief. The monster hit with such force that it was enough to completely take away the chance of escape from people. And Jin blushed from a similar incident when Zhou Wan was dragging her on himself. The girl showed dissatisfaction, claiming that she could independently evade the enemy's attacks and for this supposedly did not require the help of a guy. Having completely listened to her statements instead of gratitude, the main character returned the girl to the place where he picked her up and returned to his own affairs. After the rescue of his younger sister went very well, the main character found himself right behind the demonic commander-in-chief, who did not have time to react to his appearance and was distracted by An Jin. Zhou Wan quickly attacked the enemy with the help of ordinary physical abilities, covering them with spiritual energy, and the blow was sent straight to the enemy's back. All these sequences of using skills were needed only to find the weak point of the creature. In a few seconds, the main character's magic began to emanate from every point of the demonic commander-in-chief's body, and, unable to stay in one place, simply burst out. After there was no more space left in the body, the demonic general exploded and formed a huge magical wave behind him, it quickly covered the entire territory of the place where the test exam would soon take place. Even after a long time passed, the magic wave did not dissipate, and An Jin stood nearby to witness the final result of the battle against the demonic commander-in-chief, several times superior to the ability of an ordinary first-year student. On An Jin's face, one could see concern for the main character who did not appear from the explosion of magic. She was worried because she was partially involved in the battles, after the magic had completely evaporated into the air, the main character was at the battle site holding in his hands a red crystal that fell from the demonic general. This object was the very drops of the monster that An Jin had previously spoken about together with Zhou Wan himself. Zhou Wan carefully looked at the crystal in his hands, realizing that this particular item is capable of giving every person the skills of the energy of the essence stored deep inside each such crystal. After a little time, thinking about what to do, 
the main character gave the crystal of the essence to his younger sister, who did not understand at all why Zhou Wan was doing this. She believed that his brother was simply stupid because he did not understand the full value of this item. The main character, in turn, reminded her of the words in which he said that he would not just ask for help from An Jin and would definitely repay her at the appropriate price or simply give away the drops of the monster that clearly interested the younger sister, who had previously called the item rare enough to simply give it to another person. Suddenly, An Jin remembered how her older brother saved her from death. Although he was not obliged to act so rashly because he put his own life in danger, it was extremely unpleasant for her to look at a crystal that could be obtained, even without paying attention to all the efforts of other participants in the battle. A little time to think led An Jin to the fact that she simply turned away, wanting Zhou Wen to take the crystal as a token of gratitude for saving her, and the girl behaved extremely strangely simply not intending to remain in debt. She was simply very embarrassed by what had happened, and leaving the scene reminded the main character that he could not just become her older brother. Although the girl's words did not sound entirely convincing to Zhou Wen, while the guys were arguing and talking among themselves, they were photographed by people who were very close. The picture turned out as if the main character and An Jin were very close, or were just communicating well, forgetting old grievances that they didn't even really want to remember. These same people turned out to be Li Xuan, along with Li Wei Yang, who were quite happy to see something like that. Wei Yang, looking at the behavior of people who were not related to each other, felt a strange joy for them and believed that among the newcomers, there were very excellent fighters. After completing his training, Zhou Wen returned to the apartment allocated to him by the An family. First of all, the main character used the crystal of the energy of the monster's essence. Thanks to this crystal, the guy easily absorbed the mutated demonic commander-in-chief. Zhou Wen, using a new technique obtained thanks to the demonic commander of the soldiers, entered the game in order to test the ability, which had several basic abilities ranging from ordinary strikes and ending this list with a magical cut through the air. This attack was aimed directly at the enemy who got into the battle just in time. The magic quickly cut almost every part of the body of the demonic warrior who was extremely impossible to even resist the attack. When the enemy began to completely disintegrate and disappear, the main character remained at a safe distance because enemies of this type do not walk alone and therefore he could only think that the magic he was holding in his hands, which looked like a sword, was very fierce because it absorbed spiritual energy and made it possible quick elimination of the demonic commander. Looking at the star sword of the oblique strike, Zhou Wen realized that he had never seen such skills before that did not even have a fixed use of the energy of the essence of the person who used this skill. The main character could not stop thinking about the information that he himself saw while fighting against the demonic commander who managed to easily eliminate the legendary Jade Tiger. The guy understood how dangerous it would be to simply use the enemy's hieroglyph, which would carry with it quite a bit of destruction. While the main character was thinking for a long time about all the data received in the game, they suddenly attacked him, and this greatly shocked the guy who was not expecting such an attack from a blind spot. Only now the blow missed Zhou Wen, who managed to dodge to the side and clearly see that the attacker was the demonic commander-in-chief, who simply reacted to the movements of an ordinary person. In order to ensure his safety and stop the useless death, the main character used spiritual energy, directing it straight at the enemy. The attack flew fast enough to cut the monster with a level similar to previously encountered creatures. But even with the power stored inside the skill, it was not possible to harm the demonic commander, who easily repulsed the spiritual energy technique and did not even move. The enemy remained calm and was not going to foolishly go into battle. Landing on the ground after an unsuccessful attempt to eliminate the enemy, the main character lost almost all of his spiritual magic due to the use of the Qi Blade, which did not even manage to cut the skin of the demonic commander-in-chief. Immobilized from the loss of all his available strength, Zhou Wan watched as a sharpened trident flew in his direction, and this frightened the main character so much that he simply did not have time to react differently or even come up with a new plan in order to destroy the enemy. A few minutes later, the main character was defeated, and his game character had a weapon stuck straight into his back, as if he were some kind of stone holding his sword. 
Such incidents made Zhou Wen think about the word sword skill that the demonic commander-in-chief possesses, which is not able to withstand the other skill of a stronger monster. And all these thoughts brought the main character the idea that the hieroglyphs carved on the head of each demonic commander correspond to their abilities. According to the assumptions of the main character, each of the opponents corresponds to the game rock, paper, scissors, and they are capable of using special abilities. Since the idea is quite possible that the main character among the demonic generals is the bearer of paper magic corresponding to the description of the energy sword that the guy uses. The previous assumptions seemed to be enough information for Zhou Wen to continue going through other dungeons in order to finally make sure that the appearance rate of a particular demon commander was low. While the main character was thinking about what to do best and which dungeon to go to next, on the street right next to the dormitory where he lives, many students gathered and talked about Zhou Wen, who defeated a strong opponent, and they received all the information from a video taken during the fight. Among these people, Wang Lu was interested in rumors about Zhou Wen. The girl did not understand why people do not trust the main character, only because of his mortal level, and believed that the guy was deliberately cheating. Because even An Jin, along with Li Xuan, who were of legendary level, were defeated at the hands of the demonic commander. Wang Lu was very surprised to hear how strong her roommate was. She was interested to see for herself what the main character is capable of, since there are so many rumors about him simply after he fought with the demonic general, because the rest of the participants in the battle were not so famous. A few hours later, Wang Lu went towards the optional door and simply walked past them in order to quickly return to her more important matters than to keep an eye on a man who is not so friendly with his neighbors, or rather simply ignores them and hides in the apartment. Inside the office near which Wang Lu passed, the teachers watched the same video where the main character fights against the demonic commander-in-chief and undoubtedly defeats him thanks to his superior fighting skills, along with the ability to be a squad leader. These teachers turned out to be Wang Fei, along with his friend, who did not understand at all why the girl was not happy about the main character's successful passing of the exam, thanks to which he was lucky to get rid of the monster, which was extremely dangerous for beginning students. And in response, he only heard that Wang Fei did not see the point in rejoicing in victory another person without paying attention to how interesting he is. Wang Fei preferred not to consider the main character an excellent warrior. Not even thinking about how talented the guy is as a student, the curator was not going to rely heavily on Zhou Wen, who, according to information, did not attend practical classes at school and was just playing on the phone. Wang Fei came up with an excellent plan, according to which she was not going to allow her student to skip the developmental process and do completely unimportant things like games. Such words greatly interested the interlocutor, who approximately understood what the girl was trying to lead the conversation to and why she wanted to involve the main character in training. The method for which Wang Fei spoke was the use of the power of the mysterious wordless steely of Lao Junshan, according to the curator Zhou Wen, who passed a similar test should finally get rid of his gambling addiction and focus on more important training such as training physical strength. At the same moment in time, the main character himself was in the apartment and scratching his own back from boredom. Zhou Wen was busy searching every corner of the game dungeon, considering this much more interesting than simply fighting with the demonic commander-in-chief, who is much stronger. Not many hours after the main character had played enough on the phone, he immediately put it down in order to rest a little. It was already getting dark outside, and therefore Zhou Wen did not receive any notifications from friends who were about to complete the test exam given by the university. The main character slept peacefully without feeling any pain after he was attacked by a special group created by the Commonwealth, and dreams that could bring him out of a peaceful rest did not appear, and he could finally rest after going such a long way when receiving creatures. Suddenly, a fiery whirlpool appeared right on his chest, which gathered in one place and after a short amount of time remained inside Zhou Wen's body. Because of the magic that appeared out of nowhere, the main character could see in front of him only string inscriptions very similar to the text of the Lost Immortality Sutra. The inscriptions stretched towards the light, which, without stopping, continued to disappear into the darkness. Because of such a vision, the main character quickly woke up and was not fully aware of what was happening around him. He lay there just trying to understand where he was. The place where Zhou Wen lay was destroyed, 
as if just a few minutes ago there had been a battle there that could destroy the very soil of the stone surface. The guy remained in place because his mind was clouded by completely different things. The main character, lying on the ground, looked into the distance, trying to understand where he had been thrown, and saw in front of him a city illuminated by a bright sunset. Looking at the building, Joe One felt as if he had known these places before. The guy began to approach the cliff in order to look around and ultimately draw accurate conclusions that would allow him to tune in to receive more important information. Only now, instead of a beautiful city where people's lives continue to develop, the main character saw a collapsed fire burning every point of the university territory and the houses of ordinary people. A detailed spectacle made Zhou Wen believe in the end of the world from which absolutely every person would not be able to escape. Inside the area, while the main character was watching everything from the side, terrible battles took place between soldiers who had the strength to resist opponents and new types of monsters ready to single-handedly eliminate all life in their path. Since the military were much weaker than the creatures attacking the city, they could simply become food for the monsters. The creatures ate the survivors without pity so that they would become much stronger than their former selves, and in the future, they were going to move to a place with more populated cities. While the main character could only watch in horror what was happening, right behind him, a magical image of an unknown creature appeared that hung directly above the guy. It showed no signs of hatred towards Joe One, and therefore was at a sufficient distance. The main character quickly felt the presence of a creature that frightened him and turned around to look directly at him or get information by asking the monster himself with a human image. Joe One's fear was simply incredible, and the guy had never felt anything like this before. Even when fighting against ill-wishers who were 100% ready liquidated, having completely turned to the creature, the main character noticed how it smiled strangely without saying anything at all in response to several questions. Due to the spiritual energy around a certain creature, it was impossible for Joe One to determine which human gender it belonged to. Seeing only the smile of the monster, the main character woke up in horror. Screaming throughout the entire apartment, he returned to normal and no longer saw the sight that for some reason appeared during sleep and the guy was no longer able to sleep peacefully. Joe One sat in one position for a long time, trying to understand whether what he saw was really just a dream. And while the guy was thinking about this, the state of his face was getting worse because seeing this turned out to be a really difficult sight for him. Bags under his eyes appeared on Joe Wen's face, showed that all the horror of the dream greatly frightened him. Remembering how many monsters mercilessly eat human remains and show no mercy at all to absolutely every living thing, being ordinary monsters, the main character could not quite accurately claim that he had seen an ordinary dream, and to his surprise, was able to smell every smell of someone who died during a battle, or his own bleeding. The most interesting thing for Joe Wen was the appearance of that creature with a human image which, for inexplicable reasons, appeared in the guy's dream and greatly frightened him. The main character simply could not know who this spiritual creature could be and therefore tried, by remembering every detail of the humanoid creature's body, to obtain important information. Joe One continued to sit in one place, afraid that the reason for everything he saw could be the lost Sutra of Immortality, which had previously shown the guy a similar vision, and only now the main character was worried about the feeling of all the feelings as if it were happening in reality. A few seconds after the main character thought that the lost Sutra of Immortality was to blame for everything, and simply looked at the weakened hand that could have lost strength due to the cultivation method going out of control, such thoughts did not leave the head of the main character who realized the danger of using cultivation received directly from Demon King. Another reason that made me think more was that there is a chance that a cultivation method of this type may try to convey to the user some important information that will undoubtedly be useful in the future. Suddenly, a ruthless tyrant of destruction appeared on his shoulder, starting to growl endlessly. The main character forgot all thoughts, taking it into his own interests to quickly feed the pet that needs to eat in order to continue to grow in size. Joe One immediately began to launch into the game considering thinking about everything that happened to be simply a waste of time, during which he can achieve more results in obtaining the legendary level. 
all these plans for obtaining a higher level of his own characteristics. The main character wanted to move forward and at the same time prepare for the disaster from the dream. At this moment, right on the spatial defense line, which is located in the eastern region of the university territory, strange things and great activity of high-level underwater creatures were happening. When the military noticed the rapid movement of a dangerous monster right near the base, from which important information was transmitted to other military facilities throughout the sector of the defense line, they activated a siren warning that the monster had crossed the defense border. When the creature burst out, the military managed to photograph it, and they quickly received information that the monster was a creature from the eastern region called the Sea King Snake. While incomprehensible incidents were taking place on the territory of the water area, under the control of the military forces of the Commonwealth and other more important families, new monsters appeared right on the dimensional defense line, where many of the main means of battle against monsters, an especially designated area of the Chess Mountain were located, that did not get to military radars managed to get close enough to them in order to eliminate them. The creature that managed to get this far had a body very similar to the human image, and the monster held its own head in its hands. Such an embodiment of horror moved under the cover of moonlight, which turned red and partially allowed the monster to remain invisible to humanity or their night vision technology. The next morning, absolutely every university student gathered near the place of admission, and no one among them could even imagine what terrible things were happening very nearby. The guys were simply waiting for the evaluation of all the results of the past test to check whether the person was suitable for student groups or whether it was better for him to just pick up the entrance documents immediately and leave of your own accord. Wang Fei, having received a lot of information about the results of each student, congratulated everyone and wanted to quickly begin classes on studying the very theory of battle against creatures. She had no doubt that every student would pass because she initially bluffed by mentioning expulsion from the university and tried to convey such news to the students as plausibly as possible. Over time, the curator explained in what way the new students would study with her. They, in response, simply went about their own business, trying to reduce the time of conversations regarding Mount Lao Jun, on which each student would need to conduct meditation on cultivation, and at the same time they were obliged to briefly forget about the battles against monsters. The main character at that very moment was behind all the group members, and falling asleep from fatigue, listened to the information in which the curator tried to warn about the divine, mysterious power. Wang Fei wanted, along with checking how capable a student Zhou Wen is, to make sure that each student was able to obtain the skill of the mysterious trenchless arrow, which is the main purpose of training. Suddenly, the main character was woken up by Li Xuan, seeing how exhausted his comrade was, and he deliberately began to tease Zhou Wen, telling him his own perverted thoughts that did not at all relate to the main character. Zhou Wen, listening to his comrade, did not fully understand why he simply could not think about more important things and don't bother with thoughts about any stupidity. Zhou Wen remained unable to restrain his yawning because for several days, he had been trying to find a progressive method of study that would allow him to quickly get to the legendary level. But the guy became tired solely due to the fact that he was simply physically unable to break through the mortal level, no matter how much it would take to invest his existing resources. Resources. After fighting for several hours without sleep, the main character managed to obtain only the Wisdom Sutra of a low level of perfection and a stele on the Tower of the God of Fire for which Zhou Wen put a lot of effort, but still failed to move from a dead point and constantly died fighting against fiery creatures guarding something very secret right at the top of the ancient city. Little by little, falling asleep while listening to the curator's lecture, the main character began to think about a flying ant who is physically unable to fight alone at the moment. These thoughts brought the guy the idea to quickly acquire the art of the energy of an entity capable of allowing him to stay in the sky for a long time, Ultimately, Zhou Wen fell asleep completely, and snoring attracted the attention of Wang Fei, who was simply very shocked that the main character was able to sleep on his feet and at the same time keep his body at rest. Seeing the protagonist who was not worried at all, for whom it was more important to sleep peacefully than to prepare for the upcoming test, in which one can gain important skills or information about legendary creatures, Wang Fei calmly smiled with anger in her soul, because in her opinion, when the test is completed, 
the protagonist will completely disappear laziness accumulated over several years. While students were living a calm and carefree life on the university campus, near the area where the creature's attack was carried out, terrifying things were happening. Many people died trying to protect ordinary people who were in danger of soon encountering a creature several times superior to their abilities. The monster itself remained alive, fighting against one person who tried to evade every attack of the enemy. The monster had the skills of magical threads that actually managed to destroy such a large part of the military detachments, along with their headquarters from where the information was transmitted. The headless monster turned out to be a crazy enemy who, in a few seconds, could spread his threads across the territory of the border crossing with the place where many creatures come from. The monster was located in the ruins of buildings that he had destroyed earlier, and he stayed there only to ensure his own safety. The monster Ashen, who was one of the fighting people, was afraid, and he ran with all his might towards the enemy, wanting to eliminate him with one blow of his dagger. The guy quickly dodged the attacks of those who wanted to stop his movement. Ashen had to dodge because the headless monster was able to cut even strong stones that are much stronger than the human body. Thanks to this ability, an incredible number of military personnel died who did not receive advance warning of the monster's attack. Small threads quickly approached the face of Ashen, who managed to react and dodge the attack in time. The guy could carefully examine each part of the magical threads in order to soon receive data on which he could fight and ensure victory. When the time came for a retaliatory strike, Ashen grabbed the threads of the monster, having learned that they are not capable of harm when they resist a force superior to the magic of the resolving threads. The guy pulled the monster onto himself, who launched a similar attack in the area. It was then that the monster's head opened, extending its eye outwards, which lit up with light. The creature tried to resist the abilities of an ordinary person who is several times smaller in size. Only when the monster tried to resist, Ashen pulled the magical threads towards himself and put in a sufficient amount of his own physical skills for this. He was angry because due to the appearance of the creature, a sufficient number of people died who wanted to continue fighting to protect ordinary people. The guy's idea turned out to be very successful because the monster simply lost the ability to resist the onslaught. The creature was pulled towards Ashen, and the monster tried with all its might to resist, even when it was not possible to do so. Suddenly, magical energy flew straight into the monster's head, which was responsible for the actions of a separate body, which easily eliminated a monster of enormous size for an ordinary person, and sometimes even larger than human houses. Over time, the monster completely fell to the ground and began to disappear, just as it had appeared before that moment. The entire body of the unknown creature crumbled without leaving a trace of the battle. The very ray of magic that struck the huge monster turned out to be Antanzuo, who managed to create from his own flesh a skill capable of allowing an ordinary person to change his body. A few minutes after the enemy died, the warden could calmly return to the normal state of his personality. At this moment, very nearby were the ruins of buildings of military facilities, which, having collapsed, buried under them many people who could not breathe calmly and were constantly screaming for help. It was very difficult to get at least one person, because, in addition to destruction, the buildings began to burn and thus prevented the survivors from advancing further in search actions. Ashen managed to find one of the comrades of the dying man right in his arms. The guy conveyed information to people of higher rank that the last survivors of the teams fighting on the chess mountain died over time, and Ashen, who personally knew the man in his arms, did not quite like this outcome of events. In addition to his acquaintance Ashen, an incredible number of people died on the battlefield who were not going to retreat until the very end and fought in the hope that reinforcements would soon be sent to them. And each of these military men lost the chance to continue life with their family or loved ones who were waiting at home. Ashen did not leave the place where a good man named Mu Ye died, and the guy did not believe in such an outcome of the battle. And Tanzuo, returning to his comrade who was paying for the death of a close friend, told him to calm down, because the deceased was a hero who sacrificed his own life in order to save other people. Ashen could not stop looking at the deceased realizing that they had gone too late to help, because before that, they had not received any warnings about the attack and had not at all noticed the suspicious movements of a large number of monsters. 
with a level that reached a sufficient legendary level or the last stage. And Tanzuo could not say anything in response to the words of his comrade, because he considered every military casualty without receiving appropriate help from stronger people to be the real pride of humanity, who even have no idea about the horror happening on the border. He closed the eyes of his deceased comrade, thus trying to send him to a better world, where Muye could live at least a little normal life and would not fight against monsters. And Tanzuo was angry about what happened, and he wanted not to waste time on sadness for the dead. He wanted to take revenge on every remaining monster so that the military's sacrifices would not be in vain. And the overseer ordered Ashen to quickly warn the team of the engineering department so that they would quickly begin to restore personal border defenses. Monsters capable of causing great harm to other points where ordinary people are located appear due to the mutation of the dimensions of the chess mountain. And each time the power of the formation of powerful monsters became much greater, it was for this reason that the warden was going to quickly find the source of all the troubles. And after finding the full reason he was going to destroy traces of any mutation, he stood among the ruins of a destroyed military base in the hope that the situation that had developed on the border intersecting with the sea would be resolved safely and that it would be much easier for the other department for the elimination of dangerous creatures to cope in the battle than it turned out for them. At that very moment, while inexplicable things are happening in the world, students of the university where the main character is studying went to the largest peak of Mount Laojun, on which test exercises will take place. The places where people climbed were almost completely covered in thick fog, hiding behind several buildings where Liuli are trying improve your cultivation methods. The students gathered right next to the stone tablet where things would soon happen in accordance with the planning of the group curator. Each of the students who came was very surprised to see in front of them such an excellent place and the power that could be felt in space. At the very end of the group, going to the top, were the main character, along with Li Xuan, who was very surprised at the good chance of getting to such a lesson, because he knew that in previous years of study, teachers rarely took ordinary students to such subjects and took only special students with them squad. Zhou Wen was a little worried because bringing such a large number of people to one point was a very dangerous method of teaching. The guy was worried about meeting strong monsters that could easily destroy the learning process. And then Li Xuan calmed him down by starting to talk about a very important thing mentioned by Wang Fei herself. This story was about a place where they managed to get, which was called a world without killings, according to rumors. The monsters in front of the main character did not show aggressive behavior towards people, and the Federation also prohibited students or ordinary people from attacking peaceful creatures at their own request. Li Xuan also asked Zhou Wan to avoid by all means violating the rules regarding the ban on eliminating creatures, because something very frightening could happen. Such words quickly interested the main character, who wanted to hear the end of the words and therefore turned towards his friend. Li Xuan in turn began to pretend to be dead, saying that karma awaits a person who breaks the rules. And while the guy was talking about this, he did not stop laughing, which actually gave Zhou Wan a reason to trust his own squad mate less. While the guys were talking about the rules, which unfortunately for them are not posted on the internet by special order of the Federation, the students were watched by a monster located a little further from the peaceful creatures, and he looked intently in the direction where a large number of people were located. The monster, which watched while away from prying eyes, ate plants growing only in this area and itself, was strongly separated from its relatives. Iron equipment specially created in order to control its strength was worn on the neck of this creature. The main character continued to follow the group of students reaching the desired meeting point, and while walking spoke with Li Xuan regarding the clues that were needed in order to investigate the silent steely. Li Xuan was completely unable to hear such questions as he was not sure of the rumors that claimed the danger of the steely. Li Xuan grabbed onto the main character, trying to scare him more with words, as if the place where they were going was incapable of killing a person, but would only make him weak to resistance because he had an unlimited amount of energy, and Li Xuan specifically said so, wanting to see the frightened reaction of the serious Zhou Wen. When the guys were talking so loudly, each student had long since taken their seats, and Li Xuan's conversations began to distract from the important lesson. So Wang Fei gave warnings, after which there would be punishment, 
and so that the guys did not relax ahead of time, she ordered them to sit in the very first rows near the statue where it is kept spiritual energy. They obeyed the curator's instructions and went to their places, while Wang Fei simply wished that the main character would quickly accept the baptism of a stone statue that would allow the guy to forever forget even the thought of Lina. Thus, the curator constantly received excellent students who managed to achieve good results in their studies at the university. When all the students sat down, the curator began to tell the main goal of the training in which the guys need to hold out for 30 minutes under the pressure of the Steely's force, and, according to the rules, those who hold out for one second more or less than the allotted time will fail the test. Before anyone had time to show their dissatisfaction with such a large amount of time given to them, Wang Fei began to time from the very first seconds. To accurately measure the time passed by students, she used a special stopwatch that was personally issued to teachers conducting such proven tests. The main character quickly got his bearings, starting to control his spiritual energies under good control. All the power of his soul was released, releasing new magic that over time absorbed the body and gave him new sensations. The guy behaved calmly, because up to this moment he had already concentrated on calming the spiritual energy several times. This energy was the formation of the magic of the stone statue right in front of Zhou Wan. The guy felt calm, concentrating on what was important to him and not being distracted. Remembering how good it was for him to play games or just sleep on the bed, the main character, with time of meditation, felt a strange influence of another force in his body and all his muscles quickly filled with physical endurance, Zhou Wan tried to continue to sit calmly in one position without being distracted by strange sensations, absorbing his entire body. Only a few minutes passed while controlling the incoming magic, which became more and more and made the main character feel a strange heat in the place where the spiritual energy of the stone statue was directed. Afterwards, Zhou Wan felt within himself not only a restless flame igniting everything in the middle of his body, and in addition, he felt how he was becoming unstoppable. The guy became more restless in his desires, and in order to restrain himself from the things he could do, he simply grabbed onto his own clothes. Suddenly, another spiritual energy was sewn directly in the chest of the main character, which in an instant dispelled the spell enveloping the wearer. The waves of magic formed as a result of meditation in front of the stone statue quickly scattered to the sides and left the body of the main character. Having completed the dissipation of the alien energy, the protagonist's body returned to normal and his own magic calmed down. It began to disappear inside Zhou Wen's chest just as it had previously appeared. Instead of tiring the very state of a person, Zhou Wen managed to be covered with calm spiritual energy, which seemed quite familiar to the guy. The main character felt a tiring sensation that manifested itself as a result of using the Lost Sutra of Immortality. A similar feeling had previously manifested itself inside the body of the main character when he tried to read the text in the small temple of the Buddha. The stone statue in front of the students only released more magical energy and enveloped the students' bodies with a special power that could soon just give them the ability to do things beyond human capabilities or even perform. They really couldn't stand such pressure anymore, and each of their muscles began to increase in size forcing the students to stop holding back and concentrate on their own condition while the time was counting down. Several guys were really quickly exhausted and trying to somehow catch their breath. At the same moment, Li Xuan, who was sitting closest to the statue than the others, clenched his teeth with all his might, holding back the surge of an immeasurable amount of spiritual energy. Wang Fei, watching what was happening, tried to hold back her laughter because to see the spectacle when the restless steely in addition to accelerating the students' bodies, gave them, with long use, a lot of surge of physical strength that burst out. And this suited the curator, who wanted all the students to become hard-working students. Just hoping that the effectiveness of this power would affect every student, Wang Fei saw how the main character fell asleep while concentrating on controlling the incoming spiritual energy, and this simply shocked the teacher. Wang Fei, having finished looking at the main character who doesn't even think about waking up, saw that the time given to the students was beginning to come to an end, and she understood how dangerous it was to leave Zhou Wan in a sleeping position, because he could harm other participants who find it much more difficult to restrain the magical power of the stone statue. At the end of the meditation, 
The spiritual energy around the place where the assessment of the abilities of each participant quickly disappeared and left the stone statues without magic. No one anymore needed to hold back in order to hold out for a certain amount of time, and the participants began to scream from a surge of incredibly painful amount of power. All the students tore off their clothes, wanting to quickly test the new abilities that had appeared as a result of how long they had been waiting for the end of the test lesson. The strength inside the boys' bodies was too much to control, and the guys were going to fight each other. Not considering it necessary to hold back, even with ten opponents, Wang Fei was on the sidelines quietly watching the start of the battle between the students and had no intention of stopping anyone. She was very curious to see what they were capable of given the chance to become more capable in every sense and gain a sufficient amount of physical abilities to harm another person. Wang Fei behaved very strangely, as if she didn't like seeing for the first time how the restless steely had no effect on a low-level cultivation student. Such an event even made the curator believe in the hopelessness of the protagonist, who was supposedly too lazy for the effectiveness to be at the level corresponding to the description. Zhou Wen behaved as before, unlike Li Xuan, who was affected by the magic of the stone statue and did more than 1,000 push-ups just to release the accumulated fatigue. Zhou Wen could look at the strange behavior of the students, planning to quickly go about his own business. The main character turned to Wang Fei, asking her to let him go for a run or walk somewhere in order to release the accumulated energy filling his entire body. The guy tried for a long time to find the reason why he would definitely be able to separate himself from the rest of the students of the test. The curator could only allow Zhou Wan to leave for a while, and she gave him exactly three hours after which he needed to return to the place where the students gathered. Wang Fei did not at all believe the main character who deliberately lied about the amount of physical energy that did not allow him to stand in one place. A little time later, the main character reached the forest right near the site of the testing process, and he followed an unknown path trying to find something very valuable on the lands that he had to visit for the first time. While walking, the guy looked at his own characteristics, which had increased much more and allowed the wearer to feel much better than before. The main character could not be surprised at all because he was exhausted trying to restrain the gathering spiritual energy and Zhou Wan became fixated on a point that increased during meditation. Thanks to the existing Lost Sutra of Immortality, the main character managed to break through one limit, repeating every movement of what happened in the small Buddha temple. And this is what greatly surprised Guy. With time to think about what happened, the main character notices an aura covering almost the entire part of the body, and such a manifestation of magic was eerily familiar to Zhou Wan. He suggested that in this way, the body aura is trying to reveal the third type of art of energy of the human essence. The main character climbed higher and higher into the mountain, fearing the possibility of meeting the dangerous creatures of this place. But in his head, the guy was thinking about the case when the restless steely could turn out to be a secretive source of the art of the entity. And if these assumptions were confirmed, Zhou Wan would be able to become much stronger than before. Without looking at his feet, the main character hit his face straight into the fur of an unknown creature and almost completely did not get stuck. The creature had white fur, which was very similar to the cover of the monsters previously encountered by Zhou Wan. When the main character broke away from the monster, he saw in front of him a multidimensional creature that was further away from the rest of his relatives. Zhou Wan felt fear along with excitement because if the first one came across a monster and accidentally offended him, he would need to fight until someone died. The monster rose from its feet and turned out to be several times larger than the main character, who, opening his mouth, tried to understand why the creature was so huge and waited for it to start attacking. But nothing of the kind happened, and between the spatial creatures standing up, he simply began to eat the plant growing very close. Zhou Wan was several times smaller than the monster and was glad when the monster was not going to attack the person who suddenly disturbed his calm environment. This creature was not distracted by the man who appeared and simply calmly betrayed the flowers from its blue petals. The monster pulled food, tearing it straight from the roots. And when the creature managed to try the flower, it looked quite satisfied and cute while absorbing the flower. 
The monster was not even going to think about attacking the main character standing next to him, who was looking straight at him. Joe One, in turn, did not fully understand why a creature of such large size likes to absorb a plant. And these thoughts made the guy consider the flower quite rare, since things turned out this way. After the main character thought about why the monster might like flowers, causing an effect that makes the creature a very cute creature, the guy saw a similar flower right in front of him and became even more interested in it. Zhou Wan approached the flower with a desire to examine the reason for everything that was happening. He put in enough effort to tear out the flower by its roots like the monster did. The main character couldn't just leave without investigating the reason for the behavior of the spatial creature. No matter how much he pulled, he couldn't pull it out. And this made Zhou Wan believe in the rarity of the blue flower growing among the territory where students are trying to gain higher educational knowledge. Seeing an ordinary person touching food, the monster caught fire with anger and wanted to destroy the main character who was standing in front of him. Previously, the monster did not look so scary even when Zhou Wan randomly encountered it. The spatial monster did not tolerate for a long time while a person was trying to steal a blue flower. And in order to stop him, it grabbed straight onto the clothes of the main character, who did not understand what was happening at all. Only thanks to the help of an incredibly strong creature, Zhou Wen was able to finally tear out the rare grass from the soil of the earth. The monster quickly threw the main character some distance away from him, and the guy hit his back hard on the ground when he fell. Zhou Wen quickly returned to normal and sat on the grass trying to understand what the flower was torn out with the help of the power of a creature that could destroy the main character before he could take the food. Suddenly, the monster approached the main character, wanting to eat the flower, and he failed to do this when the guy quickly reacted and hid the plant near him. The monster quickly threw Joe One onto his back, wanting to quickly take away the food, but the guy himself did not intend to give up the little thing he found before the monster was able to smell the flower. Over time, while the monster was trying to eat the flower straight from the hands of the man beneath him, quite a few minutes passed, and the main character understood how difficult it would be to fight off the creature, which would not lag behind until Joe One surrendered. The main character, having no other choice, simply put the flower in his mouth and began to chew it with all his strength so that the enemy would quickly leave him behind. He felt the burden of trying to somehow change the appearance of a rare plant because it was incredibly strong for human teeth. When the main character returned the flower in a terrible form, ordering the monster to take it since he needed it so much, the creature felt a reluctance to eat food directly after the person. Turning away from Joe One, the monster began to make sounds of disgust and headed away from the guy. The main character himself in his thoughts mocked the monster who had lost to the only available way to win. Over time, when it was not possible to properly feed the creature, the main character went towards the temple hidden among the fog. Previously, similar places were often encountered on the path of Joe One, who initially went for a walk in the hope of finding important materials or places where treasures are stored. The guy climbed the foot of the mountain, feeling as if he had been in this place before, and the path he was on was repeated several times. The main character could only without thinking follow a road that could lead to various problems, or, on the contrary, to luck. Joe One, continuing his journey, stood near the entrance to a place unknown to him, which, after not being visited by people for a long time, had become completely blocked by a thick fog, making it impossible to see what was inside. The main character did not move further at all in order to assess in detail the current situation in which it was possible to find himself in imminent danger, and suddenly he heard sounds that greatly frightened him. Zhou Wen tried to carefully hear the sounds that had previously emanated from the fog and therefore could become quieter than at the beginning of the adventure. This sound turned out to be the appearance of a hieroglyph right at the entrance to the untrained territory of the mountain. This mark could help the main character get more information that can be found out while inside the game dungeon, completely scanning real objects or areas of the real world. Zhou Wan could only scan the mark thanks to the phone that he managed to smuggle into the test, while the distracted supervisor of a group of first-year students tried to tell the new students every detail of the task of testing the spiritual state of each participant, and ultimately allowing them to gain powers beyond their capabilities. When the main character finally managed to complete the search for the desired marker of the area, 
an image of a spatial creature appeared right behind his back, which was hiding among the thick fog, which did not allow other living organisms to feel the presence of those hidden. The creature immediately began to attack Zhou Wen, who did not feel anyone directly behind him, and due to a strong blow from the back of the main character, he was thrown some distance. The monster, in turn, remained unnoticed due to its incredible speed of movement, which, in addition, hides among the thick fog. The push turned out to be too strong for an ordinary person who had previously spent most of his time trying to get valuable items thanks to immortality inside the game. And the main character found himself inside the leading fog, deeper than the beginning of the temple hidden almost on the top of the mountain. Being inside an unknown space, Zhou Wan felt a certain absorption of power inside the fog and tried to understand what this incident was leading to. The guy was left without strength, having lost the opportunity to get out and return to the rest of his comrades in the student group. And the monster that pushed the protagonist into the territory turned out to be the same spatial monster that had lost food because of Zhou Wan. And in order to take revenge on the man, he was ready to prevent him in all possible ways. The creature was in one place waiting for the foggy curtain to completely close and pull the protagonist deep inside the dangerous areas. Zhou Wan for a long time could not move away after receiving a blow from a spatial monster, which is strong enough if you evaluate physical abilities, capable of breaking every bone of the human body. And it was on this occasion that the main character was held by his back, feeling a real sensation of pain from the blows inflicted at the moment while the guy was distracted by more things to do. Zhou Wan rose to his feet, having regained some strength, and saw in front of him a continuous territory shrouded in thick fog. The hero understood the reason why the spatial creature pushed him into a completely different place, and this reason turned out to be the desire to defeat an ordinary person, having a chance to get rid of the rules of being on Mount Lao Jun. When the main character was angry about what had happened, he suddenly saw how his hand grew with plants that completely enveloped every part of the guy's body. As if trying to grow by giving roots deeper, Zhou Wan saw something like this for the first time, and therefore was very frightened when he saw a new manifestation of creatures of the plant species, capable of manifesting itself in a person at any second. Not many seconds later, the main character was almost completely covered by trees from a plant that continued to move higher to the head of a guy unable to even move from one position. Zhou Wan understood the danger of inaction, because of which he threatened to forever remain a part of something unknown. After things were going too badly and there was no benefit left from ordinary thinking about how to get out of the trap of a spatial creature, the main character remembered an important thing that could save his life, and so he quickly covered every part of his body with the magical power obtained as a result of training inside the small Buddha temple which joined together with the lost Sutra of Immortality. The plants surrounding the main character began to instantly disappear, repeating every movement upon their first appearance. Zhou Wen himself felt relieved because the elimination of the unknown creature was successful thanks to the art of essence energy, which, depending on the strength of other unknown magic, is capable of removing the deadly effects of curses. Such use of spiritual energy, together with other abilities obtained in the small temple of the Buddha, attracted quite a bit of attention from a monster located outside the dangerous territory for ordinary people, which was originally created in order to eliminate those who wanted to quickly get into the depths of this place, which has its own traps. The spatial creature was simply incredibly surprised by the rescue of the protagonist, who used magic that was terribly familiar to the monster. This monster, having a certain intellectually developed brain, tried to understand why exactly Zhou Wan was able to acquire magical power along with the lost Sutra of Immortality, which the creature was able to determine just by looking at a person's aura. From the moment he got inside an unknown spatial place, the main character continued to be near the entrance, because because of the foggy path he could not see where he could go, Zhou Wan tried to understand what position he was in, and using which method he could find the right side in order to get out. Suddenly, Right next to him, the same spatial monster appeared that pushed the main character inside the foggy area. The creature appeared too unexpectedly for Zhou Wan, who was fixated on more important problems that suddenly happened to him, because simply following the invisible path was much harder for him than just fighting against such a strong monster. But the creature did not try to attack a person who was not in the best position. 
and in a terrain in which he was not at all capable of fighting. The monster examined the main character, making incomprehensible sounds, as if trying to tell the guy something important, and he responded by counting the spatial creature for some time as harmless while it wants to see something interesting for itself. Having finished examining the main character, the monster hit the ground with its hooves, and the fog that formed out of nowhere disappeared from under the feet of this creature. As it turned out, the creature with a third eye on its forehead had capabilities that develop or stop the effect of creating a smoke curtain. Immediately after the impact of the spatial monster, the fog surrounding every corner of the unknown territory dissipated. Joe One was surprised by the unprecedented surroundings outside the mountain where the test given by the university was taking place. And the guy did not understand why the monster suddenly needed to get rid of the obstacle that did not allow an ordinary person to advance further. The spatial creature did not wait for the main character to think about what had happened, and therefore began to push the guy so that he would quickly continue to keep heading deeper into this foggy town. Such behavior seemed to Joe One much more suspicious than the environment, which no longer made the main character worry about the danger to his health. And the guy I decided to listen to the monster, so that he wouldn't get angry. A few minutes later, the main character was walking around the outskirts of the territory lost from sight of ordinary people in ancient times. The guy did not understand why, when he was calmly walking through a dangerous area, no one was trying to stop him or even eliminate him without warning, because this area was located directly on the territory of several large dimensions. Over time, trying to find at least some clues regarding the tasks surrounding him at every meter, Zhou Wen noticed several houses completely different from those previously seen among the lost city. The building on which the main character laid his eyes formed a magical aura, very reminiscent of a small Buddha temple, much more dangerous in its power or traps. Right at the entrance to this building, there was an inscription bearing the name of the house seen. All the factors were very similar to the description of the Buddha temple encountered in the past and even the inscriptions seemed identical, as if the house was a copy of the temple. Zhou Wen stood near the entrance, having made out the inscription that bore the name of the great and pure so-called temple. Such a name seemed quite familiar to the guy, as if he had previously managed to find information related to this territory. It was then that he remembered a story related to Taishan Laojun, who in ancient times was one of the three pure gods, and the presentation of the image of this deity undoubtedly aroused Zhou Wen's fear regarding the curse corresponding to the small Buddha temple. The main character could not calmly think with the image of Taishan Laojun in his head and sensing the initial danger by randomly entering the foggy area. After Zhou Wen stood in one position for too long, pondering the possible dangers awaiting inside the great temple, he was pushed by a spatial monster who made sounds of displeasure at the sight of the main character. Zhou Wen could not resist the great physical strength of the creature and therefore easily fell inside the temple. Lying on the ground, the main character was overcome with anger from the behavior of a spatial creature who constantly likes to push Zhou Wen into the most dangerous parts of this area and then pretends as if he is not guilty of what happened. The main character continued to lie on the ground because he was unable to completely move away from the first attack of the monster. But after Zhou Wen found strength on his feet, he instantly heard the voices of an unknown person who began to pronounce words carrying a deep meaning and fully affirmed the existence of forces that surpass human understanding. Voices coming straight from the sky tried to tell the main character the name of Tao, which they called the power of the formless avenue. According to the story of the initial prehistory of the creation of magic, three talismans appeared above the head of the main character, which served as a reward for Zhou Wen, who had reached the rank of disciple of Taoists. Only the guy did not have the right to take all three bestowed awards, and the right to choose one of them appeared above the main character. Three objects belonging to Taoism landed directly on the surface of the table, located close to Zhou Wen, which was significantly different from Buddhism which the main character met among the small temple under the lotus cave with the heart of a Buddha. The main character stood right in front of the table where there were three objects created from various materials, which in themselves were quite expensive things, and the first such material turned out to be a jade talisman. The rest were wooden along with gold, 
which just happened to be the most precious among the other talismans. Zhou Wen was the very first to pick up a wooden talisman, which was originally invented in order to have a connection with the nature, and according to the main character's assumptions, could turn out to be an object representing the powers of Taishan Lao Jun. The guy carefully looked at the talisman, trying to understand whether he should choose such an object that does not often fall to the usual to a person and may ultimately turn out to be erroneous in the protagonist's guesses regarding the deity. Nevertheless, Zhou Wen accepted the power of the wooden talisman, relying on his own feeling. And in an instant, the guy's hand was absorbed by magic with a country aura. This ability of the talisman quickly enveloped almost the entire hand of the guy who hastened to choose his talisman bestowed from a more unknown entity. The new manifestation of magic was not going to stop, and causing pain to the main character became more and more brighter than its previous state. Zhou Wen tried to understand the reason for such bad luck, and believed that it was as if the forced creation of a shell of an unknown creature using the power of the main character's body had happened again. The main character could not withstand the surge of magic and, having passed out, saw in front of him the image of a strange creature that formed bright rays of spiritual energy, thus blinding Zhou Wen. After inexplicable things happened, the main character lay unconscious for a long time, and when he woke up he felt exhaustion all over his body. Also due to the reboot onto himself, blood flowed from Zhou Wen's mouth and the main character remained in one position in order to slightly restore the strength that had been used with the purpose of absorbing the magic of an ordinary person like him. A few more minutes passed for Zhou Wan to be able to regain his lost strength and rise from the ground where he saw a mysterious light ball emitting a green color. This manifestation of magic in the form of a ball that never left the main character frightened the guy quite a lot and caused him a misunderstanding of what happened after he lost consciousness. When the main character pondered for a long time what the light ball could be and why it appeared in front of him, this magic itself was embodied in a small fairy that was originally created in the role of a companion beast, like what Zhou Wan saw while fighting against Li Fox and the companion that appeared in front of Zhou Wan watched covering his face with his own clothes. In order to understand whether what is happening is really a real spectacle, the main character discovered the characteristics of the so-called Banana Fairy, who has a mortal level corresponding to the characteristics of Zhou Wen, in addition to fairly high agility skills or other important aspects of the companion's strength. She had the opportunity to evolve with a good quality of cultivation. The main character, together with his new companion, looked at the phone where each of the Banana Fairy's skills were shown, and Zhou Wen learned about a new skill called Yin Wind. The guy had never heard of such a companion's ability before and therefore became quite interested in wanting to see everything in reality. The desire to see the abilities of the Banana Fairy eventually ceased to excite the protagonist, who decided to put such thoughts aside for later and considered it extremely important to quickly return to the rest of the participants in the test until Wang Fei began search investigations, due to which Zhou Wen faces suspicion from teachers for almost the entire remainder of the test academic year, or even several years of study at the university, when Zhou Wen returned to the place of the student meeting, he was still late and was caught by Wang Fei along with Li Xuan, who after his disappearance searched every corner of the mountain and ultimately failed to find the main character. The guy justified himself with a story in which he allegedly went for a walk and randomly lost in the surrounding nature. Li Xuan suddenly looked lower than the main character saying as if Zhou Wan had gone too deep into nature since he so quickly managed to tie the sheep to himself and became friends with them, such words seemed not entirely clear to Zhou Wan, and he looked at the point where his comrade was looking. At that point, the guy actually saw a sheep, and he himself did not understand when it became attached to an ordinary person. The creature, in turn, could sit next to the main character making annoying sounds. Suddenly, the main character noticed a mark right on the forehead of the sheep, and this mark seemed to Zhou Wen very similar to the place where the third eye of the spatial monster was located, previously encountered in an unknown place, shrouded in fog. After the main character listened to many lectures from Wang Fei, who had been looking for him for almost the whole day, Zhou Wen managed to return back home and began to ask the spatial creature for a request by trying to give the monster rare plants straight from the mountain in return. 
and the guy wanted to go to the city again. Lao Jun undercover is just such a monster. As it turned out, the spatial creature had the ability to communicate in human language, and therefore, while reading the book, he ordered the main character to quickly free him from the painful listening to requests. The creature did not look at the flower in Zhou Wen's hands at all, and did not react because he wanted the main character to be able to pass along with him in the future, him, the entire path that has developed. Zhou Wen sighed heavily, remembering how a spatial creature followed a bus of students who were heading back home and tried to get straight to the main character. Zhou Wen remembered that upon returning home, he immediately tried to enter that very place only while inside the game and considered this idea too easy. It was because of the inscriptions located right at the entrance to the found temple that the guy was forced to believe in the luck of safely passing the test, only without the help of a spatial creature with special power blocking other monsters from attacking him. Only when the main character, aiming to obtain a sufficient amount of information, considered the task quite simple, he was eliminated by a powerful monster who managed to get rid of an ordinary person before he could enter the temple. The abilities of this creature were simply incredibly stylish, so that the main character could simply have time to react to them. When things went too badly for the main character and he looked at the creature near him and realized something very important, Zhou Wan felt the only difference between what happened in the real world and how he was unable to get further while inside the game. This difference was how the spatial creature follows, follow him through the dungeon while being in the real world and because of his powerful strength, he is able to repel dangerous enemies. Zhou Wan exhaled from fatigue and returned to passing the game because he was absolutely unknown to the reason why the creature follows him, even without being a personal pet. The main character intended, until he found out the reason to take care of his new companion with strange abilities in every possible way. First of all, he went straight inside the dungeon where the Ebo Tower is located, and the monsters trying to keep the ancient city intact began to instantly attack an ordinary person. The main character was not going to simply die without even receiving at least a little data, and therefore used the call of the banana fairy, telling her to quickly put into action the Tai Yin Feng skill. When the fairy appeared, for some reason, she began to scream in fear, and seeing the attacking monsters, was preparing to eliminate them. She launched several lightning-fast resolving waves at the fiery creatures, covered with particles of the spiritual energy of the pet companion herself. All the attacks of the banana fairy spread throughout the battle area, not giving a chance to find a place where there was salvation. All these attacks were aimed at only one enemy moving towards the fairy at full speed. There were a few seconds left for them to come into contact with each other, and an explosive wave of magic of different powers would form. After the protagonist's companion launched several good magical attacks towards the enemy, and he was unable to dodge them, a huge explosion of spiritual energy was formed. Such a force quickly spread throughout the territory of the ancient city, and Zhou Wen could not simply take his eyes off the spectacle in which the banana fairy managed to release a sufficient amount of her own power. The main character was very happy to see the successful result of Tai Anfeng's magic which was originally created in the form of an ice ability that could easily resist firebirds, quite an ancient tower of the elements of fire, which was only slightly different from the temple where the main character went with a spatial creation. When Zhou Wan turned towards the banana tree, he immediately saw how exhausted the companion was after using her technique only once. The main character understood why something detailed happened, and the reason for this was the non-developing characteristics of the pet in the process of evolution. The main character thought about how best to use the skills of the banana fairy, wanting to fight more against other unknown creatures and develop in the long-term use of Tai Yin Feng's ice technique, which by its nature is quite powerful skills with a great range of distribution. Zhou Wen wondered for a long time how best to use similar techniques of companions, and a brilliant idea came to his head. After much thought, the main character found the best way to use the limited ability of the banana fairy. And this idea was to gather many opponents at one point so that it would be easier to hit them with a single attack. Zhou Wan planned to use the weakness of the fire creatures by gathering them together and hitting them with ice magic. Zhou Wan decided to apply a well-thought-out plan to eliminate his opponents and therefore attracted the attention of monsters who immediately rushed to pursue him. The guy saw how the result went quite successfully in his direction and in order to better lure many fiery creatures to one point. 
Joe One called for his help a flying ant, which is several times faster than an ordinary person. The flying ant quickly removed half of the monsters from the main character, who was directly surrounded by fire monsters, and tried with all his might to remain in a state of normal thinking. The situation worked out much worse than Joe One had up to this point planned to fight until he could involve the banana fairy. As it turned out, the main character's plans failed when fire monsters surrounded the guy along with his pet separately and did not allow him to get out of the trick thanks to the skill of restraining opponents inside a fireball, which served as a defense ability simultaneously with attacking techniques. Being inside one such circle, the main character looked at his A-pet, without which it will not be possible to implement the plan for the instant elimination of enemy birds. Upon completion of the encirclement of an ordinary person, along with a flying ant, they were both destroyed by the explosion resulting from the defensive reaction of the fire monsters. Joe One still failed to get straight to the top of the ancient city, which had the name of the Guard Tower, which in ancient times was used by the very manifestation of the deity Ebo. Such a defeat forced the main character to think better about planning a further battle, because even he himself understood how pointless it was to try to attack opponents head-on and to simply run away until everyone gathered in one place made no sense. All because firebirds are ways to quickly eliminate pests of the tower. Then the main character, together with a flying ant, will be able to gather opponents into one heap, and the last way out for the guy was to become much faster in his movements or dexterity. The most reasonable way to acquire suitable abilities turned out to be to acquire the appropriate skill of vital forces, which significantly speeds up a person's movements. Zhou Wen came to a similar idea thanks to the memories of how La Xuan moved during the battle against the Lotus Monster with the heart of a Buddha, and he could quickly dodge the creature's retaliatory attacks. In order to get a lot of information on which, in the future, the main character will be able to judge what is the best thing to do when fighting such strong opponents, he decided to read the data that is published inside the spatial form of the university, and therefore sitting down on the ground, he prepared to search for suitable publications on the relevant topic for a long time. Inside the forum at that moment, there were quite a lot of requests regarding topics that did not interest the main character at all, and with dissatisfaction, he flipped through pages after pages in the hope of finding a publication suitable to trust. Mostly, the guy saw information that was not at all related to passing university tests, or even what is the best way to fight against powerful creatures, and instead just read data, where each student tries to prove to others their own strength. In less than a few minutes, Joe One abandoned his stupid searches inside the forum, and was preparing to go to the library in order to independently find the necessary information. He dressed according to the rules of the university and heard the endless production of various sounds by the spatial creature that are trying to convey to the main character something important in the opinion of the monster. Turning towards the creature, Joe One noticed how it wanted to receive food depicted on the cover of a magazine at a special price. The monster directly insisted that the person buy something tasty and quickly feed it. After the main character carefully examined the request from the spatial creature, he was quite shocked because the price of food depicted on the magazine exceeded almost all of Joe One's capabilities. The guy did not understand since when the monster began to enjoy life so much at the expense of other people and why the monster was asking for it. Help himself without intending to help the main character. After listening to every request of the spatial creature, Joe One went to the general library in order to find previously assumed information. There were enough books to find at least some clues regarding passing the test inside the dungeon where the ancient tower of the flaming deity is located. Only no matter how many books the main character flipped through one by one, he could not find exactly the information he needed. But the guy did not stop continuing to receive many failures in the hope of getting clues. Quite a long time has passed since Zhou One came to the library, and due to the long search for data, he became so bored that he put his feet straight on the library table while reading a book that describes two different skills that allow a person to enter a state of super acceleration in just one small moment. Due to the fact that the information received did not correspond to the search for the main character, he had to cross out several aspects that Joe One followed, and in the end, among the options, only the art of flying the Dragon Gate normally suitable for the main character remained among the options. 
The previously chosen ability belonged to the art of flight, dating back to the goddess Hua Zhong, and the use of which was possible to remain motionless for an insufficient time. In addition to many limiting factors, there were also excellent skills that allow you to move very gracefully while in the air. And on top of that, a person using such a technique can maintain for a long time control of your own flight. The main character left the library reflecting on the information received, and he knew very well that the found speed movement skill was located right in Longmeng Cave, located on the territory of Luoyang University, and Zhou Wen planned to go there soon in the hope of finding what he wanted. The guy walked without being distracted by the surroundings around him and suddenly stepped on the surface of the earth, which made an incomprehensible sound, as if the earth might soon go under a fault, ready at any second to form in the place where Zhou Wan is located. The sounds did not stop appearing and only began to become much larger to distort your first state. Unexpectedly for the protagonist, a monster appeared from underground, which had previously been located in part of the territory intersecting with the border under the protection of the military, and the creation was simply incredibly large in size, much larger than the size of Zhou Wan. The guy stood in one place because he did not understand what was happening in front of him, and therefore could only horror to watch as part of the city belonging to the university area is destroyed right before our eyes. The main character was overcome by an incredible feeling of fear, which he felt solely out of a lack of understanding why a spatial creature of such enormous size and strength appeared right in the middle of the city. Zhou Wen could not react, because when trying to fight a monster that poses a danger to every person, one could simply die without doing anything worthy for humanity. Without having time to plan a plan by which he could escape from danger, the main character saw a blow from a spatial creature flying in his direction, which uses ranged combat techniques in order to keep dangerous people away from him. The creature acted very carefully because the battle could at any second turn in favor of an ordinary person does not currently pose a threat to the monster and remains immobilized. The blow passed by Zhou Wen, who took advantage of the wings of a flying ant, and the attack of the spatial monster was so strong that it could easily eliminate the guy and incurred devastating consequences that would undoubtedly destroy the infrastructure of the city, or even worse, could harm many innocent civilians in the territory under the university's premises. Having landed at a safer distance, first of all, the main character could notice the incredible strength of the monster, which in his opinion clearly exceeds the legendary level and belongs to the epic. Similar predictions appeared in Zhou Wen due to the assessment of the appearance of the spatial creature and its blows bringing a sufficient number of powerful waves of spiritual energy. While the guy was thinking about how to avoid unnecessary serious injuries and fully concentrating on this, the spatial creature was preparing to release a vital force technique appearing straight from the monster's mouth, and this attack was aimed straight at the main character, who at the moment was the only person standing in the way of the epic creature. Suddenly, not far from the place of battle, the voice of a man appeared, ordering his comrades and wards to quickly inflict many attacks on the body of a spatial monster that had appeared in an inappropriate place for such a place. This man did not at all think about the risks of harming other participants located near the monster and waited until the allies began to act relying on what he had given order. It was then that a large number of shots from special equipment hit the target exactly and prevented the spatial creature from using spiritual energy that could easily destroy a huge part of the university territory, or simply destroy every person standing in the way of the original goal, which is why the monster actually appeared in this place. The attacks that saved the city from danger were launched directly from helicopters flying above the monster, the power of which is powerful enough to fight against such creatures of space. Helicopters filled with military continued to endlessly launch a massive attack on the body of the enemy located in the territory where innocent people could die. The man who gave the order to strike turned out to be a comrade of the curator, Wang Fei, and in himself was the commander-in-chief of a group of military men who had been hunting for a long time for a spatial creature that had fled very far from the place of its appearance. The commander of the army was preparing to use his power of thunder in order to completely immobilize the huge creature. The attack went straight through the body of the creature, which immediately began to bleed with special blood of epic origin, and it was completely defeated thanks to lightning specially prepared for such cases. The city, with the fall of the monster, 
again had the opportunity to calmly continue to be safe without fear of the manifestation of aggressive creatures inside the city. After the monster finally lost the strength to fight a large number of military men, all the blood that was released from the body of the spatial monster poured onto the head of the main character standing very close to the temporary chaos that had happened, the guy felt incredible anger along with dissatisfaction that it was he who received such a punishment. Not having done absolutely nothing wrong in order to deserve to be doused with disgusting liquid from the body of a monster, for a few minutes, in dissatisfaction with what had happened, the commander-in-chief of the troops approached Zhou Wan, asking about the condition of the main character, because he was very worried that absolutely no one outside the military personnel would suffer any physical or mental harm. Zhou Wan was very surprised that anyone even makes a difference when a problem appears an ordinary person. The main character, not having had time to have a normal conversation with the commander of the group of military forces, looked straight at the dying spatial creature, wanting to express that what happened could in no way be an ordinary accident, because such monsters are powerful enough for a person of lower rank to be able to fight against him alone, or even while in a squad of several comrades of similar level. The commander-in-chief of the troops did not allow the guy to finish his assumption, excluding such possible manifestations of monsters inside the city, and in order to avert the suspicion of the main character, he spoke about an incident that arose quite recently, the commander said, as if the reason for the monster's attack was a large amount of passion for cultivating the owner's creation, because of which the monster could not tolerate such tests, simply ran away from him. At the end of the conversation, the military commander asked the main character to quickly go to another place from the territory where the accidental incident occurred and do his best to keep information about what happened secret so as not to show unnecessary panic among the people around him, Zhou Wan listened to the interlocutor, not wanting to simply get involved in the problems of the military, and therefore I was calmly planning to return to my home until something even worse happened than the appearance of a spatial monster. On the way to the house, the main character could not get out of his head the image of a monster, which seemed to the guy not at all like a pet who had entered into an agreement with an ordinary person, and only he himself could not do anything about this phenomenon. Zhou Wan changed his view on matters concerning secret data related with the military, who may be hiding more important information regarding the danger of similar spatial creatures. A little time after completing his thoughts regarding the spatial monster, the main character finally returned back to his apartment, and having opened the doors, he felt a strong smell of blood coming straight from the room in which he had been using his own blood for a long time in order to play more games. He himself perfectly understood how wrong it was leaving the room in this condition, because U Yanlan had specially allocated such good conditions for him, and the guy understood that it was not very polite of him to do so. When Zhou Wen threw his clothes on the floor, a strange shell fell straight out of his jacket, which was not previously in the protagonist's reserves. This shell had a shape, as if it had just been pulled out from the depths of a large ocean and made sounds more frightening than any spatial monster. Such an appearance of an unfamiliar object interested the main character, who did not remember when he managed to pick it up, and for what purpose he did so. Zhou Wen looked carefully at the shell, trying to remember where he went to randomly take with him a shell that cannot be stored in a library or other places where there is no humidity. Without having time to remember anything, the shell, located right in front of the protagonist's face, began to release unprecedented magic from its insides, which quickly spread throughout the guy's room and illuminated it with its own energy. The small shell was capable of storing so much power in itself that it could absorb the environment in an instant. The magic of the shell was simply incredibly ferocious compared to the forces the guy had previously encountered, and it began to instantly attack Joe Wen, causing him a lot of harm. The main character, not expecting this, was unable to cope with the trick of the unknown creature hiding inside the shell, and it strangled the guy with all his might. So much so, that he started coughing up his own blood. While the guy was almost dying from being captured, a monster trying to eliminate the main character appeared in the room, and the female creature began to rejoice at the opportunity to escape from the hands of the military commander who destroyed the pet belonging to this girl while trying not to capture and completely rid the city of the presence of such monsters. Feeling his imminent death from strangulation, 
the main character noticed how dangerous the creature is, an intelligent monster that surpasses the capabilities of the water snake he met earlier. And a girl of unknown origin had the skills to suppress the power of other living organisms. Right in front of Joe One, an image of a mermaid appeared, rejoicing at the opportunity to be saved thanks to the main character, who randomly turned out to be a suitable person so that the monster could take advantage of him. The mermaid thanked the guy for the help he gave him, and the creature only began to strangle him more. The mermaid decided to repay the main character for saving her and offered to become her food in return. After such words, the appearance of the unknown monster instantly changed, and, opening her mouth, several huge fangs appeared. When trying to eliminate Zhou Wen, the mermaid was hit by a magical ability that easily threw her away from the guy who did not understand who the monster was or what goal it was achieving, wanting to use it as food for a while. As it turned out, the savior of the main character turned out to be Mr. Lamb, who did not invest any special skills in stopping the malicious mermaid, and Zhou Wen, landing next to him, thanked him with difficulty, because he was choking from long-time squeezing of his throat. It was then that the spatial creature showed the main character several pictures from a magazine that depicted various tasty things that the pet coveted for saving the guy. And he, in response, was slightly shocked by Mr. Ram's determination and was ready to buy all this food. After Joe One listened to the pet's demands, he went up to the mermaid and calmly listened to the insulting words addressed to him from the monster. She tried to convey to him that she did not want to be defeated by such a weak person like the main character. This creature tried to pull out an object with which Mr. Ram easily pierced her body in order to stop her for a while. As it turned out, according to the monster's stories, she is the queen of the Siren Clan. And it was for this reason that she was very similar to mermaids. And she could not understand for what reason she could lose to an ordinary a ram capable of crushing even the queen of the sirens. After the siren queen showed aggression, the main character asked Mr. Ram to quickly eliminate the enemy so that she would not cause more destruction, and the spatial monster was not at all against it, wanting to receive a reward as soon as possible. The siren queen, in turn, out of shock, asked them to stop and listen. The siren was unable to resist Mr. Ram, and in order to get mercy from him, she was preparing to tell the secret of her father, who is the god of chaos. The siren was exhausted, and for this reason, she could no longer simply fight against a superior enemy. According to the story of the female monster, Zhou Wen managed to obtain information about Kaisi, who is the god or father of the entire siren race. This race considered Kaisi the most primary deity in human mythology, and this story actually turned out to be true. This deity eventually became the first god born in the cosmic chaos, where he had the ability to decide the beginning of the entire order of time and space. The Siren Queen took out a magic ball from herself, which, according to her, is the bearer of a divine secret, for the sake of which she fled from the military in order to get the item. She was ready to give the main character such power in exchange for mercy. Looking straight at the pearl that the Siren Queen provided to the main character and ordered him to carefully observe the space inside this object in order to feel the god Kaisa for himself, Zhou Wen listened to the Siren's instructions, trying to understand whether this divine secret really hides the technique of vital forces with which he will be able to become a little stronger than my former self. Following each instruction, the main character felt inexplicable sensations that appeared only as soon as he looked at the spatial dimensions inside the Pearl of the Siren Queen, and the guy quickly changed his view to a more unafraid word. He saw something that he would not need to see or even imagine because he could easily die. The Siren Queen at that moment smiled with pleasure, seeing the torment on Zhou Wen's face, and she was glad to have the opportunity to lure a stronger opponent into her ruse. She initially did not intend to work together with the main character, and was planning a plan to deceive the guy who was fixated on obtaining information regarding the divine blessings passed down from the very parent of humanity or the line of sirens. Zhou Wan almost immediately felt the danger posed by the pearl, and, in order to protect himself, tried to move to a safe distance in order to soon find a way out of the problem. 
The protagonist's face showed an incredible fear of being pulled into an unknown space or even dying without having time to achieve results in the investigation of small temples and ancient cities like Ebo Tower. After the main character felt such feelings, right before his eyes, the formation of a pearl appeared, releasing around itself many magical attacks that Zhou Wan had never encountered before. Such a force quickly spread throughout the area of the room and could at any second cause considerable harm to the environment, or even the most important to the hero trying to stand aside. But the guy was unable to avoid falling into another space, and he was pulled straight into the territory where there was a huge magical sphere very similar to a black hole that is trying to suck in every possible thing or living creature that fell into the tricks of the Siren Queen. Except for this formation of magic, there was nothing else, and no chance the main character simply could not escape from there. Over time, being in an unknown place, Joe One realized that he had fallen into the enemy's trick, which did not even think of helping an ordinary person in any way, and simply hated him with all his soul. The guy himself was very scared, because this was the first time something like this had happened to him, and he did not calmly react to such events managed. The main one was located directly above the magical formation of a black hole, which very frightened him just by its appearance and all its powerful characteristics, drawing meteorites into this space very close to Zhou Wen, near which there was an absorbed spatial monster that practically defeated the Queen of the Sirens. Having carefully examined the state of the creature who accidentally fell inside the space along with the main character and receiving a state of shock from what he saw inside, which was completely different from the real world, Joe One noticed how Mr. Rom did not move and did not even try to avoid getting into the deep part of this territory, receiving in the guy's opinion into a certain state of enchanted thoughts along with movements. When things were going too badly for the main character, he heard a voice coming straight from a spatial black hole that called Zhou Wan his countryman, and this creature of inexplicable power wanted the guy to quickly go after the black hole, according to the magic of this territory. It could lead the main character straight to a place where he can get what he wants or something more interesting. Having heard the words concerning fellowship with a creature that surpasses human understanding, and the beginning of the story about a place that brings superior strength to an ordinary person, the main character thought a little, not understanding at what moment he managed to become a fellow countryman of a black hole capable of speaking the language of the human society of the real world. The spatial gap became larger over time while the main character tried to find a way to avoid imminent death in contact with previously unprecedented magic. The dark essence of light located inside the Pearl of the Siren Queen and was the only magical force in this area began to emit a bright red light that blinded the eyes of the main character. Upon completion of the emission of a bright light unknown to that moment, Zhou Wen, with all the available power of space, began to be pulled into the black hole, and the guy himself understood the danger of the situation that had suddenly arisen with him. But somehow he had no opportunity or physical ability to resist because the power of the entire space is much stronger than usual. A person suddenly in danger. Suddenly, right on the chest of the main character, the lost sutra of immortality lit up, reacting to the manifestation of someone else's ability and its effect on the body of Zhou Wen, who was very surprised to see the very circulation of spiritual energy. Such an incident seemed to the guy a good opportunity to become part of the dark space thanks to the unexpected becoming a believer of some ancient deity. While the main character is in a dangerous territory where he can die in any possible case and forever lose the chance to return to the real world, the Queen of the Sirens tried to pull out of herself a thing launched by a spatial monster who could easily eliminate her opponent, such as a creature like a siren much weaker than Mr. Ram, is currently under hypnosis of the unknown charms of the magic pearl. The Siren Queen quickly restored her badly wounded body, using a small part of the abilities bestowed in honor of becoming the Siren Queen, and she was glad to drive the main character straight into a trick from which only those who have the blood of chaos inside them can escape, and those people who have not been able to comprehend the teachings of chaos forever will remain inside a spatial rift, ready to suck in any possible victim. The Siren Queen was preparing to enhance the effect of the pearl right in her hands, and in order to keep the main character inside longer, 
She filled the ball with magical power, because of which the pearl, unable to bear it, simply cracked. This happened to the queen for the first time, and I have no idea why this is happening, or because of what the reasons for the cracking of the surface of the magic ball remained inexplicable to the girl. Due to the similar origin of the unexpected break of the pearl, she began to release magic that was present at the very appearance of the Siren Queen, and this ability was strong enough to harm its owner. The Siren tried to hide from the light that was too bright for her eyes, very blinding at any opportunity, which reveals weak points Queen of the Sirens. The Queen of the Sirens, after an inexplicable change began to occur inside her own pearl, was incredibly surprised because simply no one had previously been able to influence the state of this object. No matter how hard she tried, the girl felt fear seeing something unexpected right in front of her, and her mouth opened from the strong shock of the siren could take her eyes off what would soon happen to the pearl. As it turned out, the reason for the strange incidents was the appearance of the main character in the real world, with a new acquired ability that quickly adapted to its bearer. And seeing this, the Siren Queen could realize that the guy had somehow managed to master the divine technique that did not allow chaos to absorb him and, unlike Zhou Wen, who was not injured at all, once inside the space, Mr. Ram hit his head when falling on the real surface of the earth. A spatial creature like Mr. Ram was very angry if only they were harmed in the most terrible way, and therefore the pet flared up with hatred for the Siren Queen, a huge lump grew right on Mr. Ram's head each time, giving him incredible pain from the fall and the beginning of memories of what happened inside the dark space of the Queen's secret pearl sirens. Unable to withstand incredible anger at just the sight of an enemy, Mr. Ram launched a volley of spiritual magic straight at the Queen of Demons, who did not have time to evade the technique of a more capable creature. In a few seconds, the entire room of the protagonist, was covered with the magic of a spatial monster who had no choice but revenge because he had suffered the incredible humiliation of being caught in a trick where I found myself completely unable to resist. All this magic was formed straight from the third eye of Mr. Ram, who, having accomplished what he wanted, began to absorb spiritual energy back into his own body, the ability to use this powerful force of which consists only in the fact that the spatial creature uses it becoming several times stronger than previous attacks. After defeating the Siren Queen, the main character received a strange pebble called the Naga Sphere, which, according to the guy, lost all divine techniques, was absorbed by chaos, and over time simply turned into empty marble. Zhou Wen could not stop examining the received object, trying to find out how to use it, and is the sphere capable of using any skills that allow it to fight in brutal combat. Zhou Wen, who received the strange object, became very interested in how to use it, and with a smile on his face, he placed the sphere directly at the spatial creation. The stone, in turn, began to quickly absorb Mr. Rom before he could understand the essence of the ongoing disappearance of almost the entire body and the sudden tearing of the monster from matters important to him. Having finally realized the function of the item, the main character looked straight at the sphere, wanting to use it as a place to store the necessary fossils or other found things that could undoubtedly be of great benefit when exploring the previously found dungeon, where there are many demonic generals or their ordinary warriors keeping the area safe from those coming students along with other pests, like the military. It was then that the stone object disappearing inside hit Zhou Wan on the head, so that he would stop playing games with him and rather stop the action of the sphere capable of storing inside itself a fairly large number of living organisms or pets of enormous size. The main character, in turn, continued to laugh because it seemed to him too funny a sight when a spatial creature disappears into another spatial dimension. From the moment when the danger disappeared from the protagonist's apartment, a whole day passed, during which the guy had no intention of going outside the house. So several days passed while Zhou Wan sat in the room, trying to find a sufficient amount of information regarding cases similar to what happened during the appearance of the Siren Queen, talking about the divine blessing of the God of Chaos, from whom came a race of sirens capable of speaking human language. A few hours after some information was actually received, the main character decided to thank the spatial creature who saved him during the appearance of the Siren Queen, 
and for this purpose, bought all the products desired by Mr. Ram during the battle. Each product glowed as if made from gold bars and specially prepared so that the monster agrees to accept payment for saving a life. The monster was really happy about the large amount of food that only he would get and would not have to share with anyone. Joe One stood not far from the spatial creature, telling him the plan according to which he was now going to another place with the desire to find wet data, and the guy asked the monster to beware of any security without leaving their room. The main character spent quite a lot of time talking about the safety of the spatial monster and was already very tired of him. So he hit him and kicked him out of the apartment, not wanting to see anymore the person who had previously tried to pull Mr. Rom straight into the spatial dimension. And the monster did this, forgetting who actually belonged to the allocated one apartment. Not many minutes after the guy was kicked out of the room, he connected to the spatial form of the university. Wanting to find relevant information about the place where he was currently going in search of techniques capable of resisting the firebirds guarding the ancient tower. Joe One was glad because he actually managed to find suitable information regarding the Dragon Gate Grotto, where flight skills or other interesting abilities such as improving physical abilities are actually stored. The guy was going to follow relying solely on the rules specified in the university forum for novice students or rogues of underground territories. The information that the guy received was an accurate description of the length of the Dragon Gate grottos, reaching more than one kilometer with the contents and in every accessible place of many caves. People who managed to reach the lower levels of the dungeon found there more than 100,000 Buddha statues, inside which various spatial creatures were located ready at any second attack ordinary people having an advantage in the environment. The monsters themselves were different from each other, and located inside the caves formed on the statues did not allow people to find the mysterious places of unexplored areas waiting for travelers ready to sacrifice their own lives in order to find secret territories. Most of these places were kept deep from human attention and were often missed during searches. Joe One carefully examined the map of this dungeon in which, due to the many numbers of caves, it would be extremely difficult for the guy to find the dungeon mark. But the main character was not going to just give up without even trying to test himself in order to gain skills that are stored only in this huge territory filled with various monsters. After the main character carefully investigated the information received regarding the cave with many good skills, while descending the stairs, he noticed a new neighbor in front of him who quickly drew attention to a strange acquaintance about whom there are so many rumors or gossip about his strength in battle with more powerful opponents. Wang Lu did not shy away from Zhou Wan at all, and on the contrary, wished him a good morning. The main character took the phone aside, greeted the girl, calling her Xiao Lu, and told the interested neighbor where he was going. Wang Lu became very interested when she heard the story about the grottos of the Dragon Gates, where the main character is heading and the girl immediately wanted to go with him because she had recently been engaged in her cultivation there. Unable to withstand the strong pressure from the neighbor and her too sweet face, Joe One could only agree with her and take her on a short adventure where all sorts of dangers could occur, such as an attack by a spatial monster. A few minutes after Joe One agreed with his neighbor, who told how she recently received a convenient way to travel around the university campus by winning a television lottery, and such stories seemed a little strange to the main character who considers the object of transportation to be like an ordinary bicycle. Only a few seconds passed, and Zhou Wen, raising his head to the sky, stood completely shocked by what he saw. This shocking sight was that Wang Lu won an entire helicopter in the lottery and acted as if there was nothing in it to consider her some kind of rich princess. Thanks to fast transport, the main character managed to get to his last destination before too many people gathered there. Zhou Wan and Wang Lu walked through the area where many Buddha statues are located and were surprised by the many people wanting to exchange objects found in the cave. Zhou Wan continued to examine every part of the dungeon, realizing how huge it was, and even a little doubted the possibility of finding a mark for scanning inside the game. Suddenly, Wang Lu became interested in what task interested the main character since he went straight to the grottos of the Dragon Gate. When Zhou Wan told about the Soaring Dragon technique, the girl immediately became interested in seeing such an ability with her own eyes and remembered a lot of information regarding this technique. In order to see something interesting, 
Wang Lu suggested that the main character make a good deal, and such words made the guy ask what the deal was. The neighbor's desire turned out to be more likely to eliminate the soaring celestial beast for which she needed the help of other people. The girl was not at all against giving Zhou Wen the equipment that could fall out when defeating the monster, and the detailed proposal became much more interesting to the guy. After carefully listening to every word of Wang Lu regarding the proposal, the main character agreed, because he realized how rare the skills from the essence of the crystal were, and he could not understand why the girl was so confident in the loss, because such good luck is rare. A few hours later, they came straight to the Lotus Flower Cave, where a large number of lotus statues corresponding to the name of the cave were located. Undoubtedly, first of all, the guys began to be attacked by monsters trying to ensure the safety of the place in which they live and protect it from all sorts of pests who want to get rare things. But Wang Lu was not at all worried about this and asked the main character to take some photos of how beautiful her pose was when fighting with terrifying monsters. The girl quickly flew into the sky thanks to the butterfly wings she received, which allowed the owner to fly around the battle area for a long time and waving his sword at the same time. Zhou Wen flew straight after Wang Lu, continuing to film the girl's every move, and he understood why the neighbor asked to join the squad for a while. The monsters with which the girl fought were fast enough to inflict many attacks and used their peculiarity when attacking the girl. Only now, Without exerting much strength at all, she could dodge every attack and did it very deftly, as if she were in the midst of a dance. Thanks to her incredible dexterity, Wang Lu was able to deliver several precise blows straight to the body of a strong monster, ready to do harm at any possible moment. Zhou Wen, in turn, was a little further from the battle site, continuing to capture every minute on his neighbor's phone. Suddenly, the guy noticed a lotus statue above his girlfriend's head, on which a certain hieroglyph was depicted. Zhou Wen tried to see what he saw, and to do this, he narrowed his eyes a little. That's when he saw that the image was a hieroglyph that allowed him to scan dungeons for playing on his phone. Very little time had passed since the start of the battle, and the enemy with whom Wang Lu had fought would have been defeated. Wang Lu took out the same crystal of the essence of the soaring sky technique from the body of the deceased creature, and allowed the main character to take it as a token of gratitude for filming the video. The girl immediately inquired about the time of the battle, and in response she heard that the battle lasted only one minute. While the girl did not understand why it took so long to deal with the monster, Zhou Wen, examining the crystal, wondered where the neighbor got such incredible luck in receiving rare items. Suddenly a stranger appeared to the guys who spoke about his records, which Wang Lu is able to surpass as always. This person turned out to be an academy graduate named Huang Zhu, whose achievements were very high so that Wang Lu could easily beat them. After Wang Lu was upset by the inability to overcome all the achievements of a familiar person, he introduced the guy by telling how he had long ago managed to surpass the records of Huang Zhu, who apparently was not at all worried about this, and on the contrary, with a smile on his face, assessed the abilities of the familiar guy standing next to him. An academy graduate I knew was named Feng Chiu Yan, who had a record of defeating monsters in just 20 seconds. And he also entered the Sunset Academy as a special admission student. The guy was very quiet when he was praised by a senior person. Wang Lu was simply incredibly surprised to see in front of her a student like herself. And the girl's behavior seemed to the main character to be too eager to repeat the exams. Over time, Zhou Wen's assumptions failed because the roommate was not going to compete with Feng Chiu Yan, who has the legendary pet of the Heavenly King of Swift Sabers, whose specialty is the incredible speed of sword fencing. Suddenly, Wang Lu was about to go to another place in order to take a walk or distract herself from defeat without any battle. And the academy graduate followed her, wanting to convince her of her own strength. But Feng Chiu Yan remained in place and carefully looked at the main character without taking his strange gaze off. The guys were left completely alone, which actually allowed Feng Chiu Yan to start talking with the main character, whose name the guy had known for a long time, thanks to a video spread across the forum of Zhou Wen fighting with a demonic general. And this fight seemed like an amazing spectacle to Feng Chiu. He turned around from the main character feeling angry because of how Zhou Wen wasted time on unnecessary things like working as a photographer. According to Fang Chiu Yan, the main character managed to find out a lot of information regarding his weak concentration to become stronger. 
Returning back, Huang Ji asked the main character not to worry about the words of his interlocutor, who had heard a lot from his teacher about Zhou Wen and was simply upset because he had previously hoped for a mistake in other people's outgoing conversations. After the main character listened to the grievances of a person who was rude in his opinion and considered Fang Qiu Yan to be too untrained to communicate well with someone, Zhou Wen felt uncomfortable talking to this kind of university student. Still, he was left completely alone on the field where the battle had previously taken place and was very happy about it. It was then that Zhou Wen took out his phone from his pocket, wanting to quickly scan the new dungeon and start going through it in safety. The scanned parts of the Dragon Gate Grotto dungeon were quickly copied inside the game because they were originally one of the copies of the dungeons on the phone. Zhou Wen decided to go back home and, walking around many participants in the passage of this place, planned how best to use the information received. Suddenly, he saw Huang Zhi selling a lot of monster pet eggs, which surprisingly, absolutely no one was buying, and he needed to scream to lure buyers. Huang Zhi quickly drew attention to the main character, and beaming with joy to see a familiar person greeted him, believing that quite a lot of time had passed since the last meeting, although this was not at all the case. Zhou Wen became extremely interested in why the academy graduate was sitting on the ground selling eggs, so Huang Zhi told the value of the item containing the legendary chimera inside and wanted to sell a few pieces to the main character himself. Huang Zi was very happy to tell the basic skills that the Chimera has, and such techniques turned out to be petrification of the skin, which allows the creature to become quite strong in the field of defense, in contrast to the low level of attack. Over time, the Academy graduate spoke about rare species of Chimeras that can hatch with special magical abilities, and one of these skills could be the so-called Overlord, allowing the monster to become strong enough among the legendary pets. Huang Zhi pointed with his hand at a large number of such eggs, allowing the main character to try his luck in the search, and named the price of one item at 200,000 university forum points. Only when Zhou Wen showed that he did not have such a number of points at all, the graduate was upset because he considered his friend Wang Lu to be as rich as herself. Looking at such a spectacle, the main character was a little surprised by the person's desire to sell so many monsters at an expensive price. Nevertheless, Zhou Wen was allowed to examine the characteristics of the eggs that constantly fell out to him with the innate skill of petrifying the skin, and others did not come across. The main character sat for a long time scanning almost all the chimera eggs, which had nothing more than petrification, and this made the guy understand how rare the overlord skill is. But still, Zhou Wen did not understand how the academy graduate managed to find so many chimera eggs strong enough to defeat it. While Zhou Wen was trying to find a suitable egg, Wang Lu appeared behind him, stating how strong Huang Ji is, even despite his appearance or the kindness he shows when interacting with people. Huang Zhi, in turn, listened with a smile to the praise from the girl, where it was mentioned how he managed to achieve first place in the academy, and also how to complete his studies while remaining the strongest student. Huang Zhi, seeing the appearance of Wang Lu, immediately tried to sell her several legendary pets and only received a refusal because the girl loved more cute creatures. Wang Lu stuck out her tongue, not wanting to buy anything from a person whose mind was getting money, and such a sight made the main character really think Li Huang Ji is the best graduate of the academy. Zhou Wen could no longer contain his interest and therefore directly asked the purpose of starting the sale of legendary pet eggs directly to the dungeon. It was then that Huang Zhi smiled at him and revealed his desire to sell eggs just to play the game he liked. Such words about the game simply shocked the main character, who believes that Huang Zhi may turn out to be the same person as him who goes through dungeons in a strange game capable of giving a person all the rewards he receives to the real world. A few minutes after Huang Zhi recalled his intention to play a game on the phone and showed which one he was talking about, Zhou Wen could calm down because he saw a spectacle there that couldn't even be called a game, and understood how many details were not worked out in the game. Zhou Wen could only pretend that the game was too cruel when compared with Huang Ji, who seems much kinder. Then the academy graduate explained why he wanted to collect enough money in order to improve the game. Huang Zhi counted every part that he wanted to add to the game, describing the real world where the guy once fought. Zhou Wen, in turn, thought, because such a game was very similar to his mysterious phone. 
The main character was not at all against one day investing his own money in creating a good game that would allow beginners to train before the main battle. And in his head, he just wanted to find the possibility of developing a game so that it would not be so dangerous for him to play on his phone. Huang Zhe burst into tears when he finally heard supportive words from the only person who was interested in the game, and he told Wang Lu everything. The girl already heard everything with her own ears, and therefore could only reassure the academy graduate. After Huang Zhe stopped crying, he shook the protagonist's hand, wanting to become his partner from that very moment. And Zhou Wan was not at all against this. It came to the point that Huang Zhe, as a sign of gratitude for the initial support, allowed the main character to choose a pet egg for himself absolutely free of charge. And Zhou Wan did not refuse his very much, simply wishing that Huang would not offer such an offer to every person. When the time came to choose an item, Wang Lu asked the main character to give her the opportunity to choose instead of himself. And Zhou Wan allowed her because of the girl's great luck. Only a few seconds passed when Wang Lu managed to find exactly the rare pet with the overlord skills and characteristics good enough for legendary creatures. Zhou Wan, having received the perfect egg, looked at Wang Lu, asking if she was a goddess. In response, the girl was simply silent from misunderstanding and was all glowing as if the guy's words were the pure truth. When the work in the dungeon was completely completed, the main character went back home where he saw a spatial creature who in one day filled himself with a huge belly and even got hiccups from non-stop eating food. Zhou Wen, forgetting about Mr. Ram, looked at the egg he received, realizing how difficult it would be for Huang Zhu to achieve results in getting enough money while improving his own game. While the main character was rejoicing at receiving the soaring dragon technique along with a rare chimera, the egg quickly disappeared from the guy's hands, and he stood looking at his empty hand. Zhou Wan turned in the direction where the object was heading and saw a tyrant sitting there on the ground who had actually consumed a rare egg, being very hungry for a long time. After what happened, the main character could simply sigh with fatigue before forming several bumps on the head of the not-understanding titan. Zhou Wan entered the game straight into the dungeon where the lotus pond, dangerous for humans, is located. The Buddha's heart lotus reacted and appeared from under the water and was preparing to fight with the main character. Zhou Wan was glad of his appearance and, in order to make the battle easier for himself, called for the help of a flying ant who could cover the guy while he used his new abilities. It was then that the guy was enveloped in an object obtained thanks to the help of Wang Lu, and it created a kind of circulation of spiritual energy around the main character. Due to Zhou Wan's new abilities, the dark toad sitting inside the lotus began to quickly move to the stage of shooting its magic. Only such attacks could not harm a guy who uses skills from the Dragon Gate Gratz and is able to quickly evade magic by simply jumping to the side. Zhou Wen turned out to be much faster than he expected and could do all sorts of tricks once he just pushed off from a strong surface like lotus leaves. The guy was completely calm because he could easily fight simply by testing his ability and landing on one of the floating leaves, he was preparing to summon a flying ant. In just one instant, the pet found itself behind the back of the dark creature, for which such creatures are the most dangerous opponents, and the ant was preparing to pierce the monster with its claws. When the toad was eliminated, a huge explosion of energy followed with the magic of the toad enveloping almost every part of the dangerous pond, which was almost as dangerous as this purple fog. When defeating an enemy, the main character received from him a pet egg that did not have time to disappear under the pond. After examining the characteristics of the item, Zhou Wen saw very good results belonging to the legendary creation. Seeing the data of the Buddha's heart lotus, Zhou Wen thought, because for the first time he saw an egg with four skills that were slightly inferior in strength to other creatures, and only the physical abilities were quite large. Only the main character did not want to accept such an item and therefore summoned a bone ant, the mark of which instantly appeared on the guy's hand. Zhou Wen wanted to merge the lotus egg with the heart of the Buddha along with the bone ant, and for this he pressed the function to start the fusion action. During the time that passed after the start of using the function, almost the entire part of the lotus egg with the Buddha's heart merged with the bone ant and there were several options for how a chance could occur in which there is only one successful opportunity. The bone ant quickly absorbed the magic of another creature, forming new body parts that could be strong enough for a pet. 
In order for everything to go very well, the main character put his own spiritual energy inside the bone ant, wanting it to cope with the merger for his sake. It was then that Joe One received into his collection a mutated lotus ant with very good characteristics and a changed appearance. The pet acquired many abilities previously belonging to the Buddha's heart lotus and the dark toad. Such a successful acquisition by a pet of excellent skills for the legendary level greatly shocked the main character, who did not expect such luck. When the main character wanted to look at an ant with a lotus body, he looked around the room, which, when summoning a pet, could simply turn out to be small for the ant, and therefore Zhou Wen changed his mind about summoning the monster. Suddenly he remembered about getting a new dungeon and going there he was going to test the power of his received ant. The first enemy that came across the main character's path was the flying creatures of the Dragon Gate Grotto, and one of these was preparing to attack the guy at any second. Summoning the mutated ant in the first place, Zhou Wen began the battle and ordered the pet to eliminate the flying enemy. This enemy monster began to fly towards the ordinary person with incredible speed and wings spread wide. When the enemy began to attack the main character, a new mutated ant opened a third eye on its head, which was previously part of the Buddha's heart lotus skills. When this eye was opened, a magical force was released at the enemy, which quickly hit the flying monster approaching straight towards the main character. The flying monster fell to the ground unable to resist such an ability that controlled almost the entire airspace of the territory. The pet ant with the body of a lotus moved in a few seconds from the place where it was and rushed with all speed to the side while the monster was taken out of action. When they came into contact with each other on the battlefield, the appearance of ant bone spikes began to appear, combined with magical rays emanating straight from under the spikes. Being on the sidelines, Zhou Wan couldn't even believe how quickly the battle would end, and stood watching as his pet didn't even allow the enemy to escape from him. After the enemy was completely left without the strength to resist the protagonist's pet and the companion's egg fell out of him, such a loss turned out to be very surprising for Zhou Wan, because he had to fight against the monster once. The main character examined every characteristic of the legendary pet, which he did not like at all. And besides the speed of movement, the monster had nothing else. It was then that the guy wanted to merge two companions in order to get some wings for the ant with a lotus body that could give him more opportunities to fight against strong opponents. And the main character simply incredibly liked this idea. But when he looked at the notification that appeared, which warned about the low chance of getting a decent meal of monsters, Joe One temporarily doubted whether he should do so. The matter of choice came to the point that Zhou Wen simply decided to feed the pet's egg to the eternally hungry Titan, who had previously received food without asking. After Zhou Wen fed the egg to his pet, it began to emit from its body a bright and blinding light that had not previously been formed when feeding the creature. As it turned out, all that happened was the evolution of the pet, which outwardly did not change at all, and only received better characteristics. In addition to improving its levels, the monster acquired a new skill and was unable to obtain anything else. The main character was surprised to see how amazing the mythical creatures are, and how much they differ from the legendary creatures who are not able to master such abilities of ears and eyes that see everything that happens. Zhou Wen decided to check the description of the skill of the fate of the ears along with the eyes, which were intended so that the user of the ability could see every part of the desired territory or hear sounds at a certain distance from the location of the user of the skill in action, and it, in turn, did not change at all, remaining in the same state. Not wanting to simply guess whether the basic abilities of the skill had changed, the main character formed a magic circle around himself, designed so that a person could apply any techniques in action. Such magic quickly spread to other rooms of the apartment, allowing Zhou Wen to see absolutely every detail of what was happening inside the house with his eyes closed. Also, the ability has reached a level where there is a chance to see or feel what is happening outside the main character's house, with just one attempt to look at the walls blocking an image that is impossible to capture without skill. Zhou Wen really liked having the opportunity to see every previously unseen part of the world, and he believed that it was with such a technique that he would be able to fight by combining it with the skill of flight, and in this way he could find a chance of victory in the dungeon of the ancient Ebo Tower.
As a result of much thought, the main character decided to act according to plan and went straight to the ancient fire tower, which was protected by powerful creatures. Reacting to the appearance of an ordinary person, several birds began to descend straight from the tower. Zhou Wen, in turn, sent a flying ant at them, which was supposed to simply distract the opponents. The pet moved fast enough to break through the protective line of fire monsters. Each of the creatures went straight after the flying ant, using all possible skills of fast flight. When there was no longer a single monster on the way, the main character decided to take on the remaining tasks and, to make the work easier, used the new skill bestowed by Wang Lu. He flew high into the sky, dodging the attack of an evil monster. Zhou Wen did not stay in one place and constantly moved to the sides so that it was much harder to hit him. Afterwards, he deliberately landed on the ground in order to become much faster when the energy gathers in his leg. Things were going quite well for the main character, who managed to accelerate while on the ground and pass through the fiery creatures. The monsters who had been chasing the flying ant until that very moment set the goal of eliminating the main character, who approached too close to the ancient tower. In the real world, Zhou Wan was very worried wanting his opponents to continue to follow him until he was able to put his concocted plan into action. As the guy waited, the fiery creatures did not leave him, wanting to quickly eliminate the impending danger straight to a place very guarded by them. When the main character almost reached the desired point, he called a flying ant to him. They flew towards each other, carrying behind them many opponents who practically did not lag behind the set goal. Several seconds passed from the moment he began approaching the flying ant, and the main character, finding himself right in front of the monster, ordered him to take on the form of a companion. They merged into one right in front of danger and formed a blinding light. In a few seconds, Zhou Wan managed to escape from the place where he was surrounded by many opponents. There was not much time at all, and therefore the main character called for help from the banana fairy, ready to use a short acting ability. The fairy instantly released many cutting rays of magic which, upon contact with the fire monsters, formed an ice crystal. Having destroyed almost all the monsters standing in the way, Zhou Wan moved to the top of the tower using his pet's wings. He actually managed to get to the set point where he saw a huge statue consumed by hot fire. Monsters continued to appear straight from the statue that gives them strength. Zhou Wan created a leaf of the Bana fairy in his hands finally understanding where the opponents were coming from and preparing to end everything. Thanks to the form of a banana fairy who became a companion, the main character managed to get rid of the interfering fire on his way. When the magic completely dispelled the effect of the flames of the ancient tower, Zhou Wan was finally able to read the inscription on the stone statue where part of the sutra of the ancient emperor was written. After reading such a text, the main character began to experience a strong heartbeat, directly producing the sound of loud beats that occurred in the real world without affecting the gameplay in any way. The heartbeat became much stronger and caused incredible pain to the main character. The guy even thought that the reason for this could be a possible curse hanging over the ancient scripture. The pain did not stop at the usual interference with the spiritual state of the heart and could cause small cuts to it, which in fact could cause fatal harm to the guy's health. Zhou Wan could not endure the painful cuts and falling to his knees, considered this moment the last sight he would see before his heart was completely torn into small pieces. The force that harmed the main character continued to act, each time changing its own direction and the force became more painful than before. Zhou Wan bit his teeth, feeling that he would soon not be able to resist the cuts and would simply lose consciousness from the painful shock. Such manifestations of an unknown force directly in the guy's body caused changes in the Lost Sutra of Immortality, which instantly reacts to someone else's magic that can harm the wearer. The injuries got to the point that Zhou Wan began to cough up blood and suffocate from lack of air. At that moment, a hieroglyph of strange magic formed on the guy's heart, which continued to carve the remaining inscription on Zhou Wan's organs. A few minutes later, after the inscription was completely carved on the guy's heart, the magic remaining in the body began to disappear around the room, finally getting out of the main character. Zhou Wen checked the state of his heartbeat by touching his chest and felt a strange relief. Thanks to normal health, the main character managed to return back to the game where he could breathe easy, even without receiving any help from the Lost Sutra of Immortality. And instead, he studied the Sutra of the Ancient Emperor, which allowed him to increase his characteristics. 
Suddenly, the guy noticed a strange blade inside the fiery cauldron that suddenly appeared after learning new abilities, along with the cultivation method. Zhou Wen looked at the dropped item with confusion, considering it his reward and wondered why he was not given some strong pet. The time for reflection was running out, and when the main character decided to take the reward, his hand simply passed through the fiery blade of the ancient tower. The guy was surprised for the first time in his life when he encountered an object that had on it the untouchability of other people, or a person who managed to get to a certain stage in the passage of the ancient Ebo Tower. Zhou Wen, in turn, was not going to leave everything as it was, because he had fought for so long in order to get at least some kind of reward, and therefore he tried to make many sword grips that passed right through. The sword, after touching it, became like an illusion that over time begins to return to its previous state of integrity. While in the real world, Zhou Wen felt a strong anger towards what happened, where even a companion is not given as a consolation prize, and instead, you can get a useless blade. Time and thought passed too quickly, and suddenly there was a knock on the main character's room, notifying him that the guy had received a message from a person he should know. When the main character picked up the addressed sheet, he immediately noticed on it the name of the old director of the school, where the guy studied, and also the places from which this letter was sent. Zhou Wen began to open the sheet, not understanding why Wu Yang Ting suddenly decided to write to him because he was on an important expedition to explore new dimensions. Inside the letter, Zhou Wen saw a business card of a crystal store on which unknown numbers were written. Considering that the numbers were a number, the main character began to call it, and in response heard that a number similar to the one indicated did not exist at all. What happened gave Zhou Wen the interest to one day go to the school principal's crystal store. After the main character failed to find suitable information, he saw Li Xuan suddenly appearing in front of him, claiming that Zhou Wen wanted to meet with him. The reason for such words turned out to be the satisfaction of a comrade who managed to break into the legendary class. And Li Xuan, trying to seem cool, was incredibly happy about this. Only now, the busy protagonist felt as if Li Xuan had been deceived again and was not given anything. Li Xuan was very angry because he just wanted to hear good words from Zhou Wen. They went inside the house while Li Xuan explained the importance of obtaining a legendary level, which is not much different from a mortal level and can still allow a person to get a turning point in results. Li Xuan could not simply help but tell the main character important and very serious information regarding those who had broken through to the legendary level. This data was to gain the opportunity to defeat the so-called legendary fate, which would become an accompaniment for the rest of his life. Zhou Wen really became interested in swaying his own level in order to see who would accompany him in the future. The main character thought a lot about this, recalling the guide Feng Quan. To roughly understand the chance of getting a good escort, Zhou Wen asked which Li Xuan got for himself. He was very happy, expecting a similar question. Li Xuan showed the main character a pet called NB, which allows its owner to receive bonuses to vitality or other protective abilities. As an example of his own strength, Li Xuan could show the healing of minor wounds that would recover on their own. And the guy believed that he could be defeated with one fatal blow, all joyful from the received power, almost comparable to immortality. Li Xuan accidentally stepped on Mr. Rom, and the main character understood what could happen and ordered his friend to quickly save his own life. The protagonist's warning turned out to be not a good enough reason to see the danger in front of him, and Li Xuan, having received only one blow from the spatial creature, flew some distance while losing blood. Li Xuan fell to the ground, covered in his own blood, and spoke with the main character, who was desperate to find out the condition of his comrade who was still able to speak, having received such a blow. Having broken the backbone of an ordinary person, Mr. Ram went on to sleep, and such a sight made Zhou Wen doubt the words of his friend, who allegedly received almost immortality. Li Xuan, in his defense, explained that even without dying, he feels incredible pain, which at the moment gives him the uncomfortable feeling of broken bones. A few hours after Li Xuan broke his bones, doctors took him away and the guy asked the main character to better think about getting the legendary level, which, according to Li Xuan, would not be hard work for the main character who has a fairly large reserve of strength. Such words seemed true to Zhou Wen, because if he just plays games every day without stopping, without leaving the room, and at the same time becomes much stronger, 
Such a jump will cause a lot of suspicion. The next morning, the main character went straight to the training room of the university and prepared to do a little training at the low speed of the movements of a special machine. Joe One heard notifications coming straight from the machine, which asked the guy to interact with all running objects during the allotted time. The main character prepared to start the training so that after completing it as quickly as possible, he could go play games, and the guy closed his eyes, relying only on other factors like sounds. For a greater chance of repelling objects, Joe Wen used his hearing along with the piercing of a pet that hears everything and sees every detail invisible to the human eye. Thanks to his pet, the main character felt a mental image of the rotation trajectories inside the mechanism that launched the balls, and the video guy seemed to be looking through everything through a lens. When one ball flew out of the machine shooting objects, Joe One relied on the idea of the flight path, considering the most important thing to swing the bat well. It was thanks to such planning that Joe One was able to repel a flying object with almost the entire available speed of the launch mechanism. The main character continued to hit each ball without difficulty for a long time, and the sounds of impacts attracted the attention of Feng Chiu Yan, who came to the training room early in the morning in order to become much stronger or achieve more results. Seeing Joe Wen in front of him, beating off objects with his eyes closed, the guy was very surprised that the very person he had recently insulted could train like that. Feng Chiu Yan picked up the bat, greatly infuriated by the behavior of the protagonist who, in his opinion, is only pretending to have closed his eyes, even though the level of ball speed is almost minimal. It was at this moment that a ball began to fly towards him, which was too far away for Zhou Wen to reach it in a matter of seconds. Feng Chiu Yan decided to take advantage of this opportunity to teach the main character a lesson, who allegedly became very arrogant and wanted to show the difference in the strength that he himself possesses. Without even having time to touch the ball, Feng Chiu Yan saw how the main character did it in just a matter of seconds. Feng Chiu Yan, who wanted to teach Zhou Wen a lesson and saw a result that was not at all desirable for himself, was very shocked because the main character somehow turned out to be several times faster than him. Zhou Wen continued to stand in front of Feng Chiu for a long time, not believing his own eyes, and considered such a sight to be ordinary luck. The mechanism, in turn, continued to release balls straight at people training speed. Feng Chiu decided to pick up the flying ball again before the main character got lucky, and this would make him understand Fen's true strength. But even this attempt turned out to be in favor of Zhou Wen, who hit the object before the enemy could reach him with a bat. The attempts continued, and with each of them, the main character became much faster, not allowing Feng Chiu to even raise the bat to the top. Things were going too badly for Feng Chiu, who had to endure a lot of physical abilities to win the competition he himself had invented. Over time, the guy was practically exhausted from endless failures to catch at least one ball, and he did not understand how the main character was able to be faster than him, using his providence in order to hit the ball. The time was approaching that the machine was getting ready to release the very last ball to complete the training time. Suddenly, Feng Chiu Yan saw Zhou Wen leaving somewhere without completing the test and shouted about it, trying to warn him. It was at that second that the guy saw the main character hitting the ball without even looking in his direction, and a tremor passed through Feng Qiu's body from a lack of understanding of what was happening. Feng Qiu tried to understand how the main character can see the trajectory of the ball in advance. The guy tried to remember every movement of Zhou Wen, and remembered that he specifically closed his eyes so as not to be distracted from the main changes in the environment and such assumptions made Feng Yan feel ashamed of how weak he considered others to be compared to himself. At this moment, the main character relaxed after the completion of the mechanism and wanted to quickly return to the games. Unexpectedly for himself, he saw Feng Yan in front of him calling him master on his knees. The main character, looking straight into the face of a serious guy, did not understand what it all meant. A few hours after the incident, the main character returned home and, after taking a shower, sighed heavily because as a result, he became Feng Chiu Yang's teacher, who even paid Zhou Wen. Having entered the game, the main character immediately began to attack using the area of the sky from which the enemy fell to the ground. As it turned out, the monster that appeared was a paper demonic general carefully watching Zhou Wen. The guy himself was not at all opposed to fighting a monster for which he specially acquired skills and improved his pets. Time passed much faster during the battle, and soon it began to get light. 
Zhou Wan continued to invest a lot of effort in order to quickly defeat a powerful opponent, and he used the method from the game rock, scissors, and paper. After many attempts to harm the enemy, the main character felt tired from using the star sword, which absorbed a considerable amount of spiritual energy. Still, Zhou Wen decided to discard bad thoughts and try to win with the help of his pets. Only now the demonic general did not stop delivering strong blows to the main character and practically touched him. Even the abilities of the mutated ant that released a dangerous cloud covered with the magic of the Buddha's heart lotus were absorbed by the demonic commander's ball. Seeing the repulsion of the pet's magic greatly surprised the main character, who did not understand why the poisonous fog was absorbed by the dark ball, because the enemy had not previously had such an ability. Zhou Wen moved towards this ball floating straight in the sky and it stood in one position. When the main character was directly hit by a magic ball, it released the collected ability on an ordinary person, and the battlefield was consumed by poison. In just a few seconds, a magical image of Zhou Wan appeared behind the demonic general, mocking the enemy. The demonic commander turned towards where the laughter was coming from, frightened by such a surprise. Before a creature powerful enough to react to the complete death of the main character, he was cut by the ability that Zhou Wen had prepared for such a moment. The guy survived thanks to enveloping his own body in a protective barrier that left him with only a few units of health. The victory was achieved with the help of a perfectly thought-out plan where the enemy had to open his back because with other options, Zhou Wen remained powerless against the magical black balls constantly resonating with each other, and the poison was almost painless due to the lotus body blocking the fog. While contemplating a plan perfectly realized, a strange egg appeared right in front of the main character, which squeezed all the spiritual energy out of the demonic general. Zhou Wan was simply incredibly shocked to see an egg that was a carrier of a companion pet and at the same time was quite strong as a creature. The characteristics of the resulting egg of the demonic general were quite greater than those of the protagonist's previous pets and had more valuable spiritual power skills, such as summoning a magical horseman to the battlefield. The appearance of the basic information was followed by a question regarding whether Zhou Wan wanted to raise the resulting monster. The main character confirmed his agreement to begin growing the monster, and instantly became covered in the magical aura of the demonic general, which brought the guy painful sensations along with the absorption of his vital forces. The effect of such a monster manifestation absorbed the environment and thereby caused Zhou Wan more painful feelings in every part of his body. Bleeding heavily, the main character was going to hold back until the last moment, relying on the abilities of the Lost Sutra of Immortality, which should allow him to bring out the legendary companion. The sutra that Zhou Wan used all the time began to absorb most of the magic that caused harm to the wearer, and instead directed it to one point. A lot of time passed while the main character had to endure every pain, and in the end he managed to successfully bring out the demonic commander standing right above the exhausted guy. Zhou Wan wiped his bloody face and began to smile, because the result, which took a lot of effort, turned out to be quite perfect. First of all, the main character tested his pet's abilities on flying creatures that constantly interfered with the fight, and the demonic general easily absorbed the enemy with his dark ball. Stronger opponents attacking exclusively in groups could not stop the approaching danger. Even the Bone Rider himself could not resist the power of his superior ability, and the boss lost all chances of victory by taking one fatal blow directly on himself. Watching the battles of the demonic commander from the side, Zhou Wan could accurately assume that he is the most powerful pet in his collection, because only the commander is able to defeat opponents who were previously difficult to pass. Zhou Wan smiled happily wanting to quickly improve the skills of the demonic general and give him the opportunity to become even stronger than before. Having forgotten about important matters, the main character rushed to the university with all speed, and when he got there, asked forgiveness for being late for such a long time. The guy was late for the curator Wang Fei, who, paying attention to the incredible anger resulting from the impudence of the protagonist, ordered him to quickly sit down in his place. Zhou Wen, Returning to the place where Li Xuan stood in full health, listened to soothing words from him regarding the tardiness that even the strictest teachers are sometimes subject to. Wang Fei, forbidding speaking in class, told the main purpose of the student meeting at such a time, and informed about the exams that must be taken every year. The exams, in turn, had several categories of passing. The first one was called burning oil, 
with another equally important test, as well as a test of the speed or agility of students, and a mountain that they would have to climb in large groups. Having heard something like this, where the main character and Li Xuan had to undergo almost the most difficult tests, they were simply shocked and stopped considering it fun to study at the university. Wang Fei was very happy to see the dissatisfied expression on the faces of the test participants, who will actually have to put in enough effort to pass the exams, the assessment of which will be determined by the number of passes to take courses in the Purple Palace. Some of the students were immediately frightened when they heard the mention of the Purple Palace, about which there are so many terrifying rumors and where a lot of treasures are supposedly hidden. Even Zhou Wan himself tried to understand why this particular place, having shown a certain approximate image of the palace in question. Wang Fei gave warnings by mentioning Sunset University, which is currently the owner of the test territory. A little time after the curator's stories, the main character and Li Xuan went for a walk, talking about the desire to quickly get to the Purple Palace and receive many rewards. Suddenly, Zhou Wan asked his friend about the third son of the Lin family, asking the reason why he was unable to be among the top ten students. Li Xuan could only state the difficulty of doing something like this when you have a big confrontation with seniors like Hui Hai Fei, previously met by the main character or his younger sister. Among the listed people, Zhou Wan was interested in his neighbor Wang Lu, who, as it turned out, is one of the ten most capable students at the university and is practically not inferior to them in strength. Li Xuan warned the main character never to evaluate a girl from the Wang family who has a special technique of returning to youth, and Wang Lu, in turn, is compared to an unhatched phoenix. They called her that, because when a girl reaches a legendary or higher level, this level is reset to the initial level. Stages. With such a return to several stages back, Wang Lu becomes much more capable than her former self. And unlike her age, she has already reached the legendary level twice. After listening to every word of Li Xuan and imagining the innocent image of the neighbor, the main character did not understand whether the girl was really as strong as they say about her. Soon they began to say goodbye to each other, and Li Xuan asked the main character to ask for some help more often so that he could pay for his own salvation. Returning home, Zhou Wan thought about the exam, which goes not only to the overall ranking, and the guy was lured by the very thought of the Purple Palace where he could become much better. While the main character, lost in thought, was going about his business, a car pulled up behind him, from which a voice was heard calling Zhou Wen. The driver of this car turned out to be Ashen, who was quite well remembered by the main character. And this man told how he had been looking for Zhou Wen for a long time by order of the commanders. After a few hours of travel with conversations about the person who actually invited the main character to meet, they arrived at the right place. It was then that Zhou Wen saw Wu Yan Lan in front of him, dressed in a black dress, and she was the person for whom Ashen warned the guy. From the moment the main character arrived, his mother began to thank her son for the fact that he was able to come at the request. Zhou Wen himself wanted to quickly find out the reason for such an invitation. Without answering a single question to the main character, Wu Yan Lan asked to go with her inside the building in front of them, and Zhou Wen was surprised. The main character, raising his head higher, noticed the inscription of the name of the crystal store and realized that this was exactly the store that the former school director mentioned in the letter. After time had passed, they went inside the store where Wu Yan Lan mentioned An Jing's birthday for which she actually wants to find a suitable pet. When the conversation about the birthday ended, Wu Yan Lan instantly lit up smiling at the main character and saying that she wanted him to help with the gift because she noticed how well her daughter treated him. Zhou Wen managed to look around the luxury store where, surprisingly, there was not a single person. He couldn't help but wonder why there was no one in the store, even with the store's celebrity. Wu Yanlan quickly remembered that the store belonged to a close friend of Yanlan's father, who constantly took her around this store and specially closed earlier so that the An family could calmly look at the goods. In a small store, unlike the others, the most expensive things from all over the city were located. Zhou Wen, looking around and listening to his stepmother's story, realized that this particular store was listed on the business card. Upon completion of the inspection of the first floor, they went straight to the elevator in order to inspect the lower floors. The place on the lower floors was much larger in size than it seems. Among the area where the main character ended up, there were many companion eggs specially stored for such cases. 
Joe Wen was a little surprised to see such a number of monsters in one place. Only a couple of minutes passed from the moment she arrived on the lower floors, and U Yanlan stood near the shelves with eggs trying to choose a good item. She chose two pets, one of which was an elegant moon fox, and the second a flower fairy, which, according to U Yanlan, characterizes An Jin. Wu Yanlan turned to the main character and asked his opinion on this matter. He did not hesitate in response, considering that it was the egg of the evil caterpillar that should suit her half-sister. And Wu Yanlan did not understand whether her daughter really had such bad taste. But still she thought about it, because the strength of the chosen monster was the best among the legendary creatures, and there is an opportunity to turn it into a butterfly more precious than the rest. Wu Yanlan smiled joyfully, amazed at Zhou Wen's powers of observation. Only she, imagining the image of her daughter rejoicing at a good gift, understood the danger of saying who the monster was after his appearance. In this case, Enjin could simply get very angry at the appearance of the pet and turn away from him. Because of such a rush to find a gift, the main character sighed with a smile on his face, remembering how his father constantly forgot to buy at least something for his birthday too. The guy even felt a little sad, realizing how everything could have turned out when his mother was a woman like Wu Yanlan, and he wouldn't have to think about such little things. The search for objects continued when Wu Yanlan suggested going down to a lower floor. She took out her uncle's special key that can open every door of the store, and the people's mother wanted to go there in order to look at the special monsters. Suddenly, Wu Yanlan spoke for the guy, doubting whether he was still alive, and the main character tried to understand what he was talking about. Having gone down to the lower floors, they saw cells there containing the power of monsters. Zhou Wan passed by one of these creatures that were previously companions of strong people. Wu Yanlan opened it with a special button, talking about people who, not wanting to take monsters with them to death, left them in this place. When the doors were fully opened, a strange man sat in front of the protagonist's face, all intent on... Zhou Wan was greatly shocked, not understanding whether such companions even existed for humans. Wu Yanlan couldn't accurately answer the guy's question because she didn't know it herself. She told how as a child she came to him with her father, and they constantly saw this guy. At a young age, Wu Yanlan was always interested in information regarding the connected person, and she asked her father about it. In response to questions, her father was silent, not even paying attention to the fact that According to his brother's stories, it was he who sent the guy to this place. Due to the late time, Wu Yanlan advised the main character to quickly return home with the help of Ashen. When Zhou Wan was about to obey his in-laws, he felt a gaze behind him. The unknown guy carefully watched the movements of the main character without taking his eyes off. Because of this feeling, Zhou Wan even believed that it was this guy who sent the invitation indicated in the letter. Only the numbers written on the sheet remained a mystery to the main character. After pondering for a long time what the numbers were, Zhou Wen's attention fell straight on the panel sealed with the unknown guy. The main character was very scared because the code on the bars could free the prisoner. The hero did not understand anything at all, since if Wu Yanlan had not brought him to this place, the meeting with his companion might not have happened at all. And Zhou Wen thought more about what the old director wanted to convey to him. A few days after the meeting, the main character went to the ended lesson where he sat next to Li Xuan, sighing heavily for an unknown reason. Li Xuan lay on his desk, remembering how much it costs to make things and gather members of the group to which he will soon send an opening request. The guy felt the burden of constantly being rejected by harmful newcomers, who having heard about opening a group, immediately refused. While Li Xuan was banging his head on the table asking God for help, Zhou Wen, watching everything, understood why no one wanted to join a group where the recruitment method was simply terrible. Suddenly, Zhou Wen thought about knowing one person who might agree to join the ranks of Li Xuan's group members. A few hours after the main character told who he was going to invite to the squad, Li Xuan was simply shocked. Li Xuan did not understand why Zhou Wen was going to invite Gu Dian, who was their opponent. And in response, the main character simply showed by his behavior how serious he was. Zhou Wen did not consider Gu Dian his enemy because what happened in the arena was a voluntary agreement, and given his good characteristics, he was ideal for choosing a member of the group. Another reason why Zhou Wen was going to invite Gu Dian was because he had become a gentle and kind person. Hearing the mention of Gu Dian's kindness, Li Xuan a little doubted that the main character was talking about the same person. But after that, 
Li Xuan thought about it because they had no other choices, and he was ready to go in search of a new comrade. The guys went straight to the Wanfo Cave, where quite powerful legendary creatures lived, and Li Xuan did not understand how Gu Dian was drawn into such a place. They were surrounded by warriors, servants of the Buddha who, according to the explanation of the protagonist, were quite slow and not particularly hostile. After exactly one hour of waiting, the guys were unable to find Gu Dian and simply waited near the Buddha statue. Li Xuan became enraged, waiting for the person he had been looking for for so long, and in order to rest a little, he pressed himself against the statue, slightly breaking it. It was then that each of the defense monsters reacted to this and targeted Li Xuan. In just a few seconds, one enemy appeared behind Li Xuan, ready to eliminate the guy. Li Xuan managed to dodge without understanding at all why the creatures suddenly began to attack with such destructive blows. When Li Xuan was safe, the main character touched the statue and said that monsters react to touching the statue and the frightened Li Xuan asked to remove his hand quickly. The defenders of the Buddha's territory began to come closer. The guys turned out to be magic, no longer having any other choice but to clear their way to continue the search for their comrade. Li Xuan quickly came into contact with a monster that was almost his equal in strength. At the same moment, the main character could easily dodge attacks. In addition to his quick reaction, Zhou Wan was able to eliminate the statue's defender with one blow. After defeating one monster, only more came, and they gathered together and began to beat Li Xuan. Zhou Wan watched everything, realizing that his comrade was not in a fighting spirit. Li Xuan received many blows to himself and asked the main character for help. The force of the blow was very strong to easily throw the guy away, and he was lucky when Zhou Wan managed to catch him. The defenders, in turn, prepared for a joint strike, having collected enough magic to... The opponents failed when Zhou Wan flew up with Li Xuan in his arms straight into the sky and dodged the blow. In order to break away from his opponents, the main character flew to the largest point of the Buddha statue, touching it every time and listening to Li Xuan asking him not to do this again. As a result, they reached the top and Li Xuan became completely silent. Looking at the opponents below, Li Xuan noticed the cessation of their movement and therefore relaxed. It was then that he asked the main character to put him in his place and made fun of him for his incredible beauty, which Zhou Wan could not restrain himself from, but still Li Xuan ordered to keep himself under control. A few minutes after Li Xuan's words, the opponents quickly flew into the sky and followed the guys. Li Xuan was very scared because it was precisely because he touched the statue that the enemies began to act. And after jumping on the main character, he did not understand why the statue did not react to Zhou Wan. The main character simply smiled because he stood straight on the Buddha statue, appearing almost like her son. Suddenly, Zhou Wan heard a voice from the side wanting them to follow him to safety. This person turned out to be Gu Dian, who came to the place where a lot of noise was coming from and asked to quickly follow him. Zhou Wen took Gu Dian's advice and jumped off the statue. Upon landing, Gu Dian ordered the guys to quickly run behind the Buddha statue where the enemies could not reach them. They all ran into that place together and tried to break away from their opponents. All the monsters gathered in a huge heap trying to quickly get to the disturbers of the Buddha's peace. Only when approaching the entrance behind the cave, they simply stopped. Li Xuan rejoiced, mocking the stone golems who were unable to beat him again. Stone golems blocked the entrance to the place where the guys were standing. Zhou Wen and the guys ended up in a small cave where some of Gu Dian's things were located, who asked to wait a little until all the enemies disappeared. Li Xuan immediately began discussing the main purpose of coming to this place and invited Gu Dian to join their group. Only Gu Dian refused without listening to the information regarding the lack of group members. After hearing Gu Dian's refusal and knowing how much he loves to work for money, Li Xuan suggested that he receive points for every month. Gu Dian wanted to get 100,000 points and Li Xuan got angry because it's just incredible how much, because of this, the main character intervened in the conversation suggesting that Gu Dian simply take part in opening the group for marking, and after that, not do anything he didn't want. Gu Dian wanted to receive 10,000 points for such an offer, because he is doing a great service to the guys. Li Xuan agreed to such a reward and therefore shook hands with his new comrade. Exactly one hour later, the opponents left the cave as Gu Dian said, Gu Dian advised Zhou Wan to quickly return to a safe area while he himself dealt with the enemies. Before he could leave, the main character saw his interlocutor reach into his briefcase in search of an item. From there, he took out a certain golden object. Zhou Wan looked carefully, trying to understand what this item was. 
The first thing that came to his mind was a pocket watch with a pattern on it. The main character tried for a long time to remember where he had previously seen a picture on a wristwatch. Joe One quickly remembered that he had seen an image in the crystal store directly on the camera of one of the monsters. Such an image carried many rumors regarding the accidents of women on ships, and therefore there was an extreme ban on not letting women into the sea. For this purpose, things with the image were specially made. Joe One looked carefully at Gu Dian, trying to understand whether there was a secret meaning in what he saw. Gu Dian's expression was very sad, as if something had gone wrong in his life. The next day, the guys managed to open their group and took a photo as a souvenir. Joe Wen, as before, continued to endlessly play on his phone without being distracted by other things. In the game itself, the main character found himself in the midst of a battle against a demonic general who had just appeared. Each enemy blow caused enormous destruction in the area of the fight. In order to preserve his safety, the main character called for the help of a tissue general who, with his body, protected the owner. Being in the real world, Joe One was calm, because having the information about how to conduct a battle correctly, it became much easier for him to play before. Over time, long battles against the demonic general and victory over him, Joe One received a companion egg and was very surprised. The characteristics of the item were practically no different from the previously obtained egg, and only the new item had the Star Strike skill. Joe One carefully assessed the similarity of creatures of the same species and suggested the possibility of bringing the idea into reality. This idea was the desire to merge two monsters together because the compatibility reached as much as 90% and the main character immediately agreed to start work. When the process started, the demonic general absorbed the body parts of a kind of monster. The result was very good and the pet managed to mutate, taking the abilities of the previous monster into its kit. The demonic general became much stronger and could quickly defeat enemies who had become powerless against a pet with several skills at the same time. The main character received the goal, according to his logic, to get the eggs of companions of different species in order to improve his own pet. While inside the game, he was going to check something important until he collected the necessary items. He went to the point of the ancient building where they immediately began to attack him. The enemy's attempt to cause harm was unsuccessful, when the protagonist's demonic general created a dark ball magical barrier. But even with the strength of his pet, Zhou Wen was unable to stop the high-speed arrow rushing towards him at full speed. One use of the skill on his body was enough for him to lose. Zhou Wen thought a little about his magics that are not able to stop the enemy's power. The guy no longer understood how to fight when the abilities that take away a lot of spiritual power remain weak compared to the unknown arrow. Suddenly, he remembered about the ash palm skill, and these memories made the guy understand one important point. Joe One remembered that some skills cannot be obtained until this moment without transforming them into transformed stones, and they, in turn, are obtained by improving low skills with the help of strong ones. Over time, the main character could only consider the skills of the three generals to be related to each other in some way, although they are completely different in build. Zhou Wen was hopeful that during the week before the exam, he would put in enough effort to collect every type of crystal of the three generals. Since the battle against demonic generals requires a lot of spiritual energy from a person, the main character prepared himself a sufficient amount of recuperation juice. The guy didn't hesitate at all, planning the course of the battle while Mr. Ram, instead of helping, gains excess weight. Attempts to find objects continued late at night when all the pets fell asleep, and especially the monster with good hearing who fell asleep on the owner. Time passed and the main character looked very tired, continuing to play even while in a cold bath with bags under his eyes. Thus, Joe One received a call in which he was told to quickly go to the beginning of the exams. The main character, when he finished talking on the phone, looked at the hand in which there was a pet's magic ball. The guy sighed heavily after not receiving the desired crystals within a week. Instead, I was glad to finally unite three types of demonic generals into one and get a good pet. After everything that happened, Zhou Wen went to the exam site and asked Li Xuan for forgiveness for oversleeping. This was also observed by the student council chairman Wei Guo, carefully watching the main character. First of all, looking at Zhou Wen, the chairman could only remember his small achievements in the battle against the Bloody Lotus. Wei Guo did not evaluate the main character as being able to pass the test without merit and having a mortal level. So he ordered the assistant to write a waiting list to Zhou Wen. Suddenly he saw something strange for himself and was shocked. 
The sight that caught Wei Guo's attention was an Jin passing by the main character looking at him. There was also Wang Lu from the Ten who happily greeted Zhou Wan. Even Feng Chun bowed to the hero, and this became an inexplicable incident for Wei Guo. But in addition, Wei Guo noticed Han Ji looking intently into his eyes. When Wei Guo was noticed, he hid in fear and tried to understand how the main character had so many acquaintances. The chairman attacked the assistant, trying to find out why the information she gave does not correspond to reality. And Zhou Wen knows so many important guys. Wei Guo decided to take advantage of the protagonist's connections to have his own affairs with them. And therefore, he thought about how he could take Zhou Wen to the student council. At the start of the exam, everyone was given the task of lifting the cauldron, and the first participant failed. Others also failed using different methods. The turn came to Zhou Wen, who was 74th on the list, and he managed to lift the cauldron with one hand at the highest difficulty. Looking at the thing he picked up, he didn't understand why the cauldron was so light. The exams continued, and everyone had to pass the test as Wang Lu was able to pass the second stage on the paper bridge. There were tasks where you had to get an object out of a terribly hot liquid, and Huang Zhu could handle this best of all. An Jing kept up with the other participants, having a good command of spiritual energy in large quantities. A few hours after the exam, the results were announced, with Huang Zhu taking first place along with the rest of the outstanding guys. Li Xuan carefully examined the lists without finding his name there, and wanted, together with the main character, to do better in the next exams. Suddenly he saw something shocking and could not believe his eyes. This spectacle was that the main character managed to be on the list of the best rogues, and Jing also became interested in this, while the participants around her showed unfriendliness towards Zhou Wen about this matter. Feng Chiu Yang, along with Wang Lu, unlike the others, were glad to see the main character on the list of the coolest rogues. The news quickly spread, reaching straight to Wang Fei who did not understand how a mortal-level person managed to get into the top ten and thought that he was a genius of all kinds. At this moment, Li Xuan, who was not included in the rating, was dissatisfied with the fact that his friend had become better than him, and Zhou Wen said that he himself did not really believe in what had happened. With all that has been said, Zhou Wen not only considered himself strong, but for some reason he felt heaviness while passing, and his results seemed strange to him. Suddenly, Chairman Wei Guo appeared in front of the guys, wanting to talk with the main character alone. Li Xuan and Zhou Wen were shocked because they didn't understand at what point they managed to meet the chairman of the student council. Nevertheless, the main character, having gone for Wei Guo, received congratulations from him along with permission to visit the Purple Palace. Afterwards, Zhou Wen was scared when he heard that getting the opportunity to become one of the top ten at the mortal level is equal to zero percent of such a chance. After the main character heard the words of a person from the student council, he began to wonder if the difficulty of the exams had been underestimated for him. Wei Guo, in turn, said how much he admired Zhou Wen's abilities and mentioned the Purple Palace. Wei Guo immediately got down to business by inviting the main character to accept the invitation to become part of the student council. But Zhou Wen, getting up from his chair, refused the offer without having any benefit from it. The chairman was shocked because such becoming part of his team is practically the most valuable place at the university. Zhou Wen, with a calm look, asked to quickly end the conversation because Li Xuan was waiting for him outside. The chairman sighed heavily, simply reminding him that the main character could change his mind at any moment and accept the invitation. From the moment when Zhou Wen left the room, the chairman's assistant did not understand why the hero refused, and then Wei Guo told her to shut up. The chairman did not mind waiting for an exact answer from the supposedly immature protagonist. It was then that the assistant took out the documents that the university was going to distribute to students. Wei Guo carefully examined them and even received important information for himself. In the documents, it was written as if an exchange student was supposed to fly to the university in a while. And while things were going on at the university, somewhere in the rehabilitation department, Li Lisa began to go crazy, having suffered a humiliating fate. She looked at the man who was supposedly her brother and did not understand why he was laughing at her. As it turned out, a man named John Carp specifically applied for admission to the university in order to take revenge on the main character for the humiliation of his sister. Time passed too quickly, and so the time came to pass the other stages of the exam near Jiwei Palace. Each of the participants received a special key, thanks to which they can open access to the treasures inside the palace. Wei Guo told the participants about the rewards that can be obtained in the exams, 
and warned about everything regarding the rewards. It was then that the sound of bells sounded. In a moment after the bells struck, the place where the guys stood was covered with particles of spiritual energy. Following this, the doors leading into the palace opened, and a wave of magic poured out from there. The students, in turn, had to throw the received arrows into spiritual balls in order to choose them for themselves. The main character's student did not understand at all which one to choose, having a large choice. But Hui Haifeng quickly made a choice relying on luck. He was right when he received a treasure chest inside. Wang Lu, seeing this, wanted the guy to quickly open the chest, and in response, he didn't understand why he had to show them something. Zhou Wen, moving away from the crowd, planned to find a seal because of which he could receive any reward. For a few minutes, looking for a seal, the main character stood near the door because he didn't find anything concrete. Zhou Wen even thought that the mark might be behind the door and wanted to go inside. And Jin, noticing her older brother's desire, stopped him by telling him about the many missing people who also entered inside. Zhou Wen raised his head, having no other choice but to find a suitable treasure. Suddenly, Wang Lu appeared, wanting to help the guy with the choice, and the main character became interested in what prize she got. Wang Lu immediately took out a huge chest, which seemed to the hero too huge for the girl. Since Zhou Wen would choose the first counter reward, he allowed Wang Lu to make the choice and handed over the item. Only now the girl with her eyes closed threw the key up without choosing the exact reward. The key in turn hit the nearest magic ball. In less than a couple of seconds, a golden treasury fell into Wang Lu's hands. After receiving the award, the main character returned home where, opening the treasury, he saw a strange lamp inside. Zhou Wen was very shocked when he saw what he thought was some kind of gin booth, but he still decided to test the effect of the lamp by rubbing it according to the instructions. In a second, the lamp released fire. This flame directly appeared in the eyes of the main character. In an instant, he saw in front of him the image of a magical woman reaching out to him with her hands in order to grab his hands. Zhou Wen felt a strange sensation as if his body was being controlled by a powerful force. Then he saw in front of him a magic lamp releasing an aura that covered his body. The series of origins of incomprehensible things continued when the main character reached for his neck with his own hands. Only now he was not going to strangle himself and raised his hands up into a completely incomprehensible position and also lifted his t-shirt. The guy immediately blushed with shame, not understanding what was happening. Such tricks as if dancing continued and the main character made movements that he did not even know before. Thanks to such dances, Zhou Wen, flushed with shame, managed to return to normal and open a new source of spiritual energy. The effect of the lamp ended and it fell to the ground. Zhou Wen, in turn, stood under the image of a woman hiding her face and realized that he had received a form of life force. The spiritual energy received by the hero was collected in one place, creating new power. Suddenly, Zhou Wen saw a strange memory that did not belong to him, where many people bowed to one person. This person turned out to be an unknown girl who said that she could not speak the language of the gods and also recalled some kind of immortal uprising. Suddenly, the main character's state began to distort and he felt inexplicable sensations. Afterwards, he fell into the void, seeing the day when the immortals would fall, having completely collapsed. Entering another space made Zhou Wen feel as if he was drowning in water, hearing voices calling to him. It was these voices that brought the guy back to normal and he saw his pets in front of him. Zhou Wen looked at them and didn't understand why they appeared. The main character began to yawn, feeling a rash for a long time. In addition, the guy finally got rid of the voices of the immortal sutra that visit his dreams every night. Zhou Wen touched the ground to stand up. It was then that he unexpectedly flew into the sky, breaking through the ceiling of his apartment. The pets looked at this, seeing how the owner did not fall back. The main character himself found himself practically under the rubble and did not understand why his strength suddenly grew so much. When it came to extinction from the hole, the main character saw An Jin in front of him, who was about to take a shower. She immediately blushed all over and called her older brother a pervert. A few hours later, Zhou Wen called workers to remove the rubble. The guy himself looked at the characteristics in which he finally reached the legendary level. Sitting in the bathroom with a black eye, the guy was very happy thanks to Wang Lu for this luck. Suddenly, he became interested in one aspect of the characteristics. This was the king's psi skill, which the hero had never met before. Zhou Wen could only assume that he was able to sense this skill due to the personality of each person capable of doing so. Over time, the acquired skill was felt in the body of the main character, 
and he could no longer feel anything else. Joe Wan relaxed because by reaching the legendary level, he got the chance to continue improving the characteristics or improving the pets. It was on this occasion that the hero decided to test the rest of his skills. He began to concentrate on circulating his own energy in order to see results. As it turned out, he received an octave of prajna that significantly enhances the physical abilities of its bearer, along with the power of attacks. There were also the abilities of the Tao of the body to almost instantly restore the energy essence of a person. The third was the ability of the ancient emperor, which improves all characteristics. In addition to all the previous skills, the main character acquired new abilities of the great demon god. One of the magic of the great god was the step in the air which allows a person to fly. But the first order of chaos, which has nothing to do with the legendary level, remained at this same level. Zhou Wen was surprised because, through unknown forces, he managed to obtain some abilities from the mystical scriptures. It came to this that Zhou Wen went inside the ant cave inside the game. When a person appeared, the ants got angry and began to attack. Zhou Wen also did not stand still, moving forward with the help of his pets. The monsters built into the caves attacked in a crowd, thus distracting the hero. In order to quickly finish with them, Zhou Wen summoned a perfect demonic general. He quickly eliminated each enemy with one explosion. Defeated monsters began to drop companion eggs. When there were no more enemies left, the main character began to climb onto the stone shell. He made a small cut to get inside. There was also a monster storing nectar for ants. This flying creature was angry at the appearance of pests and was preparing to eliminate them. The main character continued to run straight to the rift formed in the monster's hive, when suddenly a magic ray appeared straight from the hive. The monster was at the peak of anger towards man and defended himself with all his might. To save his life, the main character jumped back a few meters. He was very impressed with the good performance of the rare creature. Joe One began to summon the banana fairy and took as his target not a monster at all. When the pet appeared, the guy was surprised by its characteristics, which had grown significantly. Joe One, having completed the inspection of the fairy's abilities, ordered her to hit the right point with magic and she obeyed. In an instant, the pet's ice ability reached the enemy. The bee was frozen with no chance of moving for some time. But still, the pet destroyed the ability enveloping the body thanks to its own magic. Only when she escaped from the trick, the main character burst into the enemy's possessions. Zhou Wen fell straight into the nectar, initially planning to simply detain the bee without having a chance to kill it. The main character was completely immersed in nectar and disappeared from sight. But when I got out, I was very tired because the nectar is very viscous. Thanks to falling into the nectar, Zhou Wen received additional points to his characteristics. The main character, having received new points, was surprised when his assumptions turned out to be accurate. While he was in the nectar, the enemy began to fly towards him, destroying the stone barrier. The bee directly attacked the main character, drowning him in nectar. Because of this, the game ended and the phone turned off by itself. Joe One thought about how much more profitable it is to raise characteristics with the help of nectar, which, unlike magic stones, instantly gives points. After thinking about everything, the main character smiled and decided to take enough sips of nectar. He also remembered the image of a white spot seen when falling inside the cocoon and tried to understand what it was. At this moment in time, the same exchange student appeared at the university, attracting the attention of students. He was met by the chairman who showed his respect to see John Carp in person. Wei Guo reminded a person he knew about completing this assignment where he needed to call the best students so that the new student could fight with them. Everyone was invited except one, Huang Zhu, who was busy changing the game's errors. John Carp smiled, rejoicing at the imminent battle. A few hours after the discussion, John Carp fought with the main character's student. Standing nearby were Wang Lu and the others who had gotten a draw fighting the new guy. Hui Haifeng, standing nearby, did not consider the battle a complete display of strength for John Carp, who did not use his skills. At the end of the battle, the combatants thanked each other for this opportunity. John Carp was pleased with all the events and even so had one desire. The chairman could not help but inquire what such a famous guest of the university wanted. John Carp decided to talk about his desire to meet a person about whom there are many rumors regarding being among the ten most powerful with a mortal level. At this moment, the main character about whom we are talking was at home, training to play better than before. Having recalled each information, John Carp said that he wanted to personally meet Joe One and know his strength. While the battle was being planned without the knowledge of the main character, he was in despair. 
unable to kill the bee. The victory could not be taken due to the monster's quick adaptation to attacks. Zhou Wen thought about how to outwit the smart bee and nothing came to mind. Suddenly he heard the phone ringing and wanted to pick it up to talk to curator Wang Fei. After a conversation where the hero was called to meet, he went there. At the meeting place, Zhou Wen saw Ashen, not understanding why he also came. Wang Fei immediately spoke about her desire to suspend the main character from classes for certain reasons. She wanted to do this solely for the exchange student who wants to harm the main character and is the brother of Lilisa. Hearing the girl's name, Zhou Wen asked Ashen who she was, and when they both spoke, Wang Fei sat to the side as if there was an empty space. Wang Fei mentioned the family that John Karp belongs to and what power they have. John Karp, unlike his sister, was much stronger and was truly considered a saint. Wang Fei could not say exactly how the main character became 10th on the list because of what he actually faces a battle against John Karp. Zhou Wen was shocked by the words when the curator mentioned the student's desire to avenge his sister by simply killing the target. The conversation reached the point where the curator asked the hero to just stay at home. At that moment, many girls climbed up to John Karp himself, wanting to talk to him. Suddenly, An Jin appeared wanting to harm him. John Karp was surprised and wanted to know the reason for this behavior. In response to the question, An Jin asserted that the guy himself knows perfectly well the reason. John Karp pretended that the rumors about the girl's brother were not true, and he just wanted to fight him. Instead of fighting with the main character, An Jin advised him to fight with her since the interlocutor does not mind. John Karp did not understand for what purpose the girl was offering detailed. To disgrace on Jing, John Karp began to talk too loudly about Zhou Wen's violation of the rules to obtain treasures, and everyone passing by heard it. Just one word was enough for rumors to spread around An Jing regarding the An family along with Zhou Wen. John Karp asked An Jing why her brother is hiding since she claims that he is not a violator. Things were going too badly towards An Jing, and suddenly John Karp saw something interesting. The main character appeared right next to An Jing, covering his sister. Wang Fei stood nearby with Ashen, to whom An Jing approached to ask why her elder brother was in this place. Wang Fei was not going to interfere in the battle, because the guy himself chose to fight. A few hours after the appearance of the main character, a broadcast of the battle was expected throughout the university. John Karp specifically made such a move so that everyone could see how he would eliminate the hero. In the stands stood Li Xuan, who was not happy with the behavior of the new student and Zhou Wen's student, who was preparing to support the coach. Li Xuan wondered why the person next to him dressed like that and why he grabbed a pair of light sticks. But the guy could not say anything except that he had heard such a method was the best option for support. At the start of the battle, John Karp gave the main character the opportunity to win by setting him the condition of defeating one of his companions within 10 minutes. In response, Zhou Wen simply said that he only needed one minute. After such words, the companion began to attack having the opportunity to make a cripple out of Zhou Wen. The main character, in turn, prepared to fight, having collected a sufficient amount of energy. Due to the gathering of spiritual energy behind Zhou Wen, the image of a demon general appeared saying that he meant that he would only need one minute to win. After John Karp's companion appeared on the battlefield, he was a member of the royal court and became interested in Wang Fei. The pet she was interested in was a historical knight from the round table with incredible strength. The time of the battle passed too quickly, and the monster was close to strike the main character with a sword. Only the knight failed when the attack was stopped by a demonic general who had enough physical strength. Zhou Wen's pet quickly threw the attacker away from him simply by waving his hand. The appearance of the protagonist's pet quickly interested Li Xuan, who did not understand when his friend managed to do this, and Jin was also shocked to see something impossible for herself. Looking at the demonic general, An Jing knew that the monster was not an ordinary pet. John Karp, standing under the protection of a knight, was even interested in this outcome of events. The monsters continued to fight among themselves, inflicting considerable damage on each other, which seemed incredibly fast to those watching. A few seconds after exchanging attacks, the monsters came into contact with each other. Li Xuan, watching from the side and seeing how the main character was putting pressure on the enemy, began to support his friend. John Karp did not understand what was happening because for some reason the damage to the demonic general was simply not counted. Things were not going in favor of the new student, and he was going to hit with a special technique belonging to his family, allowing the pets to become stronger. Shrouded in magic, the knight rushed into battle in order to destroy the main character. 
John Carp's plan failed when the pet was caught directly in the demonic general's magic ball. John Carp was afraid when he saw such resistance for the first time. Joe One's pet was preparing a new ability at this moment, forming a dark ball. In just a few seconds, instead of a ball, a knight ended up in the hands of the demonic general, receiving serious damage. With a chance to attack while the enemy was unable to resist, the demonic general swung his fist. With just one blow, the protagonist's pet destroyed the normal state of the knight's armor. John Carp stood silently among the destroyed parts of his monster's body. The demonic general returned to Joe One, having no more sense in fighting, having fulfilled the condition before the set time. Joe One was watched by friends who were very happy about his victory, and Li Xuan actually wanted to come up with a cool nickname for the hero on this occasion. While the guys were rejoicing, An Jing stood aside, not understanding how Zhou Wen's monster could have two special skills. As it turned out, John Carp was not going to give up and covered in magic, was preparing to fight for real. In order to adhere to the rules of the challenge, John Carp ordered the main character to continue fighting him and recognized his true strength. After hearing the proposal, Zhou Wen did not understand why his interlocutor should continue to fight after losing, and behind his back Li Xuan began to scream, humiliating John. Only John himself was not going to admit defeat and put the glory of his family at stake along with his companion's egg. This offer seemed like a lucrative offer to the main character and he agreed. It was then that John Carp created the image of his guardian, who had with him a special skill of his family. In just a couple of seconds, a powerful attack was inflicted on the main character, destroying everything in the way. Li Xuan was afraid for his friend's condition and began to scream, wanting to hear an answer. John Carp, having hit Zhou Wen, was very happy when, in his opinion, the work of revenge was completed. When suddenly another spiritual energy was formed from his magic, which easily got rid of John's power, the force was strong enough to absorb almost the entire battle area. In an instant, John Carp's entire body was covered with ice, preventing him from moving. At this moment, the main character stood unharmed, having defeated the enemy thanks to the abilities of the magical fairy, who in time took the form of a companion and froze the malicious enemy. The main character, in order not to kill his rival, immediately destroyed the ice that bound the aristocrat. John lay motionless, unconscious in the cracks of the ice. And at that moment, the hero came closer to him to pick up his reward for the victory. Taking the companion's egg in his hands, he said that he was taking it for himself. As soon as the battle was over, the missus immediately sent her assistance to Mr. John to carry out his fortune. Squeezing your fist tighter, she looked at Joe One and realized that this guy had been hiding his real strength all this time. Therefore, she had no choice but to come to terms with current events. After this, the events are transferred to the hero's room, where the guy sitting on the bed examined his new battle trophy in more detail. It was the rebel Knight Lancelot. Joe One looked at his characteristics and was immediately surprised. He couldn't believe that this pet companion had all 19 attributes and also four skills. These characteristics made it clear to the main character that this knight was almost like his multi-mutant general. However, it seemed strange to the guy that this knight was probably stronger than the companion that John used. Therefore, he could not understand why he did not bring him out and use him as his main companion. Lancelot is a legendary figure of the Knights of the Round Table led by King Arthur. He was also the brother of Arthur's adoptive father, the Knight Ector. Lancelot was, as one of the greatest knights of King Arthur's round table, brave, strong, and ready to help everyone. People loved him deeply, but he began an affair with King Arthur's wife, Queen Guinevere. And this ultimately led to the collapse of the round table. This knight's destiny was the divine destiny of an absolute hero. The guy thought that, being a servant of King Arthur, Lancelot fell in love with his master's wife. Therefore, it was not surprising to him that John did not bring out this companion because he knew that the destiny of the rebel knight would have some consequences for his master. And so, looking at the artifact, the guy understood that this problem had been foisted on him. Events move into deep quiet night, where Wang Fei was sitting in her office. While talking on the phone, she told someone about Zhou Wen, whom she really considered a special student. He always brought her results that shocked her every time. She thought that if Zhou Wen really was a miraculous piece of jade, then the stranger was the only person who could carve it. The stranger, standing on the edge of the cliff, considered Wang Fei's words funny, because to him it sounded like another headache for the students. 
He admitted that it was true that Zhou Wen's victory over John was largely due to his strong companion. Therefore, he was ready to take action, and after that, he immediately turned off the call. As soon as he completed the negotiations, he instantly jumped into a gigantic deep abyss, holding on to his chain. After this, the events break off and move on again to the following morning, where the main character just woke up and answered someone's call. It was Li Xuan, who was nervous because Teacher Wang had just published the homework. The main character did not understand what his friend was talking about, so he decided to watch this homework. As soon as he opened a message from the teacher, he was immediately shown his homework, in which he was tedious to kill ten bronze ravens. While studying the terms of the task, the main character asked Zhuan about the location, the Forbidden City. However, the friend himself said that he was looking for information about this place, and it was not particularly dangerous there. The Forbidden City was one of the lowest dungeons in Luoyang, filled with all kinds of bronze creatures, and even legendary level beasts could be found there. One of the reasons why this place was called the Forbidden City was because what appears to be that the Forbidden City possessed some mysterious power that sealed off the treaty with the Companions, and no interdimensional being could be summoned on the Forbidden City. After this, the events are transferred again, but now to the treasured Forbidden City itself, where the guys have already fought against a bronze, giant beast of legendary level. Li Xuan dodged the monster's attacks. Time after time, the beast was waiting for him, but the guy managed to dodge the attacks. Taking advantage of the moment, he tried to hit the beast with his crushing blow. As soon as he collided with his fist against the armored flesh of the beast, the guy was immediately shocked. After all, he could not understand what was wrong with him. They hit him so much, but nothing happened. This blow had no effect on the beast. But still, the monster became angry with the guy, which is why it began to attack him. But suddenly, a strange red glow appears from above the legendary beast. It was Zhou Wen, who was rapidly closing the distance between him and the monster. To attack it with your magical red attack, piercing the beast with one swing of the blade. Li Xuan sincerely believed in the success of this attack, so he encouraged the hero from the side so that he would not stop and finally finish off the beast. However, suddenly the main character begins to run away in the opposite direction, due to the fact that he had already spent all his strength in this blow. So he decided to leave. This decision of the hero shocked his friend, because he did not expect this to happen. Having barely escaped from the terrible legendary beast, Li Xuan barely stayed on his knees with all his strength. At the same moment, he wondered why there were such powerful monsters here, because Teacher Wang did not say that the animals here were of an average level, so he did not understand why they had difficulty simply moving this monster from its place. Zhou Wen believed that he did not have time to be discouraged, so he took out his phone to find something with his camera when suddenly he still finds the imprint of the dungeon, which at least now they didn't have to look for. However, Li Xuan was not happy about this, because he was confused because he did not understand how it was possible to survive here without the use of pet companions. The main character knew that not all of them could not be used, but this was true, because he did not feel a contractual connection with his companions when he entered the Forbidden City, except these two. He could still hear their screams, but he understood that it was better not to use them, so as not to violate the rules of the Forbidden City. Zhou Wen told his friend that the Bronze Beast's defense was indeed amazing, but he believed that it was not invincible. As long as there is at least one small chance to strike him, there is a chance to defeat him. Li Xuan, after listening to the hero, began to think that, nevertheless, the information provided by the teacher was not completely correct because if he and the hero were of the legendary race, they still had a great chance of defeating this beast. But what about the rest of the students it would be, he couldn't imagine. However, Zhou Wen assured Xuan that there was nothing wrong, because he could come up with a method to help the students pass this test, and then he will sell it for a lot of money, and the proceeds from it will be given to Huang Ji for the game. After that, he immediately launched into his game, where he immediately began an adventure against the legendary beast. After dozens of attempts, he finally figured it out. Dodging the attack of a giant monster, he finally noticed the weak point of the legendary beast. Therefore, he decided to take the moment to hit that place with all his might and finish the game. As soon as he completed his decisive attack, he immediately jumped away from him to the side. The bronze beast needs energy in its body to move, attack, and defend itself. When a bronze beast moves, 
energy is concentrated in one of the four parts of its body, while a lack of energy is created in the remaining parts. This was the weak point. However, the position of the weak points constantly changed and moved depending on the movement of the beast. He continued to say that if a mortal level person wanted to defeat such a beast, he needed to study the bronze beast completely and remember where and when its weak points appeared. In the next morning, Zhou Wan sends a certain file to Li Xuan, who, being covered in wounds, carefully studied the information. He immediately called the sleeping protagonist and began to express his emotions that he had truly defeated him. Li Xuan continued to tell the hero that he could not believe what was happening. After all, according to his data, he was indeed able to defeat him alone. Zhou Wan, in turn, asked not to worry about it. Although the mortal class spent more effort than them, they could still calmly defeat the bronze beast. Li Xuan was full of joyful emotions, so he assured the protagonist that a lot of people would buy his article. So the guy convinced the hero that he would get rich from this article. Some time passed, and the guys arrived at the university and listened to the teacher that she didn't think that a strategy was needed for this mission. Their assignment said that ten bronze beasts were needed, but did not say which ones. The guys were shocked that they only had to defeat the bronze rabbit. Li Xuan didn't really like this information because he and the main character didn't really believe that there was a bronze rabbit there. Taking the girl's phone, they began to look at the homework that the teacher had given them. They noticed that this assignment was different from other students' assignments. Therefore, they wondered why the teacher only gave them such a task. And this meant that no one would buy the strategy that the main character wrote. But suddenly, someone appears behind them. This stranger did not agree with the words of the main character because he thought that a special class had a task with a bronze beast for which they wrote a strategy. This stranger was an academy graduate. The graduate, looking at the hero's phone, didn't even notice that he had painted every phase of the bronze beast. According to him, this strategy could be used in his game. The boys, listening to the elder, could not fully understand what he was talking about. Therefore, the graduate began to tell the guys that the special class is very proud, and they believe that if they accept help from others, then they are not at all as cool as they thought. For them, status was above all else. As soon as the guys heard this, they immediately turned back and began to leave the elder. But he, in turn, asked the guys to stop because he had not finished speaking yet. With a smile on his face, he continued to tell the guys that although they were unlikely to buy a strategy for the mission, with this strategy, many could beat his record in the Forbidden City. The Elder believed that some of them, who loved to show off, would probably buy the main character an article in order to get around the Elder. Joe Wan, having thought about the graduate's words, also believed that this had the right to happen. In the Lotus Cave, both Feng Chuyan and Wang Lu tried to race. Suddenly, someone attacks the main character from behind. It was a student of a guy who dragged the hero along because he wanted to train with him. Li Xuan silently watched this, and the elder was happy about this. So in addition, he asked that they remember to give him money for the information. After this, the events are transferred to the training point, where the student thanked the main character for continuing to train him and teach him new information, which greatly helped the guy in life. However, Zhou Wen was a little at a loss because he did not remember him saying anything to his disciple. But the student, in turn, asked permission so that the hero would allow him to show what he had learned. Suddenly, he swings his sword, right in front of the main character. If Zhou Wen had been a less powerful warrior, he would have lost his head immediately. The hero, while dodging the attack, also believed that this attack was quite good. Suddenly, the student attacks Zhou Wen again, but he again manages to dodge the attack. While dodging, the guy noticed that the distance between the sword and the air was not interrupted, as if it was fixed. While the main character was thinking about the movements of his student, the swordsman, in turn, concentrated to show the spatial attack of the sword, which Zhou Wen could still avoid. Continuing to quantitatively attack the main character, he still continued to dodge attacks, as if he was dancing on the verge of death. Zhou Wen liked this, because by evading, he understood. Indeed, the sword looked at him as if with eyes. After swinging his sword multiple times, the student got tired, so he ended the training. The tired guy realized that even without using his eyes, if he was able to perceive the slightest movements in the air, then he would be able to use his sword more skillfully. However, he believed that he was still far from the power that his teacher possessed. Therefore, he was wondering whether the teacher was pleased with him or not. Zhou Wan at that moment understood that despite the similarities, 
it was clear that the eye of the mind was not the same as hearing. This boy has truly achieved perfection with his own understanding. After finishing his thoughts, the main character began to tell Feng Quan that in fact, he really had nothing to teach him. His mind belonged to him alone, with high talent and good understanding. Therefore, the hero was ready to return the money to the guy. However, Feng Quan thought the opposite, because he was sure that he had truly progressed from the hero of the instructions. He knew that the protagonist was progressing very quickly, and therefore Zhou Wen had to be very strict about the training time. So it was selfish of him to delay the training hero in his opinion. He asked the teacher not to worry. After all, Quan was here with him and studied himself. Therefore, he assured the hero that he would do everything possible where he needed him. Zhou Wen was tired of all this, so he simply decided to leave and finally tell the student to continue in the same spirit. However, Feng Quan's energy never ceased to bubble, which is why he asked the outgoing hero to allow him to live with him. The hero didn't want this, because he understood that if he didn't live alone, he wouldn't be able to play the game if they lived together. Plus, he also understood that his student's life could be in danger around him. Closing the doors in front of Feng Quan, he immediately began to cry because he was proud of his teacher, because he believed you that behind closed doors, the teacher carefully and painstakingly trained. After painstaking training, the main character returns home, where his companion was already waiting for him. The guy, undressing, told him that he bought him food and put it in the refrigerator. However, the kid didn't care much about this because he carefully read the book along with the carrot. But what the little goat was looking at was not a book, but a photo album of the main character, where the guy was with his father in one photo. While eating his carrots, he thought that Zhou Lien, the father of the main character, was a cool guy. At the same moment, Zhou Wen was changing clothes when he heard a sound to the side of him. Standing motionless, the guy listened carefully because he could not understand who could call his father by name in his apartment. Having made sure that there was no one in the house, he returned to the game again to the location of the ant's lair, where no doubt a battle had already taken place. The main character, who was dissatisfied that even the silver-winged flying ant could not reach him, took part in this battle as if it came to life, when suddenly the ant's blade almost reaches the guy. However, he manages to disappear before he is pierced. Suddenly, the ant notices something behind him. It was Zhou Wen, along with his demon general, whom he asked to quickly buy him time. The ant did not wait for the hero's next actions, so in an instant he began to quickly fly towards the guy to attack him. But suddenly a terrible explosion occurs in its place, which meant that the monster itself cut through the ground beneath itself in order to reach the main character without obstacles, who was waiting for such a maneuver from the legendary creature, with whom the difference in levels was great. Therefore, in this case, he had a trump card, the Banana Fairy, which he then launched into battle against the legendary monster. This appearance of the fairy again blew the ant aside. The main character, sitting on the sand from below, watched all this. He sincerely could not understand how the ant managed to dodge such blows. Taking a closer look, he noticed that the ant maintained this position for a reason. But because behind him there was a white cocoon that he preserved. Realizing that now was that very moment, the main character immediately began to dive into the golden liquid, in which this treasured protected ant cocoon was located. Having taken out what he wanted, the main character immediately dived into her again and finished the game. He was pleased that he had finally solved the riddle with the ant. Realizing that the ant preferred protecting that white cocoon rather than protecting the nectar, he finally realized that he had found a way to get the nectar. When suddenly Li Xuan calls him, my friend called for a reason, not just for fun. He really wanted to complete the task in the Forbidden City with the hero tomorrow. Zhou Wen did not refuse such an offer, but since they had a strategy and the deadline for completing this task was long, he could not understand why they needed to rush. Therefore, Li Xuan, without thinking twice, began to tell the guy that they promised Sister Wei Yang to get to know her club and complete missions together. She and her sister agreed to organize a club in the Forbidden City so that they could all complete the missions. Suddenly, Zhuan's sister addresses him like a baby, which is why he immediately begins to get nervous. However, this behavior of the younger brother just amused the girl. With a smile on her face, she told him that she had received another application from a group of people to participate in this event. This event will definitely be more lively than expected, 
The participants in the event were seriously opposed to each other, but the main character was more worried that there were a lot of people. While the main character was coming to his senses from surprise, a visual conflict had already broken out between the guys. Suddenly, Li Xuan's sister approaches him, who was glad to see Zhou Wen, because everyone who was here had gathered for his sake. After all, everyone wanted to hunt him. Suddenly, people also start calling him Feng Quan and Xiao Lu. Coming closer to the guy, he was surprised that the guys were also here. However, Li Xuan was almost surprised, because these two were new members of their club. Therefore, the main character was very interested in what his friend told them, that they fell for it. But Xuan said that everything was not so difficult. He told his student that the hero was also in the club, and he joined to be closer to him. As for Xiao Lu, she told them to count on her. After all, she had a premonition that something good would happen. Meanwhile, the battle against the legendary monsters was already in full swing, where the guys quickly destroyed the enemy one after another because they didn't want to lose to the girls. Xiao Lu, looking at all this from the outside, was shocked that Zhou Wen's instructions greatly reduced the time to kill the bronze beast. The main character, being aloof from what was happening, did not want to fight or express himself in any way, so he just wanted to find a quiet corner and play the game. When suddenly his mysterious phone began making strange sounds again. After this, immediately all the participants began to panic because everything began to shake around them. Suddenly, the giant stone ceiling begins to collapse, turning into giant stone boulders. At this moment, Joe Wan did not panic at all. He stood in front of the newly opened doors, expecting something terrible. As soon as the collapse ended, all participants miraculously survived. However, they were not focused on the destruction because they were also interested in what was there in the unknown. This mysterious place was not marked on the map of the Forbidden City, so they wanted to quickly find out what was there. The main character did not want to stand still for a long time, so he was ready to go there as soon as possible. The guys didn't stand around for long, so they all followed the hero into the mysterious light, where strange ancient architecture appeared before them. It was a gate that was entirely made of bronze. Xiao Lu, coming closer to the gate, believed that there was a mysterious cave inside behind it. Zhou Wen, without hesitation, immediately activated his ability. Chronicle of the Demon Gods, Step into the Sky, in order to study this place in more detail. However, this did not give him anything, because the entire building was completely devoid of entrance. There was not even a small opening. Suddenly, there's a strong explosion in the gate area. It was an attack by one of the participants who tried to open them using force. However, the guys looking at this realized that even brute force would not help here. This very puzzled the main character, because after analyzing the surface of the mysterious gate, he noticed that there was no door or small holes, but there was a force that protected this thing. Therefore, one of the university representatives decided to ask Jiang Yang whether he knew anything about this task or not. The guy knew some information about this, so he began to say that during the Zhou Dynasty, people believed in ghosts and gods, and also that the gods of heaven were responsible for life and death, and therefore the kings were careful about funeral rites. However, it is said that at the end of the Zhou Dynasty, the prince himself was so afraid of death that he placed his own blood and bones in a closed city of death. He tried to deceive the heavens and fake his death to avoid his fate. It was just a pity that fate could not be changed, and in the end, death was inevitable. According to historical records, the city of the dead, which is trying to deceive the gods, is cast from bronze and does not have doors or anything else. However, Li Xuan considered all this nonsense, so he wanted to make fun of Zhang, whether he knew for sure and how to get there. Zhang responded by confirming his guesses, but he was more worried about the fact that it was a dead city. Therefore, he assumed that perhaps he could try to dig under the young wall of the city. Having climbed into the mysterious closed city, the guys were shocked by this because they could not understand why there was nothing here. All that was in this closed bronze dome was a single dead pillar of a tree. The main character, looking at him, decided to use his mysterious phone to find out more information about him. However, it couldn't do anything because the phone showed that it was just a tree. But for the first time, the phone responded to something other than dungeon prints. Therefore, Zhou Wen decided to ask his friends whether they had found anything or not. But Li Xuan also could not find anything except this tree. Suddenly, the mysterious tree began to glow with a purple glow, which made all the test participants surprised. 
This radiance was provoked by one of the guys. Frightened, he stood barely holding onto the tree and did not understand what was happening. Because of one touch of a living human body, this tree instantly became so alive. But after, it's the same again. One of the healer girls, analyzing the condition of the guy who touched the dead tree, said that he had neither damage nor curses. In fact, he didn't feel anything. He was just frightened by the sharp light from the tree. Li Xuan and Zhou Wan also did not understand what had happened, because the tree simply suddenly lit up and went out again. Xiao Lu, being next to the tree and looking at it from close up, was very curious what was wrong with this tree. Well, since there was no danger, she decided to touch the tree again, which instantly shone again, only now in red. Li Xuan, worried about the girl, immediately ran up to her because he was very afraid for her. However, the main character did not allow his emotions to take control of him. So he stood still and carefully watched what was happening. It seemed to him that there was something strange here, and therefore he believed that it was better not to touch this tree for now. However, the guys did not listen to the guy because everyone wanted to know what color his tree was. Joe One at that moment decided to use the phone again. I wish I could find out more about this mysterious tree. Without waiting for the download to finish, he put the phone on the shelf. During this time, he had already managed to return home, swim, and do all the important things. The road from the forbidden city to home was very long, and it was still loading. Nothing happened when he pressed the phone, so it seemed to him that he could only wait for the download to finish. So he fell on the bed and decided to take a nap for now. Meanwhile, Wu Yanlan and his son, An Tianzuo, stood and discussed the main character. The woman told her son that she did not feel comfortable when Zhou Wen was alone, Therefore, she wanted her daughter to accompany him. And Tianzuo, listening to his mother, could not believe that she wanted to make her daughter a spy. However, the woman did not want to change anything because her decision was final. She knew that he loved his sister very much, but her son should have known about the situation with Jing. Unlike An Tianzuo, An Jing was born with a cold body, the reason for which is still unknown to them. The cold that accompanies her body is unstable. This meant that she had to endure more pain than usual, which is why she did not support the practice of archery. Continuing to talk, the woman told the guy that even if An Jing wins this qualification, if something happens to her during the competition, even if there is a small chance of this, she didn't want to lose someone important again. The events end there and are again transferred to the main character, where the download was finally completed. Zhou Wen, looking at his phone, did not understand what kind of strange name this tree had. Without thinking twice, he was transported to the game reality to take a closer look at the tree of the dead man. While in the game, the guy realized that this was the dead man's tree in the city of the dead. But still, he did not understand why this tree was a separate mobile copy. Suddenly someone starts knocking loudly on his door. The guy, out of misunderstanding, immediately opened the door where a girl appeared in front of him. It was An Jing, who was all wet from the rain that was outside on the street. The girl, being all wet, asked the guy to now finish the duel they had promised. Without thinking twice, the main character threw the same towel at the girl so that she could dry herself. Throwing a towel at the girl, he told her that he did not remember that they had ever promised the duel that she was talking about. Therefore, he asked the girl to quickly dry herself and go to her bedroom to sleep. However, the girl did not like the guy's instructions, because she did not understand why the main character did not want to fight because he had a legend class and a powerful companion. Zhou Wen did not want to answer this question, so he asked the girl to remain silent because he knew that this was due to the qualification of the holy place. He, Zhou Wen, did not want her. If she was so important to her, he was at least now ready to go and persuade Sister Lan to give it to her. An Jing, of course, knew that beating a hero would not prove anything, but she couldn't come to terms with it. Sobbing and wiping away tears, she told the guy that she put her life on the line to prove that she deserved this qualification. But according to the girl, the main character got it so easily and could easily refuse it. This, in her opinion, was not fair. It was she who wanted to practice archery and not endure the terrible pain from the cold. So she believed that this was completely unfair. When suddenly the main character's phone rang, it was Li Xuan's message that surprised the hero. Taking a call from a friend, he was shocked that Li Xuan began to tell him. A friend with a terrible voice told him that something strange had happened. All the people who entered the dead city with him yesterday suddenly died this morning, and Xiao Lu was still inside. 
Zhou Wen was very shocked by this news, so he and An Jing decided to meet with Li Xuan. The guy didn't want to drag out the conversation for long, so he immediately began asking his friend about dead people and the secondary kingdom. However, Li Xuan, holding his head, denied the hero's words. After all, they said that they almost suddenly, without warning, lost their breathing and heartbeat. He read a list with the names of all five dead, and they were all those who touched that tree. Zhou Wen, pondering the information he had heard, realized that Li Xuan had also touched this tree. So if it was really because of the tree's power, then he was also in great danger now. Li Xuan was not very worried about this, so he did not want to talk to himself for a long time. After all, he wanted to tell the guy that he had already told the academy about the tree. But according to the investigative team, no traces of the tree were found in the Forbidden City. The tree simply disappeared from its place in the dead city. This matter was so complicated that now the military was involved in all this. Even their academies were not allowed to interfere. The main character was a little sad because because of this, they now couldn't find out how Wang Lu was feeling right now. But suddenly An Jing, being behind the guys, said that she could lead them to her. However, she had one condition for the main character. At this moment, Zhou Wen was ready for anything, so he was ready to hear this condition. But the girl instantly turned away from him because she had not yet come up with him. The guys wanted to quickly find out more information, so he asked Li Xuan to immediately inform them if something started to happen to him. After that, the guys went to a warmer place to rest and the girl could call about admission. While the girl was negotiating, Zhou Wen did not want to just sit idle. So he bit his finger and moved into the virtual world, where a dead man's tree appeared before him. The guy noticed the changes in the tree and was a little surprised by this. Looking in more detail, he noticed that flowers appeared on its branches. The main character understood that these five flower buds corresponded to those who had died at the moment. There is clearly something evil hidden in this tree. Indeed, copies were created based on reality, but they did not exist in such a way as to influence each other. Back then, Joe One couldn't understand why the missing tree effect, this time in real life, would be visible on the mobile phone. But suddenly he realizes that the dead man's tree has really disappeared. That is, it was not a copy of something. It's like a collection of companion eggs, something from reality downloaded into a mobile phone. Suddenly the girl hits the guy's forehead with her fingers. An Ying, having finished negotiating, asked the guy to stop playing games because she had received permission, so they needed to go quickly. At this point, the events are interrupted around the main character and are transferred to some strange strangers who were discussing the autopsies of dead bodies. The masked stranger tried to convince the second interlocutor for this procedure because they knew nothing about the situation, so he wanted to find out what the problem was. One way or another, their physiological functions stopped and they were, in a sense, already dead. They both smiled because this was their original hidden plan, after all. They were also pleased that this time the daughter of the Wang royal family was also involved in the matter, and therefore they would not ignore it. Therefore, the masked stranger asked at least to give him those four, but the second interlocutor did not want to give anyone up. He told his colleague that they were now in the abyss between life and death, and he wanted to find the source of this mesmerizing power. Therefore, the masked stranger told the general that he had no choice. After all, only he can give them a chance. This deal was very profitable in his opinion. However, the general did not like this, so he sharply grabbed the stranger by the throat. Suddenly closed doors opened slightly. The general, fighting with the stranger, asked the guests to leave, because he ordered that no one should enter here. However, the guests were not going to leave, because these were our guys. And Jing, turning to her uncle, told him that she had brought someone here who might be able to help him. After that, the guys told him everything about the dead man's tree. However, Uncle already knew this because Li Xuan had already reported it. But the tree they mentioned was not found in the city. Zhou Wen decided to say that this tree must have existed before and all those of them who entered the dead city at that time witnessed it. So it was by no means an illusion. And looking at the sleeping girl, the hero did not think that they were dead. Zhou Wen didn't want to keep anyone waiting so he immediately began to explain that the tree they touched was in the dead city of the Zhou dynasty. The dead city was originally used to fake death to fool the sky. Therefore, he believed that perhaps the disappearing tree was the core used to deceive the sky. He also thought that Wang Lu and the others might have been infected by the scent of the tree 
and entered a state of pseudo-death, and when the scent of the tree dissipated, they would be able to escape. However, the masker believed that these were just guesses. The main character did not deny this, but still he was more inclined to believe that this was possible. The masked stranger measured the guy's words, so with a bloody look, he gave them only one night, because he was ready to wait only one night. The general, standing next to him, did not promise him that he would allow him to go on a rampage after one night. An unknown force took the lives of the students in one day. If they die completely and their last breath disappears like quicksand, he will not be able to do anything. The disguiser advised them to think it over carefully. After all, he believed that the main thing was not to regret later that they did not follow his plan. These words irritated the general. However, Zhou Wen was completely calm because he noticed some words about the fact that the force took life. An Jing decided to tell him that the disguiser was a forensic expert, Yang Zhen, a member of the epic level military department. All of his art essences are related to life or soul. In his field, he was truly able to perceive and discern the state of people. Having finished speaking, the girl asked her brother what he would do now. After a long-awaited pause, the main character replied that he needed to go to the restroom, which made the girl surprised by the response to her useful informational words. Zhou Wen entered the toilet and immediately closed the door behind him. He believed that he had to do something before the general would allow this Dr. Yang to carry out his evil plan. Otherwise, they could all really die at the hands of this doctor. Appearing again in the mobile game, he again appeared in front of a giant dead tree on which flowers had already begun to sprout. The main character also noticed that the flower buds began to open. Therefore, he realized that there was less and less time left, so he decided to act. Considering what Yang Zhen said recently, the blooming of the five flowers symbolized the five lives of the friend's protagonist. Therefore, he could only try to destroy these buds. Attacking one bud, he immediately began to attack others in pursuit, so as to quickly complete his mysterious operation. Suddenly, Wang Lu wakes up and opens his eyes. An Jing, being next to her, immediately noticed her condition, so she asked the general to look at her. The general came closer and ordered Yang Zhen to examine it in more detail, which is what he started to do. Examining the girl in more detail, he was shocked that she was alive. After all, in his opinion and calculations, she should have been dead. The general, listening to the medical expert, also thought that there was really something strange here. The assumption made by the young man about pseudo-death turned out to be correct. Meanwhile, Zhou Wen was listening in on them from the side. From the words he heard, he understood that even if that was the case, their situation had not improved, so there was no need to be particularly happy. Suddenly the guy notices that the bud on the dead tree was unharmed. The guy was shocked that even the star blade Qi with all its power could not destroy this bud. Therefore, he decided to attack with full force, together with his companions. Suddenly, Ditin appears on the tree. This appearance of the animal greatly surprised the guy, because he could not understand when he learned to appear without permission. However, Ditin did not listen to the guy, because his attention was attracted by a bright red bud, which he decided to take into his hands. The hero was shocked by the actions of the animal, that the unicorn just picked this flower and hugged it. The main character couldn't believe it, so he immediately opened the door to the guys. Where they all stood around Wang Lu had just woken up. The girl, having regained consciousness, barely opened her eyes, could not understand where she was. As soon as they indicated to the girl the first necessary aid, the main character and the general stepped aside to talk. The general, being opposite the guy, told him that he ordered an examination of this girl from the Wang family, and it seemed to him that there were no problems with her. Therefore, he believed that since Wang Lu was doing well, he was sure that the other students would also wake up soon. The general was glad that Zhou Wen's theory was correct because Yan Zheng's plan had failed. Zhou Wen did not want to stay and talk to them anymore because he understood that he had to ask the child to pick all the buds as soon as possible. Therefore, he decided to leave the military. As soon as the main character began to leave, a medic stood motionless behind him, who watched with a creepy, bloody gaze as the main character left. After this, events moved to An Jing. Sitting on the sofa, she decided to call Zhou Wen to tell her that Uncle Chin called her and asked her to tell him that the other students also woke up. However, the hero's silence surprised the girl, so she immediately decided to stop talking to him. Meanwhile, in the game world, Ditton, sitting next to all the plucked buds, was glad that he had so many of them. 
Zhou Wan watched all this from his phone, looking at the plucked flowers. He did not know what to do with them. The system categorized these flowers as items, but he had no idea what they could be useful for or how to use them at all. Suddenly, Ditton began to drool from his mouth and move his tail. The guy immediately understood what the unicorn wanted to do, so he allowed him to eat it, which he undoubtedly immediately began to do. While Ditton was trying to fit the entire bud into his mouth, the main character noticed that a new flower began to grow on the tree. This bud was not a simple color, but golden. Therefore, the main character knew who had this aura color. It was Li Xuan. Zhou Wan immediately started calling his friend to make sure he was okay. However, Li Xuan could not answer this call because he was unconscious. After waiting for the call to automatically turn off, Zhou Wan, as expected, understood that something had obviously happened to him. Therefore, the hero began to turn to Di Ting again so that he would save his friend again, which is exactly what he did. The unicorn immediately tore off the newly growing bud from the tree with his teeth. As soon as the flower was plucked from the branch, Li Xuan also regained consciousness. After that, he immediately heard the call from the protagonist and accepted it in order to reassure Zhou Wan that everything was fine with him. As soon as the hero ended the conversation, he immediately sighed heavily. Holding one of the buds in play, he realized that if anyone touched this tree, it would suck the life out of them. So it was truly scary. It was not yet a mature flower of a dead man. The hero was wondering what would happen when it matured, but he still assumed that when this happens, the person will most likely die. When suddenly he notices that another bud begins to grow on a dead tree, suddenly the events are interrupted and transferred to the Forbidden City. Li Xuan took a photo and sent it, telling his friend that they had now definitely completed their mission. Turning to Zhou Wen, he decided to tell him the truth, namely that the hero's face looked simply terrible. His face looked terrible due to the fact that during these couple of days, he and Ditton simply did not take their eyes off the dead tree to avoid the appearance of new flowers. Luckily, they stopped growing. Therefore, he really hoped that he would no longer have to do this. At that moment, Wang Fei was sitting at her computer in her room, looking very seriously. Based on the results submitted by the main character, looking at the successfully completed robot, she realized that the time had finally come. After this, events are postponed to the next day, where Zhou Wan was surprised that he would now be learning from a new instructor. Sitting in front of him was Wang Fei, who told him that he was a very talented student, and compared to her, he was sure that the new instructor would be able to teach him much better. From her words, it was clear that the new instructor's name was Wang Ming Wen. Although their instructors always occupied middle positions in strength, there was no one in their academy who was more skilled in science and theory than he was in battle. Therefore, she considered the main character to be very gifted, so his training would be of great benefit to the guy. Zhou Wen, after listening to the girl, told her that he understood her, so he decided to thank the teacher for teaching him all this time. When suddenly someone from the outside turns to him, it was Hui Haifeng, who told the hero that the master told them that they would have a new guy, so they wanted to see which daredevil the master took to him again. But when he saw the main character, he became much calmer. Zhou Wen was surprised by their meeting. However, Wang Fei, sitting behind the guy, told him that these were students of his new instructor. Therefore, she advised him that he should now call them classmates. Events are abruptly interrupted again and transferred to the dragon's cave, where exactly the guys and the main character returned. According to Zhang Yan, this is the area that their teacher is studying, but he just went to the dragon cave for a research trip. Suddenly, they see a certain guy in front of them, who was surprised to see them so quickly. If he hadn't been on duty today, he would also have gone to pick up the new guy. However, Hui Haifeng did not care what he said, and so he decided to introduce the main character to the duty officer, whose name was John Ji Ya. John Ji was very happy to meet Zhou Wen. Therefore, without thinking twice, he told the hero that his work was that chain. It felt like an entry-level assignment from their mentor. All that had to be done was to tighten this chain. This chain was needed because there was a dragon's well underneath it. So of course it was used to catch the dragon. A strange light and dragon roar periodically erupt from this cave, and for this the mentor made a special chain. Zhou Wan picked up the chain and was surprised because he understood that it was about a dragon from a mysterious legend. John Ji, sitting on a chair, said that this was just an assumption based on the mutation of dimensions. In his opinion, even if there was something, it was just another creature from another dimension. Suddenly, Zhou Wan throws the chain because it began to become covered in cold and eerie ice. 
Because of this, John G. began to laugh loudly. He warned the new hero that the dragon's well was very cold, so the chain would also freeze when it hung below. Therefore, he told the hero that he could use life force skills to tighten the chain. This is also the rules of their mentor. Joe Wen took the chain in his hands again and decided to do just that. Concentrating, he began to pull the chain towards himself. But suddenly he began to feel the icing around his hands again. The other guys, being on the sidelines, watched all this. They were surprised that the hero repeated for so long and did not give up. Suddenly, the same teacher emerges from the dragon's well. All the guys immediately started smiling at him because they were there to see him. The mentor's name was Wang Mingyuan. After that, they did not stand in the cold for long, so they went to the fire. Where, sitting in the warmth, Wang Mingyuan poured hot soup for Zhou Wan to warm up because this soup was very effective against frostbite and colds. The teacher, being in a circle next to his students, heard from Haifeng that the main character had pulled the cold chain dozens of times. Therefore, the teacher wondered that since the hero had pulled so many times, why didn't he come up with another way? As for Haifeng, he used all his strength and amplitude to pull the chain by inertia, while simultaneously reducing the time his hands were in contact with the chain. Thus, he managed to tighten the chain before his hands froze. Ah Yan watched for a while when the cold became weak and then pulled on the end of the chain that was least affected by the cold and managed to pull it up. As for John G, he simply used the life force skill. The rules are fixed, but people are flexible. Joe One still wanted to try to pull him up in this way. Since this is a task, then this is a way of training. He believed that he should be able to tighten the chain once he got used to it after a few repetitions. The mentor, having listened to the guy, began to tell him that among his wards there were only two who tried to pull themselves up on a chain, not thinking that they would not succeed, and one of them was just the main character. And the second was a graduate who had already finished school. But the rules were the rule. It's fashionable to rest only after you've pulled yourself up. After this, some time passes, after which the main character, sitting on the ground, all sweaty, could barely breathe in the air. All this was due to the fact that he finally pulled the long-awaited treasured anchor from the well. The shape of this anchor was very similar to that one, but it seemed polished. Tired Zhou Wen, through his fatigue, asked the teacher what kind of anchor it was to which Wang Mingyuan replied that it was a fish hook made in order to catch the dragon with this bag of companion eggs. According to him, dragons were greedy creatures, especially in terms of appetite. The mentor did not want to talk for a long time, so he immediately said that he had entrusted this chain to Aven. Therefore, he allowed the main character to go and rest when he lowered the hook back into the well. Having dropped the anchor, he immediately went to rest. Zhou Wen was very interested in what was happening in the dragon's cave, so after moving into the game, he immediately went there. Looking at the creepy deep hole of the dragon's well, the guy realized that it was definitely cold there. Therefore, he decided to activate the Life of Conduct, the Eight Perfections of Prajna. Having jumped from the top into a deep well, the hero believed that this should have been enough. The deeper Zhou Wen sank, the colder he became. Finally falling to the ground, he understood that even after strengthening his physique and using the body of the Lotus Buddha, he would still freeze to death if he continued to walk. Therefore, Zhou Wen thought about trying to put on a down jacket or light a fire in reality, but in the game, he couldn't figure out what to do. Suddenly, he remembers the mysterious vital force technique from the Temple of the Fire God. After activating it, he, as expected, was the vital force technique from the flame statue. She was highly resistant to cold. The hero, making sure that he was warm, immediately went further to explore the depths of the mysterious dragon cave. Breaking through the icy force, he suddenly stopped because he noticed that the ancient imperial sutra could only operate here. But still, he immediately began to continue flying forward, because he believed that he should not have been far from the very bottom. Suddenly, he ordered his flying ant to shoot a needle, if only Zhou Wen could listen. To understand how long it would take for the needle to hit the bottom of the cave, to understand how much time he still had left. As soon as he sank to the very bottom, a giant legendary dragon appeared before him, which the hero considered a myth. But suddenly he also notices a strange gravity egg that was right next to the dragon. This really shocked the guy. After all, he understood that a gigantic powerful creature had noticed him. The dragon opened his eyes completely and immediately began to growl at the top of his voice at the guy. Because of this growl, he began to be blown away from the place where he was. After this, the game immediately ends and ends.
Zhou Wen was a little sad because he realized that the roar that could kill a person beyond 100 meters was truly the crushing power of the legendary dragon. And in the dragon's well, there was also a cocoon. Because of this, Zhou Wen could not understand whether he had anything to do with the white cocoon that the golden ant was protecting. However, he didn't want to think about it now, so he decided to think about it later. For now, he will come back and rest after pulling the chain during the day. Suddenly, he steps with his foot, and he doesn't understand what's happening. It was the same masked stranger who was barely visible from the darkness. He had just used his life soul to interfere with the senses of nearby life forms so that no one could notice the existence of this demon. Finally, he found the right time to be with the main character again. The hero immediately realized that it was Yan Zhen, the medical examiner. Zhou Wen, standing opposite the disguiser, told him that if he remembered correctly, the students were safe and sound, and the general had not given any orders to continue the investigation. Therefore, he could not fully understand what was happening. However, Yan Zheng had several questions that he wanted to ask the guy, so he asked him not to make him nervous. But still, Zhou Wen did not fully believe him, so he was ready for anything at that moment. The medical examiner did not want to talk to the guy for a long time, so he confirmed his fears. Suddenly, the main character notices that he cannot move. Meanwhile, while the hero was confused, Yan Zheng had already approached him, who did not like playing cat and mouse, so he simply temporarily blocked the connection between the guy and his body. He didn't want to waste a lot of time, so with a deadly look, he wanted to quickly get to the point. The main purpose of his visit was precisely the dead tree. Zhou Wen couldn't believe it, so he decided to ask the doctor about the tree, to which the disguiser confirmed the guy's words. He wanted a tree so that he could get mighty power from it. Yang Zheng decided to tell the guy about the ship of Theseus. This ship was an insoluble paradox. It described a ship that could sail for a hundred years thanks to the people who maintained and replaced its parts. If part of the board rotted, it was replaced, and so in the end, the entire ship was replaced. Therefore, this ship was no longer the same ship that it was before, which meant that it no longer belonged to Theseus. However, according to him, the answer was simple. It was not Theseus's ship that decided whether it remained the same as before, but its ruler. This made him a ruler. If the ship of Theseus was only a tool for conquering the seas for its ruler, then it will remain the ship of Theseus, regardless of whether it was a hundred years ago or now. The same was the relationship between the body and consciousness, which is the soul. Consciousness is the ruler, and their body is just the ship of Theseus, which fettered them. The dimensional storm gave humans the opportunity to evolve, but at the same time it gave them the lowest point of reference. Most people cannot survive among monsters whose life classes are higher than human ones. If his research could successfully extract human consciousness, or soul, so to speak, then people would be able to gain eternal life, and their consciousness would not be limited to the weak class of mortals. People will exist in a new dimension. Listening to Yan Zheng, the main character didn't even know what to say, whether he was a genius or crazy. The same in turn, holding a knife over his hand, said that he devoted his life to research, his life providence, and life soul. All this in order to observe the abstract concept of the soul, so that the people below have more opportunities. But when he tried to tear the consciousness of the soul from the body, no matter what methods he used, and no matter how careful he was, as soon as the soul separated from the body, the body and vitality disappeared every time. But those students whose souls disappeared and mysteriously reappeared broke this rule. The same tree. It had the power that he just needed. However, Zhou Wen decided to ask if the medic thought that he was somehow connected with the mysterious tree. The same, in turn, confirmed the guy's fears. If they say that the tree's existence was in static equilibrium, then the variable that caused the tree to disappear would be the people entering the city of death. Likewise, if there was a variable that caused the dead students to be revived, it would be Zhou Wen and An Jing. Therefore, Yang Zheng assumed that they both existed in these two variables. However, the main character tried to refute the masker's guesses by saying that these were just his assumptions after excluding other possibilities of unknown variables. At the same moment, the guy tried to move, but he could not use any skills under the limitation of the epic class. Yang Zheng, realizing what the main character wanted to do, did not waste time for long. 
so he decided to find what he needed after he extracted all his memories from his brain. Suddenly, a strange magic arrow stuck right in the forehead of the main character. Joe One immediately began to feel a terrible headache, causing him to immediately fall to his knees. However, the doctor said that it was not for long, because his mind will collapse the moment the doctor cuts off the hero's memories from his brain, and he will turn into a doll that has lost all his emotions and consciousness. He assured the guy that sacrifices were necessary for healing, so he was ready to take on this sin. He will write his sacrifice into the history of human evolution. Suddenly, a bright glow began to shine around the main character, which immediately began to increase significantly. Out of misunderstanding, the doctor began to step back. Meanwhile, the main character stood in place completely covered in an eerie red aura. The disguiser, looking at him, was shocked by the guy's abilities. Therefore, he decided to use his demon in battle. However, Joe Wen noticed him with his bloody gaze in an instant, because of which the demon's head immediately explodes. Yan Jing couldn't believe this. He believed that this was impossible because he thought that the main character was only a legend class, and this class would not be enough to eliminate his demon. However, Zhou Wen, being completely covered in a secret skill, did not want to listen or talk to the scoundrel, so he ordered the destruction of the invader. The disguiser immediately felt that his movements were all constrained, and a second later, his body completely disappeared under the great pressure of the hero's bloody energy. As soon as the threat was eliminated, the guy immediately relaxed and fell to his knees. His hands were completely covered in blood, and he himself could barely hold on. His body was bleeding all over, so he could not believe that he would become the first person to die from the power of his own life providence. Suddenly, from the loss of a lot of blood, he immediately loses consciousness and falls to the ground. After this, some time passes where the main character wakes up on the bed. Looking at his body, he realized that he survived only thanks to someone because his wounds were all treated. Suddenly, he notices next to him a mentor who was carefully reading a book. The teacher asked the guy not to move. He used his life soul to repair his fatal wounds, but he still needed to recover. His ribs were broken and his organs were damaged. The main character was found by Elder Zhang, who brought him unconscious straight to his mentor, who was shocked when Zia brought him. The mentor continued to tell the guy that all his meridians were crushed by some force, and all the bones and organs around were severely damaged. Fortunately, the main character was glad that he did not lose his things. Suddenly, the mentor asks the hero who attacked him. Joe One found it difficult to answer this. He understood that instead of answering that it was Yan Zheng, it would be better to say that he was attacked by his own life providence. But still, he believed that it was so stupid. Life providence is something that is born from itself and cannot go beyond the body, otherwise it would not exist. But this did not apply to the royal sigh. And yet when the king's sigh was heard, another consciousness seemed to invade the hero's mind. Without answering the question for a long time, Wang Ming Yuan believed that the guy had memory problems. So he decided to tell him that Zia had said that he did not find any trace of the other person when he found him lying in a pool of blood. Zhou Wen was surprised by these words. He believed that this could not have happened because Yan Zhen exploded on the spot. The mentor decided to say that when he treated the main character with the help of his soul, he discovered something interesting in his injuries. The guy was seriously wounded all over his body, except his heart. Therefore, Wang Ming Yuan believed that it was protected by another force. Without it, the guy would have died instantly. These words made Zhou Wen think because he himself did not fully understand what his mentor was talking about. However, the mentor considered the guy something because he died on the first day he became his ward. Suddenly, he hits the guy on the forehead with a book. And then he starts laughing because he was so trusting that he couldn't tease him. Zhou Wen did not understand what kind of notebook it was in his hands. Therefore, the mentor did not bother the guy for long. It was a notebook for him, seven scattered palms. Standing in front of the hero, Wang Mingyuan told him that he could not always protect him. Only when he himself becomes stronger can this truly protect him. He then added that the name was short for the seven free palm movements, which he took from the seven types of palm techniques, which is why it was called seven spread palms. Each movement of the scattered palms themselves contained the essence of their respected techniques with practicality in mind. The mentor thought this would be very compatible with the hero's physique and training and would be useful for development. As he left the guy, he finally told him that he wouldn't be able to walk with such injuries for a while, so he could use it to kill time. 
Suddenly, the events are interrupted and transferred to Li Xuan, who was all scared because the main character had dieting at home. So he asked the guy to come home quickly. However, Zhou Wan said with sadness on his face that he really couldn't move right now. Therefore, he warned Zhuan that if dieting was not fed for several days, he would definitely destroy the dormitory. Therefore, he could only ask Li Xuan for help. Zhuan, listening to these words, came to terms with it. And so he began to wish the hero to get better quickly. After finishing the conversation, Zhou Wan decided to close his fist. Looking at his fist, the guy was glad that he could apply at least some force to his hands. Therefore, he will be able to play a game by trying to cultivate the seven dispersing palms. Biting his finger, he realized that Yan Zhen did all this for the sake of the tree. Putting my bloody finger to the phone, he decided to sit down so that it would be more convenient for him to play. Suddenly, as soon as the game started, Zhou Wen noticed a certain number next to the tree. He did not know what the number under the icon was. Therefore, he instantly moved into the game world to the Tree of the Dead, where something has sprouted on the tree again. As soon as the guy saw that he had another bump, he was shocked. After all, he did not understand how this could happen if the tree disappeared and no one was to come into contact with him. Sitting thinking, the guy suddenly remembers something. Remembering the words of his new mentor, the protagonist realized that Yan Zhen was missing. Therefore, looking at the new flower, the guy did not want to believe it. Suddenly, events are interrupted and events move on sometime later. Where the main character trained hard, as soon as he stopped, he realized that the seven scattered palms were a vital force technique, so it was more like a skill. But still, he understood that all seven movements of this technique were unique in style. Each technique was written briefly, but if he wanted to master them, he would have to practice more. Standing in front of a dead tree, he seriously looked at the flower. After all, he could not even imagine what would happen after he matured. Meanwhile, events are transferred again, only now to the deep parts of the ant cave. Rising upward on his magical wings, the hero knew that it was too difficult for the great yin wind to get into this thing. At one point, Zhou Wen begins to spin in the air and activate the Dragon Gate Apsara technique. Suddenly, he notices above him that same treasured white cocoon. But suddenly, a golden flying ant appears in front of him which instantly begins to attack the main character. This is why his game ends so quickly. But still, this made him understand that there were cocoons in both the dragon's well and the ant's nest. Therefore, he probably believed that there were some secrets in them. But still, he understood that the Apsara technique was not all about flying, and the silver wing was slower in speed than the epic class, and it was limited to low altitudes. Therefore, he thought it would be great if he had a better life force flight skill. After some time, Zhou Wen begins to cough violently. It was all because of his mentor's medicine, which was given by one of his friends. Having heard about the mentor, the main character immediately decided to ask the elder where the teacher was. He really needed to meet him because he wanted to ask something. However, the elder said that he went to study the dragon well with Zia, so according to the time, they should have returned soon. But still, the elder told the guy that he could ask him too, because he was confident enough in his knowledge. Therefore, without thinking twice, the main character began to tell him that he had previously studied the Dragon Gate Apsara technique. But it seemed to him that it was not flight, but simply dexterity. Zhou Wen would like to know if there are other faster flying skills in the Legend class. This interest of the main character made Zhang Yang think a little. But he still replied that the Apsara technique was already quite an outstanding footwork skill in the class. And the skill was faster than the Apsara technique. Chasing the sun of chasing sunbirds around the Sunset City was probably the only thing left. The answer he heard surprised Zhou Wen. So he decided to ask the question whether Sunset City had anything to do with Sunset College. Zhang Yang did not want to keep the guy waiting for a long time. So he responded positively to his assumptions. Because when the college was founded, it did not have such a broad terminology as it does now. But suddenly, their conversation is interrupted by John Z, who asked his comrade to humble himself. After all, in his opinion, it was impossible to kill the pursuing sunbirds. Afterwards, he confidently asked the main character if he knew where the Sunset City was, to which he replied that according to the elder Zhang Yang, he could be seen since college. However, John G showed a thumbs up with a satisfied face because this city was right above their heads. It was a phantom city that appeared only in the rays of the sun. 
The sun-chasing birds had no legs, so they would never be able to land and would spend their entire lives haunting Sunset City. According to the Elder, they could not fall to the ground and were very fast. Therefore, he believed that it would be much wiser to kill the fairy. Zhou Wen was surprised when he heard the word fairy. Therefore, Jiang Yan sighed heavily. After all, he didn't mention it. Dragon Gate Grottoes actually have a stronger flying vitality skill. It was superior to the Apsara technique that the hero currently possessed. The Dragon Gate Fairy, an epic class creature. According to the elders, the Apsara beast had the skill of Apsara technique, due to the fact that it was a follower of a fairy. The fairy herself was faster than the Apsara beast. She literally flew. However, Zhou Wen, listening to the guys, could not master the epic class now, but only kill the Apsara monkey. John Z, hugging the hero, promised him that they would help him, and therefore they could do it. The elder did not want to wait long, so he immediately made a decision. And he ran forward sharply so that he could start looking for a fairy for the main character. Zhou Wen, looking at his running comrade, was a little worried about him, because the creature that the elder went after was already of epic class. However, Jiang Yang asked the younger one not to pay attention to him, because the fairy would not be able to kill him. At most, it will cause him trouble. After this, events are postponed for some time. Zhou Wen, already on his feet, stood and warmed up to bring his muscles back to life. At the same moment, a mentor was sitting next to him, who was sincerely glad that the guy had fully recovered. However, he still couldn't understand why all four of them felt the urge to take a day off today. John Ji decided to answer that it was simple. He explained this by saying that Ven had only recently been here, so they wanted to take a walk and chat in order to get a little closer and something like that. Hearing the answer, Wang Mingwan became serious, and then he immediately let them go, which is why they began to be very happy. The guys immediately went for a walk. John Ji, hugging the hero, told him that he had been following Fei Tian for several days, which is why his hands were itching, because the opportunity to act had finally come up. Zhou Wen, leaving the cave, immediately asked the guy if they had a chance against the heavenly fairies. After all, initially he wanted to try to fight one of them in the dungeon of the dragon gates, but he could not find a hint of them. But John Ji did not want to answer this question. Hua Fei told the hero that it was much more interesting when he was not sure of the outcome of the case. If he knew that he could cope, they all wouldn't be here. Zhou Wen understood that the teacher was very wise, but the students were all unique individuals. Finally, they came to the appointed place, the Lotus Cave. The guys on the sidelines from the corner watched the monster that was sitting on top. John G turned to the main character and began to explain that this mark on the monster's forehead meant the mark of the first follower of the heavenly fairies. They didn't cross the dimensional rift often, but if the first follower was here, it meant they had done it. In this case, it was not surprising for the guy that he had not seen anything like this in the game. This also meant that if they killed him, they could lure out the owner. Therefore, they decided to send the main character first into battle against the Sky Fairy so that he could warm up. As soon as the monster saw him, he immediately rushed at the guy. However, Zhou Wen managed to dodge the monster's powerful attack. Fortunately, the hero also knew about all the mechanics of this beast. Therefore, he decided to take advantage of the moment and use seven scattered palms. Shouting the words, clear conscience, he attacked with all the power of the heavenly fairy. The guys standing on the sidelines were impressed and proud of their younger comrade, who had so quickly mastered the teacher's technique. However, John G didn't like something. He was still worried about that mark on his forehead. The elder noticed that it was different from those he had seen before. Suddenly, the guys hear something. This sound came from a black sphere held in his hands. The one who held this sphere in her hands was a certain stranger. Zhou Wen immediately realized that this stranger was precisely the heavenly fairy. Black robe and white ribbons, this fairy was different from that goddess dressed in all colors. However, the elders refuted the hero's words because there was a mutant in front of them. Fending off attacks with his white ribbons, the mutant was about to attack the guys. John Ji was shocked that his bullets were ineffective against the epic level because in this territory, the conditions were not in their favor. Therefore, he decided to leave this cave, but suddenly he hits an invisible wall. The elder immediately fell in front of the main character, who stood carefully in front of the wall and realized that it was a barrier. Determined that they could not leave this place, they stood motionless and watched the mutant hanging over them. However, John G was not going to give in to the mutant, so with a bloody look in his eyes, he decided to try something else against him. 
Without giving up, he also motivated his comrades so that they too would wake up and begin to act in full force. Otherwise, they would all die. Zhou Wen also prepared to attack the monster. Yes, together with his comrades, attack the mutant in an instant. The mutant, seeing that the guys were approaching him, began to act more sharply. His first goal was precisely the hero. However, he was confident in himself, so he instantly repelled all the monster's attacks with his lunar wind. This dance of the gust of wind forced the mutant to adapt to the hero's attacks, which is why he lost a lot of time. But he did not lose his vigilance, so he continued to attack the guys, so as not to let them get closer. John G, being the first, asked Zhou Wen not to die in their first sortie, but he had no intention of doing this. The level was too low if they were approximately equal. Even despite the ability to control the wind, she would have already been frozen. However, she continued to fight with the guys. While attacking the main character, the guy barely dodged her attacks at high speed. But still, this attack caught the hero's cheek. But nevertheless, they, together with Hanbei, understood that the cold air somewhat slowed down the speed of her attacks. Hai Feng, closing the distance with the fairy, asked the guys to cover him. After all, he was about to activate his ability. Let us finally crush this mutant who haunts them. Zhou Wen immediately began to repulse the attacks that were moving towards Han Fei. John Z did the same thing. The guys, having fought off all the attacks of the mutant, allowed their comrade to break through and get right to the fairy. When suddenly the mutant begins to concentrate energy again in order to prevent the guy from approaching her. But suddenly someone grabs her leg. Because of which, she immediately loses concentration and falls right in front of Han Fei. The one who crushed the mutant was Zhang Yang with his flying snake ability. Finally getting closer, Han Fei was able to touch the fairy. But suddenly she manages to push him away with her white ribbon. The white-haired guy immediately flies straight into the main character, who is behind him. Suddenly the fairy notices something strange with her body. While she was distracted by this, John G appeared out of nowhere and instantly attacked the mutant. This was the first cut in the entire battle that the guys were able to inflict, attacking in four. The fairy did not tolerate such mockery and pain over herself, so she immediately began to attack the elder. Zhou Wen, rushing to help, was still glad that they had finally caused real damage to the fairy. Continuing to run, he realized that this was a war of attrition. Attacking together with all attacks, they allowed the main character to get closer to her and strike. Suddenly, the fairy again notices something wrong around her. These were two guys who wanted to take the chance to finally defeat the damn mutant. Having finished the attack, John G stood motionless and relaxed, because he believed that the battle was already over. But suddenly, someone attacks Joe One again. The elder also noticed that something was approaching him, but he did not have time to dodge, which is why the fairy grabbed him with her stretching sleeves. Looking up at the mutant, they couldn't believe it, which is why they were very scared, because they understood that she was gathering all her energy to explode and take all of them to that world at once. John Z, trying to free himself from the mutant's shackles, realized that he could not get out. Suddenly, the main character takes hold of this sleeve. John Z was surprised by the guy's actions, because he thought that they would die here together now. However, Joe One thought that the Ashen Palm was a kind of hidden power, so if he focused all his energy on the silk, then he can break this connection. Having made every effort, he was still able to free his comrade. But they did not rejoice because they understood that they had to run, which is exactly what they did. Suddenly the fairy explodes. Because of this, it covers the entire location with mysterious thick smoke. The guys, being all together, were glad that they were still able to survive. Suddenly a flying stone appears from the smoke. The guys looked at it and knew that it was a skill crystal. After doing the math, they decided to give it to the main character, but he couldn't believe that they could give it to him so easily, so he offered money. However, John Jin did not care about money, so he told the hero that he would not be able to leave if he wanted to challenge some vile creatures again. These words delighted Zhou Wen, who was already holding the crystal in his hands. Looking at this crystal, he wondered if a legend class could absorb the skill crystal of an epic class creature. Suddenly, the events are interrupted and transferred again to the location where the mentor was. Holding in my hand a vase with the spirit of life, he immediately began pouring it directly onto the protagonist's wounds. Zhou Wen, sitting motionless, noticed that the pain seemed to be leaving his body, and the wounds were healing. This was the action of the spirit of life of the master. Having completed the procedure, the mentor immediately began to scold the rest of the guys because he could not understand why they acted so recklessly, endangering the youngest. 
In addition to all this, he remembers that the hero asked him about the possibility of absorbing an epic-level crystal when he returned. Wang Mingyuan briefly decided to tell the guy that although this was somewhat contrary to the law of gradual development, it was theoretically possible to absorb a crystal that was higher than its level. But it wasn't that simple. Even though the crystallization of a skill directed vital force into a certain substrate, this process had nothing to do with its level. That is, some abilities require not only vitality, but also a certain set of characteristics that were necessary to maintain it. And some of them could only meet the requirements at high levels, and therefore it was fraught with risks. Zhou Wen, holding the crystal in his hands and looking at it, now understood what his mentor was telling him. Having completed the story, the mentor realized that they had all done well this time, and therefore decided to feed the guys a hearty dinner, which they definitely wouldn't mind. As soon as everyone started to go eat, John Z suddenly turns to the main character to also go with them. However, the guy wondered why this crystal had a speed of only 21. As the master said, this was the first time he had seen a crystal with such a requirement. After this, the events abruptly end and move to the main character's house, where he finally arrived. Going inside, he saw Deaton, who was sleeping carefree in his bed. Looking at his little friend, Zhou Wen was surprised that Li Xuan surprisingly took the care entrusted to him quite seriously. After taking a shower in the bathroom, he dried himself and looked at the phone at the same time. He thought that above 21, his speed characteristics during the game reached 18. The higher the characteristics, the less effective the low-level crystals were. He understood that if he wanted to improve, he had to consider the option of epic-level crystals. The unique property of the Life Spirit ability was indeed useful. Each creature had its own magical abilities, and when activated, it practically did not consume life force, so it was truly incredible. Be that as it may, this time they were convinced that with a good team, it was possible to cope even with an epic-level creature. However, the main character was interested. Will certain restrictions be placed on a high-grade speed crystal, like when it reached the legendary level? In any case, he understood that he needed to think about how to get more high-level crystals. A new day has come. When suddenly the hero's phone starts ringing. Because of this, he, not understanding, could not understand who called him. Suddenly, events are transferred to a moving limousine, where Joe Wen was sitting along with the one who called him. The businessman apologized to the guy for disturbing him at such an early hour. However, the main character asked him not to howl as a young master. The driver agreed with the hero with a smile, so he decided to call him a Wen. And so he allowed the hero to call him A Sheng. As soon as Zhou Wen heard about his sister Lan, he immediately became serious on his face because he had completely forgotten about it. Having arrived at the appointed place, the main character appeared before Lan, who was sitting on the chair in front of him. She couldn't believe that the guy seriously wanted to refuse because they would no longer have the opportunity to change the list of people. If he refused now, then nothing would be possible to change in the future, not to mention the possible rewards. A huge number of people did not even dare to think about such a possibility. The hero, listening to his sister, believed that having the right as a fact already caused problems, so it was best to refuse. In addition, mysterious power, fate, and dream compared to the Taoist canon of immortality. Suddenly, he decided to ask where his stupid father was now, and Wen wanted him to deal with the hero. However, the hind replied that she respected the hero's decision. Not hearing the required answer, Zhou Wen immediately left the woman's office. But suddenly, he is stopped by her assistant, who could not believe that the guy really wanted to refuse. Convinced that the guy had made the right decision, he grabbed his head, and then he said that he understood his decision. Therefore, he asked Zhou Wen to give him five minutes, so that no one could hear them. The guys went into another room and locked themselves in there. Suddenly, the mistress's assistant begins to take off her jacket, because of which the main character began to wonder. After all, he could not imagine that there were such a multiple number of bodily cuts on the man's naked torso. A man completely covered with wounds asked for forgiveness from the main character, but he wanted the guy to see. Examining the body more carefully, the hero realized that almost all the scars on the body were from deep wounds. None of them would ever completely heal. Some of them were so huge. Zhou Wen showed no emotions at all except shock. However, he was silent because he wanted to listen to what the assistant was telling him. Showing his wounds, the man said that he received all these scars over the years of battles with other dimensions. 
and in the future, both the main character and he will face much more serious difficulties. The hero, listening to him, could not understand what he was talking about. So the man opened the window to continue talking. After the world has changed, the border between dimensions and the human world is constantly guarded. In fact, the vast majority of those who have been in these safe zones for more than half a century did not know that in the conditions of this fragile peace, various creatures from the dimension have recently appeared on the territory of the Federation. Now Zhou Wan more or less understood what they were telling him. However, the man continued to say that everything was much more serious than one could imagine. After all, they did not know what caused such changes, but creatures constantly appeared that violated the ban. If all this continues, the ban will be abolished in principle, and then the strongest creatures from the dimension will carry out a real massacre here. According to the assistant, the mutated territory closest to them is Mount Kizi, and more than one phenomenon was observed there. Of course, the invasion was suppressed. However, you, an epic-level general, and his entire team died during the operation. With a sad face, the man told the hero that if there is no power in this world that you can rely on, then no one will be able to protect their loved ones. This is a divine gift, a unique opportunity to become stronger, not for the sake of someone, but in order to give this world the opportunity to last a little longer. Therefore, the assistant hoped that Zhou Wan would think about the opportunity before him. However, the main character was not going to rethink his decision, so he decided to stay with his decision. He assured the man that her abilities should have been enough to make the most of this opportunity. Even if after his refusal the offer would not be relevant, he still did not intend to take away someone else's bread. The main character felt uncomfortable in front of his sister Lan, but he was not going to take what did not belong to him because he did not want to be in debt. Holding his chest, the main character continued to say that even if he does not take advantage of this opportunity, then in the future, he will definitely find another one that will allow him to become stronger in order to protect the people dear to him. Having listened to the hero, the assistant was now absolutely sure that the guy understood what he was talking about, so he did not change his decision. Before leaving, the assistant wanted to tell him that his status in the family had never been something secret. He was called the Hawk of the A family, or the Possessed Instructor. According to him, the lady and the young master considered him part of their family, but they all knew that they were not related. Once upon a time, he was a boy with no name who didn't remember anything about his past. Ah Sheng, Du Jun gave him this name. The events in this story are interrupted and transferred again to the main character's home, where the pensive Zhou Wan was sitting on his bed, thinking about the words spoken by Sheng. Looking at Detina, he realized that in his dormitory, there was just one of the creatures that arrived when there was an invasion of dimensions. Therefore, it was not surprising to the main character that that doomsday dream was a harbinger of disaster. Without thinking twice, he decided to activate his mobile game. Suddenly, he notices the same tree icon that he had unconsciously forgotten about. The guy immediately moved to the game world, where the same dead man's tree was located. Looking at the fruit of the tree, the hero realized that it was already ripe. This tree fruit looked quite familiar to Zhou Wan. Having activated this fruit, the guy could not believe it. After all, his life force was converted into a companion. Thinking about this, he realized that this was the true power of this tree. Thinking about an epic level companion, he realized that it was somewhat risky, but still, he decided to activate it on himself because he believed that this will help eliminate the imperfections of the game.